What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Hello? 2023 Resonant Arc Final Fantasy 16 launch celebration live stream. Did I say that correctly? I think you did. <laughs> you hit all the syllables. Did I did I say all the parts correctly? Did that sound right? <laughs> um, this this uh, this is a celebration that we're doing today yep. for the release of Final Fantasy 16, which is coming out here in just a couple of days. Uh, tomorrow is the 21st, Thursday the 22nd, that's when it releases. So we're going to do kind of a, a cool all-day live stream today. We did something very similar when Final Fantasy 15 came out, yeah. where we spent about an hour playing each game in the series sequentially leading up to uh, Final Fantasy 15. We're going to do a similar thing today, except that Kaysen and I will not be the ones playing. We're going to be hosting this stream, but uh, we've actually recruited others online, other fans of the series, yeah. to play the games so that we can continue to revisit them throughout the day. It's not just going to be, oh, the first you know, introduction, and then we'll skip to the next one, just of get the introduction. Game. Yeah. yeah. Uh, hopefully this way, we'll actually be able to get through more because we'll be having them play all throughout the day, all 12 hours of this stream. So we'll be able to jump back during cool parts and, and just kind of talk about things. So for our first live streamer, we have Dr. Doak. Let me go ahead and switch over to his stream here. Uh, okay, so I need to add that. Now we can hear you, Dr. Doak. How's it going? Hey, doing pretty good. How about you? Doing very good. So there's going to be a slight delay between uh, what you're hearing from Dr. Duck and then what you're seeing. And that's all due to the fact that we're, you know, uh, got his stream open uh, and then uh, we're talking to him, but it's going to be, you know, a couple of seconds delayed. Yeah. But he's playing Final Fantasy I today. <coughs> so do you want to go ahead and introduce your history with Final Fantasy I? Why is this game special to you? Okay, yeah, sure. Uh, so I first played this game when I think it was like maybe five or six years old. It was like way back in elementary oh, school. Like, nice. Like, yeah, either kindergarten or first grade. Um, I had absolutely no idea what I was doing, and I don't <laughs> think I even made it past like uh, Bick the Pirate back then. But, you know, I put, I put hours into it. I would, you know, pour over the manual that came with the cartridge for like hours at a time. You know, just looking at the art and everything like that. And it came with, like, uh, this, like, full spread poster, like, bestiary and everything. It was it was just awesome. And uh, basically, it kind of, like, shaped everything I would like in video games, like, from then on out. Because, you know, before then, I only played stuff like, you know, Mario and everything like that. But it, it basically, it kind of, like, almost lit a fire that never really went away. I've always loved the series ever since. Even if, you know, back then I wasn't really all that good at it. Yeah. Um, I didn't play the first Final Fantasy until I was much, much older because my first one was Final Fantasy VII. <laughs> right. Um, but yeah. I went back and played a bunch of the games that came before that after picking up Seven, And it was actually quite amazing to me how much FF1, like, captured my attention and i like really really enjoyed playing it <laughs> um oh, nice. like there was something about that sort of era because like i didn't have a super nintendo growing up like yeah, you guys you didn't. did yeah um you and didn't so have a super nes either no we had an n64 we had we had an n64 we had just just the nes um ah, so all right, my friends right. had a super nintendo and I didn't have one. Yeah. And so there, I have kind of like a special place in my heart for NES games. There's something about that era that's just really like charming for me. Yeah. And so when I played FF1 for the first time, um, yeah, it was, it was, I don't know. There was just something that I remembered. There's some, it gave me a feeling that I remembered where my brother and I, would pretend like we went to sleep, you know, as little kids. And mm -hmm. then we would like sneak out of bed late at night <laughs> and we would go play like Mario three or whatever. Yeah, and course. one time my dad found us, got like really pissed because oh, yeah, <laughs> we're out of bed at like <laughs> oh, yeah. freaking one in the morning or something as like four year olds. But <laughs> um, anyways, there was something about FF1 that sort of reminded me of that time. And there's, there's, it has a mm -hmm. ton of charm. I really, really enjoy it. So it looks like you're playing the original NES version here. Yep. Dope. Yeah, I uh, had considered doing the um, Pixel remaster, 
but I, I don't know. I felt like you know going back to the actual original, like you know, kind of it was kind of more appropriate. Yeah, especially given because that was the one I played back in the day and everything like that. Mm -hmm. So yeah. sounds no, good. No, well, um, what uh, what party are you going to run with here? Uh, I'm probably going to go with the standard. If my controller will work, hold on one second. <laughs> um, most likely a standard. Go with. Um, like fighter, thief, uh, white mage, and black mage, just because you know that seems almost like it's the um, the quintessential Final Fantasy party, more mm -hmm. or less. Yeah, classic, right? classic. Yep. Uh, okay. Well, let's see here. The world is veiled in darkness. The wind stops. The sea is wild. The earth begins to rot. The people wait. Their only hope, a prophecy. When the world is in darkness, four warriors will come. After a long journey, four warriors arrive, each holding an orb. That is our very nice uh, little introduction and prelude theme there. Um, yep. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, click through. Uh, have you have yeah. you done so already? Um, not yet. Uh, give okay. me one second. You got to get your controller start. working here. <laughs> yeah, uh, it, I tested everything last night. It was working fine, and of course, you know, this is this is the way besides, live streams always yeah. work. For me, mm -hmm. literally There's always something. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, while you are working on that, let me just switch back over here real quick. Um, so, some interesting history. I, I think a go. lot of people. Okay, you got to go. Going? You got it going. Yep. Yep. Here we go. Um, a lot of people kind of know the story behind FF One, right? Um, there's there's some misconceptions about it. A lot of people think, oh, this was called Final Fantasy because it was Square's last game that they could make. They were about to go bankrupt, and mm -hmm. it was all going to be right. over. But like, if you actually think about that for two seconds, <laughs> you you actually believe I'm going to make this game. It's it, it, we're going to call it Final Fantasy. It's our last video game. Like, why would a company <laughs> approach releasing a product in that <laughs> in that way? It makes no sense at all. So that was not the case. Uh, they were in. I mean, if it bombed, the company might not have done well. Sure, like <laughs> right? there was actually kind of a lot of history leading up to it. Where yeah, they had released a, a kind of a slew of relatively or unsuccessful titles. They they were first developing for Apple II, <laughs> and then after that, um, they moved on to the NES, and that's you know where things just weren't quite going right. right. But. Um, they actually wanted to call the game Fighting Fantasy. They just liked the Fighting. the abbreviation, the mm -hmm. alliteration of FF, saying F F U. F F U. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yes, sounds pleasant, I suppose, to yeah. the Japanese ear. And so, F, F. anyways, they had to change it to Final Fantasy because there was a a, a game book series in Japan of the same name, Fighting oh, Fantasy. Oh, really? Like so that's why it was called that. Um, but anyways, uh, did you click New Game here? I just want to make oh, sure. I did not. Yeah, go well, ahead. And, go ahead and choose your party here. I love that as Sakaguchi founds Mistwalker, um, he makes a game called Last Story, which is basically yes. <laughs> right. so yeah. it's basically borrowing from the idea of right. the rumor of what Final Fantasy <laughs> means, and he basically owned it as his own thing yeah. and was like, "Here you go, I'm yeah. gonna actually do it this time." <laughs> and uh, one interesting thing also is uh, he basically said like, if this game bombed, then he was just gonna quit the game industry outright. So uh, yeah, he was, so was, he's. He's had several different um, interviews or, or talks where he's talked about this. It's, yeah. it's kind of funny because he said conflicting things over the years. And, mm -hmm. and at one time, he said um, he was thinking about going back to university. Oh, yeah. You know, uh, he was you know, not sure he wanted to stay M major in the in game finance. development industry. Because he, he, he had like a you know, limited eligibility at his, at his college, right? Oh, yeah. And so mm -hmm. that's why he, he was thinking about the Look name Final that. Fantasy. But there are other times when Dude. he says, no, we just wanted to be called FF. Okay, that really intro mean. overworld was sweet. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. That was cool, man. It basically just starts that you right. That huge castle. Like, go right. back out. Yeah. Go back out. In the overworld. Look right at there. that. That is <laughs> yeah, awesome. It's, it's real awesome. <laughs> I've never seen this in my life. Really? Everything? No. Yeah. This game yeah, is for dope the time? Too. I mean, oh, yeah. he, you say for the time. I mean, even now, like, <laughs> the, I yeah. really think that looks cool. Surrounded yeah. by trees, you got the whole village and this killer looking castle in the back. That looks yeah. awesome. Yeah. yeah for uh, right. when did it come out? I think December of 87. It's, you know, yeah. it's pretty Oh, 87? Yes, oh, 1987 yeah. Yeah, uh. was when it came out in Japan. I think it didn't come to the United States till 1990, but... Oh, yeah, really? yeah, yeah. I think it was FF1? like June Dang. 1990, July 1990, something like that. Yep. I can't remember the exact date. 
All I know is that when this game would have released in the United States, I would have been way too young to have understood how to play this at all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was barely old enough to understand Final Fantasy VII when it came out. So. <laughs> you know what I love about SN SNES and Super NES games is the walking animation, that right yep. there. Oh, Everybody, yep. even great. if they're standing still, they're on a treadmill or something, they're yep. just walking. Mm -hmm. And I love it. I'm going to get some uh, FF music playing here. Since we've got his uh, stream muted here, let's. It might oh, take me a second to uh, get it going. Ah, I didn't think about that. Okay. I have to turn it down mm -hmm. a lot. <laughs> but. Okay, hopefully that gives us just a little bit of music underneath us. And it's not too loud. If it is too loud, someone in the chat, let me know. Yes, but I'm, I'm we keeping. Can't see the chat. You know that is a that's good. <laughs> I'm not sure why the chat's not pulled. Is up there here. a way to just refresh the chat? Maybe just the I chat? can just go to the. Um, oh yeah, maybe. The stream itself here. And. Look so, at that. Uh, this place so, looks awesome. Yeah, so this the is first town with the water. Of Cornelia, right? I love the graphics here. This just looks awesome. So, uh, this place so looks oh, awesome. Oh, 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 I definitely want to pause that. There we go. Close. Okay, here we go. People saying, here's can't the hear the music. Music sounds off. Can't hear the music. Okay, hold on. Hold on, fellas. Let me get it fixed. Let me get that fixed real quick. Turn it up a little bit more. Can you hear it now? I have a feeling that might be a little bit loud, but it should be coming through. It's hitting like negative 40 dB. So. Best FF, FF is 9. Okay, now, hey now people are hearing it. Very, very low. Also worth noting that wanting to name it FF Fighting Fantasy and settling on Final Fantasy because Sakaguchi was considering uh, quitting... If it failed, aren't mutually exclusive? Both could be true. That's yes. true. It doesn't mean the studio would That's... fail. It means that he was just going to be done. Yes. And, I, you know, yeah. fair, close enough. I, I think maybe yeah. the legend exploded to say that the whole company was going to fail. Yes, exactly. The whole, every yeah. video, the whole video game industry was going to fail. But it, 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 pushed, it's really just him. Yeah, he pushed real hard to get this game going, too. Because, you know, at the yeah. time, the big games were, you know, more action arcade games. So it, it was until Dragon Quest came out. Yeah, it wasn't seen as like you know a good decision or profitable at all to you know make a uh, console RPG. That's so true. It was, um, it was Dragon Quest and this that really kind of like set the stage for the entire genre, more or less. Yeah, and, and a big reason for that too was because um, at the time there wasn't really a good solution yet for like saving progress on uh, cartridge games, right? right? Yeah. So like it wasn't until I think Dragon Quest had like a code based system. You entered like a code. Yeah. And yeah. a lot of games did that too. Like it, you you'd get up to a certain point. It's kind of arcade style. It'll give you this yeah. long code you'd have to write down to like then go back you can to where start you were. From that spot. Uh but eventually they started putting batteries in the carts which allowed them to yeah. you know keep saves on them. And so then once that was figured out, you know, once they came up with that solution then it made more sense to do a longer RPG where you had to save progress like this, right? So, but yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it basically adding the battery to the cartridge like opened up a lot of different things because, like you said before, then no, you couldn't save at all. Like there was just no ability to. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, um, a lot of people probably are playing Final Fantasy, this version of the, the Final Fantasy 1 through the Pixel Remaster that just came out recently. Mm -hmm. But, mm -hmm. like, there's something about this original version with, like, the red-haired guy <laughs> that, yeah. to me, uh, I don't know, like, I, this version is so charming to me. Yeah. Like, I don't think I can play any other version than this. Every time I start up, like, even... Because there's been a whole bunch of versions that have been released. Like mm -hmm. the Game Boy Advance version. Oh yeah, uh, and the then PS One, PSP some had one. The PS One yep. version was really good. The yeah. PS One version was probably my favorite version outside of the original. And it was one and two, I think, yeah. bundled together. Yeah, well, that was in the Game Boy Advance, so they had oh, one okay. two Donna Souls that ah, were packaged that's together. Right. Okay. Yep. I but, think uh, um, the one for PS One, it came on like a, it was like a two disc set where uh, one disc uh, was one and one was the second. It was, uh, I think, 
Final Fantasy Origins was the name of it. I don't yes. remember off the top of cool. my head, but yeah. Yeah, so it's the PS1 right. version, yeah. And here was another thing that was so cool about this as I'm looking at it right now. Um, this is one of the first games, RPG-wise, that allowed you to see your own characters like moving forward and attacking like this. Dragon Quest was all first-person perspective in the battles back then. Mm -hmm. And so this was something that was really important to them. They were like, we want you to have like see your characters and have attachment to them. So they came up with this kind of side view battle screen thing. It was actually Koichi Ishii who came up with that idea. For a long time, Koichi Ishii was the only one actually working on developing this game. Because um, Sakaguchi and uh, Kawazu and a couple of the other guys, they were working on finishing. I can't remember which was. I think it was Rad Racer. Rad but it might Racer, have been, I think it was. Yeah, close, Rad yeah. Racer. They were, they were finishing, up, finishing up development on Rad Racer at the time. And so they, they had went ahead and greenlit the, you know, go, you can go ahead and start working on this RPG Final Fantasy. And so Sakaguchi had Koichi Ishii. Um, go ahead and, and begin working on the game and start of like yeah. the pre-production planning of it. And a lot of the ideas that are sort of like staples of what makes this game special kind of came from him actually, which is mm -hmm. an interesting tidbit that a lot of people mm -hmm. don't know. Very um, so the side view battle screen here, he designed all of these characters. <laughs> Koichi Ishii? Yeah. Oh. Uh, yep. So one of the funny things is um, they, had, they had their pixel artist, right? Uh, let's see, where am I at here? Here we go. They had their pixel artist, um, uh, Kibia, I think her name is, and she was like consistently there for all the, the first six games. She was the oh, one who cool. designed the characters and drew their pixel art. But uh, Koichi Ishii did not like some of the ways that she sort of went off from what he was thinking in his mind. So he oh, said really? he went in like after hours, even though... <laughs> He knew it was rude of him to do, and yeah. he would like fix them the way that he wanted them to be. <laughs> really, <laughs> and he didn't know <laughs> at all how to how to how to do that. He had no, he didn't have the skill set yeah. whatsoever to like work on pixel art. So he had um, I'm trying to remember the Final Fantasy IV director. Heon is with us. He'll know who I'm talking about. I can't remember all the names uh, off the top of my head. And I'm just terrible with names in general. People know this. Like, I have yeah. like literally a part of my the part of my brain that's supposed to recall <laughs> names is like broken, <laughs> so I can't remember names. <laughs> but anyway, uh, he he went to somebody else and and showed have him had him teach him how to do it oh, specifically, really? so that he'd be able to like fix the the characters. But. Well, it's fuse beads. You get you get the little beads and you put them on the thing and you iron it, and you got your pixel art. Yep. Yep. Okay, so where are you at here? Dr. Dope. Uh, I just did a little bit of grinding just to get enough money for a tent, and I'm on my way up to uh, Garland, up to the temple. Nice. Yeah, this is, uh, I don't know, like, I, I'd like to talk about how cool this is, what's about to happen in the larger scheme of the story, but there's probably a yeah. lot of people who have not played the original Final Fantasy 1. In fact, some of the people streaming with us today were talking about, you know, I've beat all the 3D ones, but I haven't gone back and played the, the original. Ones. So, um, mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm going to hold off on that for now, but you should definitely play it. Oh, Got absolutely. some more yeah. Final Fantasy music here playing in the background. Ahead on our way. This, the title of this song. Yeah. Actually, this isn't ahead on our way at all. That's titled incorrectly. <laughs> this is the prelude. <laughs> this is just thing. the theme. This is of the FF. or this is yeah, just Final Fantasy. Well, this be okay. Now I know why. This became later on the theme for the whole series of Final Fantasy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like in this and... game, it was titled "Ahead on Our Way." Now that uh, naming convention of "Ahead yeah. on Our Way" became something they continued to do. So there's often an "Ahead on Our Way." titled ah. song in Final Fantasy games. I think 5 has one, 7 has one. Um, but this was the original Ahead on Our Way. Tokita, thank you, Hyun. Tokita was the one who showed Ishii how to do pixel art. Mm. Um, Takashi Tokita. We'll talk about him when we get to FF4. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, Ahead on Our Way. Uh, the Bu Oimatsu. But this eventually, this, this theme you're hearing right now in the background eventually became the Final Fantasy theme. So you're in, yeah, you're I'm, in I'm Garland's. Uh, yep. And you know what's funny Tower about the, uh, the prelude is it's so well known now, but I think I'm pretty oh, yeah. sure he wrote it in like 10 minutes. 
I yes. heard that. I have heard that. Exactly. Yes. It was just It was the prelude know, theme. The prelude theme. It was the last piece of music that uh w- was left cuz Sakaguchi came to him last minute. Mm. And he was like, "Hey, I need one more song for like the the title. Like I need it." And it's like, "Okay, like I can do that. When do you want it done?" It says Uematsu. I I need it right now. <laughs> <And> so <laughs> in like in like an hour and 30 yeah. minutes or some short amount of time, he just did this ascending descending cushion, uh, you yeah. know, uh arpeggio. Yeah. And that became a super iconic piece. Yeah. Um a little bit Zelda like actually on the Zelda title screens they have that sort of arpeggio that they do yeah, like different. the fairies theme. Mm-hmm. Oh, the fairy thing. Oh, totally. Yeah. Similar to that. Anyway, uh, right, let's yeah. uh, let's see you fight Garland here, uh, if you got it, and then uh, we'll yep. switch over to FF2. Right here. No yeah, one so touches my the, princess. Uh, <laughs> 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 of course, the, the famous phrase, I will knock you all down. I will knock you all down. <laughs> Now this is uh, the same guy you play as in Stranger of Paradise, which is uh, where the name <laughs> comes from and everything like that. Which um, uh, just uh, put this over here real quick. Okay, what do you got? Oh, you got his face. You got his face. <laughs> you got. Oh, nice. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Jack Classic. Garland's face. <laughs> That's freaking great. That's fantastic, dude. Did you play Strangers of Paradise? Uh, a little bit. Uh, I haven't beaten it, but that game is wild. Like yeah. th- the fact that it's oh shit, the fact that it was um, tied to this at all Chaos. is kind of crazy. Yeah, I know. I I I didn't bother with it. It was not uh, up my alley as far as uh, <laughs> the types of games I'm looking for to play. But well, I mean, gameplay wise, I guess it probably was. It was a little bit oh, the, like Souls esque, right? Mm. Yeah, the gameplay is great. It's kind of like a Neo. Uh, it's more a little more action heavy than like the Souls games usually are. Mm-hmm. Um, not like the gameplay is great. It had good progression systems. The job system in it was, you know, fantastic. But you know, the story was a little weird. It's definitely more <laughs> like for fan service because uh, sure. each area uh-huh. in Stranger Paradise is based off of a different Final Fantasy game. Like um, one of the uh, the area around, um, I can't remember the name of the town. It's where uh, the pirate Bic is, Provaska, something like that. Oh, yeah, yeah. The second town. Yep. Yep. Uh, so the dungeon there is completely based off of, um, if you played Final Fantasy XIV, um, the very first dungeon you go into in 14. Um, the place of the Sahagin boss, I can't remember from ARR. I can't yeah, remember the name. I, I, name. Name is not coming to me either, even though I recently yeah. played it. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's basically just that exact dungeon ported into Stranger of Paradise. Oh, really? So, wow. Yeah. And then um, you have um, the floating island from 6. Oh, cool. You have, uh, I think, the uh, Mako reactor from 7. Okay. The nice. whole game is basically just like a love letter to Final Fantasy in that nice. regard. Yeah. All right. So we've taken right. out Garland. His face yep, is still on the, the screen, princess. though. <laughs> oh, yes. Garland right. stays right. <laughs> takes it off. He's dead now. <laughs> there he goes. So you are the Light Warriors. Thank you. I love how like <laughs> abbreviated all the text is in this. Like they they oh, were yeah. working very well. We've talked about this a lot on our podcast and stuff. How much they had to cut in English. Because the text yes. limitation on the NES, it's even more yeah. hampered in these games, these NES games, and it's freaking hilarious the way they work around that sometimes. So yeah, she it, gives you the loot, which will yeah. not come into play until like way later in the not game. For a Maybe long this time. loot will be uh, helpful to you <laughs> in like fifteen hours from now. <laughs> don't forget, don't forget you have it. All right. All so right, in uh, as a reward, a uh, yeah, they're going to build the bridge that will allow you to continue. To the next part of the continent, they're going to rebuild the bridge as thanks. So we'll probably yeah. get to that point where you see the the Final Fantasy title. Oh, yeah, that was also an idea from I- Koichi Ishii. Oh, to actually. delay the the yeah, introduction to, title to make it more like a movie where they like mm. they put the title of the movie after uh, you know sort of an intro part or whatever like mm-hmm. they do in films. So that was uh, an idea from him as well. One other thing that I want to mention about FF One before we move on to FF2 here. Uh, hold on, let me make sure I have the right thing up here. Um, the airship vehicle, which oh, is yeah. something that is seen as kind of a 
Well, I guess not anymore, but at least during a certain era in of JRPGs, it yeah. was like a common thing. It was actually not just JRPGs. I think anime as well. Oh, you know, yeah, that's true. I, I guess you did see it in like Hayao Miyazaki films. Yeah, Miyazaki. Oh, yeah, like yeah. Um, but yeah, the airship vehicle was a, as far as its inclusion in a JRPG like this. Oh, I see. Final Fantasy was the first game to do it. Nice. And the reason was because. Oh, uh, in Dragon Quest, they had like a, a teleport magic that let yeah. you kind of warp around to different places. Um, but Sakaguchi didn't want the player to skip past a lot of cool things that they had designed in the overworld map for exploration. Yeah. And so he's like, we need a way to get the characters or to get the player to where they want to go faster and to be able to skip random battles and that sort of thing. But to be able to also see all this cool stuff that we have designed. And if you see something cool, let's, oh, let's go see what that's all about. You know, what, what yeah. I haven't been there before. And so the airship vehicle is sort of a tradition in JRPGs, the way it's used, actually started in the original <coughs> Final Fantasy, the very first one. Uh, it was the first game to do that. And so. Uh, that's funny because that, that way uh, travel kind of scales. You've got when you're inside of a, mm-hmm. a battle. It's yeah. like super compressed. Then you're yeah. in a village and it's like you're walking around. Yeah. Then you're outside of the village, you're a big dude walking all over the world. Yep. And then you have the mm-hmm. airship as like the the fullest, mm-hmm. like the fastest way of travel. But it's still um, abstracted, but it's still presented on the actual screen. That's right. I like that much better to teleportation, honestly. I, yeah, I it, do too. It's a I lot really better. Do. Yeah. And then uh, in addition to that, um, Koichi Ishii took that and wanted to make it look like a, a diorama, like a miniature world. Yeah. So he put like the little drop shadow on the ship as it goes up to give it that sort of 3D Oh, that's look, right. That's right? cool. And that's so uh, that was, that was kind of where the identity of Final Fantasy and what made it stand out maybe from Dragon Quest a little bit started to take shape. Yeah. A um, lot of inspirations, right. of course, from Dungeons and Dragons. But here we go. We've got... Yep. The title screen, and so their journey begins. You got them down there in the corner, looking out over the. Look at that! Over the that is so cool. right to the castle yeah, in the like distance. Yeah, like the vista with the castle. <laughs> and everything too. Freaking sweet! Mm-hmm. Love it. It's great the stuff. Wait before they do not know. This is each what... holding an orb that two thousand years ago shined with beauty from within, but now only darkness. Ooh. Mm. And of course, the orbs became translated as crystals, and that's kind of where yep. the crystal motif of Final right. Fantasy is all about, right? Mm-hmm. And come, start your journey. Return the light of peace to our world. How do and you? And it goes re- into the actual credits and everything. How yep. do they? How do you reclaim the sense of adventure that these old games used to give? That was actually one of the this things. Is so cool. I was thinking about saying in terms of my favorite thing oh. about Final Fantasy One. Specifically, Final Fantasy One, um, mm-hmm. that makes it stand out from any other game in the series. Actually, yeah. is its sense of adventure. I, the rest I of the games it. after this, they're a little bit more linear. They give you a lot more direction as to where you're yeah. supposed to go next, what you're supposed to do next. Right. You have more or, like goal-oriented sort of objectives. And in the original Final Fantasy, it was way more like just get out there and figure out where to go yeah. next. And explore yeah. it, and well, like, and that's learn so what good. In the text, it says, "What awaits them, they know not." Yes, mm-hmm. right. Like, exactly. That's you as the player too. Like, there's a whole yes. world out there. You yes. don't know how big it is. You don't know what's there. Yes, but you're gonna go out and brave it anyways. Yes, I, I, I don't quite feel the same thing from games anymore. I just yeah. don't. I mean, like, Breath of the Wild did a good job of that. I think that there it are did. some some games that, but like, there's you're right. Even with Breath yeah. of the Wild, there's something that this is doing that yeah. that game could not. Mm-hmm. ever do yeah and i think a lot of it is the fact that so much of so much of the mystery of what 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 it what the future holds yes is in the mind yes and right. is not yeah. present before you yes that's true. and that's what makes it so absolutely thrilling yes it's fantastic stuff yeah like okay even at the part where i'm at right now um mm-hmm. once you cross the bridge you don't it doesn't give you any direction where to go it just says okay cross the bridge you're on your way good luck mm-hmm. Yep, figure it out. <laughs> mm-hmm. exactly. It's great stuff. Yeah, but that that is the thing I think that makes this game unique from any of the others in the series and probably my favorite aspect of it. And I, I still love yeah. to play even just this original NES version to this day over any of the others. Mm-hmm. All right, uh, Doke is going to continue to play this game on his own live stream. If you do not have the link to that, I'm going to try to paste it over here in the chat. So you can go there and continue following him if you'd like to do that. Um, Doke, uh, 
We're going to step away for a second. I'm going to try to boot up Final Fantasy 2 here on my machine. And uh -huh. we're going to play that for a few minutes because nobody <laughs> volunteered <laughs> to play Final Fantasy 2 for this live stream. So you left it to me. So I'm going to prove to you guys <laughs> this game is worth playing. So, uh, right. Doak, we'll, we'll check back with you a little bit later today. Uh, thanks for right, being good. with us. Yeah, Anybody wants you. to continue, go check out his stream. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, guys. So, no problem, man. I need to open All Final right. Fantasy 2. You got, are you muted there on the chat? Doak? We, can, we, yes, can, we just now. need to mute him. Okay. He's muted now. Okay. Uh, give me just a second, everybody, because, like I said, nobody volunteered. <laughs> You guys don't understand <laughs> how good this game is. Uh, let's see. Is it actually showing up? I don't know if it's showing up on my device. Hold on. Let me go real quick. I'm just actually going to keep Doke's stream up while I try to get Final Fantasy II going here. One second. You can keep talking, Case, about your thoughts on what you're seeing. Oh, I would love to. <clears throat> This cave looks sweet. Whoa, there's the... Okay, so this is the first time we see the overworld map. Yeah, you see the whole map there. Look at how big it is. Huge. Oh, that is so cool. Yeah, and there's no place names on any of those dots, so you don't know what they are. <laughs> hey, that's fine. That's fine. Wow, that is so cool. Now, these uh, little dudes talking, it's backwards text, I think, right? What's that? The guys that he are... talks to these little guys and they say the same thing. Oh, but the text I think is uh, it's meant, oh, it's meant like to be written. read in reverse. Okay, I'm still it's still not popping up here. Hmm. Why is that? Okay. Um, hmm. I just got to get my hard drive to be read by the computer so I can actually pull up the game. <laughs> here, I'll let you know so you don't have to come back here each time. Oh, I just heard the do do do, which means it unplugged. Now it said do 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 do. Yes. But I'm not. It's not showing anything. Mm -mm. No. So it's reading it. Um. Oh, there it is. It just showed up. Good. It's working. All right. We need to open this and this. Maybe play some Final Fantasy music while. Well. He's streaming the game over there. Hmm. Where did I put that? Uh, I gotta open it up again. Music. Final Fantasy. <coughs> <coughs> uh, let's go with. On the ship, that's a good one. Okay. Is Steam open? Steam is open. Fantastic. Fantasy 2, right there. Let's play it. Playtime, 30 minutes. What does that mean? It means I've played Final Fantasy 2 for 30 minutes. Oh, congrats. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Good work. <laughs> In this form on yes. Steam? Yes, in the Steam version. Nice. Where did it pop up, though? Oh, it's not wanting to run right now. Why is that? Okay, well, could be that uh, we need to... It's a possibility that I've got it on a hard drive here because it's just not wanting to run right now. I've got uh, final f my, my Steam. I put everything on like a solid-state hard drive here. Oh, nice. And I brought it over, and I, I haven't used it on this. Oh, there it is. It's working. Okay, we got it. Never mind. False alarm. We're good. Nice. I think we're streaming... Yes, I'm going to uh, switch this okay. over to there. But I also need to lower the volume because it's probably really loud. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's probably competing with us a little bit. But where can I find... Okay, first of all, press any key to continue. Where's the any key? Do you remember what that's from? Is that Simpsons? I don't, I don't. Press any key. I can't find the any key. Oh, man, my controller is not being read. Steam, what are you doing? Steam, how do I go to the controllers? 
Come on, man. Controllers, controllers, controllers. I'm gonna plug it in again. And hopefully Steam will read it this time. There it is. It's working now. Hooray. Furion. Furion. Is good. But actually, go back. Go back, go back, go back. No, I want you to go back. I want you to go back. I want you to go. <laughs> I'm so used to the other button being. Oh, I see. The B, A, B. Yes, so I need to go to options. And I need to go to display options. Configuration. Display. I want you to. Okay, so it's borderless window. I want it to just be windowed. Done. There we go. Perfect. Now okay. I can move it over here and people can see what we're actually looking at. If you double click, it should. There we go. Now I need to make it quieter because it's way too loud, probably. Actually, I think the fastest way to do that is going to be to just come in here. Yeah, to just lower just that. Do it like that. That's okay, good. everybody. Can you hear the game I quietly? A little higher than that. There you go. A little quietly behind us. I think we're actually running here. Everything looked good. All right. We're going to do a new game for Final Fantasy II. Now, these characters actually had names this time. Furion, Maria, Guy, and Leon. And the reason I want to play the Pixel Remastered version rather than the original is because in this version they've actually designed these characters um, to be unique to this game. In the original mm -hmm. Final Fantasy II, they just reused the same sprites pretty much from, from FF1. FF1. Oh, no and Maria way. had a little bit of a more, I guess maybe Guy did as well, but uh, Furion was just the Red Warrior from Final Fantasy I. The same, yeah. Who and so, thought. anyway, I like having Furion kind of in this design, which is the design that they had um, for him, like the, the Amano, the Yoshitaka uh, Amano of art. Of course, yeah. For them. Was so, this, was two the first game that Amano did, or was No, one? he actually worked on the original, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Let's just go ahead and get done and get the game started here. People saying they can't hear the game. I don't. The original believe. volume is better. So back when it was, uh, we thought it was too loud. Oh, do you know what? I think I know why. It was actually. I think it's because better. I've already set this up to be like lower. Okay, let me know if that's too loud. We've got a little introduction here. Ooh, look at this. Yeah, we got like a cool little introduction scene here. Those... Whoa. The Emperor of Palamasia has called forth monsters. <coughs> this looks nice. Look at that pixel yep. art. That looks cool. They updated like this, this to look a little bit more like a Super Nintendo game, right? Yeah. And of course, all this music has been redone for this yeah. pixel remastered version. Um, I believe Nobu Oematsu sort of supervised all of the rearrangements. He wasn't oh, really? the only one working on them, but he was sort of supervising. Ah, and cool. for the most part, they're really, really good. I really like the the I'll rearrangements of the Pixel Remasters. For the most part, especially for the NES that game. That shot! That shot! Yeah, isn't that sick? Yes! That <laughs> shot! Oh, I love it. Look at that. Beautiful. Man. Yeah, fantastic stuff. But their escape wasn't over. So, I don't know. If that doesn't get you excited to play Final Fantasy 2, I mean, I'll tell you. Holy cow. This game, this game looks dope. really cool. Okay, so it starts you right off in the battle, right? Oh, You're no being way. pursued by the Black Knights of the Empire. Mystery. And, mystery abounds. Yeah. So, oh, let's try attacking here and see what happens. Right, let's just all attack the same guy. That's usually a better strategy. I know. Oh, miss? You gotta take one out. Oh, miss? Oh, you're telling me you got zero damage? Oh, miss? Oh, no. What's oh, he's dead. <laughs> These guys are way stronger than us. We're not supposed to win this fight, obviously. Okay, of course, of course. But we were rescued. Oh, I love the freaking music of this game. Will he, will live? he live? Hilda. Now, I've done a little bit of modding here. So what you will notice is that the text okay. boxes are different than the official they release like version FF7 of the game. I've actually done a, uh, I've added a mod here where you can see the portraits for the characters, the text oh, oh, is so the Final Fantasy VI text. No. Ah, this has I all see. been added by modders That's out cool. there. 
And I highly suggest that if you're gonna play the Pixel Remastered versions that you yeah. do this, because they're way, way better when mm -hmm. modded like this. So this is Minwoo, he's a, he's a sorcerer. We found them like this on the escape from Finn, fallen from the terrible wounds, or from terrible wounds. By the time we brought them here, I feared it was already too late. His life is not in danger. Minu. This sigil Minu. will strengthen his life force. We should let him rest now, of course. We best be off to the meeting. I imagine they're already waiting for us. If the Empire is allowed to complete the dreadnought they're building in Bafsk, Bafsk. their attack will begin in earnest. We cannot sit idly by and watch. We must act. Now you can get up, I think. Or it'll just be a second. I freaking love the music of FF2. It's so strong. Yeah, it's very cool. It's very subtle, but it's very it's powerful. I like it. Maria. So are these original names? Or Guy. Or these are the original names. So Pre Leon, and Maria, and Guy are his ah, friends. Leon and, and Maria are brother and sister. So Guy and Maria are here, but Leon is not. He was not found. I thought you'd been killed. I'm fine. You seem all right too, Guy. Well, but I thought they'd been killed. Where's Leon? Yeah, we all. Well, I thought they were all dead. <laughs> <laughs> they were rescued at the last minute by the rebellion. Princess of Finn saved us. Leon is not here. I see. Don't worry, I'm sure he's okay. Now, here's the thing to note about Final Fantasy II from a development standpoint. It is a very different game mechanically from the first. Not this really. is kind of a tradition on NES games. I noticed. To Zelda II. change. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Zelda II was like so different from Zelda I. Yeah. Um, I think Castlevania II was kind of the same oh, way. Oh, yeah, that's true. Um, this game Mario was, Mario Brothers 2? Yes, that's true. Freaking Well, totally that was more different. the American version, but... You're, okay, yeah. good point, good point. But, uh, anyways... This game was more, a lot of the ideas behind this game's system was more headed by uh, Kawazu. Um, Kawazu. You, I can't remember his first name right now. It's Ko, it starts with a K as well. But remember, I have, I have a freaking problem with my brain. I can't remember <laughs> names. I can't recall it. But his last name is Kawazu. Yeah, okay. He went on to make the Saga series at Square. Oh, so well, cool. Romancing nice. Saga. Yeah. And a lot of the ideas from this game that people tend to hate for some reason, which are <laughs> awesome and I love them, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> were accepted for Saga. Uh, mm. So we'll talk about that a little bit after we get through this scene. You've regained your strength. Very good. Your life force is strong indeed. It was you who saved force. us, wasn't it? Thank you. Forgive me, Your Highness, but there is something I must ask of you. Please let us join the rebel army. <laughs> There's something I have to ask of you. Can I can I fight on your behalf? Like, yeah, yeah, sure, dude. Do whatever you want. She, apparently, she's not going to let us do that. I could never oh. allow such a thing. <laughs> oh. You know nothing of battle. You would only be throwing your lives away. Oh, you should okay. Return Actually, to your that makes homes. sense. But we have no homes. Not anymore. Not anymore. The Imperials attacked, and our parents, our parents, they're dead. Mm. I'm truly sorry, but that changes nothing. I cannot permit you to join our army. If you're no, if you've nowhere else to go, you are welcome to stay here in Altair. So I'm I'm making some assumptions about this game. That we're, first, we're fighters. Second, we're like from this kingdom. Maybe yes. it sounds like those are all incorrect. Yes, correct. And so my assumption that of course she'd let us fight for her is we're like just off. refugee. Yeah, well, teenagers. A, a military <laughs> wouldn't just allow somebody who just showed yes. up to join their army. Correct. Because in the military, <laughs> you need to be able to rely on the guy next to you, and if he has no training. Uh, uh, and if he's not even from your your land, yes, you're Why not going to get along. <laughs> exactly, it's right. not a good idea to put them in your military. Yes. Oh, that's so funny. We have oh. some people in the comments talking about, hey, this seems to have a cool story. That yeah. was a big difference and between this and FF1. Kind of like undoing some assumptions that I have yeah. just of games in this time period. Right. That you're always it always starts off a certain way. You're always a fighter. It's never. But this sounds like they're giving us a lot of mysteries right up front with very little text too. It's very yes. interesting. Um. So. This game has a much more involved story than the first one does. Really? Um, it's going to feel more that way in this version than the original FF2. Yeah. With the text being real limited. <laughs> Just the way it's presented. But um, yeah. one thing that they did that is really cool, let me click back into this window, is they in, they they ask they had this learn. password system that they came ah, up with. Wow, and so what you do is sometimes people will have keywords that they say. Yeah. And you're meant to remember that term so that you can go use it on another NPC oh, who will then so allow cool. you to enter someplace. And now what I really that's like about cool. this is that it kind of forces players to pay more attention to the text. You can't yeah. just be like spamming through. Yeah. You got to actually pay attention to the story a little bit. Wow. So I really like that about this game. So that's you have to go to cool. learn. 
you learn the Wild Rose term, right? Now we can use that on other NPCs to get an extra dialogue, or some of them it might use it as a password to actually get to somewhere we couldn't get Dude, otherwise. Dude, whoever said NES games were like <laughs> I know. Uh, boring or plain or minimal or didn't do anything interesting. They're awesome. So if very, we go to cool. Minwu here after we get through this thing. And honestly, I don't know that anyone's ever said that, but that's a perception. Yes, I think that's kind of how I just is. think of old games. Like, yeah, it's just basic. They don't do anything like unique. Yes. This is cool. I see your destiny clearly. The future it holds seems closely entwined with mine. So you can go to ask, and then you can do Wild Rose, and then he'll get extra dialogue. <laughs> You've wasted no time <laughs> using the password. <laughs> yeah. Right? And so there's a whole bunch of terms that you'll learn throughout the game this way. So anyway, I'll kind of just get through here. Uh, so the king of Altair is sick. We'll go. I love how everyone here has like that cool hat with a feather in it. Yep. <laughs> Very nice. I really love the music of this game. It's fantastic. So here's the king. He's ill. Oh, shoot. An arrow struck me in the back during the battle, leaving me in this state. I really have grown old. Perhaps. Well, being hit by an arrow doesn't really mean that you're old. <laughs> right? Like, even he, if a young I person got hit by an arrow, suggesting they'd be in bed too. I, I should have been able to avoid that. I, I'm too ah, slow to have put the shield okay, up sure. in time gotcha, or to have gotcha. been aware of in what's happening back, around though? me. Okay, okay, I gotcha. My daughter Hilda now serves as, re as regent. You should speak with her. Okay, so we're going to be really quick on this because, again, we got to kind of move forward to the next game. We went a little too long in FF1, but that's fine. Um, but I'm going to introduce a couple of cool things about this and make a case for this game. Battle system is more or less the same as in any other FF game. However, nice. the uh, character progression system is entirely different. You'll notice there are no levels. The characters don't have level one next to them or anything like that, right? That is not the way that this works. Uh, in this game, you basically level up your attributes as you use them. So, uh, right. if we go to status on Fury on here... His strength would increase as he does physical attacks in battle. Sure, that so makes sense. The yeah. more physical attacks you do, the ah, higher your that. strength goes up. Yeah. However, it will also impact another one, possibly in the negative. So maybe your something oh, really? tied to magic might go down. So you can't just make every character max at everything. Max at everything. You I have mean, to choose good, a role <laughs> for them, right? Uh, so if cool. you want him to be your melee maybe kind of tanky class, right? Mm. You would work, you would give him equipment of, of a warrior, and then you would work on physical attacks and taking a lot of damage, because the more damage you take, it actually increases your HP. Right. Your, your maximum HP goes up the more wow. hits you take. So, um, so if you wanted to have Maria be, I don't know, like a black mage, you would have her casting magic in the battles, and that would increase her, uh, her intellect, right? That would go up and so on. But beyond that, you also have uh, equipment, which I don't have right now, but there's each weapon itself you have to use in order to become more proficient with that weapon. So You're just describing real life to me. Right. I, I don't understand. This, <laughs> why, this, what's the drawback here? Like, what, what did people I, not, because nobody does this anymore. Literally, I don't know why people complain about this game as huh. much as they do. I actually Well, because they can't be OP in everything, right? That yes, could be part of it. That's, Some people, that's, that's a... possible. But... I honestly think that most people who really yeah. like talk bad about this as if it's the black sheep of the series probably yeah. haven't actually played it. Mm. But for those who have and don't like it, I'm not trying to say like you're wrong. All I'm trying to say is is that there's a lot of hate towards this game um, that is a bit unfounded, particularly in yeah. newer versions. I think one of the things people were they they claim was disappointing about it is it's there's a lot of easy ways to break it. So you can attack your own party members to increase their HP. Uh, right. Okay. Okay. You so could um, you can learn certain you can that. learn certain spells that are instant death spells, and a lot yeah. of the bosses in the game were not were not given immunity to those spells. Uh, so okay. you could go to like the emperor, like holy, one holy of the water, final but... bosses in the game, and turn him into a toad. Oh wow! <laughs> and just end the fight right there. Now th I believe a lot of these things have been addressed in releases like this, but overall, um, I, I really liked the concepts behind it. And I think a lot of other people, especially those who like the romancing saga games, mm -hmm. probably do too, because Kawazu went on taking the ideas and what he learned from developing this game and went to make romancing saga after yeah. this. And, and basically, does, does it follow similar? It basically follows that exact same okay. formula in uh, terms of how it approaches character progression. 
Should we play one of those on the podcast soon? <laughs> Romancing Saga, they, they don't have like the greatest stories oh, ever. Oh, really? Okay. But Romancing Saga 3 in particular is just really, really good from like mm. a combat and gameplay perspective. It's a mm, game cool. I've been wanting to try for a long time. Um, so we will eventually get to that. But Very that's going to be it for Final Fantasy 2. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of this. And because all of you people seem to not like it, uh, we will not be returning to that because I have no it. one to stream that game. But we are going to move now into Final Fantasy 3. So let me send a message here to our streamer for Final Fantasy 3. <coughs> all right. Now, I have this one open here. Here she is. Hi, guys. Hello. Hello. How are you, Ezzy? I'm doing well. We were just looking at some pictures of chocobos. Look at this, guys. Look this at that. This is the concept art of chocobo. From Look at Whoa, that. From, from when? <laughs> from concept from art. Isn't that, yes. that's actually a really dope design. I wish they would bring that back. I'm not going to yes. lie. That's awesome. That's like a <laughs> huge crazy. bird. It looks It looks, yeah, it looks huge. It also looks like a raw chicken wing with a beak. I love it. It's so yes. creepy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, kind of a pterodactyl time. with that crest as well. Let me uh, get your stream yeah. real quick the link so that i can put it into our chat uh go ahead yeah you're, no you're, problem you're take your now. time uh let me know people in the chat if you can hear mike and Kason well on your end or should i turn them up a bit in discord just so we know that we got covered okay we, we might need Great. to lift her in the in um, obs oh actually she might be muted that's why oh uh, no no wait in obs no, no, in obs no, i'm not right. i'm not in obs yep <laughs> okay can uh we? can, <laughs> can everybody please. hear can everybody hear her Blah blah blah. Chicken wing. The, I just want to make sure that it's it's all good. Everybody can <laughs> oh, hear. Oh yeah, this is me. Thank you for the follow. Also, I'm going to be muting the alerts for a bit. Uh, sorry about that. I'll <laughs> unmute them a little later. Okay, everybody, okay. everybody can hear. So we're good. good. We're good. All right. uh, I think cool. everything is good on our end. So you're like you're ready to. Yes. Thank you, everybody. Start the game whenever you. Oh, you're in the Pixel Remaster version. So this yes. this uh, oh, this nice. concept art is there as yes. part of the. Yes. Okay, cool. Actually, My first... this is really nice because they've included both like the music player and the entire gallery oh, cool. of a Look lot at that. of artwork, which is really, wow. really nice. And there are That's some beautiful. unused things as well. So it's beautiful. We were just think taking a look at the pictures uh, yeah. while we were waiting. I love the logo for Final Fantasy yeah. 3. Yeah. It is one of my favorites from like the is cool. 2D games. It's, it's just a super dope image. I freaking love it. <laughs> Yes, I really my, like it as well. My first exposure to this game was the DS, the DS, yep, um, the DS kind version. of like remake mm -hmm. that they did, um, maybe 2006 or so that it came out. Yeah. And 2005, I think. 2005? Yeah, you're right. it, and <laughs> it was the first time I had seen them use the dual screens on the DS uh -huh. for a cutscene that was mm -hmm. full 3D yep. that looked really good. Yeah. Um, and it made the game look very appealing to me. Yeah. Um, I still never played it though. <laughs> it's it's good. Um. And I, I, I like both versions, actually, the 2D yeah. version and the 3D version. So They uh, are pretty different. I myself played Pixel Remaster only and, okay, uh, cool. because I've only recently kind of gotten into playing these older um, games. My, my entryway to Final Fantasy was a lot later because living in the middle of nowhere, um, especially as a <laughs> girl <laughs> during the time yeah. when this was all coming out, um, video games were not exactly kind of common uh, as a hobby or anything mm. like that. So oh, my see. entry was a Final Fantasy 12, and then I oh, wow. went up, oh, up and down I from there. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Nice. Uh, and basically, because of late, like last several years, I'm mostly playing Final Fantasy XIV and just kind of going oh, from nice. there. Uh, I'm not mm -hmm. going to go into that almost at all, considering that you have someone covering the game later. But there are a lot of mm -hmm. references in fourteen from three, which oh, cool. uh, motivated me to go back and to check out uh, specifically like, what the Eureka thing is all about, because we have mm -hmm. like an entire this community going around Eureka, <laughs> which is like a side content piece in 14. Yeah. And I'm so glad that it did because this game is a joy. Um, I did try the 3D version a few times and I never really got into it. But today, later uh, during the day, I plan to uh, have like a little intermission where we're going to actually start that game as well. So we can kind of oh, cool. 
you know, check the differences because yeah. you see mm -hmm. here that immediately we go into the character, um, you know, I press new game and then I can just name the characters. They are all blank slates, oh, right which there. is definitely not the case in the 3D uh, version. Mm -hmm. Oh, really okay. They kind of prompted you on some names. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to give them uh, some names, which I think are going to be um, pretty like okay for the event <laughs> so nice. we're gonna have mike we're gonna have kason it's with one s right c-a-s-e-n right. yeah one s okay we're gonna have a yoshi p of course the a yoshi Lord p. And savior <laughs> <laughs> and that's great we for the last one um i am deliberating between clive and torgo i don't know which one is more popular oh torgo oh, people are go gonna for pick the dog torgle. man go for the people dog are gonna All pick right, torgo let's, let's go torgo then <laughs> i have all, another all safe mod, uh, where, where we do have some clives as well so we're, we're gonna see everything but yeah i think that Tor these four names are good to nice. start with torgo yep. means uh, protected stuff. protected by thor Oh, I didn't the God even know Thor. that. Yeah, Torgal. Ta Gal is protection, and then Tor ah, is Thor in Old English. That's so interesting. I yeah. only know Torgal from Last Remnant, actually, where it was like a, a oh. cat person type oh, character. Really? Gotcha. Which is uh, <laughs> really interesting. They use the same name because there are some people, I believe, play uh, who are from the development team of the both games, Last Remnant and, and this like whole ah. Final Fantasy 16 division. Yeah. So, I don't know. I guess they like Torgal. <laughs> yep. You mentioned All you right. live in the middle of nowhere. Real quick. Uh, yes. Where is that? <laughs> well, I'm in Croatia, and right now I'm, I'm in a city. But I, yeah, I was uh, born in the middle of nowhere. Very and yeah, nice. this is a famous Game of Thrones country. Um, so. No, I, I, have, um, I know people that live there, actually. That's very cool. Oh, really? That's, yes. that's very cool. It's a very small place. I'm surprised. Yes. <laughs> Although a friend of mine who used to live there is in Albania now. But yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. Good old neighbor. All right, let's go. So, All with right. Final Fantasy three, it was a pretty hard course correction from, from Final Fantasy 2. <laughs> but in many ways, it ended up kind of defining the identity of Final Fantasy because this was the first yeah. game yeah. to have a class-changing system in it. Yeah. Um, and this is something that uh, had just happened. A lot of things were sort of reactionary between Dragon Quest and Final Fantasy. So Dragon Quest had a, a class-changing system, and I think yeah. it's Dragon Quest 3. Uh, right. So oh, they right. kind of follow up with this. But a lot of yeah. the classic... Final Fantasy classes uh, basically uh, came into came into the picture here, and so this game allows you to change jobs in classes. Mm -hmm. um, so that's yeah. kind of its big. Uh, ah, I see a Silmarillion effect. reference there. The source of oh. the world's light was swallowed by a monster. Uh huh. Yeah, I'm, I would assume that there are a lot of uh, Tolkien references, and yeah. this game is very D and D ish to me. Uh, Oh, I don't really? Know. I, I haven't played Final Fantasy 1. I think they probably have mm. a lot of similar tone tone points in the story, um, judging from what I've heard. Uh, but I'll, I'll get there at some point. I don't oh, know. I think the story is awesome. very cute. Yeah, four orphaned yeah. youth. It's, the village of it's Ur. A classic. Yes. <laughs> Ur means light. Final it's Hebrew. Really? Okay. Yes. It's, See, I was watching some videos about that, and nobody could figure out where Ur was coming Ur. from. Ur, yeah, the land of Ur. <laughs> that's where Abraham was was born. Ah, I think. yes, that's right. <coughs> oh, that's that's nice. That's a good reference. So, Ur. one difference between the two D versions of this game and the three D version: in the three D version, they have sort of established characters that have different looks to them and their own names and things like that. Mm -hmm. But in the original, it was just four kind of blank slate Onion Knight kids. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, yeah, and, <laughs> and so. <laughs> Yeah, you, yes. so you start out as this Onion Knight, this little... Yes. They're actually very young kids in this game, much younger than typically for Final Fantasy even, which they're more like teenager, yeah. or oh, maybe yeah. just beyond that. Here, they're actually yeah. like really young kids. Really? Oh, that's <laughs> yeah. funny. But they were blessed with the power of life. Yes, yeah, so, so as you'll see here, in a moment when we get through this first dungeon, they'll approach a crystal, and yeah. that crystal mm. breaks into shards, and they pick up the shards, and that gives you access to the different classes. Oh, so that's the, the how it works. the crystal itself blesses you with sort of the... The like magical awesome. abilities or the jobs yeah. abilities that you get. That's fine. So that I like gives that. these, <laughs> yeah, these kids, that's how they're able to fight the monsters huh. and the soldiers and things that they face in the game because they have the Very blessings cool. of the crystal. 
yeah they they are just here kind of by a chance and you start with all of them the game doesn't actually tell you who is speaking so you can kind of play into that a little bit when i was playing it for the first time we spent uh -huh. the entire game voice acting everything giving them a oh that's bit of so a personality. cool mm -hmm. yeah i love the, it when people do that in the 3d one it's completely different start which i'm happy to be <laughs> showing later but okay, yeah they cool. They are now a little unsure on what to do, and uh, I, I find the whole conversation very cute in the entire game. It's, yeah. it's just, there is a lot of humor, which surprised me because I always keep hearing that they kind of introduced humor to Final Fantasy a little bit later, like Final Fantasy 7, 8 is... 5, has yeah. This, yeah. 5 was for but sure. <laughs> 5, that, yeah. But he, I, this game is so cute and so funny. Yeah. I um, love this game. I love this game. <laughs> We have, me too. It's actually really, really fun. It's a wild ride. I don't know how else to describe it other than it being just yeah. wild. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, that, that, I'm sold. <laughs> yeah, so this first cave here, the crystal cave, they happened to stumble into it. They fell down. And they're like, oh, no, we fell. How do we get out of here? And they're all arguing with each other. Like, hey, yeah. it's your fault. Like, no. Like, <laughs> so they're like, you know, they're the little goonies. kids. This is Goonies. Yeah, it's, it's Goonies. It's, <laughs> it's pretty that, much man. what it yeah. is. Yeah. It's so cool. It is. It is. Yeah. I think I have to turn down the music down a little bit in the game now because the, okay. uh, just a second. Okay, we're good. Which gives us a little chance to check out the configuration because this is play. also yeah, where I feel the two games are very different in terms of what they allow you to edit as well. It's, oh, really? Uh, mm -hmm. I, I think the Pixel Remaster really is doing a good job here. Yeah. Um, okay, we're going to get some treasure, shields. Ooh, there's also wind. Thing. There's Equipment. wind in this cave. Yeah, there's like little mist yes. uh, elements there going on. Well, there was a there's a famous cave in Colorado that too. I've been to called Cave of the Wind. Oh, really? And the wind blows in it a certain way. It makes a sound, kind of like a oh. like a train, uh, like. Ooh. That's awesome. Very cool. Um, oh, also, this is the first version of the 3D version that we got in the United States. Yes. Because the original oh, Final oh. Fantasy three never came out in U.S. Same with FF two. Right, we on, never got on it. NES, That's right. right. Obviously, and, but version, they, yeah. but they released Final Fantasy two in the Dawn of Souls version, which was Final Fantasy one and two combined on the Game Boy Advance. Yes, they did yeah. not bring the two D version of FF three to the Game Boy Advance. Until they just when? released the three DS version. So, so it was the three D version. So, so the until we got this pixel remaster, really, we did not have yeah. a two D version of Final Fantasy three. This is wow. the first time it's been not. available. Yeah, I did not know that. That's crazy. Yeah. You'd think they would have done that. And it's sooner. awesome, and everyone should play it. <laughs> yeah. It is wow. really it is, good. It's really, I, I like, really good. I love the 2D version. I, the 3D version is good, too. Yeah. Um, in particular, I like I like both, and I like the 3D version of Final Fantasy IV more than the yes, 2D version. Yes, I have still not played that. Next <laughs> yeah, time I play I like the game, I want to do the 3D. But I prefer, for I just love the colors here. I think they did a good job with the pixel remaster for the yeah. look of this game. Um, yeah, the 2D version for me is like, how Final Fantasy three should look. <laughs> yeah, it's great. I love it. Yeah, it has it has that feeling where you really feel like you are playing the original game. Yes, but but you know when you actually see how the original game looked like, it's like wildly different. But it doesn't give you that feeling that it's like fresh and renewed and overly modern. And yet at the same time, yeah. it feels very inviting and it looks good. It acts good. There's a lot of quality of life improvements. Uh, oh, over the 3D one that I yeah. from what I could tell from a little experience that I had with the 3D one I really like how this game kind of allows you to I don't know um, just a quick save for example it works a little bit differently so you can play it a little bit safer because when you quick save it doesn't actually take you back to the title screen you can just continue playing and have this little checkpoint uh, where wherever you want even yeah. though the game doesn't actually allow saving maybe at some points but also there is um an auto save as well so just in case oh, you okay, haven't nice. uh, maybe you have died somewhere which definitely didn't yeah. happen to me a few times <laughs> <laughs> of course not um, i would not yeah, i would never of course imagine not. Uh, yeah so it, it saves you a little bit there okay so nice. this is the introduction of a um, oh of we got some people colored water uh, oh yes Ooh. the odd colored water this has became kind of a uh, thing that they do in Final Fantasy too with the with the water that uh, will heal you water streams of water that'll do healing. Yep. I've had a couple people bring up in the chat here real quick that Final Fantasy two was also released on the PlayStation. The PlayStation one version, uh, mm -hmm. one and two were released together in those uh, yeah. re-releases on PlayStation one. So that also 
is where you could have played play, um, Final Fantasy 2. But Final Fantasy 3 did not come. Mm. Uh, the 2D version. I'll always drink it's, the odd it, colored water. That, Thanks, Poogie Bear. Because, because of that, <laughs> this is actually the first ever localization of the original, yes. like official localization of the official, original. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I guess because they did, they did have huh. to make a new one for 3D because it's a different game. Mm. Really, right. But, this is the Did that one have uh, voice acting? Mm -hmm. The 3D for the DS? I don't uh, think so. No, 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 no. No, okay. Did not. But yeah, they just so changed here, the script. If I do like a quick save, it will just make a checkpoint and I can continue. Which is really yep. nice. That's a really nice feature they have in these pixel remastered versions of yeah. the end for sure. You can also walk diagonally. Oh, good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, such a small thing, but that's yep. a big quality it is of life big, improvement. It, it really is. It really is. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, we got uh, Derek boss. asking, "What's the streamer's name?" She's cool. This is Absolute uh, Ezzy. Uh, we we you. have the. I'll, I'll put the yeah, link put in there again, again. Uh, so you can go check out her ah, stream the crystals. on Twitch. Here we are. Mm. Ooh, what's so there's going the link on? if you want to click on it and go check her out. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah, normally you will find me streaming a lot of Final Fantasy XIV, by the way, but I do uh, I do JRPGs every week for the last like year as well and the next thing oh, wow, we're nice. going to be covering is actually chrono trigger which i'm assuming what? a lot of you oh, actually dude. like to play but i've never Fuck. played chrono it trigger before. Is the best <laughs> game of all time <laughs> we're yeah, we're big fans I'm here looking forward to this so 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 much we're just <laughs> finishing octopath traveler 2 and then i'm going oh, to nice. chrono trigger so that's gonna be great but yeah let's let's get to the yeah. let's get to the actual fight what's going on and then yeah we have a little bit of a malicious force attacking us which is a turtle <laughs> okay all right, um, I've pinned I've pinned the uh, the link, guys. There, so if you wanna, the oh, link. Thank you, everybody, for the follows. Pinned. I'm sorry, I have the alerts muted, but I appreciate it very much. All uh, right, so I we've got I the boss of the now. cave here <laughs> against the land turtle. Yes, this is actually a very cozy first fight, at least in this version of the game. I found it in a <laughs> yeah. 3D one, and I had to do a little bit of grinding to get mm. through that turtle because you are actually starting all alone. Uh, you are meeting your characters in the 3D version. Kind of, sort of slowly throughout the first chapter, but yeah. here you have all four characters, so I feel like it's a little bit easier. I never yeah. would have guessed that that's a turtle. Yeah, I know. Until you, uh, you, you gotta, you gotta <laughs> land it's, it's the yellow parts, the face. And yes, the blue I parts, see it shell. now. Yeah, it's a little. But I didn't I agree. know what I was looking at. I agree. First. It's a, this one's a little hard to read as far well, as well. It's pixels. it's cool though. The designs of the enemies I'm yeah. noticing, at least oh, in this go. version, they're very creative and very creepy. Yep. Oh yeah, this game so uh, this game has some very creepy and dark moments, which is very yeah. interesting considering its lightheartedness and also <laughs> yeah. that the main cast is a like, bunch of kids. I really, at some <laughs> moments, this is why I feel like it's so <laughs> wild. At some moments, I felt like, what the heck is going on? Why did this person <laughs> jump into a burning furnace like in front of the bunch of kids? <laughs> what oh, is geez. going on? I love it. Well. All right. Crystal time. Let's go. Right, let's, let's get our job. Talk with the crystals rupee. here. Uh, it's worth five. Yep. <laughs> Blue rupee from <laughs> crystal, crystal shines, shines brightly. bright. You four have been chosen. Talking. Yeah, it actually speaks to them, the crystal. Yes. A little bit of a callback that. with FF14. It does that as well. Yeah. FF14's crystal it it. speaks to mm. the main character. Oh, that's cool. It is very similar, especially to the 3D version. There is like a little uh, crystal image that looks very much like the Final Fantasy XIV loading type of screen image. Yeah. Uh, crystal, it's very similar. It says the crystal um, will grant unimaginable strength. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. to that, I echo Han Solo. <laughs> I can imagine a lot. <laughs> Are you sure? I'll take you, you up on that. Handle. The party is enveloped in bright light. So the game is all about what? the balance of uh, everything, yep. dark and light mainly, but all Very about cool. the balance. Yes. Yeah, for those of you Classic who have not played uh, Final Fantasy III, there's actually a whole... Oh, maybe I'll just hold off on saying that. I, I, I it, <laughs> al it always bothers me. I can't talk about like 30-plus-year-old 30 30 old game. games. <laughs> but yes, uh, yeah. what, what you're saying is correct. <laughs> this game is really kind of centered on the balance between the light and the darkness. You can't have too much of one or the other. That kind of became a staple for a lot of Final Fantasy yeah. stories moving forward, too. Yep. And this this conversations are going on their own <laughs> right now. This is like an intro, sort of like a cutscene moment where I'm yes. not yeah. actually clicking Able anything. Able to click through, right. Uh, yeah. So but, what are you thinking about for the first uh, 
classes you're going to give to these characters. I mean, you only got four okay. now, but are you going to yes. you're going to split them all up, or you're going to have three warriors? How are you going to do it? Mm, that's a good question. I usually give them different jobs because I like to kind of level different things for different uh, options uh, for later. Even though these initial jobs that you get are not exactly the best, but they're good to start the game with. However, we get five jobs and we have four characters. So yes. Here, because we have a Yoshi P in party, I have to give him a black mage. Everyone who plays <laughs> the game will know that he has, like, he's the black mage player. So I think that red mage is actually gonna fall off um, from this. Uh, from this, we're gonna, we're gonna oh, see. <laughs> I love the so red you, mage I class. Usually, it's my favorite class in all of Final mage. Fantasy. I know, I know. <laughs> I usually go with red mage. If it was up to me, I would kick out the black mage from this party. But it's Yoshi P, and I have to okay, respect okay. the Lord and Savior. <laughs> That's uh, fine. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we're going to. We can actually equip them right now, I think. Um, and you'll see that it's really fun. They change their looks entirely. So. Uh, so let's see, uh, Mike, so Mike, that's... Mike, because you're a red mage, actually, I can give you a red mage. There want. we go. Make me a red mage. There that's what I want. <laughs> there we go. I think that's Heck yes. pretty suitable. Get the feather. Get the... Optimal gear. Yeah. Because yes. I'm not going to go into that right the, now. Uh, the, um, what do you call it? Yeah. The um, master of none, the jack of all trades, yeah. the yes, yes. Good, yeah. good at everything, but not master of nothing yes, class. That's pretty much it. Um, I can sympathize with that a lot as well. <laughs> uh, okay, so yep. Kason, what do you want to be out of the jobs? We have a warrior, monk, white mage, black mage, and a red mage. You know you have to make me the monk. The monk. All right. The monk. You have no Hunch, choice. Punchy boy. <laughs> boy. All right, let's go. And then Torgal. Torgal, I Drop think we covered Torgal monastery. in a, a blanket. I, last time we played, I, I gave um, one character my dog's name, and he... And he was a white mage the entire freaking game. <laughs> so I think the Torgal needs to be covered <laughs> in a blanket. Dogs deserve such a treatment. So I, I, I agree. Okay, there so we go. got a red mage, a monk, and a, a white mage, it seems, right? Yep, and then yes. a black mage <laughs> for Yoshi. <laughs> yes. So the we're going party. all uh, all sacred <laughs> cool. powers here. No fighter, no warrior. Sweet. Yep. Well, I love monk, it. Is, monk is uh, quite yeah, a physical fighter. It's yes, true, because monk can become a thief, that, right? Yeah. Is that... Uh, What's up? Monk can become a thief. Can, no, no, the thief class you'll get later. Oh, okay, I know, but yeah, so I, it's kind of a separate thing. You don't. It technically becomes black belt, but it's not yes. really that ah, streamlined in this of. game. You can yeah, kind yeah. of, uh, kind of like snooze out on the fact that some jobs are basically the upgrades for the previous jobs, which right. the game doesn't really mm. tell you itself. Oh, other it than doesn't. Maybe in how it looks That's just like. what I've heard. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there are some jobs where you can tell, oh, this is this is uh, looking like a bit of a better looking black mage. So that's probably yeah. an upgrade, but it doesn't really <laughs> tell you that. So you have to kind of figure it out on your okay. own. Yeah, the thief right, is, is, a, is a starter class, and that would upgrade to the ninja. Eventually. To the ninja. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. gotcha. All right, All right so let's, let's leave the cave here and head back to Ur to tell our adopted parents mm -hmm. that we're going to leave to save the world as six-year-olds yep. or whatever we are. <laughs> exactly. Uh, <laughs> and they'll say, funny. sure, kid. Got to go to Ur of, the, Ur of the Cold Days. Ur if you the... talk to people... Uh, just regularly in the town there they already know that you're leaving which i found always very funny because we are just going to have a conversation <laughs> with our with our adopted father by the way in this Ooh, game adopted. you have these two different types of waters which is something to keep in mind um one that restores your hp and mp and then the other that actually revives your characters. It's not the same thing. So it's yes. something that you need to keep in mind while you're leveling, because if you have someone dead and you go to restore just HP and MP, it's not actually going to work well, <laughs> until you, know, you the, raise. This is, okay, so the one on the left is had a mm. white gleam to it. The one on the right didn't? Yes. Uh, this it's a sounds different like the, sign. Uh, yeah, right. there's like a little sign up here. Yeah. Uh, which, oh, the sign. This, okay. This, this sign, this like icon here, is uh, the okay. Okay, so that one has it as well. Yeah. I see. I so you got the water, the waters of death, and the waters of life. I sort totally of. <laughs> understand it. <laughs> All right. That's old so fairy tale is, stuff. I love it. Uh, we. This is Topapa. Our okay, topapa. so we're gonna actually step away from FF3 now mm -hmm. and switch over to FF4. Yeah. That so uh, keep going, Ezzy. Yeah. Uh, if it, people want to continue following her stream, we got the message pinned here for the link. So go check her out, follow her on Twitch, and Thank she'll you. continue we to play FF3 continue. throughout the day. Yes, we will continue. Okay. And, late, and in about halfway, we're going to 
check out the 3D version for a little bit, see how it differs at the beginning. And then for the nice. like later portions, I prepared some chapters that we're going to be hopping in. I plan to like stop the stream with the with the actual final gauntlet dungeon. It's, it should be fun. Um, okay. Hopefully, hopefully we finish it. <laughs> but yeah, yeah it okay. Sounds uh, great. Good luck with the rest of the stream, guys. I'll yep. talk to you hey, later. Hey, thank you. We will revisit with you a little bit later today. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. All right. Bye. See you. See you. Okay, so now we're switching over to Final Fantasy IV. And we Ooh. have uh, Big Bad Timber, who is going to be <laughs> uh, streaming with us. Are you here with us now, Timber? I am. Can you hear me? Yes. Have you sent me? You've sent me the link to your stream, haven't you? Let me check uh, again. I may have not. <laughs> Why don't you send it to me real quick so, yeah, so I can get it up? Of course. And no then problem. Uh, we'll switch on over to uh, Final Just Fantasy give me one IV. One second. Let me see. So, Final Fantasy IV. Kaysen has played this one a little bit. Did you beat I this beat game it. Yet? I beat it. Oh, okay, game. yeah. Yeah. Which I, version did you uh, beat? SNES. The SNES version. Yes. The worst version. <laughs> hey, I, I liked it, but I was a little bit curious as to why you thought the game was so so incredibly yeah, good. Yeah, because I love that game. Yes, it's very good. I love four. Um, but now I really want to play the DS version. Now that, mm -hmm. uh, oh, you're playing. Oh, I. This see. is Final Fantasy IV music oh. now that we've got. Going on in the background. Good, good. This okay. is the good stuff. Oh man, it's great. I, think, <laughs> I love this song. <laughs> well, yeah, this is again the the theme, theme of Final Fantasy, it which was ahead and on our way in yeah. the original game, right? But it sort of became the main theme. But this version of it's really good. The, yeah. the one that they use in Final Fantasy IV, which is kind of on its, it has sort of its introduction, which we'll see. But then after. Yeah. Kane and Cecil leave. There's like a, a screen that scrolls some text talking yeah. about their adventure coming up, a little bit like Final yes. Fantasy One, actually. Oh yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And tells you know about and this music's playing. Yeah, and this music's playing, just pumping it. you up, getting you ready exactly. for that, getting you ready for the adventure. Okay, did you send me the link? Uh, yeah, I sent it over yeah. in Discord. Oh, it's it's in this chat. Okay, here we go. All right, here, let me get it. Let me put it You're, in the chat. No, 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 no. I've got oh, okay. it. I've got it now. You're good. You are all good. <laughs> let me. Got multiple Minimize screens that. up trying to like <laughs> handle all this. You're good, man. <laughs> okay, let's pull this over here. Let's do that and let's play and get it live. Okay, I think we're good. So now I'm just gonna quickly switch over to your stream. There we are. What's up? Awesome. Thank you guys for having me on. And uh, you, by the way, you don't have to call me by my ridiculous handle. That was just a joke name for the. <laughs> You're <YouTube> good. <laughs> what would you like us to call you? <laughs> uh, Mike is. Fine. I'm a Mike as well. Mike. Okay, course, we got two course. Mikes. <laughs> Greatest name of all time, the goat. It is. Mike. It yes. And uh, I was telling uh, uh, Mike before that I was a viewer of the Warrior Alaska, all the way back to the Warrior yeah, Alaska. Yeah, go. So I, right. couldn't, I couldn't come up with a better uh, nickname than that. So that that's that's awesome. <laughs> um, Alaska was tops. Yep. It is for sure, for sure. That was um, Landon. Landon's the one who came up with that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Was, oh, that's right. It was on. It was on pool, right? Yes, 3D virtual pool. 3D virtual pool. Yeah, Alaska. 1998. In, right? <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's how we just typed random numbers on the keyboard. Yeah. And <laughs> that was how we got Lamiximilov. Yep. All those names. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> yeah, all that's Actually, Lamiximilov was Harvest Moon 64. Oh, you're I right. I think that's where that one you're came right. from. You're right. Yep. <laughs> all right, Mike. Let's, uh, let's go ahead all and right. get started with the game here. Absolutely. So I'll play. So I've got multiple versions, actually, just to show that I'm not a oh, poser. Cool. I'm actually playing. <laughs> I was going to say Final Tree. Fantasy 2, huh? Yep. This is 2 playing on. Uh, oh, you've Harry got Rest the original Street. hardware. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, nice. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. And then this is 3 right here. And then I'm sure we're going to get into this uh, very quickly, actually, right here. Here's an old one right here. If you can see nice. it, Chrono Trigger. Um, so these are my original copies. And I've got every version of the game. Actually, I've got uh, multiple save. I actually found my 2010 save file for the PSP version, the complete collection, which I love, by the way. That might be, I don't know, I'm split between the 3DS and I'm going to play the PC version as well. I've got multiple save points there um, okay. during the day as well. Um, but yeah, the voice acting is great. I, I, well, the acting's is okay. Um, the translation is great, I think, by Slattery, right, Mike? Um, if I'm not yes. mistaken. Oh, Slattery. Yes, 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 yes. And, um, uh, just, 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 just real quick, just to let people know in the chat, we've got a, a little bit more of a delay here. Um, so if you if you want to go to the link that I put in the the chat to Mike's actual stream, go watch it there. Um, 
uh, and then maybe just have this one that you're listening to or whatever, because uh, he's just a little bit behind us, more so than the last couple that we've had. So he's got a delay from when he's talking and you're hearing him to what we're seeing on the screen, just so you know. All right, go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry about that, guys. <laughs> no, it's, oh, it's, it's not your good. fault. It's, it's my fault. I, I paused it on accident, and so I've, I've been trying to get it to go back to being live again, so it's not your fault. <laughs> um, and just to, ca to, you know, I think we're going to talk about this. I think I this think is... probably control, refresh the page. I'm going to refresh the page. Do control oh, okay. shift. Yeah, no worries. R. I'll wait. Okay, that's fine. Okay, I'm refreshing now. There we go. We should be caught should up. should be better. Go we'll ahead. We'll see. All right. <laughs> So let's let's get started. All right, uh, I'm gonna start a new game right here. Yep. Um, and this is the like I was saying, this is the original version. Um, and I've got multiple ver. This is like, guys, this is like I think you guys will agree, one of the yeah. coolest openings ever. I love it. Oh, I do. I like, freaking love it with the airship and all that. I do like the opening. And maybe one of the most shocking kind of opening sequences, I would say. You know, because yeah. I played it when I was a kid. This is my first Final Fantasy game ever. Bought it at KB Toys in 1991 nice. when it came KB out. KB nice. Toys. <laughs> KB Toys. Very um, nice. My mom picked it out right and I was like, what is that? Um, so, uh, God, this looks so good still. Um, Man, we got to have the Red Wings does. for this. Look at that. We can't have the Final Fantasy theme. We need Red Wings. Where's my Red Wings theme? <laughs> no, um, Red Wings. Come on. Maybe it's in the There you go. Look at that. I need my Red Wings. Red Wings, where are you? There it is. Okay. This is the music we want. So this, you know, this game is just really, really special to me. Um, it, I, I, if anyone likes basically current Final Fantasy or even, you know, the PS1 era, you can thank this game. If you love your yeah. melodrama, your multiple yep. third act twists. Oh, yeah. Yep. Multiple deaths and resurrections. <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> yep. you know, that one can be a little... <laughs> A uh, huge sci-fi twist, maybe in the third act, possibly. Yep. <laughs> um, great stuff. That comes out of nowhere. I, I still love yeah. it. I mean, it's great. You know, you can thank this game. And definitely, you know, Nobuo Omatsu scored this game. I mean, this is when you, you he started reaching, I think, GOAT status, right? I mean, it yeah. was just phenomenal. I mean, I, when, I, when I was a kid and I good. heard this, I, what is this? Like, this whole opening was, a, was just incredible. I, I, and I'm a big fan yeah. of film. So the way yeah. they, oh, like... Cool. With with like you know the it was it the mode what do they call it the mode mode seven, seven? mode seven mode seven, seven yeah. yeah in in, in uh, on the Super Nintendo I mean I like you're gonna see Cecil right here after you know he's conflicted here and it, just really complex characters mm -hmm. I mean it's just really really good um, and then I'm gonna steal your phrase um, one of the you know lead I believe the lead designer right and the writer scenario writer Takashi um, Tokita yeah Takashi Takita a beast. One he's of the one hundred percent beast. He is at square. He's amazing. <laughs> that he is he is a, an extremely underrated um, developer uh, yeah. of yeah. of these early Final Fantasy games. The work that he did, and he actually had a theater background. We talked about this oh, a little right. bit in our FF Six podcast. Six, yeah, but uh, I think a lot of that influence came through here with the way you, you talk about the melodrama, but just the 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 character writing, the drama of the story. They wanted yeah. to ramp that up. Uh, Sakaguchi had been sort of mentored by, um, I forget his name, but he was like basically the guy, uh, Shonen Jump magazine. Oh, yeah. He was, he had sort of gone to him and, and been mentored on how to improve his storytelling. Oh, and so this cool. was the game where they really wanted Mike to ramp that up. Yeah. Oh, there was switch back. Yeah, to that. that was Mike Wazowski. <laughs> Whoops. Oh, he's dead. You can see Soul's a beast. Well, look at that. <laughs> But yeah, the, the theater influence, um, on top of the fact that, like I was saying back in FF1, right, yeah. where they kind of wanted to make it look a little bit like a diorama, like the world is a diorama, yeah. a little miniature yes. world. You yep. can kind of think of these 2D Final Fantasy games, even the PlayStation 1 Final Fantasy games, actually, yeah. as like little tiny stage plays with little tiny characters. Yeah. Um, and so the way that they... The, like the the quote unquote acting is a little bit over the top because sure. just like on the stage you have to do that because they can't the people in the back row right. they can't see the facial expressions yeah, necessarily the and so you've got to be really big with yeah. the way that you animate the characters so that their emotions are understood yeah. um and so you get a lot more of that in Final Fantasy 5 and 6 when they started to do a lot more animations than they did mm -hmm. here 
but you could start to see some of those theatrical influences that really um, kind of tied together how the series was presented all the way through the end of the PlayStation 1 era, mm -hmm. before we got into the PlayStation 2 and they had, had more control of the camera and started making them a little bit more cinematic. Mm. Now, the I love uh, this opening scene here with uh, with the uh, King of Baron. This is so cool. Cecil is feeling conflicted about what he was made to do. He yep. went and stole a crystal from Missidia. Yeah. We are not playing the good guys at the beginning of this one. Well, I love at the beginning uh, while they're on the airship. He said, "How how could you steal a crystal? Steal crystals from poor people? Something yep. like that." Yep. Yep. And I've actually got if if you know just to kind of like reiterate how much I mean I, mm. I love Takashi Takeda. Um, I've got I'm actually editing. Uh, if anyone's enjoying li the Live Alive release, oh um, yes, oh that was yes. the first game he ever directed, and the second game he directed was believe it or not Chrono Trigger. Oh, um, how about that? And one of my absolute favorites on the PS One. If you guys ever talk about it on a podcast, Parasite Eve, like, extremely. You know, we game. we have gotten a lot of uh, people who really like that particular game. Mm -hmm. I'll bet you it's got a good soundtrack. Oh, really good. Oh yeah. my really god, good. yeah. Teaming up. I haven't with played it though. Mm -hmm. that, that's a game that could definitely be in the rotation of the cover it on the podcast for sure it, yeah. it, it is so underrated because i don't think it's based off of a japanese book i believe oh, really? uh, and a film as well and it's kind nice. of set as a sequel it has a lot of lineage to final fantasy 7 actually because final fantasy 7 was supposed to be a detective story uh yes, oh, that's right yes, yep. uh, originally mm -hmm. yeah and here's okay. his lover rosa so yep Oh, you're a little bit further ahead of us ahead. here. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, you're good. So you, you've, he's moved up here to uh, the top of the top of the tower. I I love the scene coming up after this one too, where Kane and um, Cecil kind of like team up to go together. Yeah. yeah, it's good stuff. Yeah. So here's Rosa. Cecil, what's wrong? Why won't you talk to me? <laughs> he feels like. He's not worthy of her love because mm. of what he's done. Yep. And there's a bit of a love triangle in this game, too, as well. Yes, his friend Kane is also yeah. in love with Rosa. That's the best kind of love triangle, right? Your best friend in love <laughs> with the same girl. <laughs> <sighs> Classic. It's tough. It's tough. I think many of us have been there before. Yep. All right. Uh, so we're gonna see uh, we're gonna see Sid here in just a minute. I forgot to bring up that Sid, as a recurring character, was actually first introduced in Final Fantasy II. Oh, really? Final Fantasy II. But this is the version of Sid in this game. He's one of my favorite Sids, actually. I love the big, bushy <laughs> like the red beard. Deer, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's pretty funny. Freaking dope. There will be a Sid in Final Fantasy XVI. There will. There will. Can I just say, I mean, I'm really happy people are enjoying that, by the way, the demo. And I think it's boosted. Good. It's definitely helped boost the sales, um, which mm -hmm. is great. The pre-orders uh, are yeah. way up. You know, I'm a... It's cool. It's good. Most of my content is, you know, from software related uh, stuff. So I do a lot of walkthrough lore throughs. Uh, and oh, it's nice. Some, some of my mm. favorite. I mean, I've got platinum lore runs of... Uh, I'm trying to remember where the heck his bedroom is. Um, Up the tower <laughs> there. Uh, right, just right. Go straight from there. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Other room. Yeah. He, well, he's, <laughs> he's way ahead of you. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Are you, did you figure it out now? Are you... I think so. We're seeing you in the dungeon here, so... <laughs> yep, I got it. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm not really happy with the combat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, with FF16? Oh, with FF16's yeah, combat. I love Dragon's Dogma, and I dug Devil May Good. Cry 5. Oh, you know? cool. Right up your um, alley, yeah. And I'm like, I'm, I don't say I'm an expert, you know, Souls player, but I, I, lo I love the parrying and, you know, the From yeah. Software games. And yeah. I, I was curious I, about that, actually. I was wondering yeah. if, they were going to, if they were going to introduce a block mechanic at some point in Final Fantasy 16. So, I, I, maybe. here's my problem with that. <laughs> they do, but it's... Well, they do. It's with the um, I, uh, icon uh, Titan, um, and if you play oh. that, that challenge, you can do that. But the problem is the parry button's the attack button. Oh, really? So 
It's terrible. So you oh, have so it's to, just like, timing. It's hmm. timing. It's basically it, it's the square button on the. You just PS5. attack at the same time you're getting attacked. Oh my gosh! And I mm. really do not like it, and I just hate because I'm a pretty positive person. But it's just like, guys, <laughs> this is not good. I, I disagree <laughs> with this so much. <laughs> oh man, that's too bad. Yeah, I, I I think I had done that a couple of times in my playthrough of the um, I, probably on accident actually on my playthrough of the demo where I. Was, I, I just somehow parried. And I was like, wait, how'd I do that? <laughs> it's probably just because I was mashing X and I happened to hit it at the right time. Not X know, square. It yeah. happened to hit it at the right time. But Yeah, so here this I'm scene. I'm just a dark knight play, with no courage to disobey should, his majesty. I should play theme of love for this one. Now, the theme of love, speaking about uh, the goat status of... Uh, there it is. There it is. The goat status for... <coughs> Nobu Ematsu. I believe that this music was used as curriculum in a lot of Japanese schools for music class. Oh, no way. This song, this, this yeah. song, yeah, was actually adopted in a lot of school curriculums for music classes in Japan. That's how famous it's Nobu Ematsu yeah. has become in his own country as, as far as a, comp, a composer. Pretty crazy. He is very good. I love this scene coming up, too, where... Uh, Kane and in the Kane. 3D version especially it's so cool yeah. as they're like marching down towards each other yeah. it's like alright like you have kind of like a you have my axe sort of scene yeah. right? like Our going out together alright so now we're going to have to go back to the prologue here music as they head out Ba, 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 ba. Here you go, and this is the <laughs> this song. I love this song. You this see is the, the two moons. This is the scroll. You were the crawl. You yes, were talking about. Yes, the crawl. About. And um, this uh, images like this give you such a sense of adventure. Yes, it's love so it. cool. I love the FF one. Yep, <coughs> one maybe a little bit more though because you could see the characters kind of right. silhouetted. Uh, but showing up to this image after playing the game for a bit and then hitting an image like this, mm -hmm. seeing the vast... But this image will stay with you th through the rest of the game because you don't see anything like this again. I know. And so, like, you just keep it in mind. And it, I don't know, for whatever reason, them limiting your exposure to that images image. like this yeah. um, helps maximize the yes. sense of adventure yes. and wonder and mystery I agree of with what's that. happening. Totally and that's that. what you just can't do that in modern games. I, I think it's impossible almost unless you yeah. want to go back to just like, <laughs> you know, the way games used to be. Yeah. But, you know, keeping a lot of it in people's heads instead yeah. of always displayed right before them. There's a lot less of a sense of awe when you're just seeing it in front of you all the time. Yep. I, I agree with that. Yeah. Very cool. So they're heading out together. Why do the monsters the keep increasing? Uh, this is where we're going to step away from FF4. Mike is going to continue. Sounds if you good. want to keep watching FF4, our, we have uh, his link pinned. So go check him out. We're going to move over to Final Fantasy V now, though. The crystal was shedding its light <laughs> silently. I love V too. That's great. I yeah, can't wait to Final Fantasy V. I'm going to pull up the next stream. <laughs> does the moon have a moon? <laughs> There's two moons. Well, but does the moon have yeah. a moon? It looks like the moon was no, it's a just moon a smaller for the moon. moon. But... Okay. The so moon close. is important, Ooh, very, yeah. very important well, to I the do. story I, of this I game. Kind of remember some and of that, uh, yeah. they've got a little bit of that in Final Fantasy 16 as well. The moon, they show the moon a lot in Final Fantasy 16 with the little well, red star noticed. next to it. I have the yeah. lineage of uh, Cecil. Am I yeah. right about that? Maybe. Ooh. We'll see. But uh, <laughs> we talk a lot about that in our podcast that's coming out this week. So, yeah, we do. all right, Mike, uh, we're going to take off now. Thanks for joining us. Um, we'll Thank come you. back to you a little bit later. Uh, yeah, I'll so switch either to the PSP or uh, or uh, the 3D version. <laughs> okay, great. Show off. Sounds Show great. off. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Take care, guys. Hey, All thanks. right. Thanks, Talk Mike. to you again soon. All righty. All right. We're going to get WP up here. Okay. Hello. What's up? WP. Hey. Howdy. Now, do, how do you want us to refer to you? WP Fine, or do you want us to go by a different name? Uh, WP's Fine. You can call me by my first name. Uh, Trevor, as well, if you want to. Trevor. Um, okay. I yeah. like Trevor. Trevor's a good name. Trev. Yeah. How's it going? Or Ver. We're playing yeah, Final Trev, Fantasy Trev, yeah. V. <laughs> yeah. Now, I believe I have mm. your stream. No, I don't. Yeah. Can you give me your uh, stream link? Oh, yeah, I think, I think you sent I, it to me yesterday. Let night. me go check. Yeah. Let me go check that out. Yeah. I've got it right. So is, oh my gosh, I love this thing. song. This is oh, yeah. so good. Ba, ba, yeah, I got the uh, 
I also have the Pixel Remaster that I'll be playing. Um, oh, nice. Oh, nice. Fantastic. So Night Fries TV. Very good. Yeah, okay, here we my, are. We've got your stream up. Yeah. Let me uh, switch over to that, and then let me get the link and pin it in our chat so people can come check you out. Gosh, yeah, this, this is, song is so good. Oh, oh yeah, my this goodness, really it's good. Fan. This is the ahead of, uh, on our way of Final Fantasy V. Of five. Yeah, mm -hmm. which is one of my favorite pieces from the entire series. It's fantastic. Okay, everybody, here is the link to Trevor's stream. And I'm going to pin that. There you go. Okay, so Final Fantasy V. Yeah, tell I us, tell us, tell us about, way. tell it's us about why you're chicken. passionate about this game. Yeah, yeah there's the choke. I like that Look design at that. too. That's cool. Yeah, man. That's that's really cool. Sweet. We got another weird it's a one muscular right here. Chocobo. Oh yeah, that one looks a. Chocobos. That's crazy, man. I love yeah. Amano's designs so much. I wish they would make a Final yeah. Fantasy that actually had Amano's designs, like His faithfully actual artwork. Recreated yeah, in the that game. would be cool. That would yeah. be awesome. He, it's it's so Japanese too. It evokes such a sense of of the Far East. Very cool. So, um, but yeah, I, I love this game. Um, I, I'll show off right here. You know, we got the we got the the pixel remaster one right here. We got there it is. Uh, oh yeah, we got know, which word is that the PS five? This is or? the Switch. This the is Switch, the Switch version. version with okay. the, oh, cool. the collector's edition little lenticular. Nice. On it. Um, Very nice. We got the the Game Boy Advance version here. Um, nice. First version that I played here with the incredibly long load times. There you go. <laughs> yeah. The so PS1 uh, version. Yeah, we got it. Anthology. Uh, we got it here loaded on the phone if you want. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> got all the versions. I got it on <laughs> Steam too. Um, Man, I thought Mike nice. was a show off. Yeah, yeah I thought I had all the versions. I don't. <laughs> That's so yeah. cool, man. That's so cool. So this so was I've, a game that was, unlike FF3, this one was localized multiple different times. This one... Um, was actually first localized on PlayStation 1. So we did not get the Super Nintendo version of this game. But it came to the PS1 in that version he just showed. Yeah. Um, whereas 3 did not. 3 did not. So, but this did yeah, get an official... Three. Yeah, they skipped 3. Yeah. Until the 3DS version came out. But. So this dragon here, it's really cool looking. Um, and then it's wrapping its tail around the around letter Around the letter A. Isn't that Ooh. sweet? Very cool. <laughs> I, I am, I'm a sucker dragon for show. dragons. I think dragons are yep. the coolest. Yeah, so yeah. you ready to start a new game? Yeah, we're going to start here. We'll see that dragon basically right away. Yep. I do remember some, some of the beginning of this game. Yes, I love the intro it's of this been, one too. It's been too long. The yeah. intro of this game isn't as like necessarily punchy or exciting, but there's just yeah. a real sense, like an ominous sense that the world is like about to die. Uh, and they're just trying to figure out like what is happening, right? Oh, that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you got this first shot here. Uh, it's, it looks King really of good. Tycoon is going to try to find out what is wrong with the crystal mm -hmm. of the wind because the wind has died all around the world. There is no wind at all. Wind is spirit, yeah. by the way. Mm. So, I think you also should note it that um, it starts at dawn breath. And it, as the sun rises here. Yes. Right? yes. Very nice. Very good. Hold it there. Um, as part of the story, <laughs> uh, not that you know this yet, but it's there's Dawn Warriors, which I don't think come up in any other game. Interesting. Uh, so that's a take on Warrior of the Light, right? But yep. it's specific yes. to the, the rising of the sun. Yes. Very mm -hmm. cool. And I don't control this intro either. This is, uh, they control all of the text that oh, goes okay. through here. So they really not, wanted King Tycoon. Them. Tycoon. Now yeah. there's a word that has, a, a well, that's meaning is a very specific in America. Mm -hmm. I'm surprised they didn't change that. It is a Japanese word, by the way. Tycoon. Yes, uh, but what it's come to mean for the English is just like a tycoon, right? It's not yep. exactly the most positive thing. Right? Um, roller coasters, you know, that's what they. Yeah, roller yeah, coaster tycoon. Roller that's where I first heard that word. That's it. <laughs> I'm just talking like you know a rich Scrooge McDuck. He's a tycoon, right? That's you know. Yep. So here's yep. Lena, the daughter of the king. Here, yeah. worried about her father as he heads out to find out what. No on big. Earth he's is just wrong. he's just jumping on a dragon. Yeah, jump on his wyvern and his dragon. So mm -hmm. they're showing, they're showing that uh, dragons are normal here, yep. and that here just like Tycoon. How to Train Your Dragon Two, <laughs> they live harmoniously with the humans. With the humans, I wish we got more of that in Final Fantasy. Dragons are sweet. Yeah, look at the yeah. gargoyles on the castle too. I love it. They basically only get Bahamut, but you know, <laughs> yeah, Bahamut's uh, basically the one you get. 
Yeah. yeah. Or sorry, it's not sixteen. Fourteen will do. Does a lot. I mean, they have that whole expansion with dragons. So. With uh, I haven't started it yet, but that's the next mm. uh, expansion. I'm going to start Heaven's Ward. That's nice. Okay, that's so nice we got to is this? We got a ship out here in okay. the ocean. And it's obviously you know got sails and they can't yes, move. Yes, but their mast no is down. Yeah, yeah. There's which no wind. Which means the the planet is not breathing. Yep. Right. Mm -hmm. it means the planet's going to die. And we got uh, Gallif. We'll meet him in a minute. Yeah, it's one of the big things about Father. this game too. Like like three, it really wants to get you with all four party members very yeah. fast. They're like, we want you to be playing this game with your party and experimenting uh, as fast as possible. Uh, Mike is a fan of that. I am. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fan of getting started with the game ASAP. What in the yeah. blazes? I so, think someone in the chat just brought up. I think this was the last game that had like crystal chambers like this. Yeah. Um, yeah maybe so. until the new game that's coming out, maybe we'll have them. But oh, the crystals broke. are breaking Shoot. around the world. Yeah. You'll see them very briefly in uh, 12 in some of their intros where they're fighting. You see like mages around crystals and that um, as like a chamber. But that's the one. That's the last one I could think of. Okay. Mm. I'm just going to say this game looks really cool. It's awesome. <laughs> it looks really good. It's really good. You know. I would, if were I to play this game now, <laughs> I would probably do a pixel remaster. Yeah, um, it's good. I think they, the pixel uh, remastered versions are great, particularly, like I said, if you mod them a little bit. If you bit, mod them and so that the text boxes get them look to really your great. liking. Yeah. But which you can't necessarily do on the console version, yeah. so that's the one downside. Oh, Meteor. Yeah, but it does let us now put in the pixel font, which is really nice on these yes. versions. And yes. There's a lot of like little subtle changes to a lot of uh, scenes where they've added, you know, particle effects, as you saw in the crystal. Mm -hmm. There's like a bunch. Yeah. They'll add, I've noticed, because I was just playing through this to get a little further, they've tightened up a couple scenes where you don't have to spend as long um, doing some things, and just like a lot of little minor tweaks that aren't that big of a deal to most people, but you know, oh, they really yeah. want me to know how to play this game, I guess. Sure. <laughs> yep, you, you got to make sure that you know what you're doing. Right? Yeah, <laughs> and the little you got to shake your butt. You start off real. Early. <laughs> I love that <laughs> I love animation. It. I love it. Man. I love that chocobo <laughs> animation. It's yeah. fantastic. Yeah. So uh, Bart's is our yeah. main character here, but in the uh, it, there was a little bit of confusion, as can be the case between Japanese and English sometimes. So uh, I think it was an unofficial translation, which was the f the only way that. American players could play Final Fantasy V for a while, but it was translated as butts instead Absolutely. of Barts, and so that's become a lot of people's preferred nomenclature <laughs> for the you character, me included. Yeah. Yes, you're going to name him Butts Good. That's how it should be. All right, so you got to fight off the goblins. Mm-hmm. And they've fixed, I mean, a big controversy in this game when they released it on mobile and those uh, weird versions is the weird tiling that will happen on this uh, meteor, but does not happen here. Yep. A lot of little things that, uh, you know, fans of the originals will notice, but I think overall they did a pretty decent job with these pixel remasters. I think the music alone makes them worth it. All right, so we're going to get the rename. Yes. To Butts. Well, that's what I'm talking about. That's yeah, the real yeah. name. Yeah. The real name for the character, Butts. You cannot play Final Fantasy correctly, Final Fantasy V correctly, without naming him Butts. No, I have mm -hmm. to ask. Really? Yes. Okay. Really, okay. Truly. I just, if I you just, don't play I, it, if you don't, ask. if you don't play it by naming the character Butts, you're not really playing the no, game. No, like, right. really, is that his actual no, name? No, no, Barts. It was oh, supposed to be Barts. Oh, I get the joke. Yes. I get it. Yes. I get it. Yes. It. yes. It, was, it was in an unofficial translation. The, the person who translated it for, like, emulated versions, I think, translated it as Butts. And so a lot of people thought that was the character's name. Man, uh, localization used to be very difficult. <laughs> I know. So this I is the do, meteor that I fell. I remember seeing this in the um, original version of the game. And yes. I love pixel art. I really do. I love the old original style. Something about this is giving me a grander feel yeah. for, yeah. for I, the game. Well, you got, you got all that atmosphere, man. Look at the atmosphere Yeah, the atmosphere, scrolling. the trees. I don't know. <laughs> it looks very nice. Out of that. This, uh, this is a big leap forward for this game, too, in terms of what they did with showing emotion is they started doing text bubbles and stuff uh, specifically in this game as well where they're like yeah. we want more emotion on our characters but we're still using mm -hmm. the same size so we started adding yep. these little question marks and things so we can help convey 
the emotion or what they're feeling more uh, in a broader sense. Yep. So um, it's been mentioned in our chat a couple of times, uh, but some of the developers for FF16, the high lead developers, mm-hmm. um, were interviewed and asked what their favorite Final Fantasy games yep. were. And for two of the three, including the director, I believe, um, Final Fantasy V yep. uh, was on the list of yep. the top three. It was either one of the first games they worked on as developers at the company. Ah, of course. Or one of the first games, RPGs that they, that they played. Yeah. And so there's a lot of respect for this game among developers of FF16. Which is great, especially in Japan. This game didn't really come to America for a while. Yeah, it right? took a long time. Yep. <laughs> um, another thing to note about this game, it was the first one in which Yoshinori Kitase, who is a big lead at Square uh. Enix now, uh, was involved in cutscene direction, uh, uh, just yes. event scene direction. He and uh, Sakaguchi have some great quotes that uh, I, I have in the script that I'm writing for the FF5 um, remade retrospective, uh, where they were sort of competitive in a friendly way against yeah. each other, where they would try to outdo each other between scene to scene to make it like more awesome or more emotional or whatever. That's that's a good thing to have. Uh, there's yes. a toxic way to do that. There's a toxic way to do it. But <laughs> some, they... some CEOs will try to foster <laughs> like division and get people to are afraid of their for losing their jobs yes. to like compete with each other. Yep. Uh, but there's a much better, more amiable way to do it. Yes. And that's it, right? When you're creative and you're just kind of pushing yourself. Yes. I love that. Yes. And so uh, this is where cutscene direction, as, uh, as you were saying, uh, Trevor, yeah. um, started to really go to a next level because they had a lot of emotes that they made, a lot of different animations. Um, and and uh, it's yeah. all on a game that, I mean... If you read also develop, uh, I mean, this is the tale as old as time for uh, games coming up. Is just they ran running out of memory, running out of space, and like yep. them adding having jobs for um, lots of characters, um, uh, five, uh, and like just like all that space taken up, along with the emotion, extra expression stuff that they add in there. Like they're really pushing at the time what they could do yeah. uh, on the system and how much they had to spend to even put it on a cart, really. Yeah, I love that bug eye emote we just saw. You just saw it yeah, briefly just saw it again when he got thrown off the chocobo. Ah. I freaking love that. They use that a lot in Chrono Trigger too. It's like one of my favorite emotes from these Super Nintendo RPGs that SquareSoft made. They yeah. just get so surprised, like yes, <laughs> <laughs> and their eyes just get huge. Once again, talking about a stage play, right? Yeah, you gotta yep. you gotta overact for the people on the back. Yep, that's <sighs> totally the feel that these games gave off. Was like they were little miniature stage plays, and I loved mm-hmm. that aspect to them. All right, so we got some monsters we're fighting as the Earth is Bunch of goblins. opening up a little bit. Mm-hmm. Goblins Reacting will make an appearance the, in Final Fantasy sixteen. Yeah, to the loss of the crystal. And you'll see this quite a bit as the game moves Ooh. on, as the world reacting to the loss of the crystals. Mm-hmm. So, so mm-hmm. a very similar setup to Final Fantasy three, actually. So Final Fantasy four went in a really different direction with the story. The crystal motif was still there. But Final Fantasy 3 and 5 are much more similar in terms of their setups and their yeah. game mechanics, too. This game has the job system, the class system, uh, class changing, similarly to Final Fantasy 3. A lot of people feel it was more perfected here. And a mm-hmm. lot of the mainstay jobs that like are famous Final Fantasy jobs were kind of like solidified in mm-hmm. this version. Or started here. Blue Mage, I think, is the yep, first time. Yeah, Blue Mage. This is the first time we got Blue Mage. That's uh, right. Of course. And so that's like a, I, I'd say that's one of the iconic, you know, Final Fantasy jobs is that blue mage. Mm-hmm. It doesn't always show up or it shows up kind of mixed with other things, but, you know, enemy skill is always there, you know, or yep. I think, yep. uh, Quistis, Quistitisu, uh, <laughs> Quistitisu. yeah, <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, ch- Quist- doing being the blue mage or Kimari, yep. um, yep. Oh, right. Kimari. I mean, that's probably my favorite in terms of. I had to yeah, eat Kim- I love I love Quinna. Quinna from yeah. FF9 as a blue mage. Yeah, that's yeah. my favorite blue mage the character. The funniest in the character in all yeah. Final Fantasy. Freaking so good. <laughs> so, so freaking funny. good. Interactions with uh, Kina and her, his slash her um, parent. <laughs> yes. Or yeah. whoever, or, or guardian. The chief yeah. The chief. Of, of, They're so funny. You yeah. got to go out in the world and taste all the tastes. And yeah. It's so funny. Yeah. Got to eat all the frogs, but don't eat all of them because <laughs> then they won't respawn. So you got to <laughs> leave right. two of them alive. Yeah. Of course, Galif here has amnesia, which also became a trope of like every Final Fantasy after this. You have to have a main character with amnesia. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> Can't remember who they are. Especially in FF6, 
It, it's a little different. FS7 is not quite amnesia, but there, there's a twist on that idea. Final Fantasy yeah. Nine. There's a little bit of that with Zidane. Uh, yeah, a lot of that. Yeah, seven, eight, and nine, kind of three in a row. Yeah, yeah. Amnesia, amnesia. Oh yeah, Amnesia. amnesia. <laughs> of course, an eight it, is it, like it, like yeah. the controversial it's one with Amnesia. Big, <laughs> it's a pretty big plot point. But uh, I, I, you know, at least an interesting way in which they went about explaining that one in that game. Yeah. And with Final Fantasy X, I love it. He pretends to have amnesia. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that That's he doesn't true. just look stupid. That's true. Oh, yeah. That's so funny. Yeah, he just pretends uh, like I, he he got too close like, to hey, Sin's toxin. This is a right? normal thing. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> oh, they uh, even I love went out game. the spring here in this game. There we go. Yep. There you, you go. go. In the first hey, cave. It looks very clean here. Let's go drink and uh, replenish our HP and MP. I should probably equip him with a weapon. I drink deep the waters of Tehom. JH in the comments saying, I too got too close to Sin's Toxin and my head's all foggy like. <laughs> Me too. I, you know, <laughs> yeah. it's just a thing, right? <laughs> uh, okay. Now, in this in this console version, you can actually speed up the battles, right? Uh, so I can auto battle, but I don't think I can speed them so they, up. So they don't, have, a, they don't mm -hmm. have like a fast forward feature? I thought they uh, did, man. That would yeah, be so great. Yeah, he's stoked. You see him like pumping it yep, up he after was he gets healed? When it is an auto, it does go faster, but... Mm. Um, okay. Like that's like that's why I've kept it in auto here because like yeah, the bars with auto quicker. So yeah, the fast can, forward button, it just it's is not auto. actually fast forwarding; it's just it's auto just battling, auto. which really mm -hmm. annoyed me. Which is I took that icon off in the modded versions I have because oh, really? it's not actually fast forwarding anything. <laughs> <laughs> it does. I mean, they move a little faster, but I what I wanted was a true fast forward feature to mm -hmm. make the battles go faster. Oh, that's right. It's because in this version you can turn off the random encounters, right? Yeah, you can. There you go. So that makes oh, it so you can get through places quicker and whatnot. And that God, does that help? Out? I mean, it's more like nice for exploring, or yeah, like oh, I just want to go back and get that chest that I now see, and I'm like, I don't want to fight 20 battles to get there. Yep. But yeah, this game is is really. I mean, I think this game is really about the like them refining. They did. They went heavy on the story with four. Um, yep. And this game, I feel, is much more them. Again, Final Fantasy is always about changing course. Almost, it's like we're going back to three, going back to. Heavy, you know, gameplay focus, heavy, yep. uh, we're going to experiment. And so the story is, in this game, I would say the weakest of the NES titles. Um, yeah, the, the 2D ones. Yeah, of the of the 2D ones, yeah, I think this is the weakest of those ones on, on the uh, Super Nintendo. Um, but yeah. I think um, you will see, I think if you're interested in 14, I, I would guess that the next expansion will be... The one taking that... heavily from this game. Oh, from this game. Oh, nice. Yeah. Oh, that's um, true. I... With the team of King of Tycoon and the Dragons. Yeah, that makes sense. It, yeah. So, because um, like, uh, I'd say Final Fantasy fourteen seems to take very heavily from specific games. Like, uh, I'd say the first, like, ga Realm Reborn is very much off FF1. Heaven's War doesn't take that much from any, um, I would actually say. But then the next one, Stormblood's very much off of two. Yeah. Um, and then... Shadowbringers is very much off three, and then this recent one is very much off four. Like they have, they bring back the moon. You see, you know, mm -hmm. lots of different things that are taken from four, um, and you're like, oh, okay. So I feel like the next one's probably going to take a lot from this game in terms yeah. of what they're, what you're going to see in that game or inspiration. So you're going, you can might be able to see where story beats are going to go if you play sure. this game. Yeah. All right, you've made it to the Pirate's Hideout. I think we're going to step away here Yarg. and move on mm -hmm. to Final Fantasy VI. But again, if anybody wants to continue following Final Fantasy V on uh, Trevor's stream here, we've got the message pinned in the chat. You can go check out that link and follow him there. So uh, thanks. We'll come back to you here in a little bit, Trevor. Excellent. Um, but we're going to move on to Final Fantasy VI now. Goodbye, y'all. All right, see ya. See ya. All right, I'll just kind of leave his stream up for a second while I get Final Fantasy VI going, because I had, this was totally my fault. I, uh, I, I did my very best to coordinate with like a lot of different people yeah. who were requesting to play. And I think I had, I mean, I had a ton of people interested in FS6. I obviously. know, I was going to say this super, is one of the more popular games. Super popular one, right? Yeah. But then like it got filled by Dr. Doke originally, but oh, then cool. I didn't have anyone for FF1. 
So I switched him over to that since he had experience playing that growing up. Yeah. So then FSX became open, but we were getting close to the time. And so all these people who were interested didn't. And so I was messaging one person and another person, and then they, it was conflicting. And then like, oh, I've got it filled. Oh, no, I don't. Oh, yes, I do. And then it ends up we don't have anybody at all. Oh, <laughs> so I'm going to be playing Final Fantasy VI. Okay. Um, so let me just uh, get that up and running. I'll be doing the Pixel Remaster version for that as well. So let's just go ahead and uh, get that one going. This is the one I've applied, I think, more mods to than any other. So a lot of mods, a lot of mods I have installed on this one in particular. I've replaced all the sprites, like the characters with the original game. Uh, text boxes are different. The hey, whole tile cool. set of the overworld is different. Like nice. uh, so much. <laughs> I look forward to so seeing freaking it. much. So the version of Final Fantasy VI Pixel Remaster that you will be seeing is not <laughs> how it will come out of the box, just so you know. All right, it's taking a second for it to load up here. I think it did this too with FF2. So it should work. Just give it a second. Let's take a look at the chat, see what people are saying here. There it goes. Final Fantasy VI podcast was really good, says Mix. Thank you very much, Mix. We appreciate you. Okay. Can you guys hear it? You can't see it yet, but you can hear it. I'm going to skip through it. that part because I need to set it up again as a window. Display. We want windowed. Done. Yes. So we can pull it over here like that and then switch over. You guys ready for right. Final Fantasy VI? I am. I freaking love this game. There's an edge. I okay, just, I see it. <laughs> just fixed it. So, yes, uh, we just finished a podcast on this game, so we're pretty familiar. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> got a lot to talk about. With it at the moment. First off, 2001 A Space Odyssey with that organ. Yes. If you have not seen our podcast on Final Fantasy VI, I recommend going yeah. and checking it out. Tons of info on the development history. How it was such a landmark title. Love those effects. These are new to the Pixel Remaster, those lightning Yeah, the effects. lightning. It's very slow lightning. You never see lightning that slow. She looks sweet, though. It looks very cool. It looks very cool. All right. Let me click in here and start a new game. I think we're going to see that again. The ancient war of the Magi. When its flames at last receded, only the charred husk of a world remained. Even the power of magic was lost. That yeah, looks cool. I should use your CRT filters, Beard Mo. I, I didn't even think of that. In the thousand years that oh, followed, CRT. iron, gunpowder, and steam engines took the place of magic, and life slowly returned to the barren land. Yeah, iron, gunpowder, and steam engines are good for the land. Yes. Magic. Very bad. bad for the <laughs> land. <laughs> there now stands one who would reawaken the magic of ages past and use his dread power as a means by which to conquer all the world. Wow. They really improved on that map back there. That looks very nice. And once again, you have the ziggurat structure, mm -hmm. like a pyramid going up here, something like a Tower of Babel. Babel. I love the remastered OSTs. I think they're fantastic. I, I like the oh, NES good. ones the best, like Final Fantasy 1, 2, and 3. There's a couple tracks on 6 I'm not fond of. But ah, for so the most part, it's great. They're making it seem like the city was right there. Right I, close by. I always assumed it, it was, was really off, far. Yeah, down yeah. the canyon. So. The, I, I didn't like this particular way of representing the city down there. Yeah, I, we're I, I really like it close. better that it's farther away. I guess yeah. they're on top of a mountain. But, you know. Here they come. Bigs and Witch. Oh, my characters have not been replaced. Maybe some of my mods aren't working. Hmm. There's the city. Hard to believe an Esper has been found frozen there a thousand years after the War of the Magi. Ah, probably just another wild goose chase. I like this version of the script, too. Yeah. I don't know. They wouldn't have let us use her unless they were confident the intel was good. I think this is the Final Fantasy VI advanced version of the script that mm -hmm. I have uh, on this modded version. Ah, uh, yes. Ah, uh, which? Oh, I hear she fried uh, 50 yes. of our Magitek armored soldiers in three minutes. Kind of makes your skin crawl down. Actually, now that I think about it, I think that it's a revised version of the six script, uh, advanced script, that was even like more native. Advised, That's revised. like it comes hmm. with, like out of the box with this one. So I don't think I modded it at all. Now that I think about it, we'll approach from the east. Move out. Nice. 
I love this scene right here. You will notice a difference. I'm going to get your genuine reaction to it. Okay, the shading is interesting mm. with the pixel remaster. The way the snow is being generated out of nowhere and it's not falling down. Yeah. Kind of like an, it's almost like a filter over the top of it or something. Yeah. They, they walk a lot slower. They do. The biggest thing for me, there's no credits. Oh. I don't know why. Where, it makes no sense to not have credits, credits here. then. They'll, they'll just have them at the end of the game. So part of the reason <laughs> it, it's palatable watching know, this scene unfold because it's for a credit three minutes it's an opening credit sequence, right? Is because of the credits, yeah. I have no idea why they didn't put the huh. credits in this version. It, it's the whole reason why this works. Yeah, <laughs> this doesn't work otherwise. Like, yeah. you're like, yeah, kind of cool, also kind of bored. Like, let's keep going. We have Kyrdin Kier <laughs> saying that, it, that they did put them back in, in oh, the... Really? Um, in the console version that they released. Uh, so I'm playing the PC version here. And I, again, Square with their PC versions. I just don't understand. Yeah. Why wouldn't you also it's their update test field. the <laughs> PC version of the game when you release the console right. version, right? It would be pretty easy. You know, what's funny sense. that the the fans are demanding the credits be put back into the game. because I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> You've ruined the game when you take out the credits. Whoever hears that. Yeah, the, sc the, uh, the ground should be scrolling a little faster. Yeah, anyway, those mountains look pretty cool, though. This is one of the downfalls to this version of the game, the Pixel Remaster version. This, just this, this part. It's like, man! Yeah. One of the most iconic opening sequences in the series. And they changed it you a little changed too it much. too much. But it's still good, overall. And they did a really good job with the opera scene in particular. I think they uh, really well I think well so, done. too, yeah. yeah. As a fresh ingredient just said, the opera scene. Yeah, Yoshinori Kitase just released an interview, according to Mix, in which he said many Square Enix staff are clamoring for an FF6 remake. Remake? Remake? Depends on how the Girl it's takes done. point and don't waste time on the riffraff. Remember what we're here for. Let's move. Let's move. All right, well, here we are. Narsh got a team show my play of the game. Well, you just you got think? gears and wheels and... Yep. No one's Steam. Not, we're not safe anymore. Haha, <laughs> that guitar, man. Yep, pretty cool. <laughs> huh? Killer. Yeah, all of the um, battle uh, themes kind of got like a, a guitar like that in them in yeah. the Pixel Remastered. You kind of could tell they were meant to Yeah, from Uematsu's right. original. Especially work. in FF5, I think it was yeah. pretty clear that the battle was supposed to have an electric guitar in there somewhere. Yeah, and they did a pretty good job with the brass in this, too, of this battle theme. Yeah, I, sure. like, I like the way that that sounds. I think it's pretty good. Good, good on the brass for the, uh, for the victory fanfare as well. Yeah. I don't know how people generally feel about the um, battle theme for this game. I've heard some people are like, uh, it's kind of mm. grating on the ears. I really like it's it. It's iconic. Uh, if it happens over and over, I could see it. Yeah. I, I really like the battle theme from this game, though. It's one of my favorites, actually. You know, it would be nice if they varied it just like a little bit. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Surrounded. So they're trying to introduce you to a lot of the battle mechanics here at the beginning. You can get surrounded. Yeah. Yep. You can have a preemptive strike. They can get a preemptive strike on you. Right. You know, each battle sort of introducing different uh, ways in which battle can start. Trying to get you familiarized with how it works. Pincer battles. Yeah, was this the first game to have pincer battles? I actually just thought that that might be the case. I don't remember if that was in, if, in, if FF4 and FF5, you, if they had a uh, pincer attack. Megalodoth. Megalodoth. That's a cool, yeah. I don't know if that's like a word, but that's cool. Megalodoth. We got our mystery girl here. Don't know her name. It's just question marks. Yep, the witch. 
So Final Fantasy VI, one of the driving things uh, behind its development, I don't have the quote in front of me, but we talked about it in our uh, podcast, yeah. that the drama of the characters, it was all about yeah. writing compelling characters. And a bunch of them, a and pantheon, a lot of them. like a huge cast of characters. Yep. And um, there was not supposed to really just be one single main character. Um, you know, depending on how you play the game. Certainly, certain certain characters can for sure not ever be the main character. Yes. Uh, but it's kind of up for grabs as to who specifically this story is about. Yes. Um, I'd say obviously Tara because you start out with her. Yeah. Um, and she's instrumental the whole time. Right. Uh, but they really kind of mix it up throughout the story, mm-hmm. and you get you get really deep into characters that you wouldn't consider them side characters after that. Yep. Yeah. Uh, some of the best scenes from the game, I think that, I mean, Final Fantasy IV a little bit, but I think this game, in a in a in a grander way sort of started the tradition of every character is going to have like a background story that we're going to explore kind of at depth that's really like they've come from a place of tragedy and you know they have things that they need to overcome you know in their own mind and things like that that sort of became a a staple of just square soft rpgs really it it got taken to a whole nother level in xeno gears and other games like that (laughs) but uh that tradition kind of started with this one the Lightning Welk. So this oh, is also oh. something that it actually got started in 4 with the Mist Dragon in that first cave. We, we kind of cut away right before we got there. Yeah. Um, where they have a first boss that has a gimmick where if you attack it during a certain phase, it'll counterattack and do a ton of damage. Yeah. So you're supposed to stop. Yep. Now, these mechanics don't tend to come up again in other fights, but I think the purpose of them really more or less is just to introduce players to the fact that you don't just keep attacking you got to pay attention to what you're doing you got to pay right. attention to what the boss is doing what are the weaknesses yeah you know and they introduce that to you early on in the game so that you're aware going forward yes um ricardo in the chat yes um welk is emir in the snes version his name is emir oh wait a second this is this is emir here welk was what was welk welk was the original name Oh, how come it just? I switched? think it's. I think it's because it's. It's just a boat. It's because I modded the script. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Or something like that. I don't know. Oh, yeah. So maybe it, that's so a it's Emir mod- currently, but it was yes. well in yes, the original. Correct. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's so now right. we gotta wait here. Let's do like a healing force. Who's the most damaged? Myself. Okay, you're good, you're good. All right, so he comes back out of the shell, and we go back at him again. Let's, uh, let's fire beams again. I love this battle theme, too. It's so good. Uh-oh, okay. I thought he was going back in his shell. I thought I was screwed there for a second. Is he, doing, is he doing it yet? Not yet. Oh, he's going back in. Dang it. That's not good. <laughs> yeah, that's going to hurt. Don't die. All right, not too bad. And, oh, actually, I did it twice. Yeah, that's really bad, actually. Oh, just him. Okay. You're all right. You're all right. We can do some healing here. From the come back out. All right. Go back at it. We should be able to take him out at this point. Okay. Emir the Founding Titan says he on. <laughs> there we go. We got it. I really love the music that's coming for this next part. It's like super mysterious. It really builds a lot of intrigue behind like. What is up with Terra? Uh, I guess I spoiled her name like five seconds before it's revealed, but... I guess we go underneath here, don't we? Alright. 
So this is a frozen Esper. I love this, this theme right here is so good. So good. He's giving me the creep, something's not right. Yeah, six has really great pacing, I agree. Frozen creature begins emitting an eerie light. Where's that light coming from? Ah. What was that? Wedge? Wedge, where are you? Hey, what's going on? And uh, uh, as we got many, many comments about in our um, Final Fantasy VI podcast series, the, the the theory here is that they got ejected to another world and that world is Chrono Trigger where you find them at the festival at the beginning of the game <laughs> but you know pretty cool got a Biggs and Wedge in the, in the town there at the beginning of Chrono Trigger oh hold on one second I gotta let Kaysen back in the door locked <laughs> <laughs> You're good. Okay, let me get out of the bed here. Where am I? Why am I? And I only just removed the crown. My head, it hurts. Love this theme. Super good. One of my favorites in the series as well. It's a slave crown. The others were using it to control you. It was robbing you of your thoughts, making it so you'd do whatever they told you to do. I can't remember a thing. Don't worry, it'll all come back to you. In time, that is. Mysterious young woman, born with a gift of magic and enslaved by the Gastalian Empire. Her name is Terra. I'm just gonna keep that name. Yes. My name is Terra. Impressive, I've never heard of anyone recovering so fast. You must be made of tougher stuff than most. And here come the, the guards. We're here for the Magitek armor pilot. the store now hand over the girl she's an agent of the empire okay so in this version i've modded it to where you get the character portraits in the text boxes which i think just looks really nice this is not how it will come out of the box if you get the pixel remaster just so everyone watching realizes that <laughs> this has to be modded and there's a great modding community um on discord uh that can uh you know, help you out with learning how to install these mods and things like that if you're interested. There's no time to explain. You need to get out of here. These fools aren't going to listen to reason. This way, quickly. But not before I get the elixir in the clock. Can't forget the elixir in the clock. Make your way out of town through the mines. I'll try to buy some time. <laughs> As Rob says, run for your life and don't loot my clock. <laughs> All right, let's head over this way. Up there. All right, so one thing you should know if you're playing this game, there's some chests here in the cave. Don't get them yet. Do not get them yet. Save it for later. They get better. What am I doing? I should cast fire on these guys. Boom.
Bada bing. She can use magic and no one else can. Do not grab those chests. Don't do it. I think... I seem to think so, hypodermic. But I can't think of one in particular right now. But I feel like that's a mechanic that was in a lot of RPGs back in the day. Or not a lot, but some. Where it's like, don't pick up the chests, they get better later. Kind of thing. Final Fantasy XII does that, that's true. Yeah, Chrono Trigger, that's right. Did that, same, came out around the same time, so it makes sense. There she is! Oh no! It might have started with Chrono Trigger, I don't know. It's a good question. All right, I love that little effect as she passes out there. Very nice. Now we get a little bit of a flashback here. My sweet little magic user. With this slave crown, you'll be all mine. Bam! Oh, that's true, Burrito Kingdom. Six was before Chrono Trigger. Good point. Nah, Kason had to step out for a phone call. He's not locked out. The door is slightly open. I can see it. <laughs> He's just on a call. Soldiers of the Empire, we stand at the dawn of a new age. The lost power of magic has returned to us. We've been chosen. The time has come for us to claim our rightful dominion over the world. Nothing shall stand in our way. Hurrah! Long live in Burgerstall! Mike, Mike narration pack for FF6, that'd be awesome. <laughs> All right, here's our introduction to Locke. Took you long enough. Busy with all the robbing and plundering, I presume. Ah, I love his face. <laughs> the reaction. I love the bug eye emote so much. It's just it's so fun. A treasure hunter. A trail-worn traveler searching the world over for relics of the past. His name is Locke. I prefer the term treasure hunter. Ha, semantic nonsense. There's a huge difference! Anyway, is there something you need me to do? There is indeed. I met the girl. You don't mean... The city guard is pursuing her as we speak. The city has the strength to stand up to the Empire, but it won't be easy. The people are just too stubbornly independent to join any underground resistance group like the Returners. I tried to explain that the Empire was controlling the girl, but they wouldn't even listen. All right, so you want me to get her out of Narsh? That would be the idea. Make your way to Figaro for the time being. All right. I actually think, that although I love this scene here with the Mughals, how they join the battle, we're going to step away from FF6 here and move on to Final Fantasy VII, I think. We're ready to start streaming that. But this is one of my favorite parts of the intro, actually, is the Mughals joining you to fight. It's great stuff. All right, so let me go ahead and turn that off. Still got Final Fantasy V going on in the background. Let me move up to here. All right. There we go. Hope you guys are enjoying this so far. Okay. Let me get our next streamer up here. His name is Clark. Here's his FF7. And I'm going to put his stream in the chat and pin it. Thank you. Hello. How are you doing? 
I'm good. I was being quiet. Oh, oh yeah. You don't need to be. Oh, it's scrolling too fast. I can't pin it. There we go. <laughs> there go. All right. Your your the link to your stream is now pinned in our chat, so people can come check out your stream. All right. How's it going, man? How are you? Good. I'm good. It's good to. I think this is the first time we've actually uh, spoken in a public setting. Um, I know. So we're that's validating that uh, that we 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 do occasionally talk. You know, we we've. we've uh, We've been talking about doing it forever. I know. And we just have not actually gotten around to it. So here's, a, here's the yeah. first opportunity, and uh, we'll definitely do some more uh, yeah. in the yeah. coming that's, weeks or months or whatever. Uh, especially, uh, however long it takes you to finish Final, Final Fantasy sixteen. Yeah, then we'll, we'll talk, talk to you about it. That sounds Which awesome. I'm really, I could not be more excited to talk to you about that game in particular. But yes. anyways, Final Fantasy seven. Uh, yes. This is... Uh, this is not my first Final Fantasy game that I played. I'm I'm actually old enough to have uh, uh, played FF1. Uh, and, nice. And so I I you know went through DNA releases. I uh, and then Secret of Mana was the first kind of action focused RPG that there you uh, go. That really you know it it awakened my love for RPGs. But then uh, you know Chrono Trigger and then Final Fantasy VII. Uh, came out so I've, I've got a, a huge soft spot in my heart this actually kind of uh determined what i i mean this planted a seed that uh mm -hmm. determined scholastically what i ended up uh studying etc et you know with mythology and religion etc yeah so, awesome we, we've talked yeah. with you about this a little bit in the past i remember when we were doing xeno gears about. uh i was asking you some questions oh, yeah. in particular because you had uh studied that so case yeah. and We'll love to chat with you about that kind of stuff. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's basically yeah. all I think about and talk about and read about. Yeah, well, uh, obviously, there's you know it's referential here. Uh, you know, there's there's it's sort of a, a blending of Norse and um, you know the Abrahamic faiths. Yeah, uh, and kind of there's actually commentary about uh, you know the way that Abrahamic faiths culturally appropriate other faiths in here too that you there's a lot that you can dive into just from final fantasy 7 but it doesn't go nice. let's say as hard on the uh you know the abrahamic and the fringe abrahamic stuff like gnosticism yeah. and and uh as, as um, say, xenogear stuff xenogears, yeah. exactly. hey, hey one, <laughs> one second real quick clark people are saying that your video feed seems to have frozen um on your oh, stream okay. is that so, right yeah, well, I don't be, know if you're still awful, on the start it? screen or not, the where you can start a new game. But you you are frozen in the little camera in the corner there. I thought screen. you were okay. just a very subtle talker, and you were just we like, got really... Max Derrett here. What's the up, one and oh, only Max Derrett? Hey, what is up? I would say refresh their st uh, refresh stream because everybody in my right. stream is saying Kay. they can see me. All Let right, me let's refresh, we'll refresh the it page. here. Make sure that it's working. What's up? Welcome to the stream, Max. Appreciate you joining. Okay, so yeah, we're we're here seeing we it live now. There we're we go. We're starting out. FF7. This is so iconic. Going through uh, the stars. This is a very iconic. The energies. particles of this game and the music. So that that synth. That da, da, da. so good. It's the best. All right, I'm gonna go for Final Fantasy VII music. Yes. <clears throat> to play in the background. Full soundtrack. Let's do it. I, I remember when this game came out. <laughs> Me too. Because <laughs> I, I had it on PC, actually. Yeah. And it was right after my family had moved to Arizona, which is where I met Kaysen and his family, yep. actually. Mm -hmm. And I would, I would play this game with Kaysen. And on the, on the PC version, you can navigate through the files to watch just the cutscene FMV oh, right. sequences yeah, that's like, right. alone, just yeah. like watch the video files. Yeah. Yeah. And we would just click them yeah. and yeah. watch them. And we just like we're <laughs> absolutely blown away. It was the coolest by how ever seen. quote unquote realistic the <laughs> <Yes>. graphics were. <laughs> yes. it, it's it's hard to put in perspective. You know the it um, is it's impossible to explain. Yeah, yeah if because, you weren't there. You know, I, yeah, like my wife is uh, a, a little bit younger, but she had no idea. You know, and so um, when I try to explain that this game blew my brain apart when i watched when i watched the commercial first of all there was a commercial 
on the yeah. television for this game, and I'd never seen anything like that in my life. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. You know? A TV uh, commercial really for a video that, game. Yeah. You know? um, so that's right. I'm gonna turn the game volume down for everybody. I uh, gotta get the bombing mission either. going here. Yeah, and so we got the we got the opening bombing mission. This is the first Final Fantasy that kind of starts out in a really clearly, uh, you know, urban area. Of course, Midgar. <laughs> yes. Was built, uh, you know, after New York, it was modeled after New York. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and just a a dirty, <laughs> yeah, dirty, grimy place. Dirty, grimy place. Uh, you know, giant giant buildings with uh you know rich people's names on them you know type yep. thing uh <laughs> not at all not at all I, I think i think that's what really stuck out to me on top of the fact that like cloud's buster sword was so freaking sweet i think the sword but, like, sold the game for <laughs> the, me. the sword sold the, game. the sword alone in a, in a big way but yeah. like as i was playing through this first sequence i was so confused by the turn-based combat i was you know 10 years old all the time i'd, I'd never played an <laughs> rpg before right. i was like okay this is weird <laughs> but it was it was the setting. It was yeah, like the world, Midgar itself. I was like, I've never freaking seen anything like this before. No. This is so cool because it the was music, fantasy. Because you would expect to be shooting a gun in a city like this. Yeah, he's using a sword. I know. It was just like, what yeah. on earth? I I couldn't. I could not believe what I was seeing in front of my eyes. Like, I I could never have imagined a world like this. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, you know, like kid me or teenage me was so, was so like, I just always had that criticism of sci-fi. Like, I just really wish that there was, um, you know, like swords in my sci-fi. Uh, yep, and the only right. thing that really did <laughs> yeah. that was Star Wars. Was Star Wars yeah. and That's Star right. Wars lightsabers. Had, yeah. you know, like light but they lightsabers. had, a, they were like futury swords. Like yeah. this is just like a metal sword. <laughs> like there's yeah. something to be said about that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but yeah, like the whole twist on kind of the recurring conflict of the series where you have an empire, some evil empire, and a rebellion group sort of rising up against them. The way that they sort of cleverly put that into like a modern context with a corporation, right? And then like a group of eco-terrorists. <laughs> yep, uh, yeah. Was and just the way they kind of really had to recant, recant that a little bit, a in little the bit in remake, but you know, we'll talk about that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the world, the world has changed. <laughs> it has. Yeah. This was pre nine eleven. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I yeah. There's a lot to say on that, and um, I have a, I have a, uh, I think a little different take on um, what they're doing with that than sort of uh, I think what the prevailing theory is. But sure, you okay. know, we have we have no. Uh, we have no obligation to talk about remake right now. Sure, we'll, we'll have uh, <laughs> this shot right many here. More that shot, I love that right shot. there. Yep. <laughs> so the sword, the train, and then that shot. That's where it's like I'm hooked. I'm just hooked. Yeah, the way that they were. I would be dreaming about this game for the next two years of my life. <laughs> uh, sort of like FMVs into like the gameplay where you're actually able to run around, where they have like a shot that kind of pulls out, and then they'll like give you control of the game. Yeah, that was like really really cool on the yeah. technological side for the yep. time I've never seen yeah. anything like that before this. absolutely no. and you know sakaguchi actually recently um you know was asked about what he thought about uh remake and one of the things he said about the og is that uh katase always wanted to make uh you know a game that that really employed cinematic language yeah uh and that uh he was impressed with how remake did it but uh, what he was really talking about was, you know, the the sort of scale and budget of this game was the first that sort of first game in the world that yeah. really uh, attempted to kind of bridge that gap. Yeah. And uh, and you know, this I would I would argue that this might be the first what we would call triple A game. Um, and you know uh, the you know what. I think you have a, might have a point. That, there. That's actually a pretty good point. <laughs> yeah, that's an interesting, I, huh? Because the budget yeah, was huge at the was. time. It was forty-five the, million dollars, which but, is way yeah. over a hundred million today. But the advertising Unreal. budget, yeah, was even yeah. beyond. Yeah, the, that. The, yes, it was yeah. like a hundred million dollars back then. Oh man! But that was mostly Sony fronting that to yeah, sell PlayStations. Yeah, yeah. But <laughs> it's it's true. Yeah. But still, and and that's part of the reason too that I I kind of consider this to be one of the AAA, you know, like the, a marker of the AAA impact on the industry is is the fact that a console company got involved 
and kind of frontlining the game. And, you know, it made some changes to the industry that were both good and bad, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but that's uh, a story for another time. But it's a story that's ironically very underpinned by, you know, uh, this incredibly anti-capitalist game that we're playing right now. Yeah. Right, right, uh, yeah. You know, so uh, I definitely, I definitely will never forget the initial experience, though, of, mm -hmm. of this intro sequence. Um, and there's several other sequences, and I'll kind of get to those after uh, after this. But you know, just the idea of of it's this cold open too. Like you're not you're not totally sure what you're doing when you first you're blown away by the visuals. You uh, the music has this real ominous tone. I um, love it. It, take, yeah. it takes you a while to realize that you're a terrorist. Yep. You know, and <laughs> oh yeah, a long time. Basically, yeah. I didn't even realize that until I think when I first played this game, it wasn't until you're back at the fort and then you're watching the television. Mm -hmm. right. the, the, it, the weight of what we just did actually yep. hit me. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. oh, wait, oh, wait, oh. And I think Oh my that, gosh, that's people's jobs just worked at that power plant. Right. Like, but, yeah. what in the world? And they're all calling us terrorists, and I'm like, we kind of yeah. are. I really believe <gasps> that the reason this game was as impactful and just on, on a wide scale as popular as it was it just right. spread like wildfire so yeah. it's like the second highest selling game on the playstation oh yeah and like even i i meet so many people who are totally not gamers but mm -hmm. were in high school at the time played this right right and, and have never played any other game ever since and don't care about rpgs <laughs> right? or any of that and i i, I really believe the reason for that and, and this is at least true for me is because this was the first video game that made me think about life. Like, it made yeah. me think about, wait a minute, this is a, a, a metaphor for how we use fossil right. fuels. Yes. I didn't yeah, yeah, think totally. of those terms, yeah, but you right. know, we're putting gasoline in our cars. Corporations have all this yeah, money, yeah. they get involved in politics. Right. Right, right, There's right. all of these things that I had never as a 10-year-old thought about in my entire life until I yeah. played this. And the fact that we're having an impact on the world around us, and is that a good thing or a bad thing, the way we're going right. about it? And is yeah. our economic structure a good or a bad thing? Like this game, on top of just being extra cool for you know the 10 year old boy I was and the cool buster uh -huh. sword and the world being awesome, it, it made me think about things like that for the first time in my life. Absolutely. And I feel like that was why it, it resonated with so many people. Absolutely. I, I think it unlocked the 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 concept in the in the zeitgeist that that video games were a valid form of narrative media, right? That yeah. they had this power to actually, yeah. uh, you know, tell stories. You know, like uh, this was around the same time that you know Roger Ebert had, had uh, yeah, actually video games are not art, art, right? Video games are not art, but yeah. Uh, you know, a lot of a lot of people during that conversation were like, "Well, you clearly haven't played Final Fantasy VII." Mm -hmm. uh, yep. And and I agree. And uh, you know, obviously, I uh, I think the video games have always been art, but this was one of the first things to kind of you know change the conversation in the public eye around whether or not this is a valid form of expression, and and whether this can. And I think it showed the potential that as a as a narrative source, this might have the most potential of anything we've created as a species um i'm not saying we're there yet i'm not saying don't watch film i'm not saying don't read books but you know there's there's a lot of potential here that you know was kind of shown i actually have that already so yeah um, so we're getting our first the, boss fight coming up here yeah the guard scorpion. first boss fight and um it, to me just felt like such a slow burn you know but uh you know, now that I've played it a bunch, now that I've played uh, remake too, uh, you yeah. forget how how quickly this intro scene uh, kind of establishes, um, you know, so little about about what's going on in the world, but so much about uh, how the game is going to flow. You know, yeah. the kind of energy of the game. Um, yeah, they were really masterful at this time at like introducing a world to you and getting you like feeling like you're. Uh, getting a sense for how it works in such a short space. Like they were so efficient with yep. the way that they wrote games back then. I think a yeah. lot of that was a large part of that was because through the 
NES and SNES, they sort of were forced yeah, to. They were well practiced. <laughs> they uh, they really brevity. had to say a lot with a little. Absolutely. And that sort of yeah. carried over into the PS1 games with their intros as well. But um, there's I just, a, I loved it. I think there's less sort of trope constraints too with with a lot of the development team because, you know, the development team, even though they'd made other games and um, this was their seventh, you know, they were making games every year and uh, right. and they were still pretty young, you know, so yeah. they didn't have all this pressure. To That's kind true. Of it was only 10 years yeah. since yeah. FF1 yeah. when this yeah. game came I know. Isn't that yeah. crazy That's to think about? <laughs> that is nowadays, my gosh. 10 so years to get one game these days. Everything they were doing had to break new ground. Like they, you know, because yeah. it was it was the Wild West. Um, you know, now there's so much that goes into, uh, you know, so many established norms that you have to contest with. There were no norms. And so when creating a story, if you're in unknown territory, the the amount of real estate you have for waste and all that stuff is so little. Like, yeah, you, totally. You get the point. Yeah, and then of course in Japanese you can be you can say so much more. Yep, with, with just less characters. characters yeah. um, right. And in English, it was so difficult for them to just pack that all in. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. And you can tell. This, oh yeah. Not every localization is is uh, is as rich as this one, but this one <laughs> <has> <laughs> no. bang in it. Oh yeah. man. So so fun though, and I just love the steam. You see the steam just yeah. kind of blowing off of yep. everything. It's like so you've cool. got this sort of high tech feeling world, but it's steam, yeah. right? So it's got that steampunk yeah. feel. But then people are using like swords and like I don't know. It's it's a mashup of the future, the present, and the past, like all into compressed into like there's, a single, you know, piece of art. Nothing like it. I had never nothing. seen any aesthetic like this ever. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so this set a precedent for you know this. I mean, it was one of the. That, I mean, it wasn't the first team punk, but it was certainly uh, there. You know, and, it was the first yeah. one that I ever encountered. <laughs> That's for yeah, sure. Me, yeah, <laughs> me too. Me too. So, yeah. are you playing this um, on the? This is this the original, or is this a newer version of the game? This is the. Uh, this is Steam 1.09. I have Steam, mild. Okay. Very, very mild so, mods in there for the music. I see. Are um, we going to get um, Attack While Its Tail Is Up? Yep. Should be coming up <laughs> here just in a moment. All right. Any second now, really. This is not the and right th music for this. Yeah. For this. this um, we need some Aerith. battle. We need some uh, boss battle music here. This isn't it. What am I doing? This won't work. I like this song. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I can't hear your music, so I'm just. You're, you're good. <laughs> this is uh, this is the hurry track, which yeah. is one of my favorites. Actually, I really like it. The the ticking the tick clock tick 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 tick. tick. Yep. Uh oh. Yeah. And so this this part too. So the you know this was the first time you realized that you couldn't just jam on attack. Yep. You know? Got to be careful. Attack while its tail is up. No, don't do that. It's point. Gonna, it's really See, if you don't read, if you don't get the grammar, like, ah, yeah. Yep, you get so confused. Good. So good. Confused. Classic, classic, classic. That should be a comma, not an exclamation point. I know. <laughs> Attack I while know. its tail is up, comma, <laughs> and then you'll regret it. Yeah, yeah. Now, why isn't its tail always up? That's, you That's know. the, you know. <laughs> Right, bad guys. They always give you away. They always like. It's like they right. want you to kill them. Yeah, please maybe. kill me. <laughs> please, I'm so guilty. I feel so. Bad I'm about guilty. It. Yes, I can't believe I'm doing this. I don't want to be doing this. Yes. I'll give you all sorts Hojo of tells. Made me do this, and that guy's. <laughs> he's got problems. Holy. As Mitch, Doug, Mitch, Mitch Douglas is, is bringing up in the chat, let's eat grandma versus let's eat grandma. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. 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 <laughs> Gra this is grammar's kind, kind of important. And Scarlet's, sorry, yep. my chat. But, <laughs> I'm not allowed to do that, as it turns out. Yeah, the bolt magic is effective because it's a machine. Yeah, just slowly introducing yeah. it to how yeah, elements elements sense. work in the game. Yeah, elements are are very uh, very RPG Final Fantasy, uh, and. Um, I'm interested to see how, uh, 
you guys respond to a particular thing with elements in 16. Oh, really? Like, no, like oh, cool. Yeah. Sweet. Can't wait. Can't wait to get there. Once again, right. of course, I love that uh, Cloud. He's already at level. What was he started at level five? Seven. Level, level seven. Because mm-hmm. it's Final Fantasy seven. Because right? it's seven. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, Clive should start out at level sixteen. He should. Yeah, yeah. He should. <laughs> <laughs> but it's great because Cloud. It's so weird when they give these characters backstories and they talk about how like hardcore they were. Oh, in their past they used to fight and yeah. and they're level one. Yeah. Right. <laughs> like oh okay. I mean it's all relative I guess but yeah. um I, I like that this game at least you know. Gives him, gives him a little, a bit, little of bit more experience. It, it hints yeah. at, at a past that, mm-hmm. well, how did he get those yeah. seven levels? You know, yeah, like, well, right. you'll find out later. Exactly. I yeah. Like that. And one thing about the team, uh, you know, and you see this in Remake 2, is one thing you can't fault them for is like this real tremendous uh, attention to details. And um, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, and, and little things that, uh, it's it's establishes that the game world is really well built and everything yeah. that you look at you know has some kind of story to it even if you don't know the story and right. so even though like a lot of this stuff is personal to them and they uh we may never know what it is there's the the human mind has the ability to kind of discern whether something is you know uh so something has that kind of depth to it and yeah, everything uh, subconsciously too. You may not even yeah. realize it, but your brain Absolutely. is kind of working out the meaning of things in the background. You're you're connecting that there's this deep story behind it. That you know, several yeah. conversations were probably had about the use of each texture. You know, and right? then yeah, yeah. that they built a story around why something works, and you can tell the mm. difference between that and something just imported from you know an asset pool, um, and. Uh, and CBU one and the you know the team behind this and the people that carried into remake, all of those really had that kind of mind. And even though sometimes that doesn't necessarily translate into narrative that you can see, yeah. um, I think most people artistically can see this in uncanny difference between the two things. Sure. Uh, yeah. All right. So we're getting out of we're the getting uh, out of the reactor sequence. The reactor here. I got stuck at this part right here. Did you? Yeah, because so uh, I was playing N64 games. I the locked camera and was, knowing where uh, to go, where can you go and where, where can't can, you yeah, go? That's a, that that's screen, hard for people. Yeah. I was like, "Where's the stair? Oh, there's stairs!" Like it took me. And nowadays, <laughs> I look and I'm like, "Oh, obviously that's where you go." Yeah. Um, but when I was first playing these games, it was not so obvious to me exactly where on this very detailed, you know, background yeah. d- background where I could and could not go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's that's that, there's definitely some spots in the game where it's a little bit confusing to figure out like what can I walk on and what I can't. Yeah. Do. But they're so detailed. I love the I love the pre-render background. Oh, me too. I love it. And um, I there, there's a way they kind of fix this. They put a little cursor in the yes, phone games, I right. think, or well, yeah. the, even in this game, in the, in the original games. they have it. You and just it's have like to press here's select. where you go yeah, in the original game. Select. Yeah. yeah. Oh, the original. The original game you just press oh, select. Oh, you know what? And it would it would show you the entrances and then it's things you can climb on and stuff like that. So, yeah. but if you don't know to press if that, if you button, don't yeah. know that, that's a bit <laughs> yeah. of a problem. Yeah, that's right. People are saying that in the chat. And I love this. This theme is playing right now. The Shinra theme. That, the, oh, I think so musically, good. Midgar and particularly like Shinra with those uh, those that big like bell and the choir. The bong. Yeah. Like yeah, the, yeah. It, it gives. Oh. This game, but like Midgar and Shinra in particular, this very specific sort of character, it, it texturizes it musically right. in this way that is just, I just love the, those themes. Like, it, it's so ominous. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. Yeah, I love the, the timer you have to get out. This was a lot of people's first, uh, you know, a lot of people will say, uh, in terms of soundtrack to this game is the first you know video game soundtrack that they really uh you know resonated with and um Hmm. i think it's partially because you know it was a lot of people's first exposure to umatsu um you know i certainly i i i'm i'm pretty partial to a lot of the prior series music but one of the things that uh two that was particularly like 
insane about this game is that it's all Ooh, that explosion looks nice <laughs> it's all you know like it's all synth and midi and it's still it sounds like video game music and chip tunes all all throughout the a majority of the game until you get to the very end and you get to one winged angel i remember when uh, i first yeah. played against sephiroth and if you played the pc <laughs> version first you you missed out on this but if you played the playstation version of the game first and then the you know one winged angel starts and then all of a sudden they start singing and you mm-hmm. hear voices mm-hmm. and you're like wait they can do that like you yeah yep didn't even, like people didn't even know that they could do that in games there was like uh-huh. mega cd games that had full audio tracks but other than that uh-huh. like it was just totally it hit everybody out of the blue that you started singing you wonder why that that song is so iconic it is a good song but i think technically there are actually better better tracks on the final sure. fantasy 7 soundtrack sure. but it was so iconic and it is because all of a sudden like it just it was a way to amplify the media presentation of the game mm-hmm. um and that's what this game continually did is it is it is it became more and more like we're telling you this story and we're finding new ways to visually represent um the story and we're blending cinema cinematic language um you know and that's something that uh Katase really wanted but it's something also that Nomura is really strong at is cinematic language like as long as we leave yeah. him uh you know let him do that and then let other people write the stories he, he is quite know. good at that <laughs> yeah we're we're good to go uh yeah. All right, well, we're going to step away from FF7 here for a while. If you guys want to continue to watch the Final Fantasy VII stream, we've got it uh, the link pinned right now in the chat. Uh, go give Clark a follow, uh, Schrodinger's Baby Seal. Is that it's the name really, of the game? It's a really <laughs> funny quantum physics joke. You know? Yeah, is the, is the seal alive or dead? I, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> exactly, exactly, yeah. Um, so... Uh, but thank you, thank you very much for having me. Uh, I just FYI, I'm, I'm not going to be able to stream as long as I had hoped. I got something coming up, but that's all good, man. Hey, they can come you. right back here. <laughs> yeah, and they we're, we're going for a long time. Yeah, we're going a little bit longer on these than we originally thought, so it's going to take us a while to get up to 15 anyway. So it's all good. Don't worry <laughs> yeah. about it. And honestly, if if I'm being honest with you, I've just been stalling for Ryan because he's going to be a little late. Oh, uh, okay. Which is fine right. because we're not even close to FF14, so he's good. <laughs> As it turns out. Yeah, you so. guys are never getting there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, All right, guys. we appreciate you, man. Thank you. Talk Absolutely. to you later. Likewise. All right, see ya. All right, let's see here. <coughs> Whoops. Yep. Close this up. And... And hold on, I gotta turn off the Final Fantasy VII music. There it is. Okay. Do we have Oluvids ready yet? Let me send him a direct message. Let him know we're ready for him. Hey, there hello. he is. Hey, uh, Oluvids, what's up? What's up? I'm good. I'm ready to play some Fallout Fantasy VIII. Don't let me swap over. Heck yes. Heck yes. Let's let get me get your... Your stream going here. Okay, we're on your uh-huh. channel. Let me get the uh, right. the link. Game, game, come on, game, come on, game. And post that to my chat so that they can give you a follow. All right, there you go. Game's on. All right. I am good to go, I think. Here is the link to Oluvid's stream if you guys want to watch him play Final Fantasy VIII. Welcome, by the way. Thanks for joining hey. us. Hey, thanks for having me. Yeah. yeah. Um, Howdy. Let me switch to yeah, you so. here. Here we go. Okay, so tell us a little bit about your experience with FF8. You played it pretty recently for the first time, right? Yeah. Uh, my The first time I played it was like five months ago, like really recent. Cause oh, like, dang. Yeah. Uh, it's the latest mainline that FF I've played. But yeah, oh, really? I played like a, Whoa. A, a, yeah. yeah <laughs> That's like, awesome. Uh, I've played a couple of Final Fantasies before this, and this was like always the elusive title for me because like I played 7, uh. I played 9, so it was like... That's yeah. the one game in the PS1 trilogy that I just I, I know nothing about. So <laughs> randomly, I'm like, you know that was kind of me, me too. You know, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm like, I, I want to play an, another Final Fantasy game. I, it might as well just do this, like, yeah. you know. And yeah, so I played it. I did like all the stream series and all that. I had a lot of help, thankfully. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, so it's it's so, very. So how good. do you, how you do you wanna... feel about it in in comparison to the other PS1 games? Okay, so 
it's not my favorite. My favorite, I would say, is nine. Yeah. But, oh, cool. Yeah, I love nine. Nine. Is a, yeah. Um, I think what's interesting about it is that it tells a story in a very different way from the other ones, from any other yeah. FF I've played, where it's like, it's a very focused. You know, like it's like, hmm. it tells the story naturally. And if you really want to like dive deep into like other stuff, you gotta do some side content, look around, search around, and all that. Um, it's got different aspects with like time and Laguna, which Laguna is my favorite character in this game, by the way. Oh Laguna's yeah, awesome. Laguna, 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 Laguna. So all his scenes, great, perfect, peak. But uh, yeah, so I think it's really interesting. I really like the junction system. I love how much customization you could do with the character. This is like a really experimental, yeah, experimental game because it's like it's very, it's it's very unique. I really like the gameplay. Um, the characters are cool. The story is, I think, wild. Like. So much like stuff happens in the story, and it's like, whoa, yeah. okay. <laughs> and uh, I'm I, I'm totally. a Kingdom Hearts fan, so I'm like, okay, oh, cool, giving me those types of vibes. Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah. Uh, yeah. Just in terms of like my background with uh, Final Fantasy in general, I went from uh, Kingdom Hearts and then went to this because I found out about this later, and I'm like, okay, cool. Uh, so yeah, it's like I'm getting those kind of vibes. Like, you know, it's got the same writer. It's got uh, like, you know, Nomura's yeah. on there along with Noji. Yeah, Nomura character designing and yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, really interesting that you bring that up because this is kind of where the Final Fantasy team split a little bit. So they had all been kind of mm -hmm. one team through the first seven games, and now they kind of split into three different teams. They had one team working on this one, which is a lot of the kind of lead developers that go on to yeah. work on Kingdom Hearts and Final Fantasy thirteen and things like that. So you see a lot yeah. of the similarities. Final yeah, Fantasy ten, definitely. Um, and then you know Sakaguchi and his sort of uh, OG team. They go to make Final Fantasy nine, which feels a lot more like the traditional series mm -hmm. uh, through definitely, the yeah. NES and SNES titles. Um, and then you know you got the MMO that was developed and things like that. So. Um, yeah. Anyway, it, the, 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 we started to see a lot of differences in between the styles of how each game was developed. Oh, sure. This was kind of the first one that really went pretty radically different direction. Even yeah, just visually. Yeah. So I guess we could hop in. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Start it. Yeah, so, so we could show what the big change was. Yeah. But uh, thank you for the follow, Dizod, and uh, yeah. Hopefully, some people are Kingsley. Yeah, coming over to your to your, to your stream. Show yeah. Too. yeah. So. Yeah. so Immediately first, we got two things here. We got the choir in the background. Mm -hmm. We got oh, the yes. nice playing beach. This. That's right. Um, and I mean, we'll see characters in a second, so, but oh, not seventy-eight. What am I doing? <laughs> this will work. I'll be here. It's a good intro. It's a really good intro. Oh, this um, is the PC version. Get rid. And this too. All of this does remind <laughs> me a lot of Kingdom Hearts. Just the beach and yeah. the text with the dot dot dots and the yeah, question it's like, marks. Yeah, it's like a Kingdom Hearts intro. Yeah, straight it's up like Kingdom Hearts. Yeah, island and. Uh, yeah, we got Renault. So you can see the characters are looking a lot different compared to like mm -hmm. seven. Yeah. Yep, um, a lot more proportional. They really like, yeah, they had. I, uh, I looked it up. They add like motion capture and all that. Mm -hmm. They move a lot better, and uh, yeah, just like they really. Uh, this is like when I think my in my opinion when the FMVs really start looking good. I think yeah. sevens are all right, but it's yeah, like this is where like yeah, yeah, this looks like what you expect from Final Fantasy, you know? Yeah, next level. Uh, and that, yeah. that was kind of, yeah. that's kind of how it worked for uh, th when they got towards the end of a console life cycle. That's when they really yeah. started figuring out how to maximize the visuals and stuff. And the first yeah. ones were awesome for their time. But then you look back and like, oh, man, they came yeah. a long way over those <laughs> yeah. five years, right? Oh, yeah. Same with yeah. like Final Fantasy. Well, Final Fantasy X still looks great. But sure. from there to like 12 or yeah. from Final Fantasy 4 to Final Fantasy 6, yep, there's yep. like a big difference between the third versus the first, right? Yeah. Oh, here we got the fight here between uh, Squall and Cipher. Yep. Like With it's the, like the a feather the fight. The intro really like you know, <laughs> it hits you. <laughs> the wings, yeah. the wings on the got, back uh, of her. Yeah, sure, we've got Adea. Looks like yeah, yeah, Adea. Um, yeah, it's actually certain scenes from the game in the actual plot that's in here. Now that I'm now that I'm looking yeah. at it after I beat the game. Right. It's kind of like a, is... it's kind of like a trailer for the. Yeah, game it shows a lot of what's coming. Yeah, yeah, which is interesting. Most games don't opt to do to show a trailer for the game you're already playing. Yeah, it'd be yeah. like showing a trailer for a movie. Like you watch the trailer first, then you yeah. watch the movie that you just saw a trailer for. Yeah, um, but I think this was put in here at least on purpose. Look at that. This way, um, yeah. as a as a hook Short to get people idea. interested because um, the game does have a bit of a slower start. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I remember one of the prevailing themes for how this was used as an intro. 
uh, yeah. you know, not to spoil too much about how time works in the game, but that <laughs> yes. this was some kind of like premonition <laughs> that, that Squall uh, was seeing about events possibly coming up. Because he wakes up, maybe. Kind of, yeah, he's right. Like, and maybe. so, gotcha, like, gotcha. Uh, there's like some kind of tear, maybe, where he's like seeing some things that may be coming up. Mm. And that's not official or anything, it's kind of just a fan theory, but I thought it's it was possible. an interesting one. Boom, they both get each other with a little double star. Yep. It's showing, it's even, yeah, it's showing some late stuff, too. Like, uh, it's actually yeah, kind of it surprising is. to see. Uh, <laughs> but nobody knows what it means, right? Yep. Yeah. I think this game almost requires playing twice yeah. to really feel like you understood what Literally, happened. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's one of those. It's just like too you, bad that it's so long that... I, I, I yeah. like games where they want you to replay it, but you can just go back through chapter selects. That's more of like a modern gaming thing. Oh, yeah. But yeah. Uh, I think, like, if I'm not mistaken, I think Final Fantasy 15 allows that to some degree. It does. Uh, mm. Yeah. People have been telling me that Final that. Fantasy 14 actually has this, oh, where really? you can go back and play previous uh, bosses and chapters and huh. things like that. And so, uh, anyway, we got him waking uh, up here. Yeah, so this is after the fight. Uh, Kadowaki. Okay, I guess. Says the Doctor Katowaki, mm. Doctor Katowaki. Yeah. So yeah, I'm also playing on the the original PS1 version. Nice. Uh, so you know, uh, it'll look a little blurry, but it's okay. I'm yeah. fine with it. No, I think I played, it looks great. Uh, I played seven and nine the same way, so I'm like, let me keep it consistent with how I'm doing. It looks it. great. It looks fine. Uh, yeah. And yeah, so also another big difference in game, they're like not little chibi guys. They're fully proportioned and mm -hmm. all that. Mm -hmm. Um, so that was a right. big step up. Yep, that was uh, uh, little... something that was a, actually a big disagreement between Hironobu Sakaguchi oh. and Yoshinori Kitase a little bit, uh, oh, which man. is why they went back to the chibi models for FF9, because Sakaguchi led that yeah. one. He, well, he <laughs> thought that that's how they should be. Nice. Yeah, I yeah. mean, they do. I mean, they both games yeah. look amazing. It's yeah. just a little bit of a disagreement philo philosophically, I guess, <laughs> to how Final Fantasy games should look that they had between yeah. the two of them. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, that's why they look so much different here in comparison to any of the other first nine games. Really, because they almost universally were chibi, and then they had yeah. little but taller models for the battles, and then like tiny, smaller yeah. models for when you're exploring. Like, seven had like taller models, for, yeah, like I had it for the battle mm -hmm. fully, but only that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I'm yeah, gonna pull since this isn't my main file. I'm gonna pull a little little thing here. I'm gonna go Kingdom Hearts mode. I'm gonna just yeah, name Leon, 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 Leon. <laughs> just because I can. <laughs> That's Leon. what I first knew him as. Um, Leon the Professional. <laughs> Love it. Uh, I'm going to go with that. I actually named his Griever Leon later on. And, uh, oh, nice. You know, I won't go into, I guess, in case there's spoilers, in case you haven't played it, but I, I wasn't for a surprise. You know, I, I thought it was just a little <laughs> name that yeah. and whatever. Yeah. Um, Leon Lionheart. <laughs> Leon Lionheart. Leon, yeah. <laughs> <Squall Lionheart. laughs> That's pretty funny. Uh, what's going on, guys? I was 14. All right. Um, da -da -da -da. Yeah, so training. So, so this game this is going to be give us like an introduction to uh, the school here, the Balam. Yeah, Valley, right. Yeah. yeah. So this game is very different from Seven in like its setting. Uh, it's still like a kind of futuristic looking kind of thing, but this yes. time you're like a student. You take place. You know, everyone comes from the schools and all that. Uh, I want to be yeah. School is like a super angsty. Yeah, as a <laughs> yeah. They haven't really done that yeah, since, yeah, right? Teenager, yeah, um, the whole like, like, like I'm a student in a school, and we're I like, guess, well, there's the, the, the like Final Fantasy. Fantasy. This is Harry um, Potter, straight up. The PSP spinoff of the Fabulous over Crystallis series. Uh, yeah, type Zero. Type Zero. That's yeah. the one. Oh, they did, they did do that, that in Type Zero. It was, oh, a, right. it was a school setting, like a, a military academy kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. So that's kind of thing. It's the school, but it's not normal high school. They're training up mercenaries. Exactly. Kistis. Yeah, is our other character right here. Yeah. Talking about um, Final Fantasy VII with their eco-terrorist controversy, yep. and uh, FF8 yeah. is uh, training children to be mercenaries, yep. which is uh, just overlooked uh, by most people who play the game. <laughs> oh They're just like, gosh. oh, this is fine. Sid's a good guy. <laughs> <laughs> Again, playing this for the second time. I know, time. right? Right? Uh, right? You uh, see this and you go, wait a that. second. I'm like, see, yeah, I, I, didn't always, even, I didn't realize. I yeah. always assumed that that was um, Whoa. the other okay. girl. Oh, um Renoa, you thought yes. that was Renoa. Well, yeah. well, when you first played the game, and you're thinking back, and yeah, it's they like, got that oh. similar, um, like hair and looking thing yeah. in here, yeah. But yeah. it's not, it's not Renoa. So interesting. That was interesting. Okay, yeah, this game's gonna be an interesting second playthrough. Yeah. There's a uh, squall he's, teacher he's, here. Yep, looking yep. So she's pretty young for a teacher, but basically yeah, the same I think age. She's 17, yeah. 18. Yeah, yeah, she's, same uh, age. Yeah. <laughs> um. 
What's going on, Kisses? How you doing? How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> well, she hits on us, actually. It's yeah. kind of... Oh, yeah. That's true. She, she's <laughs> definitely... Well, it's just like... It's pretty funny. Squall, right? <clears throat> All right. I love the soundtrack for this game. I always go it's back and forth good. on whether this is my favorite, but... Yeah. Right now, because I'm listening to Final Fantasy VIII music, it's my favorite. <laughs> it has I, just, my favorite, I freaking uh, love it. It has my favorite victory fanfare. I could say that like completely. Oh, I, I like the little. I, know, I like the vibe of the victory fanfare. It's so good. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we've got a bunch of students here. Clouds like you know, out his regular uniform. I'm mean, regular clothes, but he gets a uniform later. Yep. Um, his uh, his. She just completely uniform. reads him like a book. Yep, she knows exactly what he's going to say before he says it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I, I really love the way they use text boxes in this game in particular. Yeah, where they pop around. Yep, they yeah, they pop around the screen yeah, a little it's bit. Like it's a, not yeah, just like fixed a, like yeah, before. Yeah. So they use That's that true. to a great effect. Uh, in not, 9, they end up actually creating a text bubble out of it, which is That's true. better, yeah, I think. Good. But yeah. uh, I like how they popped it around to suggest who's talking here and how they used parentheses and things like that to suggest this is a person's yes. thoughts. Yeah, like thinking, they grade yeah. the text. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes the text is, is gray or whatever. Yeah. This is another really cool thing this game does. It's like it mixes FMVs with uh, regular gameplay. You'd be walking yep. around. The yeah, like this moving. one. It's like, whoa. <laughs> like, <laughs> and it's seamless. They do it's such a good job. Impressive. Yeah. Like, oh, it's absolutely. Seamless. And they yeah, do it a lot throughout this game. A lot. Like, it's really cool. Wow. Like, I still, I don't care if it's 2023. That's still really cool. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, it's also kind of funny sometimes. I, I make Squall like be running around in circles while there's a big cinematic moment, but, you know. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> yes, exactly. Course. You could do yeah. funny stuff while it's, you know, the camera's moving around. <laughs> Super dramatic. Yep. Uh, See, so yeah, we're out here in the class. And yep. I thought, like, this is so cool. Having it at your desk is like, now nowadays kids have like tablets and laptops right, at right. school, but like you back know, then, being it was like, younger, oh, that's it's so like sweet. you have a you computer, computer at your desk. Computer that's terminal. So sick. <laughs> yeah, it was like a futuristic. I mean, I will see later yeah. on. This is a very special uh, location. This this school here, but uh, yeah. Balam Balam Garden. That's what it is. Yeah. Yeah, Balam Garden. Yeah. So and we're getting uh, ready, uh, one thing to know for anyone who wants to start playing Final Fantasy VIII, you're interested in it, read all of the stuff, all the info uh, that's in available the in your computer yeah. at your desk. There is so much stuff <laughs> about the yeah. world. In, just in general in this game, as a, as a bit of advice, talk to NPCs and always go through all of the uh, sort of like data and notes that you get in the menu, yeah. in the, the computer terminal here. There's so much stuff in world building that is sort of filled in by yeah. outside uh, sources other than the main story, you know, text boxes and things like that. Mm -hmm. So if you want to understand yeah. how the story works mm -hmm. and not be like super confused by the end, I would <laughs> really suggest that you do that. <laughs> it's yeah, really that's important. Why, uh, today, that's why I was like, I'm going to do a bunch of side quests because, yeah, by the end, oh, I felt you. like there's definitely a lot more I need to learn about yeah. this. So I'm going to be <laughs> yeah. like, Looking through some stuff and going through. So that's why I named it uh, Let's Explore the Lore. Let's learn more about what's going on. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah Final Fantasy likes to do that, quick. though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Go ahead and, and check it out and just kind of show people. Uh, yeah, you come into the computer yeah. terminal here. You turn it yeah. on. There's all kinds of little yeah, yeah. info that you can learn. Basics yeah, about the garden, stuff. garden square, one, school uh, festival uh, committee. This all funny that. Thing. It's a funny thing to see progress. I won't, like, go into it fully, but... Yeah. Uh, if it'll, if it'll load up. There we go. So, yeah. Uh, whoever was running it before, like, I left, so, uh, oh well. Yep. Hopefully so, we're gonna get a new character who's gonna be taking over this. This character will join our party later. Yeah. Yeah, so it's like, some you could go back and check up on throughout the game. Uh, let's see. Uh, right, alright. I'm gonna keep yeah. it moving a bit. I'm gonna go Yeah, yeah, go ahead and do that, but just what, so uh, people know. Uh, that I would definitely suggest that. Yeah. We're actually going to jump into FF9 now, but uh, if okay. you guys want to continue watching Final Fantasy VIII, the, 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 the link here is still pinned in the chat. Uh, go give Oluvids a follow, and we may be returning here uh, a little bit later when something uh, when key moments come up, but we're going to skip over to FF8 now. Appreciate you, man. All right, see ya. Thanks for having me. All right, see you. peace out. Yeah. All right, let me... Switch to that. Let me get a whole. Uh, let me turn the Final Fantasy VIII music off. Come on, 
I got so much stuff going on on my screen. <laughs> it's like so hard to keep it straight. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. So we're going to have 8-bit D, I believe, on Final Fantasy 8. Or 9, I should say. I'll send her two pings, one there and one over here, just to make sure she sees it. Man, hearing that Final Fantasy VIII music took me back to the very start of our podcast. It was the very first one we did. What is it, almost three years ago? I think it was about three years ago. Yep. twenty Almost to yeah. the month, yeah. yeah. Almost exactly, yeah. Yeah, June, three years ago. Can't believe that. It's crazy. Amazing. Amazing hey. how time... Fu- oh, hello, hello. How Sorry. are you? Howdy, howdy. You're good. <laughs> I'm loud. How, Sorry. How awesome. are you? No, <laughs> no, good. I just I just wasn't expecting it. You're doing good great. level. Okay. Did I get a link for your stream here? I okay. did put it okay. right there. There it is. Yeah. There it is. Okay. I've got it, and I'm pulling it over here, and then I'm going to copy the link, and I'm going to put it into my chat. So chat, go follow 8BitD. Hi. And I'm pinning that message for everybody. I will. Oh, all right. We're right in the big. Be- here we are. Oh, Final good. Fantasy here we nine. go. Okay. What part of the game are you at currently? We're. We are. So we're. We've been rambling for twenty years. So. We're, <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. We are. Uh, yeah. We're. We're just getting to the end of the play where uh, our uh-huh. friends, our friend Steiner, unfortunately, chased our uh, lovely buds, and Vivi just used magic for the first time, and everyone's all minds right. are blown. <laughs> so. All right. Uh, so we're kind of still towards the beginning of the game. That's great. Yeah, very yeah. nice. I love the intro to Final Fantasy VIII so, or IX so much. It has we, like, oh my the, goodness. The, yeah. it's, it's it's like this whole setup, this it's whole good. first like set piece and like the plan to go kidnap the princess and she actually wants to be kidnapped you find out right. and I know. Then st- it's just like it's just and like holy how, crap there's how, all these um, parts moving and you, it, it, you can't help but yeah. be so interested in where it's going i right. love it right and <laughs> the thing with the two tonally compared to what's come like we were just talking about this before y'all rolled through but the mm. the tone of this is such a shift from previous games like we've got we're starting with war crimes and violence and <laughs> yeah. like slavery yeah. in other games and even Queen eight, Brown. it's like yep. someone got a scar, you know, and they're yeah. all yeah, just yeah. so violent. And this mm-hmm. is just Vivi's walking around trying to go to see a play. Yep, <laughs> it's just yeah, so, he's just trying yep. to live the normal life. Yep, it's so uh, just so the, heartfelt, and it's sometimes yeah. I don't know, it's just a welcome shift, and it kind of yeah. I guess pays tribute to that desire that the team had to go back to the basics and kind of do that watershed yeah. through the series. And mm-hmm. it's yeah, there, it there's, a, there's a sense. It's like a, there's a whimsical sort of charm to it that has almost more of a fairy tale. Yes. For nine. feel to it oh, yeah. more, more than like some kind of, you know, dark fantasy or something gritty. Right. Yeah. And yeah. I really love that about this game. It's, it's got that like classic fantasy, classic fairy tale, sort of feel to the story and its tone. It's got amazing humor, but yeah. also yeah. really good juxtapo- ju- juxtaposition to the heartfelt like trauma that the characters feel. There's this perfect yeah. balance between the two things that it, it achieves better than any other game in the whole series. Hmm. It, yeah. it, I don't even think it's close. Yeah, it's... Yeah, what it, yeah. It's wild to me too because I think that's the, my favorite thing about it and why it's my absolute favorite. Because prior to this, my my absolute favorite was always four, and I feel like yeah, it kind really of nice. took a lot of elements of that tonally with those character arcs that are kind of really formative shifts in their belief mm-hmm. systems, and and yep. we see that a lot with like Steiner specifically. Yeah, and it's that's right. I don't know. It's and it's also just a, the, the replayability of this. I have played this more times than I care to admit, and I'm always catching something <laughs> different each time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's really beautiful. So what, what, you're playing the PC version with mods here? Is that, is that yeah, right? Yeah, so we're using... It looks mo- so I'm, good. Yeah, it it's looks clean. It's this mod. I'm not a mod person. I'm an original hardware person. I okay. very rarely will go off original hardware. Yeah, I'm yeah. a purist. <laughs> Magori mod, which was just linked in my chat, is mm-hmm. a 10 out of 10. Mm-hmm. It doesn't affect anything other than the visuals. Uh, yeah, it looks it, great. It's yeah. beautiful. It takes those like up rendered character models from the re-releases on Steam, but uh-huh. redoes the backgrounds. 
Wow. And it oh, is nice. just stunning. And it's my, f it's the only game that I will usually just dive in and play on PC for that reason. I absolutely does it, love it. Does it increase the battle speed for the ATV? You can. You okay, have good. options to do so. That's awesome because that's one of the things about this game that for me makes it a bit of a slog is the battles are really slow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's probably the only negative I have with this combat system. I love the return to four <coughs> party members. That was very welcome. Yes, four. Yep. <laughs> yep. I tell you what, who who yeah. needs remakes when you can just like mod the game, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. I know, exactly. There's been a lot of noise about an FF9 remake. Mm. I don't know exactly yeah, what's going on. how do you feel on, about that? <laughs> you know, if you can mod the game and vary your experience while preserving like the core of the game itself, uh, I don't, I just, there is no need for a remake. There just isn't. Yeah. But it's funny because I, remakes, so. I was at the 16 pre-launch party and of course oh, this was all anyone were you? Was How was that? Yeah, it was so fun. Oh my yeah, gosh, we had awesome. such a good time. Congratulations. Uh, and we were bugging Square staff about this because this and the yeah. tactics rumors are just so intense. Uh-huh. And they were very hesitant to say anything about the tactics stuff with kind of a little wink wink <laughs> with this. Everyone was like, no, no, no. No, yep. no. So it was really interesting. I mean, I don't know if that means anything, but it was just an interesting difference in tone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I do feel like, I don't know, I'm not a, personally a huge fan of remakes anyway, but I, I, I just know, don't feel like this here. needs yep, it. Me neither. Me neither. Final Fantasy IX does not need a remake. It doesn't need it. No. I, I'm actually of the opinion that basically no game needs a remake anymore. No. <laughs> I, I, I love going back and playing well, old games. <laughs> with the modding community, you can... You can do, you can up res, you can do all sorts, you can speed up the battles, you can do the quality of life improvements, just, you know, the community of the modders kind of do it themselves. You yeah. don't have to go so far as to ground up, remake the game so that it fits like, a, you know, a, a super modern uh, action yeah. combat system. You right, know? Yeah. right. I agree. And I think with this game specifically too, it's gonna, it would be so hard for a remake, I think, to truly capture the, the tone like of these visuals i don't know I, I just think this team did such a good job with this but i mean i know yeah. everyone's really excited about the uh i don't know if you've seen the memoria project oh Anyone's no seen that? oh no yes so i that? did did you see yeah. that no, it was a, so. uh, it's like a bunch of game developers got together yeah. and they just made like a, in unreal engine 5 just a short uh. little demo that they they didn't release for people to play they just released yeah. a video but yeah. it's like a remake of final fantasy 9 done in this really high level and you should definitely see it <laughs> okay yeah definitely Interesting. i just watched it last night because i was filming a youtube video to react to it and i was stunned i the whole i'm the biggest no remake nine doesn't need it it's perfect like, yeah. 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 and yeah. even that i was like because i think they captured the only graphical style that would make sense for it Oh, really? Yes. It was still yes. very charming and had that, you could feel that like a mono design mm. influence in it. I don't know. It, it was, it was, it's great. It's definitely worth a watch. You should definitely see it. For sure. Yeah. Wow. It was, it was pretty cool. I was, I was really impressed with it. I was, yeah. I was like, wow. You know, if they did it like this, I, I would probably be into a, like yeah. a full 3D, like modern sort of remake of FF9. Yeah. Is it turn based? Forest. It, well, I, I don't even remember if there was combat in that demo. Did they show combat? I don't remember. Yeah. They in, in did the, not. Okay, yeah. It was just basically Vivi going through and kind of just the very intro cinematic kind of thing. Wow. Well, yeah. And he was sort of yeah. running through the town and hmm. stuff Going like through that. Alexandria. There's voiceovers in it, like voice acting, well, I'm, which was I, I strange. Guess it's not that remakes can't be done properly. Yeah. It's just that they aren't ever <laughs> done properly. <laughs> I, mean, I yeah. shouldn't say ever. They aren't usually done properly. And so I'd rather just not worry about it. Yeah. But like yeah. if someone's going to do it properly, sweet. Um, I'll wait until yeah. I see it. I, I still uh, but if they do it, cool. I'm not saying it can't be done. I still haven't. There's been a few come out this year that people say are really good. So yeah. like Resident Evil 4 and oh, yeah, uh, Dead Space. Yeah. Yeah. I really well, I want to try Resident them. Resident Evil but, yeah. like 2 was a great remake. It's an example of what I think mm. that should be. It just made it oh, more sure, accessible. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a disabled gamer, so anything that oh, increases yeah. accessibility, I'm all about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so that for me is like a big, a big box that I love to get ticked. So like that, I'm all about it. Like Legend of Dragoon, for example, I'm like, please, yeah. if you're gonna touch a game, do that one. It, it needs, yeah. it needs help. Oh I yes, can't play it <laughs> yes, anymore. yes, it does. Gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> yeah, it it induces seizures for me because the oh, frame rates no and everything so i oh, went back wow. to play it recently and i was like oh my god i can't play this anymore wow. chrono cross was a similar deal so i'm like all right that kind cross? of stuff i get it makes it more yeah. accessible or like a crisis yeah. core reunion it's 
Sure. You know, yeah. mm, right. it wasn't a, no one had a PSP anymore or whatever. That's right. my, I'm okay right. with it. But yeah. nine, I'm like, that's my baby. And the fans <laughs> have done such a good job here. I don't know. Look at these backgrounds. I know, right? Oh, these this are is beautiful. Fantastic. Yeah. It looks so good. The, the upscale backgrounds are just really well done. Yeah. Like, yeah. That, that is very smooth. And the, the and 3D models, the models actually seem to fit the background, like, pretty well. Possibly better yeah. than the original game, even. Uh, sometimes... Unlike on like eight if, remake, I mean, <laughs> the remaster of eight. Where it's, oh, for sure, it's exactly. painful to look at. Exactly. Yeah, Either so you blurry. got the pixelated models on the nice background, or you got the pixelated background with the really fine, you know, character models and stuff. I think on yeah. the CRTVs, it looked, it made a little bit more sense. Yeah. When you play it now, mm -hmm. though, and you can get the lines to be like perfectly uh, straight, yeah. it, and then you, there's a resolution mismatch, right? Sure. But this seems to fix that. It's really nice. Yeah. Yeah, it does a really good job. Also, just the sequence of crashing. Oh, God, uh -huh. the active time events. So good. This yes. is my yeah. favorite. I love these, too. You get all these. Uh, and they, they kind of have something like this in Final Fantasy 16, now that I think about it, with the active time lore. Active time lore, which yeah. is. Yeah. That oh. might actually be a callback to this. I a didn't little even bit. think about that. Now, they don't play huh. scenes out. It just kind of gives you descriptions of things. But here, I love how they have. Huh. Scenes you can go watch other scenes happening elsewhere in the world. Same That's pretty time. cool. Yeah. yeah, I do like that where it actually takes you. Sometimes it takes you away for a while. Yeah, yeah, and there's a bit of replayability to it too because there are some of these that are uh, limited to, uh, like you can't. There's certain triggers for them, or if you watch certain ones first, you won't get them in sequence. So on subsequent well, subsequent playthroughs, it is possible to see different like active scenes which i think is fun it kind of gives a tiny yeah. bit of replayability to it sure hmm. and it's the perfect way to make the party not feel disjointed yeah, yeah. but this game in particular i think of all the final fans we talked about even six which very much has a motif to like stage play sort of presentation yes yeah this one like has it the most of all of them <laughs> i love <laughs> like you cut away yeah. there and it's, it's just it's like they, you know, transitioned the stage to another yeah. scene, then yep. transitioned back. It, yeah. I just, I love how these games felt presentationally during this era. Yeah. Uh, and, and this one was definitely more so that way than 8, which was going more for the cinematic touch. But Yeah. It yeah, just, those it's transitions so in 8 from the FMVs to, like, the yes. actual action, that's, I wish 9 had a little bit more of that. Yeah, those were cool. For sure. That was just Square doing, you know, what they were known for at the time. <laughs> I totally skipped all the dialogue in the ship. I need to go back. Oh, no. Oh, no. I got too excited. I got too excited. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That's that's a heck of a raid. Hi, Retro Island Gaming. Oh, we got a lot of people coming in. That's a lot I, of I love that. I love that animation you got there at the bottom with the, oh, the yeah, pixel sprites alert. running. That's amazing. <laughs> Yeah, wow. Yeah, it's all Final Fantasy themed around here. We just got a so Torgal cool. emote today, too. So we're, we're ready for 16. Thank you did so you, much for the raid, everybody. Did you do those animations or did you have someone do those for you? My artist, uh, Kimchi, awesome. is fantastic. And I'm going to plug him really quick because he, yeah, has, a charity, he has a charity shop oh. uh, where he sells Final Fantasy themed merch and donates the profits to uh, this month's Trans Empowerment Fund. Oh, cool. Yeah, no, we, have to go. we didn't like actually to have to out. go in there. Sorry, my brain is breaking. But welcome in, Raiders. Hi, hello. I am joined today by Mike and Kaysen of Wrestling and Arc. Do you want to introduce yourselves to the community? Sure, we'd love to do that. Uh, so we run a YouTube channel called Resonant Arc, where we have a podcast that talks about uh, storytelling, particularly like the thematic storytelling of old RPGs oh, and new yep. ones too. We, we just got done Near with Automata. Near Automata, yeah. but we've done Xenogears in the past and a bunch of Final Fantasy games. Uh, talk about yep. the storytelling and, and how rich it is and how, how deep it goes and try to bring out some of those philosophical themes and the references being made to, you know, real life uh, psychology and religion and yep. philosophy, philosophy and yeah. stuff like that. Um, so uh, that's our podcast, and then we also will do uh, retrospectives and reviews and video essays from time to time on on RPGs, but also other games, but mostly RPGs. <laughs> yeah, mostly I think most RPGs. of my people know I sent we we do a lot of deep dives into eight. That's like my favorite to do. The, oh, very nice. I just feel like it's the most misunderstood of them, so I, oh, I tend 100%. to dive into that a lot. 100%. So I always was sending people your way uh, for uh, that. So I'm nice. like, they get it. 
<laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. We appreciate it. No worries. Well, welcome All in. All right, everybody. so we got we got a trance going on here. This is this game's version of Limit Breaks. How yes. do you feel about right. the trance system? It's probably one of the bigger cons for me. Yeah. I, you it's lose so control, it's right? So it's so random. Yeah. It's never, well, you, it never works out when you need it. I ever. know. You, you can't could choose save, when to use it. You could save up the limit break. In, yeah. in Final Fantasy VII, you yeah, could. Yeah, but not... And Final not. Fantasy yeah. VIII, you could just choose to use it or not, but you had to be, like, you had to lose a lot of HP to get there. Or the, right. I think there's an accessory that can make you get it more commonly. Uh, but, right. Uh, you can kind of yeah. manipulate the system, though, to use it to your advantage in that one. Yeah. Here, it's like, there's nothing you nope. can do. It just happens. <laughs> <laughs> B points out it's a nightmare in the speed run. I can only imagine. Oh, I, I, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I can only imagine. And yeah, like these abilities, I'm like, I don't, it's fine. I do love the designs though. And we were talking about that a bit earlier, mm. how a lot of the trance designs have uh, nods to Amano's artwork. Uh, they yep. also just kind of have nods to some character moments and things. So yep. that's a pretty fun little thing to pay attention to when you're playing mm -hmm. through it. Wow, this uh, is... I, I'm yeah. going to have to play this version of Final this Fantasy This specific IX. mod, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. this, this is f f outstanding. It is done so well. It's really well done. It's like, and of the first time I played this, I was like, this is free? Like, this is where we are as a fandom? <laughs> like, it's it's basically, it's what you would want from a remake, <laughs> yes. honestly. Just give yeah. me this. This, this, is what, yeah. this is what I want. Yeah. Yep. I just want the game to be widescreen. No weird the, fonts. The, the font changes. Even the I know. remasters. Oh uh, my I had a mod of fonts yeah. in those. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we were just playing uh, FF6 and FF2 on the stream, and I had so many mods on them for, <laughs> you know, character yeah. portraits instead of those weird little colored uh, yeah. boxes for the names of the characters and changing the fonts. And some of the tile sets on Final Fantasy VI are just like, what the heck? The water is purple in the ocean <laughs> for some reason. So the modders have yeah. done such a good job of sort yeah. of restoring well, Finishing the game for Square yeah, Enix. Finishing it for them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you don't exactly. get too comfortable there. We'll yeah. be, we'll see. Maybe we'll get an announcement on this one, but the hope is yeah. not. Well, we'll see. I I am pretty sure it's going to happen because a yeah. lot of there was a Nvidia like a leak, leak from yeah, and almost all of the things that have happened have happened. So it's it mm. seems pretty likely that Final Fantasy IX is getting a remake. I mean, I guess point. it means we'll get more merch, you know? That's a <laughs> that, positive yeah, for yeah, me. Yeah. I have a merch problem, so, you know, I'll take it. Collector's yeah. edition, maybe, you know? Take it. You know, if you want, I mean, you can just send those our way, you know? If you can get rid of stuff, you know? <laughs> no, I've just, got uh, my precious. I have my BB with me today. <laughs> like, emotional, emotional support BB when we yep. jump discs and see some Oh, emotional stuff. support uh, BB. I need one yeah. of those. I've also got one of the original dioramas on my desk. <laughs> oh, there you go. Japan. Look at that. That's cool. Oh, yeah. that's awesome. Oh, you got a diorama? Let's. Is well, there a way to see yeah. that? Is there any I way for us to see up. that? Yeah, I can pull nice. them up. Hold on. Blech. Look at that. What is That's streaming? So cool. I don't know how to stream. That's amazing. He's up. Oh, camera's gonna do camera things. Hold on. I got a weird. <laughs> what is streaming? This isn't my job or anything. It's fine. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Uh, yeah, he's standing with Zidane. We're probably gonna die in game because I didn't there pause, but it's fine. There he is. And then so, Zidane's I dead, so we should probably love not it. die in this game. Zidane number one. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. awesome. That's fantastic. It's a great Okay, piece. let's see. We tab back in. We've got a dead Zidane, you know, not paying attention. It's fine. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Do you got Phoenix Downs? Hey, nobody's judging. <laughs> <laughs> no, we got it. It's fine. VB saved the day. <laughs> You keep looking at the v on the yes. Get the VV. That's one of the action plushes. Those are a pretty penny, but they're quality. Mm. VV is my favorite character in the series. I think Same. probably in the whole my series. my number one yeah. in the whole series. Yeah, and he's I feel best. like that's a lot of people because he's so relatable. Mm -hmm. He's relatable, and he's young, but he has the most like difficult uh, adult problems to deal with. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Despite being young and the way he carries it. You know what? Pa part of the reason I like Emil in the in the near, oh, games near yeah. is and maybe at least in part because he re does remind me of a Vivi. Vivi That's a, a little point. bit. Yeah. He's just excited about life though he has like a, a horrific past. Yeah. And and yeah. possibly not good life. Yeah. Um he's <laughs> got 
you know, some of the similar problems, but the, but having a, a, you know, maybe like a 10 year old have those same problems Mm -hmm. is just a really, really interesting way to just kind of humanize the character and to have the character still be excited about life. Mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. So I think we've all had that moment of questioning our existence, right? Like we've all been there. So it's, it's one of those, you know, a lot of these characters, I can't relate to being, you know, chronically loyal like Steiner or mm-hmm. right, that's right, duty right. or sure. that's you know I'm not a very adventurous person I don't relate to Zidane that way it's it's right to have a character like Vivi in this cast it's great and I feel like they did it well too where it's that relatable oh, yeah. you're kind of learning about all these people in this city and that little bit of exposition exploration at the beginning with Vivi without it being Final Fantasy 10 like this is fish out of water Mm. Everyone is giving you exposition. It, it's just a different <laughs> approach that I think really yeah. works very yeah. well. Yeah, yeah, it's fantastic. Look at this room. I know. <laughs> this looks the, so the cool. attention to detail oh in these backgrounds. This is so cool. Was amazing. It's really oh, and, and they it had really mastered it by this time. By the time the ninth the ninth game came out, like the, their pre rendered yeah. backgrounds were just unbelievable. And and you you can. You appreciate them so much more when they're upscaled this way. There's yeah. so much more detail you can see now in HD yeah. that That's you true. wouldn't That's have true. seen in the original game. It's just yeah. like they hold up so well. Yeah. Now, I don't know how much of this was sort of painted over and whatnot right. in the process it's of, of upscaling, just, but I'm yeah. sure that they were trying their very hardest to remain yeah, it's as pretty faithful to the original as they could. Mm-hmm. Their website has like a cool side-by-side. That's that awesome. will show you a lot of the frames, and it's everything's the same. It's just redone very faithfully it's it's yeah. really awesome and this That's game awesome. in general has my favorite setting it has my favorite world building i think it's the best overworld map i love how you go on the overworld map and there's airships going around the world mm-hmm. feels so lived in oh that's true yeah it's so cool. yes especially yeah. Lindblom when yeah. you get to like mm-hmm. Lindblom, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Lindblom. It's yeah. like, so and the cool. whole mist explanation and that's how airships yeah. run it's like i yeah, just it's right. fascinating they they get their engine their fuel from the from the mist yeah yeah. Oh, we you got know, Steiner's theme coming up right as we see Steiner. <laughs> yeah. The character themes too, like Vivi's theme. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So good. So, Zidane having a tail always bugged me when I first played did this it really? game. It did. It actually <laughs> really? really bugged me because you've got Cloud and he looks super cool. He's got his big sword, even with like Squall or other characters in other games. And then I'm like, Zidane is so cool. I want to like him. And then he turns around and he's got this tail. Oh, you're just talking and about how you felt about just it. Just as a kid. Like back when I was younger, younger. Yeah. I played this yeah. game a long time ago. And um, man, I just couldn't get into Zidane. I couldn't like feel like I was him. Oh, because sure. of that tail. <laughs> yeah, I feel like it's like that the smallest what... thing. I don't care anymore. But as a kid, I was yeah. like, Nah, Cloud is way cooler. <laughs> Just because Cloud think... doesn't have a freaking tail. But I think that's what that's happened funny. to this game. And a lot. Of, I mean, there's a million reasons why it wasn't the as, bigger seller, right? Yeah, like the exactly. end of the PlayStation One's life cycle, and then the visual change, and ten I getting announced. I think that's what I'm getting at. Like, yeah. That, yeah. Right I think at that some time. people may have had a harder time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, with that. Yeah, and it's funny because that was Square's concern. At yeah. the time, yeah. like this almost wasn't a Final Fantasy game when it was originally being. Yeah, it was received. originally. Uh, it was originally going to be like a Gaiden sort of side project, mm-hmm. and then later in development became the yeah. ninth installment. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's true, and that's wild to think about. But it makes mm-hmm. sense, and you know, so I much of the fandom. Oh, really? Yeah, that, oh. it's it's an interesting. Yeah, we almost yeah. So get it. Was almost was Sakaguchi still? Yeah, he was still heading the when project. It wasn't a yeah, Final it was just that oh, it was wow. going to kind of be this Final Fantasy guide. I haven't read it up oh. about this in a while, so I wonder like um, what new information, if there is any, since the articles I read like freaking twenty seven, <laughs> eight, nine, ten years ago. I, that's okay. what I'm but, going <laughs> by. I haven't seen yeah. anything recently. But uh, maybe there's been an update to that. But maybe um, in one of his live streams, he let slip a few details. <laughs> maybe <laughs> <laughs> he tends to do that. Good luck uh, yeah. researching those. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's. I think that it was a turnoff for people, and uh, it's interesting that I don't know if it led to a hesitance to kind of go in that direction ever again. I don't know. Mm. It, it's it's hard to say. Well, visually, I love it now. Really been in I that, really we've love been it in now. The Mora land ever since though, you know? Mm-hmm. Yes, exactly. True. Yeah. Uh, but no matter, yeah. you know, artistically, he's he's great. You're just oh, not, yeah. not going to get this anymore. And you know what? That also bugged me about Dragon Ball Z. 
they basically when they turn Super Saiyan, they look like monkeys. Oh, and I'm like, that's that's not yeah. cool. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah, before he goes, before he gets Super Saiyan, he had the the uh, he kind of just turned into a giant gorilla yeah, looking thing, right? right? Yeah, yeah, I swear he has a tail mm-hmm. too. Anyway, he, we don't he, we don't he, need he to. He got go cut on about off that. in Dragon Ball. Oh, like did back he? in the old cartoon. Oh, Goku's okay, tail okay, got cut okay. off. Anyway, enough about Dragon Ball Z. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, we got the evil forest section here. I think we're gonna step over into Final Fantasy X now. But yeah. if you guys want to continue watching Final Fantasy IX. The, in the chat, it's still pinned. The link to go over and check out 8-Bit D's channel. Make sure you give her a follow. Uh, she's great. Thank you for joining us. And we may be returning in a little yeah. while. So We'll probably be much farther along. We're probably get, we're <laughs> going to jump to like disc 3 soon. There we go. Out. That's what, that's what I like stuff. to see. All see right. some stuff yeah. from the end of the game. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, we're going to jump over. Thanks for joining us. We'll yeah, chat with you again in a little bit. In. All right. See ya. Okay. Let's switch back here and get going on FF10. All right. Let's make sure we get Devante. I think he's coming in on the line here any second. Hopefully you guys are enjoying this so far. I think it's going fairly smoothly, despite the fact that yeah, it's good. Um, we're not as far into the series as I had planned. I had planned to be <laughs> basically through 15 by noon, and it's about to be noon, and we're getting to Final getting Fantasy to 10. 10. So moving a little slowly, eh, well. but it's, it's I, I like it. I like the feel. I think it's no. This is fun. I, I like it too. I like meeting new Devante. People. Are you there? Yes. Yes. What's Hello. up, dude? How, How are, are you? you? Nice to meet you guys. Nice. Yeah. Uh, hey. you guys are doing good. Yeah, we're doing good. Uh, did I get a link to your stream yet? Uh, no. Let me. Let me. Yeah. Hit that. me up. Hit me up. Yeah. Give me a sec. I'll do that real quick. Thank you very much. I, I just tweeted it out there. recently, so. Sweet. Sisties. There we go. Put that up there. So we're going to be playing Final Fantasy X oh, here with Devante. Yep. Give us a little bit of uh, background on your experience with FF10. When was the first time you played it? So... My first experience with FF10 wasn't um, playing it. I uh, watched a YouTuber uh, back in like 2008. Oh, there you go. Named Nintendo oh, really? Capri Sun. Yeah. Oh, I know uh, Capri Sun. Yeah. Nintendo. Oh, yeah. Capri Sun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Nintendo Capri so, Sun. Uh, he was playing through 10. And I was like, oh, because I played 7 and 6 before. Um, there you go. Before uh, this game. And I was like, oh. I need to play this. This looks insane. It looks like Kingdom Hearts, basically. Is what my, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> my yeah. thought was because that, <laughs> that was the one I played um, before, yep. like anything else. Um, All right, so th- chat. Here's the link to his stream. I just put it into the chat, and I'm pinning it now. So if you want to go check out uh, his stream on FF10, you can do it there. So now that we've got you up on the screen here, let me switch over to you. And okay. we are now seeing your screen on our stream. So go ahead and get started whenever you're ready. Okay. Well, I forgot to adjust something on my stream. It's uh, all right. Yeah. Quasar D Games. You're good. Yeah, that's my YouTube Very cool. uh, Quasars channel. Are cool. Yeah. yeah. Qua- quasars are cool from a distance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> very important caveat. <laughs> not, not up close. They're not very good. Not, not as cool up close, but you know. <laughs> all right. So we actually just did pretty recently. Uh, not as recently as FF6, but pretty recently we did a <coughs> podcast series on this, so it's pretty fresh in our memories, I think. Yeah, um, I watched that. Um, oh, did you? Lot, oh, actually. good. Yeah, it's one of my favorite uh, favorites of yours. Is, oh, uh, thank that you. That specific podcast series. Yeah, no, you're welcome. Because it's like, um, it made me see the game differently, because I already like looked at it from an like, analytical standpoint, but you guys brought up some points yeah. that I never really like thought of myself, mm, uh, uh, which was like, some of the stuff, like the concept of death and how the game uses it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for a lot of the things and then i was like wow like this like opened my eyes and it's, it's profound it's a deep game yeah. yeah yeah i had i hadn't really until we were doing our preparations for that podcast thought about some of the things that we brought up in that and case and just went absolutely <laughs> like next level on the symbolism um especially like details in the clothing and stuff that i had never yeah. looked at in my yeah ever yeah that was that was one of the things i was like super surprised at because i was like like to me it was just like oh cool character designs and like cool neat Right. Yeah. but why but, are they cool yeah, yeah why are they cool is like really like open my eyes and now i think about that whenever i play any game uh yeah I look at, like 
uh, character designs. I'm like, okay, so this must represent this or symbolize this. Um, yeah. Well, recently, what was so what was so great about that yeah. was mm -hmm. that. Nomura in interviews leading up to the game said specifically that this was the first time where his designs were very intentional in very, that way. Yes, exactly. Not just yes, I'm designing yes. this to look cool, but because it has some sort of tie into the theme of the game, into the story, yeah. into the world itself. You know, this yeah. game may have done it better than any game. Oh, I've, it's amazing. Like, in the games we played since then, I haven't been able to pull nearly as much yeah. from the designs there yeah. um, as I was able to get from, from 10. Yeah. Yeah, it, no, it was clear. Like, yeah, Ten Go ahead. feels like one of those life once in a lifetime types of things. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. that are lightning in a bottle. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like even more so than like FF Seven. I'm bringing the series to like it's a global phenomenon status. It sure. feels like this like for uh, from a narrative standpoint and design standpoint, um, even down to like the gameplay uh, systems feels very different uh, than anything yeah. before or after. Well, I tell you what, I didn't have a PlayStation 2 when this game came out. We were Nintendo kids, so we <laughs> yeah, had game Yeah, same. Yeah, yeah. And I, I you <laughs> know, I, this one. I was I was involved. Like, I, I have my battle scars from the console the wars. The console wars. <laughs> uh, you know, I I yeah. lost some limbs along the way. But, uh, <laughs> but you know, secretly, hopefully, hopefully you lost your secretly not publicly the at the time, but secretly, I wanted to play this game so badly because I loved FF7. I had it on PC, not PlayStation 1. That's and right, I, I was right, waiting. Yeah. Hopefully they would bring a PC version out, which they you know, didn't do yeah. until, yeah. I don't know, a couple of years ago, really. But, yeah. um, but I had a friend who had a PlayStation 2 who had this game, and I would go over to his house to watch him play it and I would sit there smugly and be like, eh, graphics are okay, I guess, you know? Like, <laughs> but like... I Wind loved Waker's it. Better. <laughs> I Wind loved Waker's it. Better. <laughs> I wanted it so bad, and uh, yeah. yeah. Anyway, it's yeah. No, hey man, I, you got to appreciate what you have. It, it yeah. definitely like started this console generation off, like you were saying, with like I don't. It just it, it, it. There was something really special about this time that I have a lot of nostalgia for. Uh, yeah, even same. though I didn't even have the game myself, <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I still feel <laughs> nostalgic for it. <laughs> I yeah. um, I didn't really play it till like 2004 or about uh, 2000 on um, around 2008, so I wasn't nostalgic for it. Like, oh, well, I got a day one either. But I think as I watched that playthrough and just, it, I don't know what it did, what the game, what the game feel like. Oh, like it's childhood type of game. Like it yeah. just feels like you played it when it came out, even if you didn't. Yeah, uh, and it did that for me. And whenever I go back, I think to myself, "Damn, I wish this play. I played this when it came out. I mm -hmm. wish I had a PS2." Yeah. Uh, but I was very happy to have been able to play it in general. Um, yeah. And this is my favorite version of it: is the PS2 version. The PS2 the version. Oh, yeah, cool, PhD. nice. Yeah. I agree. I agree. Yeah. The I like it the better. The Besed too. Mandala is actually better <laughs> in, in in the, the PS2, PS2 version. version. <laughs> when they upresed it, you lost some of the symbolism. They wow. didn't do it exactly the way that I think it that's, should. That's that's interesting. I feel like yeah. that's probably an issue to outsourcing it. Which um, yeah. yeah, yes, yeah, probably true. They, so they they didn't realize the importance of some of those. Yeah, symbols. yeah, exactly. Um, which I'm glad they're doing less now with their games, but I wish this game had come out when they were more in-house remastering yeah. stuff. Yeah, it would have been would have been nicer. Yeah, I I definitely agree though. I, I if I'm gonna go back and play this game, I recently I did the the HD remaster for our um, podcast just to see some of the differences and things. Yeah, yeah. But mm -hmm. in future playthroughs, I'll definitely play the PS2 version from now on. Yeah, the PS2 version just feels like the intended way to play mm. it. I also think the models look better. Um, way better. Oh my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cuz I think I think there's some loss. Um, there was something like, weird. I just I can't believe that, their faces that they did are what just they did. Strange. Yeah, yeah the their faces the that's master. exactly what it is for me. Is but look at this. Waterfalls coming off of buildings. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> like how cool is that? Who thought of that? Who that's, thought of that? Uh, that's a genius right there. I guess, there. <laughs> I guess um, yeah. I think, Actually, uh, no. Who was the art director on this uh, one? It's Yusuke, Yusuke Yeah, Naura. Yusuke Naura. Naura. He was really yeah, good. He was yeah. really good as I, an art I'm director. I'm kind of sad he left the company after 15. because I think. Yeah, what's he doing now, though? That's a good question. Insomnia I don't know. To keep up with him. Uh, he very... works in Insomnia? Yeah, uh, he worked on Insomnia. Oh, he worked on Insomnia. Uh, yes. Oh, oh the, the place. Yeah, yeah the, the city. Place. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think, like, in terms of, like, locations in the franchise, I think he does, like, the best stuff. super good job yeah yeah like 10 has like a lot of my favorite locations um, yeah in the he was game. the he was the art director on nine as well and that has some beautiful cities in oh look at how far nine. down this yeah. city is literally yeah. floating this yeah, is it's, a, it's floating this is on a the floating water. city yeah it's, it's this it's, is it's so cool I love crazy this how like 
in uh, this game like looks even today like I know. for Xanderkin specifically. Yeah. That this yeah. is this is the thing and people when they talk about graphics and stuff, you know, it's like art direction is so much yes. more important. Yes, than, that's what I think too. Like the the actual like number of pixels or the the oh, resolution yeah. of the textures or the animation. Yes. Yeah. Art direction has got to be solid first. And that's what's going to really stick with you and that's what will make mm -hmm. the game age well. Games yes, that just true. go for a, a realistic aesthetic and they're just trying to be as hyper realistic as possible, but have maybe not as much of um, a, a unique sort of like art direction. Mm. Those do not hold up as well in 10 years, 15 years as something that is just aesthetically so different from anything you've ever seen before. Yeah. And yeah. Final Fantasy as a series has always been fantastic. They've always yes, done a very good yes, that I, side I of things. I definitely yeah. agree. I think like, um, like to me to this day, 13 um, specifically aged as well as it did not just because it looks really good um with the crystal tools engine which looks really nice when they do like uh yeah 13 does look and stuff. phenomenal um, yeah it does but it's our direction is like what helps it yeah uh, yeah look as good as it does and same yeah. with, same with 10. I, I gotta I, tell you this I, intro here is yeah. so cool it's so good <laughs> it's so cool it, it <laughs> i love old. it, it and it old. just the energy is so so palpable it is yeah. just like that right there where the yeah. energy yes. explodes and everyone cheers and then you see, oh, it's just this so cool. series has so many and fantastic Aaron. intro ah. sequences. Yes, like yes. FF sevens, FF sixes, FF fours, FF tens. Like there, there's so many of them that are just so yeah. freaking riveting. Like right off the bat, he's like toasting, toast <laughs> the monster the as it's coming. Yeah. Just like what on earth? This is yeah. crazy. <laughs> like you wouldn't really get this anywhere else. Uh, Sometimes even today, you won't get an intro like this with like this insane hard, heavy metal rock chorus while they're I know. in yes. the sphere throwing around a ball and it just yep. like looks Well, they invented a nuts. sport. Yeah, all yeah, yeah. that. Yeah. So cool. So and the cool. way that that sport plays into the culture later yeah. on yes. and it like sort of informs its religion and everything else. Just like, really well built world, I feel like. Uh, spoilers maybe for later in the game, but when they do bring <laughs> up saying, Oh, this is uh this is all we have, like Spira has now is yeah. Blitzball. It like really like tells you yeah. like oh, this is like what they need at yeah. this point right. in time. And, and you, you think about on you think about world. like what what sports are, like at least to some degree, they symbolize that kind of uh Yes. Like almost like an escape, you know. Yep. It's just yes, like a, I agree. And, but you're not fighting a war, but you you're 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 sure. fighting. Yeah, right? you're still it's, fighting. It's a contest. Yes. You don't actually die. <laughs> yeah, but, and then yeah, people yeah. go and watch it, and it's it's cathartic. It's you know, it's it, it's a communal it experience like, with a lot of other people. Yeah, people like use it to like because like uh, I feel like a lot of people need a place to unleash like feelings that they can't normally unleash on a day to day basis. Exactly. And sports. Yeah. Are the way to do that, um, and I feel like as represented in this game uh too like they get it down like perfectly mm -hmm. yeah i thought they did a good job and this, then and man. then the sports as religion motif yep. that they're the connection yeah. between the two it's so mm -hmm. cool because the olympics started out as like they were dedicated to zeus yep. right it was like right. we're oh, going to compete okay. and then the the olympians you know were oh, like the, the you know yeah. the messengers from the gods yeah mm -hmm. and <clears throat> as they would compete, you know, it was almost as if the gods were competing through them yep. and yeah. people were able to watch and you would, you would cheer on your favorite God. Yep, exactly. Right? exactly. <laughs> but it, it, it's so cool. And then it turns into what we have now, which, which still gives you some of that religious experience, but at the yes. same time, you know, um, making it, very, I, I guess, more accessible to a secular culture. Yeah. But, yep. but you mm -hmm. still feel that like when people cheer and see somebody score a goal and everyone yep. jumps up, it's yeah, like everyone's united. You feel yeah, something. Yeah. There's like a spirit <laughs> yeah. that connects everyone there. It's really cool. Yep. It's really really cool. I I, I always love that because uh, I I, you know, I grew up playing basketball, so I really like it. basketball arenas get really loud because they're enclosed spaces versus say like a football stadium that'll be more open. But when you get someone to hit like a big three or a big dunk, and the yeah, whole dude. arena just explodes, yeah, the, the power, energy, the is power. unbelievable. Yeah, the energy is just incredible. Yeah. It's it's really 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 cool. It, it's it's why um, I don't really keep up with sports like that much. But when like finals or something are happening, I always go yeah. Uh, yeah. to make sure to watch that because like mm -hmm. I know that's where like the best energy is going to be uh, uh -huh. for said sport. Right, those are yeah. the highest stakes. Yeah. yeah, and and really, this is so funny. Like. I don't. We don't need to talk about this too much. But I did. I did have one point. I didn't make it in the podcast. Like the land is 
is blessed when the team wins. <laughs> yes, like, right, yes, right, 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 right. Think yeah. about yes. when the New That's Orleans true. Saints won the Super Bowl yeah. after Katrina. After Katrina. And yes. it was like the whole this city. hopeless place. The yeah. whole land was blessed yep. because of this, you know, mm-hmm. this this achievement by that's, the people. That's that what everyone coalesces around. That's that. what the gladiators are out there fighting for: is the blessing of their homeland. Sure, right? exactly. Yeah. And yes. uh, all the people. But it really does thank them when they work, come back though. for yeah. having brought that blessing Having back. Represent- That's amazing. That's an well. amazing uh, observation. That's actually so true. It is. It, um, <laughs> it, it feels like that in this game, too. Like, um, when when the Luka goers, uh, or not Luka goers, I forget, the Poseidon Aurochs, uh, if, you win, if yeah. you win that game, uh, it makes everyone on the team feel like, yeah, we did it for home. We did it for, like, for everyone right. home, back home. It renews it's their like, hope. and yeah. Yes, exactly. It's so good. I, it's really good. I do, like, yeah. love that they were able to get even that little bit down as well as they yeah. Did. yeah especially since a lot of the core themes of the game are somewhat anti-religious like seeing yes. that at least anti the organized controlling yeah the, the, the theocracy yeah. Yeah. anti-theocracy but yeah. the religious the spiritual elements the communal spiritual elements um you know the uh what would you call it the uh ceremonies and yes stuff. Right. like yeah. being being preserved and still having meaning i think is so cool yeah it's great. yeah <laughs> which i which i do i do enjoy that yeah. uh, sorry guys i can't talk about this game without bringing up religion <laughs> no, <that's laughs> well how fine. could you <laughs> yeah i don't know it's, it's, it's imbued it. in there it's imbued yeah. in there uh we just had rob bringing up are these streets flowing water as well and you can kind of see that in the texture there's I'm water flowing too. through the i street. don't I remember that, that yeah. too but uh, I played the HD be. version. I don't remember if that was actually huh. in the HD version or not. Now that I think about it, maybe I just wasn't it, looking. It does look like flowing water, not the, the camera. Um, yeah, yeah. The street the, is there's water the flowing through the street. You can see that yeah. in the. Tangents. I wonder if that's so result of, because of the sin attack, or if it was like that. Before. Oh, that would be a good point. This could be just because of the sin attack. Everything's yeah. wet, yeah. Uh, and they're just showing. Yeah, water's just kind of yeah, all over the place. Yeah, that could be. That could be what it is. Yeah, but I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if that was just a natural part of. Xanarkin because of everything being centered around water. Sure, yeah. They just they normally just have water in their streets. Yeah. Somebody's ex has said the Lakers have won so many championships and I don't feel blessed <laughs> <laughs> from LA. <laughs> Very good point. I think it was dude McKay. Um, yeah, well I'm just saying it's not like it's not like not all literally. The time. <laughs> it's just a f- figuratively it feels that way. No, but bit. like go go to the when the Saints won, it really was a thing, you know, yeah. or when in England, you know, when the, a, a lower underdog wins a game, like every one's just stoked like Denver it's just Nuggets a good time. finally it's won like an Christmas. NBA championship Denver That's Nuggets true. just won did they just win yeah they did yeah, they just they won did. wonder how Denver's doing I know they, we all, my, all my Denver way. friends were stoked yeah, yeah. sick I, I actually have not paid attention to sports since COVID oh. COVID going one year without sports kind of like took me out of sports completely and I <laughs> don't watch them anymore you just don't even follow it anymore yeah not at all yeah Denver Nuggets just won their first championship well, congrats it was, to them again dope they five games they like really they Whoa. dominated the whole yeah. playoffs they were great yeah and yeah. who did they beat? Uh, who else was it? The Miami uh, Heat, the which were an Miami eight Heat. seed. An eight yeah. seed what? made it to the freaking finals. <laughs> it was a cra- <laughs> this year you, was since crazy. Since COVID, things yeah. have just been weird. Like all sports have just yeah. been so strange. It's, everything has changed a oh, little bit. Yeah. It's crazy. It's so funny. All right, so we got Aaron. Uh oh, something, something <laughs> happened here. Crash. Yeah, hold on. Oh, did it crash? Oh yeah, no! That's weird. It hasn't done that before. Um, it's all good, man. Uh, we were getting pretty close to the point where the intro ends, but I, I just to speak on it a little bit more. Mm-hmm. I love that part where Oren is looking up yeah. as like the yes. world is sort of falling apart. He's like, "Are he, you sure? Are you sure?" Yeah. The, the mystery <laughs> behind that question <laughs> so good. was yes, unbelievable. So good. I was like, "Dude, yeah. what is this? This my first time playing the game back 2000. <laughs> well, I didn't play it. I watched my friend play it, but mm-hmm. I, I that." question was like the greatest hook of all time yes. to me like he's talking to <laughs> the monster the wait what what the frick is going on yeah. dude I, I i i was like so curious <laughs> myself i didn't understand and it brought it kept bringing me back closer and closer yeah. to um or not closer closer make me want to go forward and forward with the game is just like to understand what Orin was talking about and where did Orin go and yeah. everything is involved with him yeah yeah fantastic all oh, right, so well, there it is. Okay, you're saved yeah. a little bit further after. Yeah, you've uh, gone forward a little bit. Is this where they yeah. start playing Blitzball? Uh, yeah. Now this yeah. is the Kingdom Hearts place, right? This yeah. is yeah. where this, this yes. is where the yeah. island in Kingdom Hearts this is, is like fashioned Destiny after Island. This. Yeah, yeah. yeah, Destiny Island yeah. was kind of fashioned after this for sure. Love Which it. makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah. It's where he meets Waka, right? Yep. Yeah. Waka. <laughs> Great stuff. Okay, well, we're going to uh, go ahead and move on to our next streamer here. 
But okay. again, if you guys want to continue to watch Final Fantasy X, the link is in the chat. It's pinned in the chat right now, so you can go uh, give him a follow. Quasar Games. Quasar is. I'm sorry, my eyes are so bad. It's that D Quasar D Quasar D, D, D games. games. Quasar okay. D Games. Yeah. Yeah, so go go give him a follow and uh, give him some love over there. And if you want to continue, watch FF10 and chat about it with him. That's where you can do that. Yeah, but we're gonna head, we're gonna move over to Final Fantasy 12 now, actually. Um, oh, okay. Because our Final <laughs> Fantasy 11 guy uh, won't be able to join us till later, which is okay, okay because we're a little bit behind schedule anyway. So jumping okay. forward mm -hmm. a little bit will help with that. But okay. our Final Fantasy 11 guy will be on a little bit later. So, okay. all right, let me send a message here to our FF12 guy. I thank you guys so much for having me. All right. Hey, uh, thank you. No problem. We may be back. Okay. All right. We got Easel Games here for Final Fantasy XII. I'm getting his stream up on the... Let's get that uh, link and copy that over here into the chat and pin it. So this is our next streamer, Easel Games, who is playing Final Fantasy XII. Kason and I are hey, what's both. Up? Hey, 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 there you are. What's up? I was just waiting around, and I figured I should just unmute. <laughs> yep, yep. Now's the right time <laughs> yeah, for perfect, that. Yeah, perfect, perfect. How's it going, dude? How are you? Uh, it's going good. I'm looking <laughs> forward to this. You know I'm nervous. <laughs> <laughs> no, nothing to be nervous about, dude. Final Fantasy XII, you're playing one of the greatest... I love this game. Final Fantasy games, in my opinion. <laughs> I was shocked at how good this game was. I really like it, too. Because nobody talks... This is one of the games that goes under the radar. People yeah. don't talk about Twelve much. Yeah. Um... But I, this game was incredibly good when I first played it. Yep. When did you play it for the first oh, time? Oh, gosh. What was it? 2015, 2016, 2015. something like that? Okay, sweet. How about you, uh, Easel? When was the first time you played FF12? Uh, probably 2000, when it came out, like 2009-ish. Oh, 2000, dang. Yeah, yeah, so original, original release. Nice. Yeah, I played all the versions. Nice. So which one are you, you're playing a, a modded version here? Yeah, I'm playing the modded Zodiac Cage on PC. Nice. So what, nice. Uh, what mods have been added to this? Uh, the main one is Struggle for Freedom, which is the one that's on the screen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then I, there's a few gameplay tweaks. It's all gameplay. There's nothing visual. Yeah. Okay. I, there's a link, an image link to a mod list kind of below on okay. my channel. Nice. So go check that out. So uh, why don't we go ahead and uh, get started with a new okay. game? I love the intro. Of this game too. Oh, me too. Um, <laughs> it's so good. It's it, yeah. it, even though it's like an FMV sequence, it's just a really freaking captivating FMV sequence. <laughs> like yep. they just did a really good job of like pacing and showing stuff. And it, it, to, a lot, I've spoken with some people who are like, oh, you know, how can I care about this or that character? We don't even really know them yet. But for me, right, I, I, I understand that sentiment generally speaking. Um, but for this game in particular, for whatever reason, I don't know. Like, they just do a good job in this very, very short space of essentially, like, just being like, oh, this is, like, tragic what happens here to this kingdom. And you mm -hmm. really feel for them. And then the scene that comes right on the back of that with uh, where, where um, what's his name? Bosch goes in with... Uh, yeah. with uh, uh, Rex. Rex. Rex, yeah. 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 And, like, the twist at the end of that, it was yeah, just like, whoa, that was, dude, that this was is crazy. That was amazing. crazy. Amazing, amazing. All right, let me get some music for FF12 going on And look here. at this, just the intro. Yeah, it's this, so good. The look mm -hmm. is so good. It's, it's so, so good. cool. We make sure that we're, yeah, we're seeing it. I am using a mod to get rid of the zoomed in, like, black bars. So. Oh, good, good. Actually, that's a great mod. I should apply that myself. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's one of the ones cool. listed, but I don't remember which. Nice. nice. Okay, we got FF12 music going now. Nice. Yeah, th this is a very impressive <sighs> FMV. Cinematically, it's it's really, really good. It's beautiful. It reminds <laughs> me a lot of Star Wars Episode One. Actually, yes, yes. There's a lot of um, Star Wars DNA in Final Fantasy, generally speaking. Yeah, I mean, going all the way back to the first and second games in particular, that the title crawls at the beginning oh, to sort of yeah. introduce the world to you. The Bigs um, and Wedge, of course. Yeah, the Bigs and Wedge. The, uh, aren't you, know, you a little short references. for, uh, for uh, Aren't you a little short soldier? for a soldier, soldier or something yeah, like yeah. that? That was in FF6. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the Empire versus the Rebellion theme right, that goes all the way back true. to FF2. That's true. So there was, there's a lot of Star Wars uh, um, inspiration in Final Fantasy. You can definitely <gasps> see it in this one with... The Tatooine, yeah, the -like. desert planet, yeah, the way the buildings, the kind of domed shape of the buildings, and yeah. then the the festival at the end of Episode yeah. One. This just reminds right. me so much of that. So good. 
Yeah, I don't get why it's the Takamano image illustrations. Yeah, it's, I don't know, I, I just find this whole sequence here just like really captivating. And the music's great too. Um, I, I really like Sakimoto, the composer. Yeah. Who did like oh, Final yeah. Fantasy Tactics and Vagrant Story ah, and this game? Nice. Um, I love his style. He's got a very Hollywood, like '80s, '90s blockbuster mm. Hollywood style yeah. to his compositions, which is real different from Uematsu. So there's definitely a difference. Like it doesn't sound like traditional Final Fantasy music, yeah. but it is really, really good. Yeah. I really, really like it. And they did a good job with the reorchestrated remaster. Oh yeah, it's oh, great. I have. I don't know about that. It's really great. I don't think I've experienced it. They're looking over their battle plans. They have like animated, magical animated, like yeah, uh, like board the there board, the war, the war room, yeah, yep. the war games. Love it. The airships are freaking sweet in this game. They look oh, really cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the technology of Evilise, which is the world this takes place in, this is way before Final Fantasy Tactics takes place. Um, so they had like a more technologically advanced civilization in the past that sort of fell to ruin and then the Final Fantasy yeah. Tactics civilization rose after that and is a little bit more medieval than even this was um, in terms of like technology and I guess the height at which they've advanced. That's right. So this came before Tactics. Yes. That's right. Yes, long before. There's not really even that much of a tie in the Evil East games no. now that I think about it. Like not there's not really. places <laughs> you go to that were also places in the other one. Yeah. It's just, they just say it's Evil East 2 but just trust us. <laughs> All that stuff that you knew <laughs> that was destroyed or whatever. Out of reference. Funny. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I want to go back to Burr Almas Ace and see what became of that place. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, I love this war scene too. Oh, the, the transition here. This transition whoo, into like the battle itself. So sick. There you go. Look at that. <laughs> oh my gosh. That same See, they uh, show you the glory, the glory of war, which is the troops marching through yep. the streets in a parade. Yep. And then they immediately transition to, okay, now those people you're looking at, they're all dying right yep. now. And this and, feel, uh, this feels like a Star Wars, this like, so, so um, Star Wars. <laughs> space battle or something, right? <laughs> totally. The That's way so that funny. this is shot. Yeah, exactly. Totally gives that feel. And then you got uh, all the soldiers struggling here. Bosch will come running through on a chocobo. Cutting them down. It's so awesome, dude. <laughs> it's just so awesome. I love this yeah, game. This game's incredible. Yeah, you got the different races in this one, the big guys. I forget what they're called. A long intro. It is. Yes, it is it pretty is. long, but it's awesome. <laughs> it's like, it's so sick. I love watching it. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter, man. Yeah. <laughs> and they do get you playing here pretty quick. Yeah, it's not too long. It doesn't overstay its welcome, but it is a long intro. It's an interesting choice to have you play as somebody who is not the main character. The main character. Right away. Yeah. yeah, and then all throughout the game, you're playing as not the main character. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> they even joke about it, too, because, like, Bal Balthier, Balthier, the leading man. He'll be like, I'm the lead man. It's like, dude, no, you aren't. <laughs> I'm playing as yeah. you, and you should be the lead man. Well, I guess maybe Boss should be, but, you know. Maybe just not Vaughn. I don't know. Who, who here is a fan of Vaughn? Uh, also, Ash. Ash is very much That's right, Ash. kind of That's at the it. pinnacle of the conflict, too. Yes, right? 100. Yeah, well, absolutely, Ash. Yeah. I, still, wanna... I still like it, though. No, I still do, too, yeah. It's just an interesting choice that they decided to pl have you play as a character and then have you play again as another character, neither of which are the are actual really center like of the story. The centerpiece yeah. character of the story, yeah. It was an interesting choice. Oh no, he's been shot. The, the the armor designs are really cool in this game too. Really unique. Yeah, especially um, the judges. The judges look yeah, so tight. So cool. <laughs> the judges oh, the look judges, awesome. Man. And they've got they've Zodiac. got a bit of that with um the Empire in Final Fantasy fourteen has a very similar sort of style of like armor and, and then the they slow have magic down. tech. It's a good style. Yep. All right, take him out. Get him out. Get him to safety, Bosh. It's too late. He's deceased. And these towers that, that are falling. and fading away. Yeah, yeah slow motion. The tower's that. falling. Yasumi Matsuno is such a beast. I yes. freaking... Yeah. Dude, he's so good. <laughs> now, did Matsuno have anything to do with FF16? Um, no, I don't think so. Okay. So uh, other than this... just being an inspiration for the developers. Yeah. The same um, lineage in terms of the development team that goes all the way back to Tactics. But I don't think he actually like did any work on FF16. Okay. But I, but they did mention him specifically in interviews, saying that his 
work sort of inspired how they approached writing Final Fantasy I, 16. We'll I wonder it. what yeah. her <laughs> relationship was like with him. Uh, Ashes with uh, yeah the, the prince. Dead prince there. Yeah, I mean I'm sure it was an arranged marriage, right? Right. Well, right, she was yeah. crying there, so she cared. Yeah, but yeah, she she must point. have at least felt something. You get the title of the game. So FF12, it be I guess important to bring up in this stream that this is a lot of the people working on 16 worked on this game. Yes, they did right here. Mm -hmm. uh, this would have been the first like big because they did there was tactics and vacant mm -hmm. story, but FF12 would have been where you really ramp up yes. the team to get you know hundreds of people working on the game. Yeah, I was them. actually talking to a buddy of mine who is a big Final Fantasy 12 fan who has been you know disappointed with Final Fantasy since 12. So he didn't like 13, yes, didn't like 15, not a fan right. of the MMOs. And he was all yeah, dis yeah. really disappointed with Final Fantasy 15 and 7 R. But um, mm -hmm. so he was all talking to me about how, uh, you know, he's not going to play Final Fantasy 16. He's done with Final Fantasy. And I was like, but did you know <laughs> Final <laughs> Fantasy 12 team 12 is making team. Final Fantasy? And then he went, are you serious? <laughs> Am I going to have to buy a PlayStation 5 now? That's so stupid. <laughs> Got to get hyped all over again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so he's turned around a little bit <laughs> hearing that fact. And so if you're an FF12 fan, I think you'll have a lot to look forward to with 16. Sounds like you cost him a pretty penny. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, probably. And I, I'm not even trying to comment on like whether or not these games are good. It's just my friend was yeah. disappointed in them. He just it, they they yeah. weren't for him, you know. And so uh he he's now much more intrigued by Final Fantasy 16 hearing that the devs of 12 are that's the team that's kind of carrying over so oh, I yeah. guess Final Fantasy 14 as well if you like Final Fantasy 14 that's a yeah. more recent sort of direct yeah, example of the kind of story now. Get. yeah right so do you have any story about uh, when you first played this game um, now, what, what were your initial impressions when you very first played this game uh, I just love the gameplay, really. The gambits ah, okay. and all that stuff. Yeah, the gambits. I played it when I was like 16, though, so I don't remember a lot. <laughs> okay, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you can spend all, you can spend so much time just like customizing your, the gambits and getting all the presets and everything. All the hunts. Yeah, that's right, yeah, doing all that stuff. You know, I think what Final Fantasy XII, what stands out to me about this game in the legacy of the series, what it did better than any game that came before it. Well, it didn't have much competition yet, but it was voice acting. Yeah. Um, yes. Oh, the very voice good. acting is outstanding. It's actually it very good. Yes. Yeah. It's really, really good. Yeah. And like a lot of these voice actors, I, I, you'd you'd think maybe they'd bring them back for other roles later, but like I think both the guy who voices voices both here came back to do yeah. something. But mm. man, I, I wish they'd bring some of these people back. They were super talented. They were. Um, the way voice acting, the way the industry works for video games with voice actors is kind of uh, not healthy, I don't think. It's mm. not very good. Yeah. Um, and I guess if you want somebody, you just contact them directly and say, hey, we're going to bring you back. But the way they do auditions and the way that voice actors uh, typically get video game jobs is it's it's very veiled. It's They don't know what they're auditioning for. They're, they're definitely underpaid. Yeah, yeah. they're trying um, to not keep stuff from leaking, yeah. right? Yeah. And um, often because of that, they don't really have agents that can push for leverage or, yeah. you know, you've got this big billion dollar game and you charge like 300 bucks to do a voice <laughs> and it's like, okay, <laughs> you know, but you're a popular voice now. Like, sweet, that's fine. I'm not saying it's like horribly, horribly wrong, but it's definitely not how yeah. like actors are treated elsewhere. Yeah. Uh, this is unique to video games. Yeah. So I think um, sometimes you wouldn't bring guys back because it's like, I don't know, it's you can get other actors for so much cheaper. Oh, I see what you're saying. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It does suffer a bit from PS2 compression. but Oh, yeah. And so you're playing this on the PS2? Is that right? Or no, 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 no. That's, that's right. right. This is the mod. The voice, yeah, now. the voice is... Um, that's right. That's the, the, right. Audio the audio quality is really quality. compressed. Yeah. And they didn't really fix that in the no. re-release at it's all. It's good enough. It's, it's good enough. <laughs> it's good enough, I'll say. Okay, so how many minutes in are we? Um, good question. How many minutes have we been? Have 14 you been? minutes. Wow. So it takes 14 minutes before you can actually start yep. <laughs> playing. That's longer than I remembered it being, but... Uh, A few of that was just doing idle, but yeah. 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 So this is where we get in a little bit into the battle system, which was pretty different from uh, yeah. any of the offline single-player yeah, games was. in the past. You're actually moving your character around. It's not strictly turn-based. Yeah. A little bit more MMO-ish, I guess. 
uh, in kind of the style of combat. But you still, use a, you still use a command system. That's true. We, we don't have, uh, what do they call it, the, the sort of like huh? wheel of, of, of abilities that you just kind of tab in between or whatever. You had actual uh, menus, the, right? Commands that come from menus. Radical yes. wheel? Yeah, I think that's what they call that. Um, but uh, I still, I, I kind of like it. Because it gives oh, you no, a no. lot of, it gives you a lot of control. Like you can have as yeah. much or as little as you want. You could you could give every single character commands all the time. Yeah, it would be yeah. extremely freaking slow to Bit play exhausting. that way. Exhausting. Um, it's nice that they just kind of go and do it on their yeah, own. Yeah, but you can with the gambit system. You can in a really granular way, like command how or, or tell the NPCs that or the other party members that you're not controlling. How yeah, the they AI. should act in battles. Yeah, and they have not recycled the gambit system, and they it haven't. blows my mind how they have yeah. not used well, it. Again I wonder since. if it because once you get used to the gambit system, it makes perfect sense. It's not difficult yeah. to use at all. It's, it's so great. It's fine. Uh, however, when you first are introduced to it, it does feel a little bit overwhelming at first. Yes, because there's a lot of options. You yes. don't know exactly what everything does and how it works. It doesn't take long to figure it out. Yes, um, but it is a bit overwhelming, and I wonder if just um, in terms of getting people into the gameplay quicker. Um, they just decided to forego that in general. Mm, that's a good question. It doesn't help that our PS2, they locked a bunch of it away. Oh, did yeah. they? Story progression, yeah. Hmm. You can't get a bunch of gambits till later. Oh, that's true. That's true. I remember that now. They they, they make them more accessible in the re-release. That's huh? right, huh? Yeah, yeah there, there was... This is one of those games I'm a little bit like conflicted on in terms of which version I like better. There are definitely yeah. like balancing issues as far as like difficulty that I like the original Final oh, Fantasy yeah. 12 better off for the PlayStation 2. But I love the class system of the re-release. The Zodiac. The being able to like switch the so, characters yeah. to different classes or pick yeah, them. Easier, yeah. Um, and and the fact that they have a second one that you can kind of, you can get two. Yeah, that's character. right. Like a secondary, like a main yeah, one. Right. Yeah, that is that is very cool. So I really like that rather than everybody sharing the same license board. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it's like there's pros and cons to both versions, and it kind of just you know what are you looking for on this playthrough? Do you want a lot of customer cust uh, character customization, or do you want like a more challenging gameplay experience? I guess. Um, but they're they're both good. I gotta not die here because the mods I'm using. <laughs> Oh, really? Oh, what mods are you using? <laughs> it's the struggle mod. It makes it harder. Oh, it makes it a lot harder. Oh, cool. Oh, okay, there you go. Well, there's one way to increase you know, the difficulty. I've, on I've, never, I've never been tempted to make a game more difficult <laughs> than, than it needs to be. Yeah, true. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Well, it, it makes the characters have, like, set classes instead of... Yeah, right. Like You, you need, them, you need them to be in a role, for sure. Yeah, yeah. they're role-based, yeah. Yeah, this is way harder than it typically is, isn't it? This is taking a while to take out this first yep. enemy. This first large enemy, I should Wait, say. Wait, he's only like his house like only half. I down. know, right? It's like they're just shipping at him. And he's doing big damage. All right, he'll do the quickening soon. Oh yeah. I don't remember. I guess where. I think it's. I guess that's the plus side of it, right? I think you it's a three quicker. four. Yep, there it goes. Not there my favorite go. limit breaks, I will admit. <laughs> yeah, they're, visual, they're all right. They're all right. They look cool, but not my favorite limit break system either in the series. Yeah. That negative energy. Just yeah, the black <laughs> energy. Cool. Yeah, the black with sick. the white. <laughs> <laughs> pretty sick. I like that. I like that. It's one of the things you find out very quickly doing visual effects is that yeah. if everything is bright... The screen is just white, and how, <laughs> how now do you differentiate? Yep. you know between the different fire and energy attacks and stuff. Yeah, it's one way to do it. Is one negative, way to do it. negative energy. Yeah, the black, black energy, and the reverse energy and the negative energy. Uh -huh. So cool. Oops. All right, well, uh, we're gonna jump over to FF13 right now. I was hoping we could get to the end of the sequence, but you were right when we were talking the other day. It's a little longer than I remembered it being. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I love, I love the end of this scene. This particular yeah. part is so the good. The twist of, at the end. Yeah, of it. yeah. Um, it, it gives you a big mystery. So if too. you want to keep watching FF12 through the end of the scene, uh, go ahead and hit up the link that we've got in the chat. It uh, should, it should still be pinned there. Yeah, cool. it's 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 going to be coming up pretty soon. Uh, the end of this 
sequence. But we're going to jump into FF13 for a bit. So uh, uh, thanks for we'll, we we may be coming back to you a little bit later, uh, right. unless I, I don't know how much longer you can go today, but uh, we'll we'll be checking in. Okay, just right, let me talk know. To you later, man. I'm gonna mute. <laughs> okay, yeah. All sounds right. Good. See ya. See ya. Thank See you. Ya. All right, let's switch back to here. Okay, back to command. Colin, are you there? Hello, hello. What's can up? How's it going? I can. Do awesome. you, do I have a link to your stream? Did you send one to me? Uh, yeah, I I just posted it in the uh, in the chat here. Yep. Okay, great. Let me grab that and pull it up. Uh, I was Are watching. Are you a sure bit you of, want to click a link? What? <laughs> I was watching a bit of the twelve stream and uh, seeing how it was mostly just the intro cutscene and a little bit of gameplay, and I'm like, I have a yep. feeling that'll be the exact same situation. You know what? Uh, You're probably yep, right. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> You're probably right. <coughs> okay, I've got your stream up here. We're going to get through some ads first. So while we do that, I'll pull up the 13 soundtrack to All get right. it going in the background. So tell us a little bit about your history with FF13. So uh, I fondly remember uh, recovering from my uh, wisdom teeth surgery. Oh, uh, there you go. Uh, being of course. stuck on a couch. And yeah. this was the only game I had. And my... Um, hmm. Because my, my parents were like there with me and they could not stand it because they don't really play games. Uh. And I was just like, <laughs> but hey, you wisdom teeth out. You can do whatever you want, right? Ex exactly. No, I just, I commanded <laughs> the TV for Very at least nice. two days. <laughs> nice, and just nice. high off of like whatever they put you on to recover from that. Yeah, well, yep. Vicodin for right. me was like I, Vicodin. <laughs> I don't, I, yeah, I think it was about per that. Percocet, and it just, maybe. Oh, it was just completely gone. I had a great time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I think it's it's pretty obvious, though. This is the uh, the more contentious one. Uh, yeah. We've seen so far on this set, but uh, I I kind of dig it all the same. Yeah. It's uh, like me personally. Uh, well, like story and stuff is pretty important. Uh, I'm a bit of a vibe guy, and I think okay. this game's vibe vibe is just immaculate. Hmm. And. I, I've noticed, like, in recent years, uh, coming back to this, but particularly for streams, it's a very good stream game because you don't really have oh, to really? think too much about it. Ah, you there you go. You just go <laughs> forward, push yeah. the button when it tells you to, keep going. That's how uh, it makes sense. Okay. Uh, do I have the right stream here? I'm, I'm on some kind of Diablo 4 thing. This isn't that right? I, I clicked on the link that you gave me. Maybe you had another. Is it Scump? Is that? No. That shouldn't be right, is it? Let me try again. Different this link here. Yeah, just uh. I, I clicked on the one the that you had in the Dr. chat. Doctor Cullen, PhD. I should be uh. Let's try this one. one. Uh, Let's try this one. Okay, there we go. What oh, okay. happened? I think I clicked on this instead of this. Oh. And when you do that, it just takes you to Twitch generally, and will just put you on some random stream sometimes. Ah, okay. Okay, okay well, so I in. actually put the wrong stream into the chat. So oh, let me shoot. fix that real quick too. <laughs> no hey, worries. Everybody. So that is not correct. This is the correct. There we go. Uh, nope, nope, oh. nope. It's scrolling too fast. Let me pin it. There we go. Okay, so now the correct. Okay, okay. The correct stream is pinned. So let me make sure we're all set here. Here we go. Wow. All right. Light, What's up? We are on the correct stream. You are fighter. playing Final <laughs> Fantasy Thirteen. The graphics were. Unbelievable. <laughs> oh, they yeah. are. They really are. Even still, yeah. this looks really good. Yeah, this is an FMV, but yes, the I way know, it'll, yeah. it'll uh, <laughs> transfer here into the gameplay, it's. I remember at the time thinking like they were so close nice. to, to where it was like it was almost. Yeah. The the gap had almost been bridged between mm, gameplay between and FMV. Real, real life. It was oh, really FMVs. close. And uh, this is the Steam version, which doesn't even have like. That good FMVs comparatively. Oh, I'm that's sure true. If I modded it, oh, it would really? look a lot nicer. But like yeah. even then, huh. though, I have to say, like the FMVs look amazing. Yeah. And one of the nicer things about like this game focusing so much on graphics is that it has still aged pretty well visually. Mm -hmm. I'd say, like when you get into the actual gameplay. Oh, it oh definitely has. Yeah, it, it still you, looks amazing. Yeah. Oh yeah, and you don't need to worry as much about uh, performance anymore. Like I, I know. Um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with it, but if you play these games on the uh, Xbox Series consoles, they uh, upscale yeah. perfectly to 4K. Really? Oh, wow. no way. I didn't know that. Nice. Yeah, especially 13.2, and I believe uh, Lightning Returns even can let you do 4K at, like, 60 FPS. Right. Oh, holy cow. Yeah. That's, like, that's actually, amazing. 
put in effort into making them like I think uh, for 13 in particular, they re-encoded all the cutscenes, like the, yeah. these FMV cutscenes too. Mm. Now I don't yeah. have an Xbox Series X. X Xbox I don't Xbox has done a really good job of that in general for upscaling older games. Because I've heard that even mm. Lost Odyssey runs performs so much better. No, it really. had performance issues on the Xbox 360, yeah. dropped frames and really long load times. And you play it on Xbox Series X, and it's just like blinding fast and like super high frame rate. Mm. So oh, yeah. Xbox has done a good job in general with increasing performance for older games a lot better than uh playstation i'd say which is really yeah. funny because i'm more like fond of that library but the ps3 was such a nightmare system to develop oh for it that totally that was you just don't really get good backwards compatibility support unless they just re-port the entire game right yeah yeah, I remember, man. I remember how hyped I was for this game. Uh, I was watching all the trailers. I, I was living at your guys' house at the mm -hmm. time. With, I was living with Casey. Yeah, yeah. And oh uh, I had I had the game pre-ordered. I went to the midnight launch. I uh, I was working. We had that song. We had that music playing yes, all the, the time. The, 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 um, the battle theme. Dun, dun, yep. dun, oh, yes. We'll hear it. We'll hear it here in a bit. <laughs> but uh, I'm trying uh, to remember the exact name of the uh, composer. Of His this? name is um, two, Hamauzu. Right? Hamauzu. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he's he's I, really good. Oh yeah, I remember him working on. I believe it was Alliance Alive or on yes. 3DS. Yes. Yes, he did. Mm. He did the music in Alliance Alive. On and his entire work, especially because I think he does a couple tracks on remake as well. Or just like yes. he, he's one of my favorite uh, lesser known composers at Square. Yeah, he's he's really good. He did World of Final Fantasy, which has a brilliant soundtrack. Oh, it has a great soundtrack. Um, he's very good. He's got a very unique style. Oh, and man. he worked on FF10 as well. A lot of his tracks on FF10 are some of my favorites. Very, I was going to say, um, yeah. a bit of a bump. Like When I saw the list of the ones available, I was like, oh, I can't do 10. Because I'd say 10 is probably my favorite of the bunch. Yeah, but 10's like, real popular. <laughs> his, like, you can really see why they chose him for 13 based yeah. on just what he put out on uh, 10. Yeah. Really fits this kind of like not exactly like fantasy, not exactly sci-fi, Final Fantasy style of mm -hmm. games. It really does. He's got a very like atmospheric, like really full sort of like soundscape. He's always filling it with pads and interesting electronic sounds. Oh and yeah, it's it's and he, he sort of peppers in this really bright piano, um, but it's 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 very unique. It's like I've never heard anybody else who sounds similar to him. So anytime no, I hear yeah. a soundtrack he worked on, I was like, oh, that's Hamozu. That's Hamozu. That's Hamozu. I know it like <laughs> immediately. <laughs> nice. Like uh, to kind of compare it to another uh, Square series right now, um, like I'm, I'm sure like when the later Dragon Quest games, they're going to try to find people who get that exact like classical style. But yeah, for someone like Hamozu, you can't really. Oh, oh, I, I stopped paying attention for one oh. moment at the game. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, yeah, you can't really like. M mimic this style for 13. Mm -mm. Hmm. Mm -mm. And I, I really like it a lot. I mean, I know there are some people who are more fans of the, uh, you know, the stronger melodic sort of soundtracks yeah. of Uematsu and yeah. things oh, like yeah. that. But I, I'm a big fan of Hamu's. I like this. I like this game soundtrack quite a lot, even though it does not have a prelude theme anywhere oh, it, in the game. The whole game, game doesn't? Not once no, does it appear so. anywhere. That's why the yeah. game didn't sell. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. You gotta have your prelude thing, or else it'll sell. Like, no, actually, no it prelude. sold pretty well. But oh, did it? it? It did. It was very successful. But I know in Japan it was. In yeah. Japan, they loved this game. Yeah, I'm. Uh, yeah, I know that this one sold well. I'm not sure exactly how the other follow up games were. Like I'm, me like personally, Lightning I, returns and yeah, thirteen two is my favorite of the bunch. It's yeah. just yeah. such. It is such a PS3 game, and it's kind of one of the reasons why I love this whole trilogy. Is yeah, that that's, they're very much of that era. Yeah, yeah. that's true. There, there, they were sort of a, a little bit of a learning curve as we were getting into true HD development, right? And yeah, that's their true. games were just kind of developed a little differently through this console generation. Like, um, they still feel like a bit of like PS2 carryovers of like yeah. those kind of PS2 games where. They really were pushing the system too far to their limits, and they yeah. needed to like make the accord, like uh, uh, concessions just to run properly. Mm. And this game's full of that, but it, <laughs> it's still oh, it's charming as all hell. Yeah, a lot of people, or I guess one person at least over here in the chat is saying they need to re-release this game. I'm actually surprised they haven't done any kind of HD or like modern console re-release for this 
trilogy. They released it on Steam, but they haven't done like a PS4 or a PS5 release of, and I, it's probably because of what you were talking about, like developing this game on Crystal Tools, on the yeah. PlayStation 3's uh, architecture, probably was such a nightmare that like trying to port it is probably just not easy. Although they did port it to Xbox 360, so I'm sure <coughs> they have that build that they could work yeah. off of. And they so. have the PC build, which isn't great. Uh, oh, it's terrible. Already, I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> we already saw um, one of the weird things where you actually have to manually set it to controller button prompts, and then it is not exactly mm. the ones I... Like, I'm playing on a PlayStation controller right now. We kind of miss out on those modern uh, PC port mm -hmm. uh, benefits of just knowing what controller you're using. Yeah. I am actually surprised that we are already into gameplay. I thought yeah, this that, is uh, this is a faster was... intro than FF12s for sure. Yeah, that's right. In my it memory, it, it was a lot longer. But... Me too. <laughs> it's actually I, I it's... the other way around. <laughs> yeah, that's I, I think funny. it's mainly just because there's a lot of like. Your party synergy and then your different uh, style changes are more in like, a, I think it's like a couple hours in, mm -hmm. but you are playing the game right away. Yeah. They have the rating system for the battles here. Which oh, can, that's yeah. right. You like yeah, get graded and that, stuff. The number of stars you get for yeah, FF8, how quickly you... FF8 did that, right? With the missions and... Oh, yeah. You with get where you get on, rewarded, uh, gr graded on how... You get a salary. A salary. And, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's true. <laughs> It wasn't like each battle, I guess. Yeah, but, you know. but uh, like for the overall mission. Yeah, yeah, that's true. But to kind of go back on, I am genuinely confused why they haven't tried to bring this back. Yeah. I know they're divisive, but that hasn't really stopped Square before. Well, <laughs> I feel like Final Fantasy divisiveness is kind of relative. It's like, oh, yeah. yeah, there's a lot of like loud people on the internet, me included, who will like, you know, go over <laughs> their grievances and like, oh my gosh, and there are a lot of people debate and argue about it. Yeah. But like, the game had a, like a fairly high rating in terms of like its, uh, you know, aggregate score from critics and, and users. I, and it sold really well. So most of those people aren't weirdos like me online debating people. So, you know, I'm sure they would love to play it again. So I, I agree. I, I don't really understand like why they wouldn't have brought it back yet. Like, but. I don't know if they think just that because you can play it on a Series X that that counts, but that's I wouldn't really say yeah. that's like a brand new remastered port, as nice as that's those versions true. are. Yeah, this game mm. does not need to be remade or anything like that. It just needs to be ported yeah. and like uh, have a stable build, right, uh, on like a modern platform. Uh, I don't know how much work that is because I'm not a game developer. It's probably more <laughs> yeah. than I think, but it's less well, than given, remaking it. <laughs> given that this was the the game engine that they used for this is very particular. Yeah, I, I just I wonder if that's the issue. Yeah, maybe they need to like move everything over to Unreal or something. Right, I and mean, that's easy. just what everyone's doing. I I don't love it. I don't think everyone should all use the same engine, but that does make it easier for the future of your game, especially yeah. and for any kind of ports. Yeah. Especially, yeah, Unreal is such a good engine to use for, like, multiple different consoles as well. Like, I know that uh, that Crisis Core uh, remaster was probably able to hit Switch a lot easier due to it being Unreal. Yeah, I'm like, sure. Mm -hmm. I'm sure. Dragon yep. Quest. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did Dragon Quest, is it 11 or 12? What was the current oh, one? 11? Uh, 11, 11, yeah. yeah. It, it's out on Switch, right? Yes, it is. Oh, yeah. yeah it's that's like, awesome. It's, and it's, a it's really miracle. good version too. Yeah, that game Sweet. runs so Dude, good. On I love, I love that it. game. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> it, it's actually kind of crazy how like Near Automata, for example, when it launched on PC, was like ho a horrible port. But then like the Switch yeah. version of that game is so like, good, <laughs> really, really oh, yeah. well done. Yeah, I was so surprised. Um, I I do uh, like. Uh, written reviews for a site called RPG site and I just I remember I got assigned to that and playing that for about the week before launch I was just kind of stunned at how good that game ran on switch yeah it yeah. doesn't make sense that it that's doesn't make good. sense at all <laughs> no because I feel like Square Enix games that have tried for like less ambitious like uh, I guess um gameplay styles have run much worse yeah and they made it just look so easy to get that running on Switch. Yeah. Oh man, I'm I'm I just I just had like this flashback 
to my first day playing this game. I was, <laughs> I, I see it's in the bedroom that you were in. Yeah, that's in that right. house up at there. At the desk. At the yeah, desk yeah. that was kind of on the wall there. Yeah. And my TV was sitting on that. And I was sitting in a chair and Parker was sitting there with me <laughs> and we were going through it. And I was, man, long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. Really long time ago. Over a decade ago. I cannot believe how much time has passed since this game came out. <laughs> I'm kind of curious. Uh, for you, like, was... Because I know you're not huge on this game. Was there yeah, it's not my favorite, a, but... <laughs> <laughs> uh, was there a, like, a kind of a moment that you kind of, like, turned on it? Or was it, like, right away? Or was I, it more gradual? My experience was actually um, kind of weird because, like... I, I didn't like it out of the box. Like, mm. and I think it was particularly mm. like the snow sections. I was really annoyed by him and the Nora characters. <laughs> um, and I felt like it really clashed with like the, hey, the stakes, <laughs> the moms are tough, <laughs> all that stuff. So like, I, I was kind of looking back and forth with Kason's brother, my other friend, Parker, mm. who was just like, what the fetch is this dialogue, you know? <laughs> so like at, at the beginning, I was actually more down on it than I was later on because I kept playing it. Yeah. And I feel like, Maybe around the time that, not you get to Pulse, it was before that. When, you, when you're trying to save, like, Vanille and some of the other characters, they're on, like, that ship, and they're, like, in prison. I think Hope is there, too. And you're going in to, like, rescue them. It's, it was during that section, I remember, like, the, the battle system started clicking with me a little more in terms of it being more complex than I thought it was. And I started to really enjoy playing it. And so by the time, and I actually really liked the ending of the game, the first time I played the game. I thought it was actually a, a really well done ending that I felt satisfied by. Um, and so by the ending of Final Fantasy XIII, I actually liked it better than I liked it when I first started playing it. So like by the end, I feel like I had more or less a net positive experience, but there were just a lot of things about it that annoyed me or bothered me or that I wish were different or whatever. Death by a thousand cuts. Yeah, I get sure. it. Sure. Hmm. But it's a very good game. Like, it's a very polished game. And then that's the thing about Final Fantasy. That's We get caught up in the d debates and the people fighting about stuff online. Yeah. But, like, as far as quality goes, like, they're always very high quality they're, games. Yeah. They're outside of 14 yeah. 1.0 <laughs> when it released. That was the right. only game that was, like, a very poorly designed and optimized game. Yeah. A game that did not function the way that's it was That's like, to. what were they thinking kind of Yeah. Thing? And that was yeah. the only one that was rated like below a five in terms of aggregate score. But they're all super high quality games. It's all just a matter of taste. And the fact that there's been so many different styles and approaches to how these games are made that if you get attached to one, they really like. And they're not mm. kind of doing it that way anymore. Yeah, and they're moving in a direction upset. of one of the ones you don't like. It's just kind of you feel left out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you feel a little left behind. But... Th there's no like doubt that the quality of all of these mainline FF games is very very high. They're no, very yeah, good they're games. Very polished too. Sure. That's like one of the like consistent things I think the series kind of nails is just they're some of the most polished RPGs you'll find on the market. For sure. All right. Well, I think we're going to jump into Final Fantasy 14 now for a little bit. Uh, oh, but right. again, if you want to continue to watch FF 13, you're curious to continue with this stream the the link right now is still pinned so go ahead and uh head over give some give some love oh. to the stream and uh Appreciate we may it. be returning in a little while how long are you going to be able to stream today you got uh, plans later uh i have some plans a bit later but i can definitely go for a couple more hours okay so we'll see if you're still All streaming right. by the time we get back around we just got to get through 14 to 15 and then we can start jumping around to the other streams and returning to them yeah. so all righty. Well, All right, man, we care. appreciate you. Hopefully we'll talk to you again soon. All right. All right. Let's see here. We got to get Night Sky Prince on the line. Night Sky Prince, the Final Fantasy XIV stan of all time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see here. Let me send him a ping. Okay. Do I have him in the chat here? Let me see. Do we got Night Sky Prince in the chat? We do. So he should be joining us here momentarily. Um, so Final Fantasy Ooh. 14. This is a different this is different because it's not as yeah. easy to, in an MMO to just jump back to the beginning and just sort of like start Actually, playing that's totally to create true. a whole new character and there's a whole like 
You know, you're only yeah. allowed a certain number of them and stuff. So he's going to be in heaven's word, I believe. You there? Yeah, I'm here. What's up, man? What Howdy. up, dude? How you doing? How's it going? I'm doing great, man. I'm so happy to be here. That's good. Awesome. Uh, I need a link. Are you on YouTube? You're on Twitch, right? I need. Uh, I am on Twitch here. Let me send you. A send link. me a link real quick, real so we quick. can get your stream up here. Okay, uh, that should work. I am hearing you through a camera mic, I believe. Just so you know, I don't know if there's. Oh, a, oh, wow! Your no your actual in- good mic. I am not hearing that. <laughs> <laughs> no one in chat. Chat. Why did you not tell me? Maybe in your live stream they're hearing it correctly, but I am hearing you through a a a camera, not through your. Okay, so here's the link to the Night Sky Prince's stream. I am currently pinning that. Maybe it's just on Discord. You have a different uh, device set up or something like that. Oh, okay. Can you give me one second then? Sure thing. Go for it, bud. I am uh, going to. Well, look at this. So it's snowing. It's snowing in the world of FF14. Yeah, let's take a look. I actually know this area. I know exactly where you are. Yes, this is um, Ishgard. (laughs) This is uh, Ishgard. Yes, I I, gotta guard your ish. I think you're gonna love this area when you get to it, Mike. Mm. So, which expansion would this one be? Heaven's Ward, the first. Oh, Heaven's Ward, the the first first expansion. expansion. Mm -hmm. And this Um, is the one that uh, everyone loves, story-wise. Yes, and this is broadly considered where the game, quote unquote gets good um, <laughs> and uh I've there's a reason for that and we'll, yeah and we'll, we'll be we'll be kind of talking about that uh it says that cool it should be coming through my default output okay. that's so weird i don't um, know I'm, I'm maybe maybe there's something on my end but it just uh it's fine uh, we can hear you it's just uh it okay. just sounds oh now we hear you hey, better. What there happened? it is what happened there it is okay. you sound perfect Okay, yes, great. Clear. okay, there I'll it is. keep it there. Awesome. Watch okay, now sweet. it like breaks the stream. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's good. It's good. good. Um, so uh as everyone knows, the development with Final Fantasy 14 1.0 was an incredibly disastrous development. Yep. Um they used crystal tools, um a notoriously, notoriously problematic engine that had all kinds of issues baked into it. Uh, Mike, I don't know if you ever had a chance to uh, watch that 1.0 documentary that I said. By No Clip? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I'm a big fan of No Clip. I like their documentaries a lot. They're really good. Yeah. So um, in there, they, they discuss a lot of it. It's a fantastic documentary. I recommend it to, um, to anyone who really wants to know more about this game's development in depth. Um, but the Crystal Tools caused so many issues with this game's development that they basically had to scrap everything. Mm. And they had to start over. And they couldn't even reuse Crystal Tools because one of the issues that they had with Crystal Tools was that um, it would cause, like, basically, like, the performance issues. And um, basically, they would have to, like, rewrite the engine from scratch. So right. they ditched it. And what they did was that they ended up using an early version of Luminous. So what a lot of people don't know is that 14, as it currently stands, uses a different fork of the Luminous engine. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. Because it was still in development at the time. Right, oh. and, and they were working on Luminous to, to create Final Fantasy 15, right? So Yoshi mm-hmm. P kind of went over to, at the time they were called uh, Business... Uh, what was it called? Business Unit 2? Something like that. Development... Yeah. Division before, two, the, before like they that. had the current structure they've got now, yeah, right, because they had to restructure recently, right? So Yoshi P went over there. He was like, "Hey, I need an engine. I need anything you got because we don't have anything right now." Yeah. So they took this early offshoot of Luminous and they just immediately start working on it. And uh, this version of Luminous is no longer comparable to the version of Luminous that has gone into Final Fantasy 15 and for Pers- spoken. Mm. Uh, it is their own thing now. So interesting. Yes. So it's a, it's kind of developed into its own engine, but was uh, it, its genesis is in Luminous, right? And it seems like with Final Fantasy 16, they kind of took this as a base. This isn't fully confirmed. It's like strong speculation. So keep that in mind. But people are speculating that they took 14's engine and 
and continue to make improvements on it. And and that's what mm. they're building with Final Fantasy 16. And that's also why we're conveniently getting a graphics update for Final Fantasy 14. Uh, ah, with the that would make sense. 7.0, right? Yeah, because mm. they can they can go back and implement a lot of those new features that they've made back into into this game. So nice. Um. Uh, but uh, with with Heaven's Word in particular, you know, because they had to rush and put together, uh, you know, a Realm Reborn. And a Realm Reborn, there is a philosophy that they had with a Realm Reborn that. They basically wanted each quest to take nine minutes, even if you were skipping oh, really? dialogue. Really? Yeah, because yeah, because they needed they needed to have enough fluff there to keep people <laughs> so, playing. I, I, it definitely <laughs> shows, dude. Right. <laughs> to keep people playing as long as possible, right? Because that's all they had. That they didn't have anything else. So they were like, we have to wow. keep people busy as long as possible. So Heaven's Jeez. Word is the first time where they could just make a game. And they mm. didn't have to come up with anything else to fill in those gaps and be like, okay, well, you know, what are people gonna do? They, you play Heaven's Word, and it's it is a lot less fluff than a Realm Reborn is. And yeah. not only that, they they doubled the voice acting all while keeping this game. This game is about half the length of a Realm Reborn. Oh, so wow. base Heaven's Word is only twenty hours long. That and makes me much, so happy. <laughs> yes, and it's a much, it's a much, much tighter twenty-hour experience with That's double the, the amount of voice acting that a Realm Reborn has. Wow. So, mm. uh, I mean, how how has your fourteen journey been going so far, Mike? Well, I got through uh, the base game of a Realm Reborn, and my goal was that I was going to get through Heaven's Ward before Final Fantasy sixteen came out. Obviously, that did not happen. <laughs> Largely because the Final Fantasy 16 demo dropped, and I wanted to play that a couple times yeah, and yeah. get form familiar with that. That was more important for the build up to 16 than playing Heaven's Award was. Right. But right. I, I, what I got caught up on was I was a paladin in every cutscene of A Realm Reborn, and that's cool mm -hmm. and all. But like, I wanted to show in the gameplay footage I was recording of the game some different looks. Uh, so. Mm -hmm. I started the rogue class, which goes up to ninja, but it just takes a while to, I mean, they've made it faster. They've made it so you gain experience faster yeah. to level up those quicker, but it still just takes a while to level up. So I'm like level 40, I want to say 43 on ninja right now, but I got to get up to level 50 in order to continue the 2.1 patch story content. I can't right. do those quests unless I'm level 50. So right. I wanted to show myself my character as something other than a paladin in some of the main story cutscenes, but I got to get up to level 50 in order to do that. So that has been taking so long that I haven't really gotten too far into the patch 2.1 content. Mm -hmm. However, oh, okay. I have really liked where the story is going in patch 2.1. Almost yeah. everybody was telling me, oh my gosh, it's such a slog. 2.1, just hang in there and get to heaven's word. But actually 2.1's kind of what it's building, I feel like is more interesting to me than some of the main story content in a realm reborn was which i also thought was pretty good so yeah, yeah. i like it i like it in general i don't feel that yet but i haven't gotten that far i think that the crew has just sort of picked where they're going to update their new headquarters to and they're getting ready to kind of like shift over to what is it more more ghana or whatever it's called uh, yeah, yeah, yeah 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 they're getting ready to shift their headquarters over there so that's as far as i am right now yeah, yeah, that's that's actually that's actually a really good point. I think that's that's where um, a lot of 14's like core lore like actually starts to like reveal itself, and it's it shows you. I think what's like really interesting about the world because you have these mm. people that are called Asians, right? Right. And those are the the really goofy guys that wear the masks. And I remember my first reaction to the Asians were like, I kind of thought like these guys are kind of dorks that same same actually yeah. same yeah <laughs> i was just like how are these guys supposed to be villains i'm like how are they they menacing or threatening in any way and then actually as you really get to know the Asians, they become cool yeah like people are obsessed with the Asians, right like yeah if you if you go into 14's community now everyone has like Asian tattoos does Asian mm. artwork so people yeah. are really into the Asians. so the Asians, um they end up being sort of like a very huge appeal 
um, for this story. And for those who are not familiar with the Asians, um, I'll give you uh, kind of the most spoiler-free uh, synopsis of the Asians. But basically, um, think of these mysterious beings who are able to... What they're able to do is, is that they're able to sort of like pass through the life stream. And Ooh. they can sort of manifest anywhere. And they are immortal, right? Because they have creation magics. And so they're able to fabricate new bodies for themselves. Not only can they fa fabricate new bodies for themselves, they can also possess the dead. Mm. Um, and use the dead's body in order to walk around with. And they do a lot of that. <laughs> so mm. a lot of times you'll see a character and it's like, wait, I thought that character died. Is this a fake out? Nope. Asian is walking around in that character's skin to mm. commit all kinds of debauchery and political sabotage and all kinds of other things. So you can see how that could lead to some uh, really interesting scenarios. Mm, nice. Mm. Yeah. We got we got people in the chat here talking about how great the Red Mage is, and that was actually the next class I was going to try after Ninja because I love the yeah. Red Mage class generally. Just for the series, is one of my favorite classes. Yeah. So if that's I'm that's going to be that's going to be the first Mage class that I try. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, Red Mage, I think, starts at, like, level 60, no, 50 already. Oh, Am yeah, I, I think you have to upgrade it from one of the base classes, right? You have to, I, no, I don't actually, know which one. I think, oh, it just so, starts. Right, it's kind of it like It's kind of like Dark Knight, then. Dark Knight's kind of right. the same way, isn't it? So, yeah, so later on, they just kind of decided to ditch that. Like, um, like you have to start as, like, another thing, and they, they just, like, new jobs, you can just go, you can just go unlock them. Dude, and, I should just do that. Yeah. So I can continue the freaking story of the game as a red mage. Yeah. <laughs> and not yeah, have to keep totally, leveling up ninja. You you totally could. And red mage is a really fun job. Um everyone I know who plays red mage uh pretty much pretty much swears by red mage. So um yeah. I'm a gunbreaker, so my girl Ultima here, she has um a gunblade, which is also what's cool about this game, is that pretty much every job that you can really think of, every like major like core to final fantasy job that you can think of mm -hmm. is in this game so yeah. actually i think my gun blade is hidden but you could see it if i oh you're a you're a what are the what's this class the the gun breaker is that what it yeah, is yeah i'm a gun breaker so yeah everyone everyone loves this class it's, yes. it's the squall the squall so, leonhart class yeah right? and you hold yes. the sword on your shoulder <laughs> yeah the squall class Love yep it. and um <laughs> all cool. the animations here are are reference um referenced um through Squall and Lightning's animation. So they look, went back and looked at like how Squall and Lightning use their gun blade. And so you'll mm. see your character do a ton of like poses that Squall and Lightning do. And uh, Dark Knight actually references a ton of Cloud's poses, right? Even though Cloud's nice. not technically a Dark Knight, the yeah. sort of blade being like a large kitchen knife kind of calls back to, <laughs> sure. she calls back to FO7, right? So they, they use that as reference. Yeah. So. Um, and that's was was, like what, was the yeah. Dark Knight class introduced in Heaven's Ward? Yes, actually. Okay. Yeah. Um, and so, what's cool about each expansion is that each expansion kind of goes deeper into kind of like the lore of each job. And so, you you have a job, and um, it will kind of how should I say? Like, it'll take that job, and it'll make it kind of like the main focus of the story, right? So, mm. for this story, it really makes Dragoon sort yeah. of like the main focus of it and right. you'll get extra dialogue acknowledging that you are a dragoon and you get right. to like feel like a little bit more involved in the story in that way and so some people they'll see like the new like canon job like in like the cinematics and what they'll yeah. do is they'll go and level that up because they're like oh i gotta i gotta i want to play as as that job because it's going to be the relevant one and sure. they'll get like the the little extra lines of dialogue acknowledging kind of that they're um playing this sort of role that they would, you know, yeah. that they think the Warrior of Light should be playing. So in this right. one, it was Dragoon, and I actually got to play Dragoon. And what's, what's fascinating here is you meet a man named Astinian. Now, Astinian, he's one of the main uh, Dragoons of your party. And so later on, when you do have access to, like, a party, because there is actually a party in this game. Let me see if I can Of actually... NPC characters that come with you? Yes. And, That's cool. Um, so what happens is the Scions of the Seventh Dawn actually go into dungeons with you after a while. And you can actually use them instead of having actual like party members that are mm. Yeah, yeah. If That's you cool. Want to. That's really yeah. cool. Yeah. 
Yeah, so um, this has kind of been like a, a big thing for them, is that, and this kind of started with Heaven's Word, is that they decided that instead of making an MMORPG, they wanted to make an RPG MMO. They wanted this to feel like a true mainline Final Fantasy title and not just an MMORPG. And so people could play this even if they had no interest in MMOs and still get a complete, well-told Final Fantasy story. And so you're saying that, that that philosophy developed during Heaven's Word's development? Yes. Gotcha. That's when, and, and that's why Heaven's Word is... is and, and, I mean, all the game systems are the game systems, right? Like, the same systems that you will come across in A Realm Reborn. And they're, they're a little bit different going forward in the expansions. Each expansion kind of changes some stuff. But the, the core is still there. But what defines Heaven's Ward onward so differently is that the actual structure of the content is focused on making you aware that this is a, a mainline Final Fantasy title and you feel it. And your nice. Warrior of Light it really feels like the main character in an epic story here. Cool. Yeah. So have you just started the Heaven's Ward expansion here? What what part are you at at the moment? Yes. So we're, we're at the early section of Heaven's Ward. And, and right now um, you have uh, Count Edmund who, um, rest in peace, uh, his voice actor. Oh, um, that's it. Yeah. Unfortunately passed away this past year. Um, they're showing you um, around the town. I don't want to tell you too much about like what leads you into Heavensward because sure. I really want you to experience that for yourself. Sure. Because I think I think you would really enjoy it because it's 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 actually one of the most. It's a very 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 brilliant cliffhanger. It's like a cliffhanger mm. that leaves your jaw dropped. But let's at the just end say, of the patch two point one content. You're saying yes, right? but let's yes yeah. um or two point five five actually. So it'll it'll be oh, a long okay. Way. Right, so at the end of A Realm Reborn, um, they give you a very, very, very fantastical ending. Um, but it leads you to uh, basically need to flee from the the current part of Eorzea that you're at and mm. go into this part for a while. Okay. Right? So you're here in Ishgard, um, and they're showing you around the town Generally, every expansion is gonna, you know, kind of lead you into like the new city state first, and uh, allow you to kind of get a feel for it and meet the new characters that are going to be um, essential to uh, building up the story arc for this. So, great. Um, to what's a good way to summarize Heaven's Word's story without spoiling too much? Um, <laughs> there, there is an evil pope, I think. Which <laughs> kind of says it all, right? <laughs> um, you can't pope. even mention you a pope say. without, yeah, without saying, oh yeah, the pope is the bad guy. But um, it, th there is. Um, I hope media can get away from that a little way. bit. Yeah, it's a bit of a <laughs> yeah. trouble. It's, it's getting a little old. It's getting, <laughs> right. It is getting a little. Uh, old. But I think I think there's a lot more to it than that as well. Um, okay. Because this is also a revenge story as well at its core. Um, mm. There has been a long, millennia-long war between man and dragon. And perhaps the church itself has a little bit to do with the perpetuity that that war has oh, been going war. in between man mm. and dragon, right? Yeah. And so dragon views man as basically, you know, slaughtering their kin. And, mm -hmm. but man looks at dragon and thinks, well, you know, you've been slaughtering our people too. And this has been going on and on and on. But for dragons, it's a bit different because dragons live a really, really, really long time. Dragons can live for thousands of years. Mm. And so to them, you know, to human beings, it seems like it was like, it was basically like a long time ago. It was ancient that this conflict began. But to the dragons, all that hurt was just yesterday. Because their perception of time is different. Ah, uh, gotcha. Right. You know, I've never heard it put that way before. That's really Usually it's like, oh, it's no big deal. What, the life, what is the line from The Hobbit? Um, well, Thorin, in the movie, the movie, he says, uh, uh, the life of a dwarf is but a blink of an eye to an elf or something like that. Yeah. I can wait. And, yeah. um, but I've never thought about the pain caused to a being that can live for that long. Yeah. Being... Mm that much more present for them. 
Right. right? I've never really right. thought of it that way. That's great. In which case, it's like they will hold a grudge for, for a, a long, very long time. time. <laughs> right. For a very long time. Right. Exactly. Right. And so because these beings, they live for a thousand years and yeah, they, they've known their yeah. people for that long. And so when you slaughter them, you know, it's so, kind of a, it's almost maybe a deeper wound. Yeah. And, so we're like, um, we're like, dude, that was 20 years ago. And, exactly, and they're like, right? what are you saying? Right. <laughs> that sounds like and one so, week ago to them. Right. And, and so, so basically it, 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 um, it, it packs them in a more difficult way. And then That's you have cool. the church who has <gasps> been manipulating the strings. And Is this so, what I saw early on? You went up to a building and it was called the Orthodox Church. Yeah, the Ishgard so, Orthodox Church with the Archbishop. The, get out here and take a look at, at Ishgard really quickly. And um, also, I'd love to show you guys cool. some of the... Um, so w one of the things that they wanted to do with Heaven's War is that they wanted to create a gothic Final Fantasy, right? And so they went to mm, do gothic nice. fantasy. And so that's why you have uh, these churches and a lot of maybe like um, Catholic-like motifs. Right. And so I that's the church beautiful. then up, up yeah, ahead. Yeah, I think it's yeah, I think it's really cool. That's awesome. Yeah, it is really cool. And um, in some ways, you'll hear people that say that this story in the world it kind of calls back to like maybe like Super Nintendo Final Fantasies, and it does feel like that because there yeah, are some there was areas, a little more. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, there's some areas which I'd love to show you. Well, in fact, playing FF1 just now earlier. Uh, the way that castle yep. looks so cool and yep. stuff like that and, was pretty gothic. Yeah, very yeah. sort of classic Western fantasy yes. sort of inspired right. architecture. Yeah, and I so love it, I though. think this team has always <laughs> been into. Oh man, it's really unfortunate that it's it's nighttime right now because I'd love to show you some of these during the day. Yeah, I I mean I know that it's not plausible, but it, just playing the game as a, basically by myself for the most part, it was like oh I wish they had a way to fast forward the time today but i know that doesn't work in a game where there's like a bunch of other players just get your lucky time. to cloud and <laughs> right that's freaking just, sweet just book it yeah that's freaking sweet yeah so there's just a lot of beautiful places in here um there's one in particular i'd love to show you that i think is so cool that i don't even know if i can really remember the name of it is it the churning mist? No, it's the Sea of Clouds. Of course it's the Sea of Clouds. Sea of Clouds. Oh, there's two areas nice. I really want to show you. <laughs> That's really cool. Um, so the Sea of Clouds, again, I wish I could show you during... Um, the daytime. During the daytime, because it's so beautiful. Yeah. But it just it just has like these wonderful floating land masses here. Nice. That, that kind of like call you back to... Um, floating content early yeah of early like ff early games. final yeah 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 which i totally wish they'd bring back right like yep those, <laughs> yeah they don't make any sense at all but they're just so <laughs> cool man they're just so yeah. cool. floating continents are tight dude, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they are tight. dude. no the new the new zelda is uh, yep. all about those yep. floating I, continents that's actually why i'm excited to play tears of the kingdom i haven't picked <laughs> floating it up continents, yet man. because i've been so busy with 14 and building up to 16 but yeah. Uh, I, I love that concept of floating islands. Yeah. Yeah. Um, when I was playing Tears, uh, my first yeah. thought was, holy crap, they need to bring this back in Final Fantasy. <laughs> like, they need to bring this back like yesterday, man. Like, it's so yeah. cool. And then um, one of the other areas I want to show you is a place called um, Aziz Law. Mm. So this is where, um, this is a very different area than anything Ooh, you've seen in Final that. Fantasy fourteen so far. This is and yeah. um, this wow. is something I definitely this don't want to like, spoil. This looks like Tron. <laughs> well, yeah. Tron, straight up Tron. It yeah, it does. It wow. does. And so you get to visit this um, ancient civilization, the Allegans. Nice. And that will tie into the story pretty heavily. Sweet. And the music here is also really, really phenomenal. Um, mm. And it also very much calls back to. Um, the Super Nintendo uh, Final Fantasies for me. I don't know how to explain it. It just does in its spirit. Yeah. And that's that's kind of the uh, thing about Creative Business Unit 3, I feel like, is that even though a lot of CBU 3's games, gameplay-wise, are very different than... than sure. uh, <laughs> classic Final yeah, I know Fantasy. What you mean. Than classic Final Fantasy. Yeah. I think that the spirit and their intention with the storytelling in particular really calls upon the ambition 
hmm. of hmm. the older Final Fantasies, right? Yeah. And I think I, mean, I, I kind of yeah. felt that way about even just the main story of A Realm Reborn. There was a lot of hmm. <coughs> it, it felt a lot like the NES Final Fantasies to me. Uh, like before it started getting into the steampunk and the cyberpunk sort yeah, of settings. Yeah, pre PS One. Yeah. 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 Um, it, it it had that sort of feel to it with the crystal motif and all that stuff. It, it felt very much like it belonged among the same sort of like plots or or like settings as early early FF games. Yeah, and there's exactly. a lot of references and callbacks. Yeah, exactly. And they they're really big on that. So they're really big on uh the storytelling spirit of Final Fantasy. Now, yeah. the gameplay spirit cool. of Final Fantasy. <laughs> yeah, it's that's gone that, forever at this that, point. There's no getting I know. It's, <laughs> right. Yeah. And and that's that's also kind of the thing too, right? When you're pursuing a modern triple a game and in how triple a games have become it does get a lot harder in my opinion to get away with a lot of those abstractions because a lot of people expect have expectations for one for one fully realized you know can see the pores in someone's skin and <laughs> i think yeah that, <laughs> i think yeah. i think that there is um you know there's a lot of fair criticism in maybe just triple a games are kind of like you know maybe like ruining people's ability to abstract like what they used to from games right sure i think that's 100 percent true in fact we were sort of touching on that with um ff1 and 2 um about how the the abstract nature and the way that the art was presented and how much of it had to be done in your mind giving mm -hmm. a greater sense of adventure and mystery to these games than uh modern games are able to convey you with all the realism and uh, graphical power. Yeah. Right. Exactly. And so, um, and, and me and Mike actually had a pretty interesting discussion about this too. <laughs> so I, I might have heard uh, it. Was it a year, yeah, a couple years yeah, ago? Yeah. 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 No, it was actually pretty yeah. recently because we. Were, oh, was we were, it? We were oh, that's right. I was yeah. on. I was on your stream. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. No, I, st I think I still listen to it though. Yeah. Um, but um, this has just been like, it's been like such a problem right because yeah. the, the big question has been how do we adapt final fantasy like those abstractions into something that is one for one and that is yeah. um that can satisfy like these triple a needs sure. but also right because that's have, what sells now right you have to sell right. the game but then also still have the same feelings that you get get from those extra yeah. abstractions even if it's not the same exact thing, right? Sure. Like, how can you yeah. give someone the feelings of the world yeah. map without the world map? That's the like essence. things like that, right? That yeah. has been their, their big struggle. It's because they haven't had a good answer for that. And they've been trying different things. And thus far, um, how I feel is that um, I think 14 does a lot of things to, to kind of get those things right. Mm -hmm. I think. I think 16 is also doing a lot of things to get those things right. Um, you know, we also have, um, you know, like the Final Fantasy VII Remake Trilogy, which is their answer there is to kind of divide the games up so that they can dedicate the time to um, flesh all those things out in the same way. Right. But, but there still hasn't been anything that can really, really match what those abstractions did in the way they did them at the time. Yep. Um, yeah, that the symbols. With, right? and, yeah, 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 yeah. They're they're trying to be a little too explicit about everything. Right. And one of the cool things about more abstract art is that it necessarily has to be symbolic. So it's hearkening directly to the archetypes themselves. Yeah. And right. and when you try to be too explicit about things and too nuanced and too detailed, you lose the general picture, which is the archetype, which is the symbol, and you end up kind of getting lost in in the the myriad of you know things that are thrown at you by the by the system instead of yeah. focusing focusing your attention on on the specific symbols yeah. uh, that are more yeah. important yeah exactly yeah. and so um i have good feelings though from with this team that uh you know it's it's really hard to say that fr from a gameplay perspective um how we'll all feel about 16 by the time it's done because gameplay wise it's just so yeah. different from anything they've done uh even from yep. like with modern final <laughs> yep. yeah even from like it's what even, modern yeah. final fantasy is um, right even from 15 it's it seems to be quite different so yeah 
Um, and one of the things that I like that they're doing, and it overlaps with this game, is kind of the going back to like the zone based design, right? Mm -hmm. um, so that instead of and and they, and this is pretty much like the best way that you can use this type of abstraction, I think, in a uh, modern AAA game is that well, if you're not going to have a world map and you're not going to have an, an, an open world, right? Because that's kind of like what people view nowadays is like the alternative, I guess, like the default alternative to uh, an open world is the overworld map. Yeah. I mean, um, is an mm. open world. And so they said, okay, well, we're going to do like these nicely um, crafted zones and we're not going to make like the vast spans of nothing in between. Yeah. And you'll just jump to those zones and experience what you need to experience in the well-crafted zones and not flesh out all this the just basically yeah, this landmass totally. in between right because if you go through final fantasy 15 for example i think that there's a lot of stretches of land where it's just land right mm -hmm. yeah and um i think with 16 they are kind of going back to uh you know really focusing on uh Oh, it's almost day. Hooray. Uh, get to see, <laughs> right, as, uh, right as we're about to jump into FF15. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Well, um, you get to see the beautiful city of uh, Kugane here. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice. Oh, nice. It looks time. great. That yeah. looks very yeah. good. Japanese inspired. Yeah. yeah, it looks more Eastern. Look at that. That's awesome. So this is where I'm hoping 17 goes actually 17 okay so as far as numbers go um i feel like 16 might actually be the highest number you can go before, before it starts it, sounding really i weird. think 17 <laughs> I, I and it may just be a bias I thought about of, this too. that's where we're at but i actually really think that once you hit the number 17 it's like you're counting too many things <laughs> you got to find a way to get that number well, lower well, or find yeah. a different way the new mortal Kombat game going back to one right mortal Kombat. there you one. go you gotta do something <laughs> right. like that so, right anyway so 17 yeah. is the number. I, I mean, right? And so Yoshi P said he's he's had a talk with the other higher ups about like whether they should ditch the numbers or not. Yeah. Um, At some point you have to. I just don't yeah. Know and so I, I mean, mean, how I ridiculous does Final Fantasy 96 sound? I mean, you're like, it come sounds on, pretty like, bad. Some, <laughs> where does that line get crossed? Right. Yeah. <laughs> no, the, yeah, the series so. really gets good around uh, 32. <laughs> and there are people. There are Start people. At 32. Who, <laughs> I think that that it, and, and like we don't think about it, right? Because we've been into gaming and into Final Fantasy for so long. But I there know are genuinely it's... people that have no idea that none of these games are t connected. It's true. It's true. They'll see the new one and they'll think it's it's the seventeenth version, sixteenth in an installment of of linear games following the same character. Yeah. Yeah. I was I was yeah. watching a, I was watching um a big streamer the other day. And um, I was watching like his reaction to like one of the Final Fantasy 16 trailers, and he was like, oh, "I never got into Final Fantasy because, you know, there's so many of them, and I don't know where to start." And like, <laughs> someone, is, yeah, someone in the chat told him that none of them are connected. Start They're all their own. That, story. that might be Anywhere, a reason bro. in and of itself to stop, to stop with the naming. numerical yeah. sort of. Because people just don't know. Yeah. I mean, you can't expect yeah. someone to know that. Right. right so away. just call it Final Fantasy with some subtitle. And just yeah. kind of move on from there moving forward would make more sense. But yeah, dude, he was shocked to his core. He was like, I had, he was like, what? How come his nobody whole world? Told me? <laughs> yeah, his whole world came crashing that's down. Funny. He was that's like, funny. how funny. come nobody told me that like none of these games are connected? Like the whole time I've been avoiding them oh, because classic. I thought that like, yeah. And so I think that like, you know, Yoshi P was saying that like, well, if we did drop the numbers, which, uh, it'd be really hard to, to like, you know, differentiate like the spinoffs because we have so many spinoffs from the um, the mainline titles. So that might be the reason to keep the numbers. Yeah, okay, this is right. actually okay. Um, now I can see it in the daytime. <laughs> there we yeah. go. Yeah, and this is oh really the clouds. Yeah, yeah, the clouds time too. of day actually to yeah uh, sunrise. Dope. Yeah, and so Heaven's Word for this reason, um, really great callback to um, like Super Nintendo like early era Final Fantasy, both in um, story and in the visuals too. And again, you know, with Creative Business Unit 3, while gameplay wise, they've gone in very different territories than where Final Fantasy is used to being. Um, they've stayed true to the thing that I personally identify as mm. the, the spirit of Final Fantasy, right. which is telling a, a fantastic story. 
Yep. Nice. Yeah. Well, we appreciate you uh, coming on and chatting with us and showing me some yes, well put. dope uh, FF14 <laughs> zones that I look can look forward, forward to. Yeah, look forward yes, to it when I get to Heaven's Ward. I can't wait. Yeah, and we'll have to chat again once I've actually yeah. gotten through more FF14 yeah. and yeah. Uh, talk about stuff, but... Yeah, you know All it's right. funny. My fans always ask me to ask you where you're at in FF14. Because Mike won't die. I'm like, 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 like okay. basically, like every stream I do, people like before it was like, "Are you gonna get Mike to play FF14?" I'm like, hey, he's a oh man, gosh. he's gotta make that decision for himself." That's great. I already asked. I already told him to do it. But um, All right, yeah, man. Like, well, thank that, you. Yeah. All right. I'm I'm getting there. All right. Uh, we will <laughs> possibly be back. Uh, I know you can't stream super late, but uh, we'll see where we're at. We just got to get through FF15 now, and then we'll start jumping around. So, okay. Appreciate so you, dude. You just hit me up. Yep. All Talk right. To you later. Thank you. All right. Sweet. Okay. So, let's get. We have two streamers that we are about to bring on simultaneously. Ooh. We have two people Ooh. doing Final Fantasy 15. Ooh. Uh, so, I'm going to pull up. Jacob, frustrated Jacob on this screen. Uh oh, hold on. I can hear you. Are you there? Hello. Nice green background. So we okay, got. Okay, he's really quiet though. Um, he is. is uh, I think it's that? because. Is that his stream we're hearing, or is that? We're hearing him through Discord, I believe. But you're a little Hello, quiet. I can hear you, but it's just quiet. It is. Extreme. Oh, oh, it's because you're not okay. I can hear you coming through your stream. I think we need to get you into our chat on Discord. That's right. So the stream is low. Um. So let me let me get him in here. No, no, no. I'm not. I'm not in a call. Yeah, I got to get you into the call. That's what I need to do. So do you, have you joined our server? I, I think I sent you a link to that, right? In the in the DM. I think I sent you a couple links there, but one of them is an invite to our channel. So we have a, um, a channel in our Discord yeah, server. a specific channel. Okay, but are you, are you in the Discord server? It hasn't accepted him. Because there's, there's a second link that goes to the oh, chat. Oh, you need both? You need to be in the Discord server first before you can be put into the yeah, chat. Yeah, I got it. Okay, so... You joined the channel, but if I hit join voice, it doesn't do anything. Okay, but are you in the server? You're you're a member of the server, right? Because I need you to do that first before I can get you into the chat. I just tried to add you to the chat, and it didn't work. Okay, so let me go back in here now, into here, and uh, it's actually here, and go to permissions and add you. Oh, it's got, I think it's because I'm with the wrong name. There we go. I tried to type frustrated Jacob. That's not oh, the username <laughs> <laughs> on Discord. Okay. Am I joining? Am I joining gaming or am I joining So gaming? it's it's down below. It's under voice chat now. rooms. I'm in here now. Okay. Hey, there you, you are. Okay. It, was, it, was in, it was invisible to me. I don't think I had permission to access it. I'm in here now. Well, Mike just gave you okay. permission now, so. Yeah. I'm going to yep, mute that. Sorry and about the trouble there. No, oh, you're man. good. Welcome. I'm, I actually got someone else I got to add to. He's already yep, in the ahead. chat, so let's get him in here. Okay. So now, and I'll need to get, let's see, where's his, I think he sent me. Well, it's that link his, right there, right? This link. Down. That. Oh, this that. one. I think yes. that should be it. Yes, this is it. <laughs> okay. Okay, fine. I think he sent me. Well, it's that link okay. Right there. Hey, hey. So we got that one going. So we have two different streamers we're going to be having a conversation with simultaneously here, all right? Uh, so how am I going to handle this with the the links? <laughs> Here's the frustrated Jacob oh, you'll just, link. You'll just have to include both links and then pin yeah, both. Oh, you're right. You're right. In I'll the put them both comment. in this. That's, I can't. Hold on. Let me try that Maybe again. Maybe just hit space. <laughs> Let me try that again. Okay, and then I'm going to do space, 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 and then I'm going to grab this one and put that one in there as a second link, and then I'm going to post that, and then I'm going to pin that one. There's two links. It did. It got rid of a lot of your spaces. Well, yeah, it sort of truncated it, but there is two different links there. So just keep in mind, two links. There are two links right there. So we have frustrated Jacob and. 
Meadow. Meadow, are you in the chat? He's still Hello. muted at the moment. Oh, there he is. Hey, Hello. Hey, What's, up, What's up, guys? What's going How on? How are you? Doing good, man. Doing good. Glad to have you both here. So we have two streamers for FF15. Um, I wanted to bring uh, Jacob on specifically because he knows a lot about the development history behind Final Fantasy 15 and Versus mm. 13. So that's oh, going to be nice. a really interesting thing to talk about. So we'll get to you in a second, Jacob. But let's talk to uh, Meadow here first. Let me move you over. So we've got you on the screen, and i got to switch over to the screen like that. So what's up? How are you? Meadow. I'm good. How are you guys? Doing great. I'm doing great. So uh, Final Fantasy 15, tell us a little bit about your history with this game and, and why you like it and why it's special to you. Well, it wasn't my first Final Fantasy game, um, but it was like amongst the three top Final Fantasy games that I first got into, one being seven. Mm -hmm. um, like It was funny you mentioned uh, Versus 13 because I kind of was like keeping up with the development history. Uh, yeah. Maybe not oh, while it was Versus 13, but I think it was Final Fantasy. Um, it was still, it was 15 at the time, but yeah. I went back okay. and watched a bunch of videos and, uh, you know, stuff like that. So. Nice. So you played the game at launch. How did you feel about it? Were you a fan? It was a little um, bit divisive at the time. <laughs> yeah, I think I was a bit jaded at the time because I was yeah. just really excited for it to come out. And then, yep. hmm. like, I played it in a month. I think I stopped. I dropped it for a little bit. Mm. And I got back into it. And I just, I don't know. It wasn't the, it wasn't the, what I thought it would be. Yeah. Um, but then Royal came out. And yeah, it the fixed Royal a lot Royal. of issues. Uh, a lot of the story I was just really confused with. Like, I yeah, didn't sure. really understand a lot of the stuff. It mm. felt like a lot of stuff was, like, missing. Um, but, yeah. you know, I thought Royal was really fun. That's the version I'm playing today. Okay, so the Royal Edition that has all the DLC and everything that's been added back into it, right? Flying right. cars. Yeah. yeah. Okay, sweet. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> all right, so go ahead and feel free to start a new game there. And then yeah. let's come over here to Jacob real quick. Jacob, what's up? Howdy. How you guys doing All right. today? We're, we're doing great. We're doing um, great. So, uh, I remember that I saw the trailer for Final Fantasy Versus 13 at E3 2006, or whatever that was. Uh -huh. And I immediately <laughs> knew I was buying a PlayStation 3. <laughs> like, I, yeah, I saw right. Final Fantasy 13. I thought that was cool. Yeah. I saw... I think they even teased Type Zero before it was called that. It was called Ajito or something like that. Yeah. But mm -hmm. um, it was it was thirteen. It was versus thirteen specifically. Yeah. That I was just like I have to play that. Yeah. And then I didn't get to play it until way far into the PlayStation 4's life cycle. <laughs> so I bought a PlayStation Three and never got to play the game I bought it for. So it had a very troubled development history. Is kind of the the point that I'm making here. And so uh, Jacob has has followed this, researched it, and so uh, Kason did a video too, a little uh, bit pr on ago. Project W. On Project W, in particular, yes. Um, so I'm sure we we'll maybe touch on that a little bit, but uh, yeah. give us the rundown on what happened with Final Fantasy versus 13 and why well, it became 15. So that's that's the thing. Is that a rundown on this? Because I'm I I. <sighs> Not in an attempt to toot my own horn or anything, but I just because <laughs> of how is it going to take a while? <laughs> it's, yeah, I'm not. I mean, I promise I will be. I will. I will. You know, you guys can dictate the pace of this and ask what you. You know, you guys can ask the questions you want to ask. But man, the point is, I could talk about this basically as long Forever. as I wanted to. Because um, yeah. <laughs> nice. I will see. I, I actually got started on YouTube doing coverage of Final Fantasy 15 way oh, back cool. in the day. I don't really do pre-game release coverage of stuff anymore. Mm. But it was basically a situation where when this game was originally. 15 specifically was unveiled in 13. I remember there was a uh, mass hysteria in the streets of people confused <laughs> about whether or not, is this a turn-based game? What's going on? I don't understand right. what kind of game this is. Yep. Um, and, you know, obviously it wasn't, but people were leaving legitimate comments like that. And I yeah. had been similarly to you following Versus 13 since it was revealed, basically, and had been following it closely and felt that I was knowledgeable enough to be able to try and explain, okay, what, what's, where did this game go and what happened? Because there was also, I don't know if you remember this or not, but um, at the PS4 reveal conference, this is, this is the first interesting thing of how it became what it became, really, the first, like, sign. 
um, was at the PS4 reveal conference where they didn't actually show the hardware. They just mm. showed um, the, uh, they just like said, hey, we're making it, right? Uh, Shinji yeah. Ashimoto came on stage and showed the yeah. tech demo that we'd already seen before for their new engine and then just said, hey, by the way, we're making a new Final Fantasy game for PlayStation 4. See ya. And then he went yep. and then he stepped off stage. <laughs> <laughs> and I and I distinctly remember thinking at the time, like this, like, why wouldn't they just say it unless it was like something we've seen before and they don't want to talk about it yet. So I started thinking this might be Final Fantasy 15. Right. Uh, but why wouldn't they just say that? What if it's versus 13 and they're making it bigger? Um, and I guess with that in mind, the first real thing, this took a while for me to come to this realization, but as we are here watching this opening cutscene of the game, you know, we're looking mm. at character designs that have existed since 2006. We're right. looking at locations That's that have right. existed since 2006, when it was That's a totally right. different video game with totally different staff and totally different mm. creative leadership. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Which I guess brings me, first thing that I want to talk to is the entire concept of Fabula Nova Crystallis. Yes. yes. You mentioned Agito yes. 13 a second ago uh -huh. um, as well. And this was like a, Just the I've world, come to right? realize a, I think at least, I've come to suspect this was an elaborate marketing gimmick. <laughs> um, of, of like, because they because they said though the point of it is that there's this this shared continuity between the games. They share right. a mythos, right? Mm -hmm. um, we have shared elements from the from these various different games. Where they're they're all stories about conflicts over crystals and people who have a fate that's dictated upon them and they fight against and some shared gods and elements. And I'm like. Right. Don't all the Final Fantasy games have those? <laughs> More or less the same, <laughs> basically. <laughs> so what, what I think actually happened was that obviously in the 90s, you had a lot of Final Fantasy spinoffs. You had Tactics. You had the Chocobo Kart Racer. Um, you had you had various different spinoffs of the Final Fantasy series. You had Then you had Crystal Chronicles going into like the GameCube and stuff like that. And you had the compilation of FF7. Yeah. Going into PlayStation 3, I think they knew how expensive game development was getting. I don't think they realized how tough it was going to be yet. Obviously, they didn't because of what happened subsequently with this and with FF14. But I think they realized it was going to get more expensive. Yeah. And making mm. spin-off games was already getting more expensive on the PS2. And I, I think their thought process must have been, it would be really hard to make this M-rated, bloody, mature action game that Tetsuya Nomura really wants to do with his yes, Kingdom Hearts right. team. It would be really hard to make that on a huge budget and and is a really big divergence from like the tone of the series and sell it as a as the big new game, right? Yeah. Mm. Right. Well what if we could think of a way to like put a Roman numeral on the end of it? Mm. What if we what if it wasn't actually Final Fantasy <gasps> sixteen or fifteen or thirteen because like it might be too M rated and violent and action oriented and fans might reject it? But what if we could somehow attach the Roman numeral to it because so it could sell more units and we could give it a bigger budget? Mm. What that, if we that... said that it was like like they con they were connected by a thing? <laughs> and I think that was the extent of it. Yeah, that sounds um, like a very mm. Yoichi Wada sort of directed uh oh. Co the company, the what they were into doing at the time, was trying to connect. Yeah, everything. and and the same yeah. thing with Agito Thirteen, where that was originally yeah. meant to be released on like basically really high end gaming phones that only ever existed in Japan. Yep. Right. Um, that was going to be this really high end mobile phone experience that, of course, eventually was too high end, and they had to move it to P to PSP. Um, I think it was a similar thing where it was how do we move this really expensive high profile and weird experimental project because type zero was also an m-rated extremely violent dark experience mm -hmm. now here we are like 15 years later and um final fantasy uh final fantasy 16 is doing all of these things as part of the mainline series but i think that was it's interesting to me that in interviews yoshi p has talked a lot about like um you know, oh, uh, Game of Thrones is a really big influence. We told the team to watch Game of Thrones, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. yeah. Um, but that seems almost to me less like an influence on the material and more like they got to use it as a proof point that, look, this can make money. Yeah, that's more what it sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, when, but, when the companies get as big as Square Enix, especially after the PS1 era and stuff, mm -hmm. I, it's really difficult to avoid situations like that where it's like it's just whatever makes money. 
Yeah. That's how you have to convince people. So we Can got I, uh, on metal, just real quick on metal stream over here, yeah. the opening of the game here where uh, <laughs> they're pushing a car in comparison to what we had been shown in a lot of trailers or like other material beforehand where there was a, like a battle happening in insomnia itself. Um, right, I right. think a lot of people who maybe weren't following the game's development super closely and didn't understand that Nomura had been moved off the team and they had a new director and the game was sort of changing right. a lot might have been surprised by like, wait a minute, like what happened to all that stuff you showed before? <laughs> and this is the first uh, gameplay. Of yeah, the you're game, just right? it's pushing, a, pushing car a car <laughs> to a gas station. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, <laughs> uh, Meadow, are you still there? Uh, I think you might be muted on our end. I, I can't hear you coming through if you're talking. But uh, sorry about that. Yeah, I just good. didn't want to talk so. over you guys while you. No, you're through. good. Oh, you're that good. was good. You're you're welcome to chime in. Anytime. Yeah, yeah. Feel free to chime yeah, in. Not, I don't want to. I ain't, I'm not trying to hog anything. Feel free to everybody. <laughs> you're good. You're that good. was a really good intro, though. I thought you painted a pretty good picture of um, you know, the development of FF15. Yeah. So do you do you have any idea? Because I haven't really looked into this in many, many years, like around what time they decided to move Nomura off the project and put Tabata on yeah, or any of the flip. behind the scenes of how that went down or anything like that. Has anything been said about this? Because I, I I would assume not. Like they don't want to like air when, out their garbage. Nomura left the project. 14? Mm. Yeah. He was, so, um, uh, Tabata wow. was added in 2012 and Nomura was removed in 2014, at least publicly. Um, yeah. He was definitely uh, still on it in 2013. I want to say he was removed in like mid 2014, and they announced it late 2014. Mm. Okay. And so uh, at that point, how much, how sharply did the direction the game took, even like from a story standpoint, how much did it change at that point when Tabata took over? That's hard to say because one of the, and I am gonna remove my webcam uh, while we're doing this. You're good. One, one of the things that's interesting about this is that. Um, is that like a lot of the decisions that were made were the result of deliberate creative changes um, moving between different creative teams. But a lot of it was like, okay, the original game, one of the, one of the specific things that they cited when talking about things that had changed was um, uh, that the nation of Lucis um, uh, like worshipped they said they, they like they they, they worshipped etro the spirit of death right. who the right. goddess of death right. who is mentioned in um uh, type zero and has a pretty big role in the 13 trilogy one yeah. of the kind of leftover lore elements if you will um mm -hmm. and they um and they they basically explained that um that we had to remove etro in her entirety because in certain countries having quotation marks reaper worship will automatically get the game an m rating uh, so having some huh. elements of of a, a, even if it was just like oh there's a goddess of death that this society looks up to they said would get it an M rating, um, soldiers that previously spewed blood when Noctis killed them in those trailers back in the day were turned into robots. Mm, um, so I think yeah. a lot of the changes that were made were made to for to sell units. Um, gotcha. But then there's other stuff that like I look at and um, seems more like possibly a, a, a lead creative decision. So. It's 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 often difficult to see. I think where the legitimate creative decisions of the director like end, and where the even more so than because I mean I just mentioned you know, like corporate decision making. But one of the things that's most interesting to me about this game is the fact that they had tons of feedback throughout the process, um, mm. and they were really this is like this is the most reactionary a Final Fantasy game has ever been. Um, like the open well i look at a lot of this stuff and i say okay the big open world in this game maybe they just really wanted to make an open world game maybe they just really wanted to have this type of mood but a lot of it feels very much in response to um ff13 yeah you know for stuff. sure and even stuff that's positive in this yeah. game like i mean i think i think everybody in general agrees the best thing about this game is the um is the is the bros right is the is the you know the connection you have with your with your 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 the bromance throughout this game, right? Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. And I'm a big yeah. fan of the party in this too. I mean, even just I'm glancing over here at the stream and I'm looking at um uh, I'm looking at this opening cutscene with them standing around talking to Sid and Cindy, and I'm like, I like these characters. This is fun stuff. I enjoy these people. Yeah. yeah but even too. then, I ask, and you know, and and to some extent, all these characters had been around since the versus thirteen days. You look at old trailers, and there's like a scene <laughs> of um, 
of like Gladiolus giving Prompto a noogie or something in one of the Versus 13 <laughs> trailers. Right. <laughs> but I ask myself, is the fact that all of these dudes are best friends from minute one, is that a response to the fact that everybody in 13 hates each other in the first couple of hours? Right. It takes a long time before oh, they warm up to each other. It, th it does feel that way. I feel like Final Fantasy 13 had so much like controversy i guess surrounding it yeah that especially tabata that seemed to be his sort of directorial style i'm gonna put out surveys constantly yeah he to did like a lot. get yeah, a he feel did. for what hmm. the audience feels about even our in development kind of like build right yeah. now and what can we uh, how can we pivot i love the cup this hat, late by the way <laughs> i just saw that on a second i saw the cup noodle hat <laughs> yeah, how can we pivot like mid development and make some changes that would like more that would more accurately address like what the audience is looking for? It's it's a much more like I don't know how to even describe it. It's like it's not an artistic way of directing something. It's it's all like right. business minded. It's and almost like design designed by committee. It, whatever you can say about Crisis Core and Type Zero, they have distinct visions of themselves. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. What were we going to say, Kason? Um, just designed by committee. Yeah, designed uh, by committee. That's it a great you. way to put it's it. It's like there's not really any direction, but, you know, it... Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, I think it's clear, and I, I think it's maybe not universal, but nearly so, that Final Fantasy XV had a, disjoint, a problem with disjointedness when it mm -hmm. came out. But, of course, they, they tried really, really hard to address that <laughs> yeah. over the countless, it seemed like, you know, uh, DLCs and things that they released. And you, Jacob, you said you hadn't played the game since it came out, right? You hadn't uh, played the like since release. Have you have you gone back no, and played I haven't. the game again? And I'm, and I'm, I'm, you know, I it's funny because I never got the I never got that cup noodle hat that I'm looking at right now. I don't think back in right. the day. And, um, <laughs> you know. Well, it's really interesting. I'm going through um, uh, I'm going through this tutorial right now, and you know, it's interesting, mm. especially contrasting this with F the FF16 demo that just came out, which gives you like yes. some walk around stuff, and then has a diegetic combat tutorial. Right. And this one has like a totally disconnected from anything tutorial, and then lore guide that I'm looking at right now. Yeah. This really stuff like different. This is definitely not my area of expertise. So if if uh, anybody else in here knows a little bit more about the background and lore of 15, I've I have forgotten a lot of like the what was the deal with all the various gods in this and, and right, whatever right. that was not my that was not my strong area of investment sure. in this game. I um, kind of just wanted to add. I remember you were talking yeah. about Etro. Um, I remember there was a painting in one of the trailers from a long time ago, um, and it was I think her name was like Stella at the time. Yeah, the oh, one yes. became what is what is her name in Luna. 15? Luna, Luna Freya. Luna Freya. Yeah, Luna Freya. Freya. Well, Stella okay. meaning star. Yes. And then it turned into right. Luna meaning turned moon. Into moon. Yeah. yeah, you know. Uh, but Noctis and Stella were standing around the painting of Etro. But then a lot of the stuff, hmm. some of the stuff from like that Reaper worshiping, kind of made its way into like Noctis's uh, outfit. Yeah, his outfit. Yeah. Yeah. In the trailer. Yeah, in and, and one of the cutscenes, there was like a skeleton on one of the buttons, and you see a bunch of skulls on his shirt. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to yeah. get a, I'm trying to get a so. close up on his uh, outfit right now. Oh, but let I me switch really, over. Know, I, I'm trying to get him rubbed up against a wall so you can see it. If you cut back at me really quickly, but yeah, he's, yeah, he's, his t-shirt's covered with skulls and crossbones. Yeah, right. yeah. So like the design elements are still there. They just took it out of the story. This idea that they worship this oh, death god, right? Yeah. I thought that was really huh. cool. It's it's kind of disappointing that uh, some of that didn't make its way into the game. Well, and and the well, weirdest part was how they had a trailer leading up to the release of Final Fantasy XV, like a couple weeks before it came out. It called the, the Omen, Omen trailer, Omen, yep, I which it. to me still represents the original story of Versus Thirteen it more seemed, than it does Fifteen. Yeah, yeah, it's it's almost like they just made a short, tiny little trailer movie yeah. to like pay homage. To, to what versus it thirteen would have been <laughs> what it could have been and yeah because that that the Omen trailer had Nomura's handprints all over it yeah it yeah. felt um, that way it and felt very opening of FF eight absolutely yes and also a little Kingdom Hearts esque yeah. um, speaking of speaking of by Kingdom the way, Hearts yeah, yeah. well <laughs> Ver Verum Rex right we're yeah, yeah we're gonna bring that up right, exactly. so Verum Rex in my mind it is <laughs> elements of versus thirteen. Uh, yeah. being used in 
a different kind of way. Yeah. And I think that's what Verum Rex is. It just yeah. seems to be that way to me. And is that going to be really part blatant. of Kingdom Hearts 4? Or like, what is that? Technically, it's that... part of the universe, but I don't know if it's going to have any of the characters or any I'm, connection I'm a, whatsoever. I don't know how much um, uh, our other... Our other streamer, if our other streamer's a KH expert, I'll let him. I'll let him take it on this one since I'm already talking a lot. But oh, I, you're I know good. you got this KH meadow as well. I'm sorry, say that again. Are you a Kingdom Hearts guy? I am a big fan of Kingdom Hearts. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You take, you take tell me, tell me, what do you? What's your take on Verum Rex as it relates to Versus Thirteen and all that? I think it's incredibly like blatant the, the yeah. connection <laughs> oh, that they're yeah. trying to make between it. I think Namor is trying to kind of get his game back. If you saw yeah. like the, I think it was a secret ending towards the end of Kingdom Hearts. I did, yeah. It yeah. was like, if you put them back to back, they looked exactly the same with him riding in the car toward the end. Yeah, that's right. So it right. seems like they're really setting up for that in the future. So, so, so is that, I mean, I don't know. I don't follow Kingdom Hearts at all. Is that <laughs> going to be in Kingdom Hearts 4, the Verum Rex stuff? I think it's yeah, its own it game. it seems like it. Yeah. Is it going to be its own game now? So, I, I don't know because at the end... It, yeah. it showed uh, the character. Um, the Ferrum Rex they, character, right? They yeah. made their way, yeah. When they made their way into his world. So it seems like it's still oh, going to be a part so of Kingdom Hearts. It's, in it's still part way, of Kingdom Hearts 4. Okay, okay. There was an interview with Nomura where he actually discussed I was considering whether or not I wanted to make Ferrum Rex or Kingdom Hearts 4 first. Oh, wow. Hmm. But, I didn't see that. That's crazy. But in the trailer of KH4, Sora is definitely in the location from Verum Rex. So it might right. be he's okay. going to like introduce elements of this other idea that he has, like basically have the characters of a uh, Verum Rex guest star in a Kingdom Hearts game and huh. then do that and they'll be it's, it's unclear as of right now what what yeah. what that crazy boy Tetsuya Nomura is up to. <laughs> well, Verum Rex was in Kingdom Hearts 3. Yes, yeah, it was. It briefly was. at the kind of a, in one of the yeah. endings or something, right? So actually, well, no, so I, you were able. To, it was part of the Toy Story world, I think, right? Yes, oh. there was a right. video yeah. game right, 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 called right, right, right. Baron Rex. Yeah. Initially, it seemed like it was just a cute little reference, just like "Haha, ha, remember?" Yeah, yeah. But one yeah, there was like a whole mini game there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, one thing that's interesting to me is that there's a lot of like obvious homages to Versus Thirteen visually later yes. on in that oh game. yeah for sure um but yeah. when in that scene that we mentioned a minute ago where luna freya sorry where stella and noctis are talking about um etro and they're looking at that painting they talk about a concept yeah. that was repeatedly stated across the versus 13 trailers um where they talk about quote the light of exp uh, people who see the light of expiring souls they said that people who have near-death experiences mm. have like right. premonitions about when people are going to die in the world of cool. Final Fantasy versus 13. And yeah. Noctis and Stella were two of these people. This element was mm, removed. It's not in wow. uh, uh, 15 as we received it. But I, I couldn't help but notice if we want to try and look for like thematic, because I, I don't want to speculate too much about what Versus was going to be about, because you never yeah. know. Like There was an interview with, with Tabata where he said that versus 13, quote, never quite took shape in the mm. development phase. And that may have huh. been saving face, or that might have been, it was a project that got out of control. Um, yeah. but one thing that's really interesting to me is there is a bit in, um, uh, in Final Fantasy, sorry, in Kingdom Hearts 3, where all the characters die. Spoilers. Don't worry, they get better. Um, <laughs> but, uh, uh, Sora briefly, Sora briefly is in the Beyond Realm, and he is talking to, um, the souls of, of dead people who have regrets from their life. Um, mm -hmm. and they are, um... They the way that they're discussing it, he's he's literally talking to the lights of expiring souls. Um, mm. And when I look at that, I can't help but see per possibly a thematic echo of what might have been going on in Versus 13. But then I look at this game and I, you know, because we've been talking a lot about the development in Versus 13. And I don't want to mm -hmm. completely, you know, blow past whether or not 15 was doing anything on its own. And oh, there's sure. an interesting in a way that's maybe going to be a bit of a vague spoiler for these games. So if anybody doesn't want to be spoiled on Crisis Core Type-0 or 15, maybe mute the stream for a few seconds. I can't help <laughs> but notice that all three of the Tabata games are about young men dying because of old men's petty wars. Mm. Ooh, all that of them is, are yeah. about a, a young innocent who is just trying to fight for what he believes in and his friends winding up getting killed because of increasingly petty conflicts between the powers that be. 
Um, that's also yeah. the only way that I can, that is the only way that I can justify the inclusion of Genesis and Crisis Core, because it makes the machinations that lead to the ending of that game even more silly and pathetic. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the only way I can that, justify uh, that character's inclusion. That's funny. Uh, that's, um, oh, what was it? The movie Troy? Did you ever see the movie Troy with Brad Pitt? Uh -huh. Yes, yes. Yeah, Sean Bean plays Odysseus. Oh, yeah, yeah. And in it, there's mm -hmm. that line where, uh, cause, um, Achilles is super upset with the way the war is going. Yeah. Because uh, everybody out there is just getting slaughtered. And then Bor Boromir, <laughs> Sean Bean, <laughs> Sean Bean says, uh, <laughs> His real name is Boromir. <laughs> exactly. His real name is Boromir. <laughs> he says, uh, War is old men talking and young men dying. Yep. yep. You know, get used to it. And this is politics. Yep. And that's a, that's a very wow. consistent thing in on all of Tabata's work, actually, I think. Interesting. So, Interesting. Meadow, since you've played the Royal Edition, I have not. Yeah, I, we haven't. I have not revisited Final Fantasy XV since it was released, so I don't know how it feels to play it now as a quote-unquote complete version of the game, right? But you said you've kind of warmed up to it uh, at this point a little bit, so uh, right. why, why is that? Well, in the beginning, I mean, it's pretty cool because I'm not sure why they included these, but these weapons in the beginning are what you get, and... You know, you see this Dragoon Lance and this, you know, I'm saying the sword and all this stuff. But then you yeah. also have like a bunch of the DLC. I think it includes every DLC except for Arden's story. So yeah. there's a point in the game mm. where some of the characters go missing and one of them is That's Prompto. Right. And yeah. I personally haven't played Prompto's story yet. Yeah. But from is that what the, I've the seen, snow one, right? Where yeah, he's in. Yeah. It's in the Empire. Yeah. I think. Yeah, that was pretty good. Because so he, he's you, originally from you, you the Empire, the I believe. Experience right. that a little bit. Hmm. And um, Gladiolus and everyone. So yeah. So uh, another thing they added was the ability to switch characters. Uh, that right. was not something that you could do in the original game. You only you only had Noctis. Um, right. How do you feel about that in terms of like in the middle of a battle? Is there like a good sort of like a, a good gameplay reason why they would tell you, okay, switch to this character now and play as Gladio for a while. And then is it like strategic or is it just mostly, oh, I just feel like playing like this dude, so I'll just switch. <laughs> I think it could be a mix of both, you know? Okay. Like, I, I'd like to compare it to Final Fantasy VII Remake in a way, like in how it could, it just changes the combat a little bit more. Like, you yeah. get a glimpse of that when you, uh, there's a, a button, L, L1 button what you do and uh they all have different abilities and it helps you to take down some of the enemies so you know i think it's just a glimpse of like what the dlc is like once you get a chance to play with them yeah so i i remember i played some of those dlcs i think i played all three of the character dlcs um and my favorite was the ignis one i, I liked kind of his gameplay style really uh, it was pretty cool um it's most of the time when I ask people about the DLC, I've, I've never heard that. So that's people that's saying Ignis. Time. Yeah, because that that's all happening during the battle in what was that? It's the city that uh, that you're just going to I, right now. I only know that because it, the name is literally on the screen right now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, it's 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 during the battle where um, Leviathan comes out and and Noctis really cool is doing his part. like Super oh, Saiyan man. battle against that. that right. Was great. And so Ignis yeah. is yeah. Ignis. It's where well, I won't say that uh, something happens to Ignis <laughs> that's big for the story, but it's kind yeah. of plays that little part right. of the story, and uh, I, I liked that. I think of all the DLC stories, that was probably my favorite one. But I think um, I think that that scene that you're talking about that was in the trailer, and there's a lot of, like that. They oh yeah, removed a ton. Something. They removed a ton. Yeah, so, <laughs> well, that's uh, that's actually something that's interesting about. I've I've joked before that Final Fantasy 15 is a game comprised entirely of smoking guns. Um, <laughs> like, you you look at that trailer, the original third 2013 trailer that shows the the Altisha battle. And it's like obviously running in a prototype engine. And what we eventually got was much jankier than that. The the prompto sorry not that the Ignis DLC is has a significantly higher production value than the actual scene in the original game, and that's because the engine was being developed while the game was being made. Wow. Right, oh, right. Because <laughs> they had to they switch. They were developing the Luminous engine simultaneously with the development of this game, and it's like yes. you go and look at the the DLCs and the production value, especially in Prompto and Ignis, is increased significantly in terms of the set pieces. 
But the uh, other thing that stands out to me is that one of their very clear. So I, I just skipped to this chapter partially because it's interesting to look at this this Venice city. But to, like I was showing the boat ride, mm -hmm. I think one of their very clear design edicts on this was unbroken experience. As few only load screens at chapter breaks. Everywhere uh, you go, you get there dynamically in real time. Um, yeah. hmm. To make the world completely seamless and and ongoing as a, as a natural space that you're exploring. And what that also meant was that the... Why is Noctis doing that? He was kind of shimmying a little bit there in an odd way. You'll see that in a second. Um, but uh, the one of the things that's interesting about the, um, the, the game is that you have this big open world where you start out in Arizona and you eventually move to some grasslands. And if you go far enough, you get to a little bit of like volcanic rock around a mountain. They tried to space it out in such a way that that progression felt realistic because they really wanted the game to feel grounded and realistic throughout its entire runtime. But what that fantasy also fantasy based in reality, was, right? Yes, a yes, fantasy exactly. based right. in reality. Yes, no, I mean that's and that's very much a, a something that was discussed, like you say, in the versus trailers. Um, so it's that I think that's been part of the design philosophy from the beginning. But what yeah. it also meant is, especially with the removal of insomnia, you don't have a lot of environmental variety throughout the game because they're trying to present everything right. naturally. Right, that's a good point. Mm, yeah, and you know, a lot of this stuff was um, kind of maybe one of the drivers for this, especially given the 2013 likely time period when Nomura was taken off. Um, isn't that when the PS4 launched? Yeah, that's yeah. I think so. so. Yeah, um, missing the window for the PS3 was just a disaster. I think for this game. Yeah, I think um, so. They missed it, and in order to <coughs> oh, I've got in order Assassin's to make the PS4, DLC. they had to like kind of redo a lot of stuff and the way yeah. keep the engine compatibility. Like you end up losing a lot when you decide you're going to hold off for the next generation um, because it's not it's never as easy to transition your game over as you. That's think. what happened with the Last Guardian as well, right? Yes, like, Last yeah, Guardian same, suffered from the same problem. Same thing. There's a great so that, quote or a great comment here from Kami four two four two in the chat saying that the Omen trailer is basically Versus 13 story being retconned. It's now a vision given to King Regis. Regis. Mm. He sent Noctis out of Insomnia to prevent the original events of Versus 13. Ah, oh, jeez. Uh, so is that, uh, I, I never really thought of it that way, but like that makes sense as huh. like their way of trying to work in the legacy of what the game was supposed to be yeah. into what it is now. And right. give it like some space to live there without it really ever being released as the game that so it was one of the one of the bigger troubles with this game. Mm. Um, and I mean, I really am sorry because I don't want to dominate this conversation too no, much. No, no, you're good. That's why we brought <laughs> you on, it's man. A, it's a ten year long story. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the is. Crystal Tools development engine, which was mentioned earlier while you guys were uh, going through Versus Thirteen, it's like yes. Versus Thirteen. Sorry, sorry, rather, sorry, Final Fantasy Thirteen, real Thirteen. Like it's yes. a very pretty game, and the engine did what it needed to do for that game. But that's another instance where the engine was being developed alongside the game. Um, and the mm. trouble was that Crystal Tools was being developed while Versus Thirteen was in production, and Thirteen and Fourteen, and it was supposed to support all of them. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so you had um, teams getting cannibalized to support the development of of that team. This is a name you guys will know because this is my. One of my favorite like little things, like as a shorthand of what happened behind the scenes on this, you guys will know this name. A guy named Jun Akiyama, who mm. was part of the um, uh, Vagrant Story team. He was one oh, of the yes, event directors yes. on Vagrant Story. He's a beast. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because the events, the events of Vagrant Story are like some of the best. They're, that's the best part of the whole game. <laughs> some of the best cutscenes in video game history, in my personal yeah. opinion. Yeah. So he went on to be one of the writers and event directors on Kingdom Hearts One, and then he worked on Final mm -hmm. Fantasy Twelve, which also has some of the best cutscenes in video game yep. history. Yep. And Very yep. good. He's Very not good. a he's not a credited writer on that, but they've said in interviews that he did some writing behind the scenes toward the end of it, and he was directing cutscenes and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Um, if you go look at his credits after Twelve. He kind of disappears, but he randomly has a credit of Crystal Tools engine development staff. Mm. Um, what happened was there was so much pressure on multiple games being developed at the same time, and 13 and 14 were the priorities, that a bunch of the what, what is generally referred to as Tokyo team, basically Tetsuya Nomura's core development staff that worked on Kingdom Hearts 2 and mm. was working on Versus 13, a lot of their staff got cannibalized to go and just help with getting the the engine running, mm. um, and uh, 
And that's also part of why the Kingdom Hearts series wound up for a little while being developed by a separate team on, on handheld games, and why eventually Tokyo team got dissolved, reorganized, and turned into the Tabata-led team that became Luminous Studio to produce this. Right. And why Osaka right. team, which took over the handheld Kingdom Hearts games, wound up kind of being becoming the lead developers on that. Mm. Um, but yeah, so they what because mess, the engine, <laughs> yeah. it's 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 an interesting situation where Tetsuya Nomura as a guy is like you know he's it's notorious often attached to like you know seventeen different projects at once. Yeah, um, uh, yeah. he's you know a, a lead um, uh, artist on so many different games. That's true. At the point in time where he was working on Versus, he was also directing three Kingdom Hearts games. Um, he was, like, co-director or, like, supervisor on the first couple of Dissidias. Um, a mm. lot of stuff like that. I think that you have a situation where if you go look at the timeline, I'm not going to break it all down because there's so much to talk about here, but if you go look at the development timeline, um, he pr the, Versus 13 was not in full production until, like, 2010. Um uh, because they could not make modifications to Crystal Tools to support a development engine at the same... I'm sorry, I would put an action game at the same time they were making 13. So even right. though this game was announced in 2006, development didn't really start until 2010, because they did not have the tools necessary to be making it. Okay. And so the real problem was that by that point, they really only had two years of development on Versus 13 into 2012 before they then said the PlayStation 3 is about to come out. We need to just restart this. Um, well. And similarly from there, it has been said, they vaguely alluded to the idea that Versus 13 was going to be multiple games. I think it was planned to have multiple sequels, like and like from the beginning, that the story was not going to conclude after just one game. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And so with that in mind, I think that what happened was they looked at the fact that 13.2's sales plummeted and the yep. fact that Versus 13 had been in development for so long and said this needs to be one game and we need to make it 15 to really sell a lot of units and it needs to be one story. And that was probably mm. where most of the creative decision changes happened of like, how do we preserve mm. what we already showed? But how do we make something that's going to operate totally on its own? And I think that's also why you get Kingsglaive, the movie, because right. yeah, we showed this right. big Tokyo city constantly, but... In the 2011 gameplay trailer, which was the only gameplay for Versus that we ever got, um, in that trailer, we see um, a lot of gameplay in the city. And when I look at that trailer, it looks extremely ambitious for PlayStation 3. It looks not exactly quite at Yakuza levels of detail, but Yakuza games depict uh, like yeah. five city blocks. And that yeah. city was supposed to be a series of action set pieces that lasted maybe five hours at the beginning of an open world game. Um, I'm wow. willing to bet that that city was a complete bottleneck in production, and someone at the top said, "You can't put the city in. It's costing too much money. It's spending. It's we're wasting too much time on it." And then they said, "Well, that's ridiculous. It's at the centerpiece of all of our marketing. Even though we can't get it to run in real time, it needs to be in there somehow. We can't just cut it." Hey, you know what doesn't have to run in real time? A movie. Mm. <laughs> And that I think makes a lot of sense. I think a lot of stuff that happened with this game stems outward from that. Yeah. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. I, I feel like Nomura was just really done dirty with this because yeah, like, it seemed like it was a story he conceived and that was really important to him. Uh, yeah. And that it was actually really cool conceptually. But that yeah. perhaps his ambition got, I don't know, quote unquote carried away. But mm -hmm. at the same time, he was basically being made to make all these Kingdom Hearts games and stuff. His attention yeah. was divided between being an art director, or not an art director, but like a character designer on this thing, and then yeah. directing Kingdom Hearts games and like writing and figuring out how those are going to go. And then kind of on the side, not probably not even being given the budget he needed or the time or like the resources to make mm -hmm. the one that was really important to him, which gives yes. me the feeling that's why Ver Verum Rex exists. It's yeah. like, if you're going to yep. do this to me, you've got to give, please give me a way yeah. to do, like it was, I, 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 have, I don't know that for a fact, but well, I, I so get the feeling. So much work was already done. Yeah, that it was really important to him. Otherwise, yeah. why does Verum Rex exist at all? Right. I'm also like, of the opinion, and I know yeah. you're not a big Kingdom Hearts guy, Mike, but like, I like the Kingdom Hearts series well enough, especially the earlier entries. I feel like you can watch 
the enthusiasm drain out of the writing in real time from like 2010 onward in Kingdom Hearts, where it just gets a lot less interesting as it goes on. Um, mm. And I don't know if that's, oh, there's a lot of, I don't want to get into that too much. Like, you know, there's probably some Disney interference in that as well. But it really feels like he had this thing that was full of blood and guts and was going to be, there's interview, there's a really interesting interview about Versus 13 where he talks about, I've actually been uh, very frustrated with the way that a lot of JRPGs are written because I don't like kind of a simplistic two-dimensional anime style to the characters. I prefer something with a bit more real psychology and connection and human mm. connection to the characters. And uh, and then he's back over in the Kingdom Hearts kitty corner after this gets taken away from him. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Um, yeah. As much that, as I think, that, the well, that's Kingdom why Hearts they gave him uh, Final Fantasy VII remake, right? And, uh -huh. Yeah, because well, another project they probably, put him on, you know. Oh, exactly. It's insane. And <laughs> I, I'll bet you they probably just did that to keep him. Period. Yeah. Uh -huh. You know, Maybe. a lot of these Square Enix employees, um, d directors of previous games, of course, Uematsu and others, um, they just left after a while, including Hajime Tabata, by the way. Yeah. After 15 came I, out, I he was think, like, I'm starting my own I studio. I think he <laughs> almost died <laughs> in his attempt to try to get this out. He was he looked miserable yeah. towards the end of, of that game's development. I think, I think he that's just a could commonality not take that with pressure anymore. Square Enix, oh, we were talking about um, Yoshitaka Amano, uh, not Amano. Was it Amano? No, it hit, uh, Matsuno. 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 Anyways, there's a lot of people who... That happens. That seems to be a commonality with Square Enix employees. Not Nintendo, not other companies, Square Enix specifically. <laughs> they can't retain talent. Yeah, well. it seems um, that, yeah. But Nomura, after something like this, Nomura, I could totally see him leaving. Yeah. And in order to keep him, I, this is, I'm guessing here, but my guess is they said, okay, we're going to let you remake the game that everybody wants remade, and you're going to be the one to do it. Uh, please forgive us for taking you off of this project. Yeah, it could be. Who I had knows? no idea that was the case, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he got shafted bad. He and, did. Uh, he did. Yeah, I, I felt bad for him big time when I started he's to been, learn some of these things. He's but, been mostly not yeah. allowed to talk. There's a really, there was another really interesting interview a few years back when Dissidia NT came out, um, and they added in a costume for Noctis that was like what he, his original versus 13 design right and it was called like the yeah. dream outfit because as you noted omen uh, is like seems like a course. premonition of what that game was yes. um yes. uh in in the dlc they got canceled they released a novella saying what was gonna happen in the dlc and there's a dream sequence that references versus um hmm. uh there is a um uh there's an interview where they're it's like not an interview it was a stream where they're playing um where they're playing Dissidia NT and they show that costume and Nomura's on the stream and someone says this is this is based on his design from Versus 13 and Nomura says oh are we allowed to say that yep now? yep I remember this <laughs> yep. for, for a while we weren't allowed to say that name yep I mean yeah it, it's, it's clear that this oh, game's development was an absolute freaking mess but despite all of that I, I, I'm actually kind of amazed knowing that yeah, that considering how well fifteen came out. Yeah, yeah. Like you all would think this is a mess of a game, right? You you, you would think, think it, you would think it's more like a Final Fantasy fourteen one point situation. Yes, that's what this <laughs> would be building up to. What but we described like, here, yeah. By the time I got to the end of it, I, I certainly didn't hate the game. In fact, I right. liked it even better than say previous ones that were more polished or maybe more complete or whatever you want to say. Uh, right. I, I think that there's like there's something in this game world and in these characters that despite the layers of retraction and change and all of these things that it went through like there there's still some kernel there that made me so interested yeah in versus 13 to begin with that survived that process yeah, yeah. and i still kind of like it like mm. all things considered um i still like the characters i still i still really like it as a final fantasy world like one that feels more like a like a modern day world not like some uh cyber or steampunk or you know something like that or or a traditional medieval mm. i i i like the ideas here so much that there's still something to it that i can't deny like i still enjoy a lot yeah. and i really like the music too um uh, what's her name? Shimomura, who does the Yoko Shimomura. Yoko Shimomura. I, she's just great. I I I yes. love everything she's ever done, basically. Yeah. And there's Me there's too. like a there's a feeling, a sentiment, even in some of the music we're listening to right now, that like 
I don't know, it just really resonates with me personally. And so I'm still kind of excited at some point to jump back into Final Fantasy 15 and play this Royal Edition and kind of see the state of the game now versus like when it launched. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's probably going to be a while out. But we got to play Final Fantasy 16. That's coming out in two days. (laughs) And that game definitely feels more, how would I put it? Like, Like there was a vision from the start. Oh, yeah. Everybody was united, yeah. and they saw it through, and there weren't a lot of like you're right. It seems that problems way. along the way. It yeah. went smoothly. It went according yep. to plan, and you can tell the difference. I mean, you can just feel it right out of the gate, D- regardless of what you feel about you know getting to real technical details about oh this choice or that choice artistically. Like mm. throw all that away. Like Final Fantasy 16 feels like a very very solid, complete, um, totally. Uh, finished, <laughs> polished experience yeah. that has had lots of thought put into it, and uh, I think that more than anything has really like converted tons of people who may have yeah. even been like, "Oh, I'm done with Final Fantasy. This series is a mess now." It's it's like the first game in a long time that feels like it went through a development process that did that wasn't a hell, yeah, and came out on the other side being like, what the developers saw, sought to do in the first place. To begin with. Right? Yep. And that's, that's crazy because we haven't had a game like that in this series in a long time. M- maybe besides I, A Realm Reborn and, and some of those expansions. Well, yeah, but, but those even were that building on the came previous on the, of a development hell yeah. that came before that, right? So, yeah. crazy stuff. But I did have a question. I was wondering, what do you guys... I noticed you haven't talked about it yet. The summons? How do y'all feel about the summons? Oh, dude, the game? summons are so dope in this game. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're I, really cool. They're freaking awesome. I remember the first time I saw the Rama summon, it was just in some, you know, oh trailer God, or something like that. And and yeah. I, I was like literally losing it. It's, it. it's to this day for me still the coolest iterations of the Final Fantasy summons in the series. I like 15 yeah. the, the best. And the music is amazing yeah. that plays. They're freaking well, I remember the first time you see the Leviathan <laughs> summon. Yeah. That was something else. That was pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, so cool. Um, so there's definitely only- lots of things about this game that I think are really cool. I agree. I just and think I the also, only thing I, I, I really think- Oh, my bad. Go, go, go ahead, go ahead no, Meadow. Meadow, you go, Meadow, you go first. You go first. You go first. Okay, I was just gonna. I was just gonna say. I, I think the only thing that really cripples the summons in the game is the uh, the fact that they're kind of like randomized. Yeah, oh, you, that's, don't, you can't only, really control it so well when they come out. Right, they only come about when you like take a, a bunch of damage or something like that. So yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I didn't like that as much either. Um, but you would probably pre- be pretty OP if you could control the, yeah, <laughs> the, those summons, summons at any time. At any wanted. time, you you would. Uh, yeah, you'd you'd be beating the game pretty quick. All right. Well, go ahead. One one more thing. Oh no no! I'm sorry. I was. <clears throat> no no. If you're gonna say right. something, go ahead. I I. Cut no, you I was off. just. I was saying. Um. I was. I, it kind of makes me wonder how they'll do the, the like, bigger summons like Knights of the Round or even the summons in Final oh. Fantasy, sixteen. As far mm. as like, will they will they only be stuck to those battles or like? Yeah. 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 It seems like that's probably the case. There's probably like blocked out sort of events in which right. the the icon battles will take place. Right. Um that probably won't be available in most well, encounters. It, it doesn't make sense given the system that 16 has yes. shown us for another character to just summon Ifrit like uh, do attack <laughs> right, for it because right, it's like right, wait yeah. they're they're kind of connected with certain people, right? Sure. So it wouldn't make sense to, for it to be a traditional way. It's like you become the summon. Yeah, right. Yeah. All right, fellas, we appreciate you coming on and chatting with us. This was, so far, I think, uh, the most interesting discussion I've had because there was a lot of here that I didn't know or I learned. Yeah, yeah, so thank yeah. you guys for coming on. And if you're going to keep streaming, uh, feel free to keep doing that. We may return a little bit later, but we're going to jump in and see where some of the other guys are at right now. Um, I'm ready. But, uh, it's yeah. a pleasure. Uh, yeah. All right. uh, we really appreciate you guys, and uh, we'll maybe talk to you here again shortly. All righty. Bye. Okay. See you. Bye. All right, let's switch back to us. Yeah, wow, what what a what a, what a lot journey <laughs> there is to talk about with Final yeah. Fantasy 15, right? It's it's funny to me how that's always kind of like 
any sort of discussion about Final Fantasy 15 for me just de- just it goes turns into, into this like what how happened? did this happen? Because <laughs> <Yes. laughs> that's the most interesting part of the game, unfortunately, is how it was made versus exactly. like what's actually in the game. And not just how did this happen because it's so bad. It's how did this happen and not be completely awful. Yeah, right, right, like. I don't know. It's 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 crazy, but it's also the most relevant game to talk about. Yeah. If we're going to talk about Final Fantasy sixteen, yeah, it was the last installment. It's yeah. you know, there's a lot of relevance. Exactly. There. So let's see here. Let's uh, take a look at uh, where some of our other streamers are at. We've got FF one here. He looks to be battling and s- Let, let's just go back to Doke. It's been a while since we talked to Doke. I want to talk to him. Let me send him a message here real quick. See where he's I'm at. In right here. Oh, you're right here. Oh, What's yeah, up, dude. How are you? How are things going, going in FF one? Uh, pretty good. Um, uh, not too great right now. I'm in the uh, <laughs> I'm in the Earth Cave on the way to the uh, Earth Fiend, and you okay. know, down a guy. Oh, you, yep. This is this is the oh, FF1 no. experience. This is what it's yep. all about. It's about <laughs> being in a rough. dungeon, and one of your guys, usually your white mage, goes down, and then you just try to get out of there. <laughs> that's that's kind of where I'm at right now. I'm very deep in. Um, out of healing oh, items. <laughs> Almost out of spells. Now I'm out of spells. I think it's time to make an exit. <laughs> yeah. Get out of there, dude. Yeah, I, I, I remember the first time I played it. This was the majority of my experience was being a little bit under leveled, not really knowing that. And then it's trying to escape out of the dungeon once you've made it like three floors down and just like your warrior just carrying you the whole way <laughs> because he's the only class that's any good at the beginning nice. of the game. Yeah, he's like the only thing left. And that's something I found out the hard way too, I guess, uh, or I should say remembered, is uh, the thief class is not that great in this. It's not. It's terrible, uh, actually. Yeah, what it becomes exactly. is good. What it becomes is good. But the thief class is actually one of the worst starting classes, which kind of sucks. Mm-hmm. So usually <laughs> I just go with two warriors <laughs> rather than a monk thinking, or a thief. Yeah, I was thinking that. You know, I'm, as I'm going through, I'm like, man, I wish I picked monk. This, uh, <laughs> probably would have been a little more, uh, a little easier. But, you know, it, this is just kind of how the game works, you know? Yeah. It's so, cool, uh, like, from the get go. Have you taken out any of the fiends yet? Uh, this is on my way to the first stack. The first one, I the, just, the, the uh, Earth so, Fiend. Yep, so I defeated the vampire. I got the rod to break open the uh, rock that's right there. Yep. Oh, um, uh, yep, I remember so this. It was, yeah, so it was on my way, but, you know, I need to make a retreat, go back, heal. And yep. what's worse about this place is the nearest town does not have a place where you can revive your party members. Oh, oh no. no. <laughs> so you got to so, keep. You got to go a long way. Dang. Yep, exactly. I basically have to uh, hop in the boat. Oh, there's there's two down. I think I'm just gonna have oh, to reload no. at this point. <laughs> no, the warrior too. He's like he's the only one who can get you out of here. <laughs> he tanks yep. all the damage. <laughs> Especially the monsters in this place. Like these wizards are brutal. They're actually what killed. Uh, oh, I know. Like, They're the dude. hardest enemies. And then they yep. have the um. What are those birds called? They're one of the dungeons where they they can turn your party into stone. They're like one of the most oh. annoying enemies. Oh, there I go. Yeah, okay. the uh, cockatrice s- there in here. Yeah, the too. cockatrices, yes. I'm, I'm really yeah. glad we got to see this, actually, because this is a huge <laughs> part of the Final <laughs> Fantasy One experience, is dying in it dungeons. It really is. I and love like, just old video games in general. Yeah. It's like people don't realize how hard these They were freaking hard, be. dude. Yeah. Freaking exactly. hard. Like the but first luckily, uh, Legend of Zelda. Last time I saved it was right outside town, so I can go. Um, oh, this yeah, looks sweet. Look at that. Here. Yeah. Traversing oh, yeah. in a boat. Yeah. You, you, Dude, you get a awesome. ship really early on. It's after the oh, second sweet. town that you get a ship. No way. And you can yeah, start you, like uh, cruising around. That yeah. looks so cool. It pits you in a battle against uh, nine pirates. Then the so, like when you win, it's like, all right, here, you can have my boat. And then yeah, they basically give you the ship so you don't kill them. Oh, the pirates. That's right. We were getting there. Yeah. Well, that happened earlier. That's how you get the ship. Yeah. But, um, yeah. uh, yeah, one thing I was going to mention now that we have this up here, um, mm-hmm. interesting thing about the way this game is designed, the character in slot one where you have your warrior right now, um, actually is kind of in a way in the front row of a battle formation. So like 
around 50% of all physical attacks are directed at whatever character is in that number one spot. Oh, really? So, yeah. if yeah, you tra it, it, so that has to be a warrior. You want it to be a warrior yeah. badly. If you put your white mage there, you're like in really, <laughs> really bad Interesting. trouble. Huh. Um, but yeah, then, like it, this, almost like a, it works like a tank. Think like a, almost like MMO yeah. mechanics, where you know you have your right. tank, your healer. Yeah, it's almost like the oh. uh, the origin of like you know the holy triad they call it. You know, there we go. Sorry, guys, I had not oh, switched no. over to hit. To I was going to bring yet. it up, but nobody in the chat had mentioned it. Okay, anyway, Sorry, um, so we're seeing the game now. Uh, yeah, so yep. then the character in slot two gets a roughly twenty five percent of physical damage directed at that character yeah and then the the other two get about 12 and a half percent a piece so That's you so want your mages in the last two spots like they're in the back row yeah so and then so, you in, want, mm -hmm. so instead yeah. of like uh front back in the rows it's just top down right that's good yeah, right exactly wow. exactly so they even as far back as this game they had this kind of concept of front and back row formation yeah. in mm -hmm. final fantasy yeah yeah, and then as like you know technology improved, they were able to you know implement that where you could swap which row they're in while well, keeping. And then you know the the lineup didn't quite matter as much. Yeah, yeah. man, the the overpriced items in the shops too. <laughs> oh yeah, this. So luckily, I have a folder where I had played through it previously, and I have just a list of saves at every stage of the game. Oh, nice. Because um, I got for a little bit like there's a good two <laughs> hours just at the marsh cave and i was like all right i need to keep this going a little bit so i yeah. you know <laughs> going to one of my other saves where i had just oh good that, gotten the crown so yeah and this is yeah this is the very first area right yeah back to cornelia yeah. the, the yeah, original love, or love cornaria yeah, i can't actually, remember which is the official but you guys weren't here before uh so in a cave it teaches you how to pull up the world map and this uh -huh. is it right here so you start out like, in that inner sea. Yeah, that's so big. As you, yeah. um, that is yeah. so cool. And as you progress, you know, like um, now through the the quest line, they've created a canal so I can now get outside of this inner sea. So that's mm -hmm. one thing that's a good thing is even though that town uh, does not have a place to revive, it's pretty easy to uh, get somewhere that does. You're not. Yeah. You're not trapped and you know tr backtracking for a good half hour to get somewhere where you can heal. Right. Yeah, and then you have to go, you have to go to the dwarves, right? They have to uh, use the explosives to open up the channel so you can get out of that inner sea to the outside. Yep. yep. Yeah, it's almost like a think like um, one of those trading mini quests. Like you have to get the crown to bring to Astos, then defeat him, and he has Matoya's crystal, which you bring to her. She gives you the herb to bring to the prince. It yep. gives you the key, which gives you the uh, the TNT. So yep. it's a whole thing, which is a very <laughs> NES era type of questing structure. This is just the way yeah. that RPGs were designed in this time, right? <laughs> you need this yeah. to get this to get this to get this to get mm -hmm. this to then go where you want to go. <laughs> yep. But, some of that, uh, some of that carries through today. See, and so, in this but. town, they've got like a desertification going on here, right? Ah. So it, it was once a yep. lush kind of green place, and now it's like drying up, and that's why you got all yeah. those like desert tiles in there. Nice. Yep, yeah. The uh, the villagers, if you talk to them, they think there was a vampire uh, in a cave that was draining the um, the life energy from the earth. But then you mm -hmm. find out after beating it that it wasn't actually that, and it's actually the earth fiend. So you have yep. to go back in. To that same um, dungeon, go deeper in, and um, go defeat him. Oops, that's yep. not what I wanted to do. And menuing is a little rough. In this yeah, then the, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, isn't it something weird? Like you got to press select to move up and down, and not like the directional buttons. Oh, uh, luckily the directional buttons do work. Okay, but it's um, it's just you can't like once you select an item, you have to select who it's given to. Uh, you have a very limited amount of space. That's right. Yeah. That's oh, yeah. Right. The inventory <laughs> in this game uh, is a whole different yeah. thing. And that that's kind of something uh, we haven't really touched on yet in terms of like, you know, Night Sky Prince was talking a little bit about the gameplay versus story spirit of Final Fantasy, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and one thing that was very much, very much a key part of like these early FF games was inventory management 
because oh, you're going absolutely. into a dungeon. You do not have enough money to right. buy 99 potions. So you have That's to be right. very deliberate about what yeah. you buy because you're That's not going to have strategy. enough to get everything that you want and, yeah. and, and the new equipment. And then you're going to have to go like seven <laughs> layers down in a dungeon and you'll probably yep. end up having your white mage get killed down there. How am I going to get back out? Yep. You got to like plan and like be really careful about when you use things and not. There was mm -hmm. like a big focus on like, should I use my potion now or should I not? Mm -hmm. Should I walk you know, to the next screen before I use an antidote to cure my poison, yeah. or should I use it now before I get into another battle? Was you poisoned again? <laughs> you know, well, it, like that kind of thing is brutal too. Oh, it's horrible. Like, it doesn't drop <laughs> off. It can only be healed with the pure item. It doesn't get healed in tents or at an inn. You oh, have wow. to use that item to heal it, or uh, unless you have the spell for it too. But actually. You talking about resource management, the spells are another big part of that because mm -hmm. there is no MP in this game. That's right. It, That's right. It works off of a D and D style uh, charge system where you only oh, have of five course. uses okay. of a level one spell, four of a level two. So you are very limited in your spells. You have to kind of like right. pick and choose when to use them. Yep. Wow. So so you you save your spells for the bosses. <laughs> yep. yeah. and, and then those it, those those characters are basically doing nothing and your the warriors carrying them all the way down and all the way back out of the dungeon. Yep, exactly. <laughs> Using you know, something tells me that's how it would go, though, right? Probably. You know, if Probably. you had some wizard, he's, like, got to yeah. brew his potions and, like, you know, get this whole big spell ready and the warriors just got to, like, defend until the, war the yep. wizard can do his one spell. Yep. That's exactly. Mm -hmm. I think that's basically kind of the concept behind it, because yeah. these NES uh, Final Fantasy games were very inspired by Dungeons and Dragons and yeah, Wizardry that's right. and Ultima. Oh yeah, they were they were yeah. basically like their attempts to make that those types of games for in, Japan. For Japan, right? Mm -hmm. oh, gotcha. And so, I mean, D and D was in Japan, but I mean, like uh, a video game version of what Ultima and Wizardry yeah. were, which were Western uh, developed games. I'm pretty sure, and then. You know, we're going to bring that formula over here. And so there's a lot, a lot of like classic tabletop RPG sort of mechanics in this. Oh, yeah, that, uh, absolutely. Over the years sort of got distilled more into what the Final mm -hmm. Fantasy formula became during the PlayStation 1 era, which was almost a, a sub or kind of a different genre from what it started mm -hmm. out as. But Especially uh, nice. even in um, the way some of the attack rolls are handled, like when you heal, there's... Almost not much of a minimum. Like I've healed one time, use a like a cure spell, and it cures almost full. Sometimes it only does ten HP. There's yep. a very wide range. Yeah, wow. because it's almost like a dice roll, that's right? Hard, it's, man. it's like yeah, in D and D. That's right. it's You're like doing a dice, a dice roll. roll to see that's you have like right. a base level at which you'll do damage or heal, but yeah. then you do a dice roll to see how much extra. And sometimes the roll is bad. Yeah. And so you just don't mm -hmm. get the heal that you're expecting to get. That's life. <laughs> right? That's true. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> that's the yeah, abstraction it's... for how they're getting across the idea that sometimes you mess up yep. in life, mm -hmm. right? You, yep. Sometimes you you're just you're not focused it, you enough. Know? <laughs> yeah, it's well, we aren't computers, right? Like, yeah. you know, you're gonna, there's gonna be variance. You know, every attack you do isn't gonna do the exact same number of pounds per square inch. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, so All right, how, what, what are you, what are you feeling for this run? Are you feeling good about getting to the? Oh, running is a good idea, actually. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, um, so far so good. Haven't run into any issues. You know, I stocked up on potions, so it should be good now. Um. Yeah, I really want to see the Earth Fiend. That'd be a good uh, place to get to. matter trying to remember how to navigate through here, more or less. How many how many floors are there in this dungeon? Like four or five? It's like yeah, I think uh, four or five maybe because there's uh, three in the upper level where the vampire is, and after the vampire, I think there's two or three more. Yeah. So yeah, you know and. At, once you hit, get past that second layer, uh, it only ramps up in difficulty too. Like all yeah, the monsters it, change. Yeah. Oh, well, and then the monsters become monsters that can one shot you, which is. <laughs> yep. <laughs> you just start running the second you see those cockfish. Like, no, run away, run away right now. <laughs> yep, no, like, no, no, no. Get out of here. <laughs> and there's that one hallway in this dungeon too that has the yeah, giants. Yeah. Brutal. Freaking and brutal. It's, it's the for that one hallway they cranked up the encounter rate where every single tile is a fight and it's always against <laughs> two giants 
Wow. And they could easily one shot you. It is if you t- take the wrong turn, it's like nope, turn around, get out of here. Yep. And we got uh, Ka Five in the comments here saying, "I play this version like once a year." And despite all the stuff we're saying about how brutal it can be and like how frustrating, yeah. I kind of do the same. I just really love yeah. replaying the OG NES FF One. It's just like yeah. a lot of fun, and mm-hmm. it's I don't know. There's just something about this game. I've played FF1 way more than I've played the other two NES titles, like more than FF3 oh, and more yeah. than FF2. I keep coming back to FF1. It's just, there's something special about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah, here we go. This one right here. Yep, that hallway. Not Get out of that hallway. That. No! Not deal with this. <laughs> no! No! Cockatrice! <laughs> Run! <laughs> and, you know, they turn you to stone, and the only item that can cure it is like 800 gold. I know! It's oh so overpriced! <laughs> it's so bad. The item balance, like the item cost balance in this game is completely, like, insane. It doesn't make any sense why that item costs more than, like, a tent or something. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, what I- the heck are you thinking? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, and as the series goes on, they definitely kind of figure that out more. But you know, yeah. this really, really kind of shows like the the. Also, you know, you have to figure they pad it out to you know games were shorter back then. Like, oh yeah, if you they're trying to make it this, longer. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like you can blitz that's, through this that's in like true. ten hours if you know exactly where to go, what to do. Yeah, but you know. If you don't, then you could be playing for, you know, 20 to 30 and a lot of times just grinding and, you know, trying to get enough gold to buy items and everything like that. Sure. Uh, Yeah, there's a lot of time spent uh, just trying to grind for the gold you need or grind for a couple more levels so that you can get uh, another, uh, you know, cast. You get one more charge for a cast of whatever spell instead of having it once. You could do it twice. And that, yep. it, like, changes the game, right? Yeah. <laughs> it changes the Fuck whole fight. Yeah, but, it changes you know, everything to how you approach it and everything like that. Yeah. Uh, and then a lot of the uh, boxes will be empty. So you'll, like, you'll go and you'll spend all this time walking over here, do, like, five fights along the way to go in this room. There's a chest, and it's like, nothing. <laughs> it's like, right. dang it. I just, like, risked my life five times for nothing. And now I got to go walk all the way back and probably fight five more fights to get back to where I was on this floor. Yep. Or like in this <laughs> so funny. dungeon, uh, you walk in a room with a treasure chest and the second you get close to it, this like enemy that doesn't spawn anywhere else in the game just appears <laughs> and deals like 50 to 60 damage per hit when can almost one shot your healers. It's yep. rough. It's, it is a difficult game. It's very difficult. And that's kind of where the fun is. You know, it, it definitely yeah. has more of a feeling of like adventure. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like there's not many there's not many RPGs like these days where if you turn a corner into the wrong hallway, you're just done for. Yeah. Right. And and, and that, I guess the trend for bringing some of that back it kind of came with the Souls games, right? Where yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. It's like oh, games were hard again. <laughs> games RPGs like- in particular. And well, these guys I guess paralyze your this is on a different party. level, but like Super Meat Boy. Oh, yeah. Where it's like hard, but oh. the reset is so quick. Yes. That it it's okay. Yeah. It's if you like die you a just thousand times, try the same jump. Yeah. Over and over and over. Versus, yeah. I have to go back like thirty that's minutes of the, progress or an hour. That's of what would kill me in these old games. Oh yeah. Is losing progress, and I just usually would just back away and say, <laughs> I don't <laughs> can't. Do I don't it. really want I'm to done. do this anymore. <laughs> I well, gave I up on a lot so- of games on the NES, for yeah. sure. I gave up on a lot oh, of games. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So I just got stunlocked for... Yeah, this is looking combat. bad. You're not looking this bad. This is looking bad. <laughs> All right. Woo, Hopefully, okay. uh, Warrior will uh, wake up here. Oh, you got away. Yep. Oh, you got. Oh, I thought you got to oh, a gosh. battle after one step, but you were going in the menu. Oh, my God. <laughs> no, thank God. <laughs> yeah it's a tough game potions. all right let me take a look here at uh where some of our other streamers are at okay oh we're on we're okay i'm gonna go over to ezzy for a minute she's in the final fantasy 3 ds version so let me kind of jump over there we may be back once you get to a fiend let me know when you get to a fiend all right we'll do okay all right let's see here uh, let me send her a quick message so that she knows we're on her stream Get 
get some Final Fantasy 3 music going. Maybe we should do the Final Fantasy 3 DS. Uh, ah, the soundtrack. Soundtrack this time. <coughs> wow, this looks awesome. Yeah, I like it. I <laughs> so like it. was um, Final Fantasy 3 remade to get this treatment first or 4? Three. 3. They did 3, three then was 4 first. was done after. Mm-hmm. That's right. I don't know if she cool. saw our ping... Let me send it in here. Here at Ezzy. Hopefully she'll see that. If not, that's cool. We can just comment on whatever yeah. it is we're seeing. I here. love this the the design here. Mm. I really like this. It's it's a bit chibi. It's a bit um, like well, Kingdom yeah. Crystal Chronicles. Yeah, right. But I really like it. I do too. And I the stuff like this is very charming to me. There are a lot of people who do not like the graphical style of Final Fantasy three and four DS. Yeah, I get why, but I like it. <laughs> yeah, I like it a lot actually. Um, I, I really do feel like it's kind of faithful to that sort of chibi look that like the early Final Fantasy games were going for. Hi guys. Uh, Hello. Hey, hey. Welcome yeah. back. Oh, you can hear me well. Yeah. Sure well, can. Are you still alive and well after everything? We sure are. Thing. We're we went doing well. 15. We, we saw that you're on the DS version, so we wanted to jump yes. over and take a look at that real quick. This looks awesome. really cool. Yeah. Look so, at the textures. Yeah. Look at the stone textures. Yeah. That's what? Awesome. Where are you in the game? What point so is this? We just started. Basically, when you take a look at my ah. party, we only have three characters. So the difference, ah, okay. big difference between the original FF3 and the Pixel Remaster and this is that you're kind of unlocking the characters in, during this entire first chapter. And yes. we don't have any jobs yet at all. Yes. So, we still don't have the fourth one. We're just at the start, so you haven't missed much. Right. And now you're going to start seeing the differences, really. Um, when yeah, we're yeah. So it's just it's just Luneth and Ark who are down in the cave in the beginning, right? It's not. Uh, uh, it's actually just Luneth, and then we find just Ark Luneth. really. Yeah, just Luneth, and then we find Ark a little bit later. Whoa! Then, what's up with these like, people? They're they're yes, ghosts. Oh. They're all ghosts. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, that's a good risk. <laughs> but cool. I don't know why they decided to show them as like little, I don't know, like flat people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but they're yeah, supposed to be ghosts. Know. That's kind of how they looked like in Pixel Remaster 2. A little bit different yeah. color, but it's it, it has that sort of silhouette thing going on. Uh, it's it's funny that that looks kind of similar. Yeah. Uh, let me just actually huh. I'm kind of curious. Oh yeah, there is this uh little mold in the rock that tells you that there's a secret passage here. We're going to be looting that li little later. Oh, <laughs> check <laughs> out the, the check the secret yeah. passage. That was something. I love that the DS yeah. lets you know because the NES games would not nope. let you know. You would just have yeah, to go no. <laughs> walk into every tile and try yes. to find the secret yep. passages. <laughs> to bomb yeah, every yeah, wall. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> All right, so we're going to have a conversation with the king now. Okay. Um, there he is. Basically, yeah, there he is. He's character. also cursed. <laughs> this is all a curse that we're trying to solve. The so curse at of the beginning the of the game, you immediately get an airship to deal with this as a bunch of kids <laughs> that are six uh, or whatever. You get like yes. a bunch of knives and an airship, and you get to deal with the Jin's curse. Um, we have to find the mithril ring in order to take care of it. Yes, mm -hmm. of course. Mm hmm. Good stuff. So between the versions you've played, which one do you mm -hmm. like better? So you? I've I've played the entirety of the Pixel Remaster, and this one I've never finished actually, so it's hard to mm -hmm. tell. Um, but I I prefer the music and kind of the style of the Pixel Remaster, even though yeah. I really really like the um, the art style of this one, especially like the sprites and that. Um, uh, Akihiro Yoshida made or whatever. <laughs> I'm probably mispronouncing that. I'm sorry, but I really like that art style. Um, however, yeah. I did hear that this version of the game is a lot more difficult, like a lot more grindy. Uh, oh, really? Sure yeah. About yeah. That, I, but... I think that's true. I think the the DS versions of both Final Fantasy three and four were actually pretty difficult. Hmm. Um, 
I, I, on the Steam release of Final Fantasy IV, I know for a fact that they added two difficulties. So the hard difficulty yeah. was the original difficulty uh, of, of the DS version. And then they added like a normal mode, which is a little easier. Mm, I don't think they did that. Did they do that on this version, no. Ezzy? <laughs> yeah, so this is just the same as oh. the, the DS, the... 3DS version, which was also tough. I mean, there was... I, I yeah. do remember doing quite a bit of grinding in this version of the game, but... Yeah, uh, especially here, that's a lot in concerns to the last, like, gauntlet of dungeons, where it's... Even in the Pixel Remaster, it's a bit difficult because you can't really save in between. You can't really yep. heal. Yep. Uh, it's huh. it's like a lot of dungeons <laughs> and mm -hmm. a lot of bosses. Uh, That's one how after NES another. games were. But yeah, this is like specific, especially hard because of uh, the saving, how it works, and and sort of that sort of stuff. Oh, uh, yeah. This is also a big difference because the characters are actually named. You probably noticed this is how you kind yep. of get the yeah. little backstory, which doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. They, and they're not answer. they're not children in this version. <laughs> they're like, yeah, uh, they're like teenager yeah, adult little, level. Yeah, they're yeah. a little bit older. <clears throat> yep. Um, which is cool. Which is cool. I like yeah. I like the characters that they like sort of established for this version of the game. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I like I them. I think they're cool. They they have uh, like tropey personalities, but I think it completely suits the feel of the game. It's very cute. Yeah. Uh, and I I like it. I like it. Yeah. How they went about it. Uh, oh, that's right. There's so many in the comments talking about PSP version. I was going, wait, a PSP, PSP. Oh, this version of the game was ported to the PSP. Oh, was it? I forgot about oh, that. Yeah. Yeah. This was so, the original in Nintendo DS. I'm not sure where it was yeah. ported. <laughs> Nintendo yeah, DS first, time. and then it came to, I think it came to PSP after that, and then the, the, the Steam mm. PC version was the most recent. But Yeah, I'm playing it on Steam right now. So, uh, do we want to have a little looting? It's not go, go through the castle and yes. uh, grab all Just the treasure. All the how how can you By not? Means, this is the I best love part. To see <laughs> <laughs> more of this. I, absolutely, I really uh, Blizzard. So uh, there's also something to note that at this point we don't have any jobs. As far as I could tell, we can still mm. uh, teach them. Uh, spells at this point as a yeah, freelancer, the freelancer they can learn yeah. them. but um, I didn't learn and teach anyone anything yet we're gonna keep that verb when we get to the dungeon when I kind of yeah. decide what I want to do with them um, so so yeah we're not gonna be playing this version for very long I just really wanted to showcase that beginning of the game and how it's different and what kind of how the feeling is different yeah. uh, I think a lot of people actually know this version uh, yeah, it's been available. Right, for it's a the while. first the first version we got outside of Japan yeah. was this one. Yeah, it's, I would say more people probably know this version than even the Pixel yeah. Remastered. Yeah, yeah. yeah. For, for me, this one is newer, so uh, yeah. I just wanted <laughs> to highlight a little bit of a difference. And there, we we still are going to play the Pixel Remaster part. Like there is one particular portion of the game that I really like, which is the Saronia Castle part. Which um, when we get back to the Pixel pixel remaster we're gonna play that and then the crystal tower nice. sort of mm. sequence even though i saved i cheated a little bit i have a new game plus file for that so we have <laughs> like the final boss fights and we will walk there that entire time this is Ooh. gonna be still a long thing but there's not gonna <laughs> be bosses oh. uh there's there's gonna be just enough to show how long of a gauntlet there really is yeah. Here's another thing that's really cool about Final Fantasy III. You yeah. get an airship really early, quickly. Early on. I mean, like at the mm. beginning of the nice. game. Nice. You get an and airship can go right anywhere? away. Not anywhere. Okay. But you do get an airship really quickly. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it gets destroyed <laughs> not oh, too long you after this. Of course. Yeah, you get so many vehicles <laughs> in this game. It's actually so it's, it's It's actually, that's probably one of my favorite things about Final Fantasy III is the number yeah. of traversable vehicles you get. There's so many yeah. different ones. There's like three different airships. There's like a submarine, I think. Uh, There's mm. a, like a whole bunch of different ones you get. Um, yeah. And everyone so, is completely different. And right. it, it just makes the game refreshing constantly. There was actually a lot of surprises along the way <laughs> for for the game. And with the traversal types that it gives you, I, I think that's pre probably the best part of it. Because you keep getting surprised. If you don't know what you're expecting, you just keep getting surprised. Like, oh my god, yep. there is a whole like mm, 
section. What <laughs> did you didn't know about? It's crazy. Yeah. A lot of this is this is an enemy it. type I don't remember. Like literal coins fighting you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they, they do appear. This is copper. They do appear in a gold version later as well. This is interesting. I don't know why I'm already kind of at my dying feet. I think I need to grind a little bit at That's this pretty point. funny. Oh, yeah. my God. Okay, yeah, they're, they're yeah. hitting pretty hard. Wow. They are hitting pretty hard. Are you, are you going to move believe, back to the so, Pixel Remaster version? Now? So let me just uh, check real quick. I have saved a save slot for a little bit in front. Let me just see where I saved it. Uh, oh, yeah. Just before the Jin fight. So what we're dealing with right now... But grind free save slot. So I'm going to do that next. Well, we're going yep. to reset uh, <laughs> into a file that I prepared a little <laughs> bit Later. in front of this yeah. same thing, just so we get to see the boss. And then I'm going to go back to the Pixel Remaster. Okay. Where did you leave off in the Pixel Remaster? Uh, so we got to. Uh, so we went through. We got to the Fire Temple. And then I died because at that point I was highly underleveled. And yeah. then I decided, uh, okay, we've gotten through like most of the things. After this, we kind of unlock Enterprise. There's a little bit of stuff going on there. And then we skipped to the Water Temple. So we did that story arc. Mm -hmm. uh, now we're going to be like skipping <laughs> from... We played probably about four hours of story. Oh, wow. Nice. In, in the succession. But then I now I'm starting to skip through the fun bits because there's a lot yeah. of um, grind. <laughs> there's a lot of grind in these old yes. FF games, that's yes. for sure. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me just uh, try to... Oh, action actually quit. Okay, uh, just a second. We will restart the... F well, up to you guys if you want to be watching this on the Look at that, look at that I'm image. Basically, Freaking love yeah, it. I'm basically... That, that's the little background that I got from the, this game, that's like a airship concept art. They didn't actually mm, name yeah. which one it is, so I'm not sure if yeah. um, hmm. there is one. But okay, maybe so it's maybe it's the first one. one. So see, freelancers, everyone is level seven, and we are basically uh, going through this dungeon, basically uh, right in front of the gin. Um, well, we picked up the princess. That's one thing that changed, and I do have to get to there, which is not that long. And I'm gonna run through these things just so we are. Oh, I actually turned off the music. Oops, <laughs> for this one, I just realized All good. that it's completely silent. <laughs> <laughs> All good. Did we got guys... we got some music going on mm -hmm. our streams. So. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> I'll fix it for the streams here. Uh, I wanted yeah. to actually check. There is one thing that I've heard about the game. Uh, it's kind mm -hmm. of history that maybe you guys know. I, I never got to check this information anywhere. Um, like I, I didn't find any sources, but I heard that the Elite Four in the Pokemon games were kind of influenced by the gauntlets of this game. Oh, really? And like hmm. th basically Year-wise, it kind of makes sense because Elite Four was from '96 and this was from 1990, so it could work. But I'm not actually sure. I didn't. I haven't kind of read that, but there are mm. so many mm. developer interviews, and th there's always almost new stuff coming out, like every year mm. that I find and I go, "Whoa, whoa!" You know, like I didn't know that. Yeah. So it that's a possibility yeah. for sure, but I haven't. Heard, heard about it about okay. that rumor before so i don't know i cannot give a confirmation okay. on that one. i thought if anyone would know i mean it could be like uh i mean final fantasy and dragon quest essentially inspired mm. every jrpg that came after them so pokemon being inspired by one of the two would, would make, make a lot of sense mm. a lot of sense yes uh all right and i mean the four fiends were kind of a thing in yeah. FF1 and an FF4 and so Big. would this uh, be equivalent to the weapon the emerald weapon ruby sapphire emerald diamond how many do you fight in there's Final four. Fantasy 7 there's four of them well I think it's emerald ruby sapphire diamond right isn't that it yeah uh, oh, yeah so that's that's actually uh, just made me think the other Pokemon the games fiends. the ruby oh ruby diamond. sapphire emerald that's right <laughs> emerald and pearl and maybe yeah. maybe the the Pokemon huh. direct uh uh Game developers really do love Final Fantasy a lot. They <laughs> yeah. find subtle ways to, you huh. know, throw some references in there. 
Ultima. Apparently, is there a, is there a Pokemon Ultima? I didn't. I've never heard of that. If that's I real. I don't actually know. Maybe in some of the newer generations. I don't oh, know. I yeah, basically saying stopped. Ultima. Maybe it's not Diamond. And stopped playing at Silver. <laughs> that was my entryway yeah. to Silver. This hey, of... that's a good time to stop. Yeah, <laughs> Gold and Silver. <laughs> yeah, and then. Yep. It's kind of unwieldy now. There's like a thousand Pokemon now, and it's. Uh... Yeah, I can't keep up with it. Yeah. Okay, come on, Lunith, run, run, run. There um, we are. My first and last Pokemon game was Pokemon Blue. Oh, Not because nice. I didn't like it. I loved it a lot. I just didn't play any of those after that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was obsessed with that game uh, for a long time, though. I, I've been telling myself for years I want to go back and play Pokemon Blue again. But yeah. <laughs> don't think it's going to happen. <laughs> Pokemon Yellow, dude. On the slate. Pokemon yeah, Yellow, Yellow. Yellow was cool because you got to start with Pikachu. Right? Got to start okay, with Pikachu. Here we are at the boss, finally. <laughs> this is the Jin that cursed everybody. All right, everybody congrats. To go. Let's see. Let's see how uh, Arabic the Jin looks. Yes. No, quite. Pretty Arabic. Pretty Jin y. <laughs> Pretty Jin y. <laughs> Jin y. <laughs> Nothing's happening, but why? Oh, no. Oh, no. We got the evil laughter. Yep. Had an ace on oh, the sleeve. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, the, the Ganon laugh. The That's right, yeah. 64 <laughs> Zelda. Yeah. All right, so let's see. Uh, I don't even remember. Okay, there's just some attacks, blizzard. He looks pretty hardcore. There's the, the legend of the gene in, <laughs> uh, you know, Arabia he is yep. such that the, the genie are spirits that are neither good nor bad. They're like in the middle, mm, right? They're, they're true neutral. They're neutral, <laughs> right? They waffle on... On, uh, they're kind of like fence sitters, you could say. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, they're, they're centrists. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, okay. um, radical <laughs> centrists. That was a bit of a joke, but so they, um, yeah, it's great because they'll do kind of, um, you know, they'll do both good deeds and bad deeds, and yeah. you would say that uh, the um, Islamic, you know, uh, scriptures would say that as Satan mm. fell down you know, to the underworld and, and God stayed above that the jinn are in between. Yeah. Right. And they, you can ask them and they may help you, but they'll just as soon hurt you. Right. Yeah. So be very careful. Proxy Doug is saying Middle Eastern yokai. <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh yeah. It's very, very similar to the yokai. Yeah. Also kind of just similar to the Greek gods in general. Sure. Where it's like, that's true. They're going to sort of help you, but also they have their own purposes right. and they might kill you. <laughs> they might just. So be careful whatever. asking them for anything. Mm-hmm. All right, so how is this fight going? How are you feeling about it? Well, Things going good so I far? I think it's going okay. I don't actually know. <laughs> uh, I, I tested it before that I can't beat him, and it was pretty easy, so now I'm, like, worried so that sure. he isn't dead yet. <laughs> but hopefully it, it happens dead soon. Yet? <laughs> we'll oh, that see. ice attack was really effective. It was really good, yes. And that's basically he, he's all weak that to I ice. have. Yep. Yep, that's all. That's the only thing that makes damage, honestly. So I just keep like curing and. Uh, uh, yeah, just, just make sure. Ark your uh, Ark's gonna carry you through this fight. It looks yep, like. Yeah, pretty much, pretty much, as long as Ark stays alive. Yep. Mm. <laughs> it should be all Come right. Come on, Ark. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Bam! There he's, I think he's dead. Flashes. He's dead on this one. Death. Yes, All I right. called it. <laughs> <laughs> yep, there you go. Nice, and congratulations. We got a bunch of stuff. Yeah, that's that's about it. Yeah, um, this one is, has each character kind of. Sorry, was, go, go ahead. You, you first. If, if, if you know if this is the first Final Fantasy with dual wielding, we were discussing it a little Ooh, earlier. As I, as I didn't play one and question. two, I'm not actually sure. I think it might be, <laughs> but I'm not. You sure. know what? I think I think it is because in Final Fantasy 2, I know you can switch weapons mid-combat. Mm -hmm. I don't think you can dual wield, but you can do multiple hits, uh, okay, I think, okay. in Final Fantasy 2. Um, but yeah, this might have been the first one where you can dual mm -hmm. wield. Because isn't that a perk of one of the classes? I can't remember which one. Because I know the freelancers can do it, but um, yeah. I think there's other classes that specific, like if you go to a warrior class, I don't think they'll allow you to Hold yeah, two yeah, swords, yeah. kind some of, of thing, them right? Can only have a shield. Some of them can have two weapons or two staffs. Like all the mages can, as far as I could. People uh, in the comments are saying that they think you could do that in Final Fantasy II. So it's probably uh -huh. FF2 where you could dual wield for the first time. Okay, so but. this is the part where we actually now, after the initial 
after the whole section of getting the characters, getting rid of the curse, getting the airship, everything, now we are actually meeting the crystal together and getting the first jobs, which is very different from the Pixel Remaster, it, where, you know, you get them right at the beginning and immediately can start leveling the jobs. Oh, here we so, go. Good, good answer yeah. from Mark Schwartz. In the <laughs> NES version of FF2, you could dual wield, but it was bugged, so it didn't uh, do both weapon damage. So you could put oh, them in what? the hands, but basically you didn't wow. get the damage from but it. it did. So it wouldn't benefit. you shouldn't wow. do it. Yeah, don't do it. <laughs> See, FF2 had a lot of bugs like this. Yeah. FF2 was a generally very buggy game, mm. which I think is why it gets its reputation as the black sheep. Yeah. But it's yeah. actually not that bad of a game. Hmm. It's actually kind of cool. Yeah. All right, yeah, we're getting to another game. crystal here. Yes, this is nice. this is the first. Oh, the this first is the one. First, yeah, this is the first one. This is the first. Of crystal. this game. Yes, basically, Lunet was the only one who saw it at the beginning and like got a little glimpse of the adventure, but only now we are getting to have the whole party at the crystal, and now it's gonna like give us the jobs. I had forgotten that they had oh, yes. done it this way. It's been a long time since I played this version. Yeah, it's very different. It really surprised me when I got into it. Yeah. So this is just going to give you your first five basic jobs, your warrior, your yes. black mage, white mage, red mage, and monk. Uh, yes, I believe it also gives you a thief here right away. Oh, a thief. Nice. So it's a little bit different than the other one. And here we have the crystal. That's the one that re really reminds me of Heidelin uh, crystal. Mm -hmm. at the beginning Looks of a Final lot like that. Yep. It's like mm. really, really similar. That was what I tried to base this crystal in the graphic behind us on was basically that uh, kind of look. Let me pull it up one. here. I created an animation for uh, the Final Fantasy I retrospective series. Up. That's Akihiko Yoshida is the character designer of this particular remake mm, and yep. Nier Automata 14 and 16. So it's like very, mm. very cool that we're playing this now, at least a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's, a, that's pretty much the beginning of the game. And I'm not going to go any further because it's okay. a grinding game and I want to get back to the <laughs> big story myself. But I think all a lot of people right. enjoyed this one. Everybody who did play it really gave me a positive feedback. So I don't think... I think you could basically pick any one of them, really, depending on mm -hmm. your preferences if you haven't played it before. Uh, this one might be a bit more grindy, but if you like that, yeah. it doesn't matter. Okay. Well, we're going to jump over to Final Fantasy IV now, so uh, yeah. we'll maybe come back a little bit when you get a little bit further into the Pixel Remaster version, um, yeah. but we'll see we'll how it goes. We'll let you know the end parts, if not sooner, so we'll, we might see each other and uh, yeah, have fun with Final Fantasy IV. I'm going back to okay. my chat. <laughs> okay, All sounds right, good. See ya. See ya. Bye-bye. All right. Okay. Let's get our... Final Fantasy IV stream back up here. I'm here, y'all. If uh... what's up? <laughs> All right, let me. How find are you guys? I've been. Again. I've got. It's funny. I've been flipping back. I've got your stream on the whole time. Flipping back <laughs> with everyone's oh, stream. <laughs> so it's been super fun. Yeah. Oh my this gosh. Is, this everyone's has been so a lot of fun so far. This has been fun. Knowledgeable. It's yeah. awesome. <laughs> yeah. It's been so awesome. where are you at here? So this is a save I booted up um, <laughs> from the uh, complete collection on PSP. Um, oh, nice. and, uh, it's, uh, where am I? The Lunar Ruins. I was in Tower of Babel, but, uh, I'm here t towards the end of the game. Okay. Oh, wow. Cool. Oh, wow, cool. Very nice. Um, and, uh, it's been Look super fun. Look at how fun. medieval. Look at, Look at it. That city <laughs> looks so cool. Can you guys see my, uh. Yeah. We're, we're on your, uh. We see you. Your stream oh. now, so. Yeah. Cool. So now I'm here in the Lunar Ruins, and then you notice Rydia is uh, basically a grown adult, which is so cool. Yeah. You know? oh, so, so you're really far into the game now, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, maybe I need We're to refresh exactly here. not exactly seeing. No, he's moving. Okay. Let me I'll, I'll wait. Just to make sure. Okay, now, there now, we I, go. Think we're, now yeah, I think yeah. we're caught up. There we go. Okay. Now we're Sorry, seeing I'm it. I'm gonna delay watching the other, watching your stream just to make sure. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Gosh, I think I forgot to say how awesome. Like this was the first game when I played it as a kid, where play like character. There was something awesome with these characters. Like Tella, basically, is like this old mage, right? And mm -hmm. 
basically yeah. like I don't know I don't know how to explain it, but like he gets older and he gets kind of weaker, if that makes sense, based on his yeah. age. Right. Oh, and right. Rydia grows up into an adult. Now she's back as a kid here. And I- I- I'm just it blew my mind when I was a kid. Yeah. Um, Attention to detail, storytelling in the gameplay kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, and when I was a kid, I uh, I think this is why I'm a data scientist is because I had like a little journal. Um, when I would play these RPGs, these old RPGs, where I would just keep track of stats and HP and just, you know, just being yeah. a numbers person. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's funny. Yep. Uh, that's actually a good point, though. They do that a couple of times in this game where, like, I never really thought about the tele thing, but it makes a lot of sense because your mages get a lot stronger than him, even though he has, like, end game level spells. He does, but him but he being an cast. old man, right? Yeah. He doesn't yeah. have enough. Energy. Yeah, exactly. And like with Rydia too, it's like I I especially love the part where because her village was burned in the beginning beginning yeah, of the remember. game, she doesn't want to use the fire spell, right? That's so right. So she doesn't yeah, yeah. even have the fire spell available until a certain point of the story where they need her to melt some ice to progress. And they're like, and and Rosa yeah. sort of like coaching her through it, like, listen, I know it's scary or whatever, but like you know, you're strong and you can do it. And then as soon as she does that, the fire spell gets into the spell list. So like they, they even all the way back That's to cool. this time, they That's were cool. sort of using the gameplay to tell the story in, yep. in good ways. But it I hadn't awesome. really thought about that with, with uh, Tella though. That's a good point. Yeah. It's, it's really, it's really cool. There's like a, I gotta send you like this chart that I drew when I was researching how like in p- certain portions of the game. And the, the only time I think is when he can finally cast Meteor on Golbez, I think. is like when he finally yeah. casts it. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Because he finally has enough MP to use all of his MP to do it. It, it was just really, uh-huh. really cool. Yeah. Oh, I forgot how tall the, the, the sprites were in battles in this version. They're actually I pretty tall. I yeah. absolutely adore this version. Hmm. I'd see as far as the 2D versions go, this is definitely the best looking one. Yeah, I like it better than what they did with the Pixel Remaster. Um, yeah, I think a lot of people agree in the chat, too. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the funny thing is, and, you know, I was watching actually one of your um, old uh, uh, Final Fantasy IV reviews, um, yeah. which is actually how I discovered the channel a lot, you know, 10 years ago, I think. Mm, yep, <laughs> uh, yeah. And, um, you know, I had forgot about it as a kid. That they kind of had heavily censored all the Judeo, you know, Christian yep. uh, story and themes, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. And but there was still something there, and I was always interested. That's why I love. I gush whenever Kay- Kaysen gets into any theological discussions <laughs> or any. It, it's right. like it's like the best stuff. That's why I was so psyched because Xenogears is my favorite game. Oh yeah, dude. Yeah. And oh my god, I was just gushing over that. Um, and. That's when I was. I went back to this game and real. Okay, wait. They started doing this in this game, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and because mm. I remember playing Xenogears as a kid when it first came out, like I literally because of this game, I bought every SquareSoft game. Anything that said SquareSoft, mm-hmm. I mean, I went to You're a PS4 buying it yeah. Yeah. <laughs> instead of an N64 because of this game, you know. Uh. Um, so when I played Xenogears because it came out, yeah, I got a day day of. Um, I went to the library and I had to do all this research about, you know, <laughs> Freud and and Karen Horny and Nietzsche. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Horny. <laughs> yeah. Yep. There's, there's. And a, it all I mean, comes to this, from this game, I mean, it's, it's, it's awesome. I, yeah. I, this I, was, really, so, this was the, this was the start of the involved, yeah. like dramatic storytelling in RPGs. This was the first game that really tried that, and so, yeah, Square over the next five to six years after this just like progressively got more and more complex and xenogears was like the peak of that but (laughs) it was what what type of um religious elements were not included in the original version of this game the american version so a lot of the symbols like all the crosses will be removed Uh, from the buildings Uh. and they changed the name of the spell holy to white so they wouldn't even they wouldn't even call the spell holy oh they just called it white Huh. So it was a lot of that sort of thing. Mostly was anything that was overtly Christian Im- imagery wise. Now I've heard some of that out. was top down by Nintendo. Yes, um, it was a Nintendo of America was that policy the case here. Okay, yeah. okay. Nintendo of America was the one that dictated that. 
which is why the Japanese version has it and the American the SNES American version, version did not. Yeah. The 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 censorship policies of Nintendo of America at that time were really really strict. Like I wonder really why. strict. I really wonder why. That's I, so I interesting. <laughs> what were you going to say, Mike? I I was going to ask was it um Woolsey that uh uh, translated this game? No, he like? he started on FF five, um, okay. but that game didn't actually get released. So like then six ended up kind of being the right. first FF that he worked <gasps> on, right? Huh. All right, let's see. I'm getting a notice here. Okay, just taking a break. Got it. Okay, people just letting me know what they're up to here. Okay. Uh, anyway, a five a five person party. Yeah. In the battle. Yeah. Yeah. How cool Unique. is that? That's I, very cool. In fact, I don't think there's another FF game that does that. One, right? I think it's the only it's one not. that goes up that high. Yeah. You have to move over to Suikoden or something if you want a bigger. Okay, so there's a lot of people texting me here of cool stuff coming on. Uh, we got the Bahamut Alexander attack on Alexandra stuff happening. Okay. Okay. We'll jump over to that one next. So, uh, is this the final dungeon here of FF4? Yes, it is. Okay. I forget how long the dungeon is. It's so long. Is it a long one? <laughs> they, 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 back then, they always had the stupidest, longest dungeons in the world for the final dungeons. It was always my least favorite yeah. part of the early FF games, actually, were the final dungeons. It, it just, they drove me crazy. Yeah. FF3 is, is like brutal, oh dude. Brutal. And FF2 the remake, is it's brutal. Even more brutal. Oh, yeah. just crazy. It's so hard in the remake. It's insane. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Okay, well, while, while you work through this, hit me up when you get to the final battle. But um, we're going to jump over to FF9 to look at something cool real quick. So we'll yeah, be right no back with I you in a bit. I actually have to drop for a bit. Um, so oh, okay. If I okay. Back, um, I just want to say thank you guys so much for having me on. Um, it was yeah, of course. It was a pleasure. And yeah, uh, hopefully I'll stay in the Discord chat just to make sure. Um, but okay. I have to go take care of my little one. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. Sounds good. Hey, we understand that. All right. Yeah. Thanks, Mike. Thank okay. you, guys. Take care. You too. See ya. <clears throat> All right. Let me come back into here real quick. We get some FF9 music going. Oh, hello. Oh, hello. Hey, Welcome hey. Back. I was just okay. ranting about how annoying trance is. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> how trance. horrible the timing is. <laughs> yep. All right, let me find your stream here real quick. We're, there's, yeah. uh, I think seven's actually done, but it, it, okay, yeah, here we go. It, yeah. All right, so we are back on your stream. We are back during the Siege of Alexandria, which is yeah. actually one of my favorite sequences. So we jumped it's into great. the Black Mage Village yeah. stuff. Which is my oh, favorite. Oh, cool! I love with that. With Oh, yeah. Yeah. emotional. There were some tears shed. It's fine. I, I must then... say also thank you for skipping the Tetra Master game and going straight to the cool <laughs> part of Disc Three here. You know what's so funny is we actually did do it. <laughs> we, we did the tournament. Oh, did you really? Trying, In Trino, trying, the Trino. Yeah, we did Trino for a little bit, and nice. I was trying to explain it as best I can. But what a mess! I know. Right? It's so hard to explain. <laughs> That game. How it works. Yeah. And it's then, like, as soon as you explain the rule, it just decides randomly to not follow that rule. Right. <laughs> like, wait a minute. Why did you beat me? I don't get it. That doesn't make sense. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. So but this like, part's well, awesome. Yeah. So we got the Siege of Alexandria happen. We did see Bahamut already. I would love to know, because we were just talking about Kuja. Mm hmm And I know there's, there's mixed thoughts all Ooh. over, but I really love... Also, you... Both curse me. I get a raid every time you pop in here. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Lori. Incoming Thank you so much raid. For the raid. Welcome Boom. in, Raiders. We are nerding out right now, talking about Final Fantasy IX 
And if you like Final Fantasy IX, you're in the right place. I am joined right now by Mike and Kaysen. We're doing a special Final Fantasy event today. This is my favorite game of all time. Tell us what you were playing. So and also, if you like Final Fantasy IX. And also, our followers are anonymous here. I have anxiety. I don't like when names pop up, so feel free uh, to follow and hang out. Um, I like that. Okay. I like that a lot, actually. That's, actually, that's a good way to do <laughs> that's it. That's a great huh? way to do yeah. it. Yeah. I don't want Too late. my name <laughs> popping up places, you know? Yeah, I just, right. Gotcha. I like to hide. Um, yep. But anyway... I actually really like Koja, which seems to be a hot take amongst is it? my is dad that a, today. Is that a hot chick? Well, hot take. <coughs> I Kuja's guess great. I love Koja. I love that Koja just shows of... up and is like, hmm. I'm, it just owns it. It's not one of those like subvert expectations. Oh, wait, you're the bad guy. It's like pretty apparent from early on. It is when you, when you first are, is, is for, he's first revealed. Um, I guess the big spoiler there is who the relationship and all that. Yeah. Stuff. Between Kuja and, and other Zidane characters and, and stuff. Yeah. yeah. But like, yeah. and maybe, maybe some people might not like him because of that. Like, oh, that's yeah. a little. Well, it's, it might actually be more around the design, that. just the fact that he's wearing like a man thong <laughs> and stuff. But like, well, it's, I, it's I, a yes, it's a statement piece. <laughs> it's, a, <laughs> it's, good. it's a big, big statement. That's I, sure. I think thematically, he's a great villain for the story. Like, I think so too. Right. The way the whole game goes in the end, though, where yeah. it's just absolutely yeah, it madness. just kind of like goes I, off the like, rails a bit. <laughs> I guess my point is, yeah. is that his relationship with characters and his like potential. Like um, the world around him, when you, you know, are there, mm -hmm. is just it's just it's madness, yeah, is yeah, what it is. It's crazy. <laughs> that that world is absolutely insane. Yeah, yeah. But, but like, I, but I, I like him like, as a character. I like that it goes off the rails though, because it is feels reminiscent of Final Fantasy mm -hmm. uh, Four. Yeah, it, I mean, like, they, oh, you're right. They kind of all do that. <laughs> At the end, they just yeah. get real, real, well, real crazy. Eight and seven, yeah, that's true. All yeah. of them Four do that. does, that's true. Yeah. If I don't end up in space, I don't know if I'm playing Final Fantasy. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Nice. Yes, yeah. yes. But, I mean, as, as far as, like, the sort of the existential kind of themes that the game is playing with, Kuja is, like, a great villain. Yeah. As, as particularly to sort of contrast... Vivi and like the way that Vivi kind of comes to his yeah. answers of what the meaning of life is, right? Yeah. And so I, I think Kuja works really, really well as a villain in the story. Yeah. yeah I, I, I really appreciate that. it. And even the design, I don't know. It's kind of out there. It feels very Amano to me. So I think that's yeah. why I oh, love for it sure. so much. For yeah. sure. That's I mean, it's all over true. this whole game, but yeah, that design gosh. specifically feels ripped out of an Amano book. Mm -hmm. That's so funny. I've only ever really played FF9 on, well, CRTVs, old <laughs> PS1, like direct. <laughs> yeah, I don't know right. that I got such a good look at his specific design. Another oh. raid. Hello, raiders. Welcome in. <laughs> no. Might be for the best. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> it, it was a little bit hard to kind of see some of the details. And so when you when they brought these games into HD... Although the backgrounds are really blurred, right? But the character models themselves, you were like, oh, wait a minute. Like, this isn't how it, yeah. I remembered it looking exactly. It's a little yeah. jankier. <laughs> <laughs> and it, like, on the CRT, it looked a little bit better, but. Yeah. Greetings from the FF8 stream. Oh, the FF8 stream ended? Oh, no. Hello. Oh, Welcome did it? Oh. Did y'all have fun over there? Oh, it was good for the, what we the saw. The FF stream? FF, oh, that's right. I think yeah. he was saying he couldn't stay for the whole time, so. I love. Eight. Eight is very good. I, I, I almost, love it too. I almost put in for eight instead of this one, but a nine is my clear favorite, but I just, I love defending eight. It's a fun hobby. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's crazy? For our podcast, nine has been on the poll, I think, three separate times. Yeah. yeah and, and not has one. Not, and not, not one. one. And mm -hmm. I just, I can't believe it. That shocks it is, me. It is crazy. Yeah. Uh, I mean, particularly we'll, we because of how beloved it is. I think the next vote we do, it'll probably be the one that comes out. I would Finally. think so. Unless it's yeah. against, you know, seven. I mean, you had juggernauts. <laughs> we're, you we're had not going to do 12. <laughs> yeah, ten, had... 10 lost a lot of times, too, before it finally that's won. That's true. And that's yeah. like, that's almost the most popular Final Fantasy. Yeah. Yeah. I would say. Usually it's like seven, then ten. Seven, yeah. ten. Yep. Then it's it kind of gets murky. Of like sales. Yep, yeah. and VG charts is not a reliable source. It no, turns out. not really. <laughs> for I mean, sales numbers, to some extent, they might be, but it's very dated and it's selective and all yeah, that. Yeah, right. Yeah. Also, this is totally unrelated. Lori, is that a Torgal emote? Do you also have a Torgal emote? 
There's so much love for Torgal in 16. Yeah, not even I think, I think Torgal so is going to be a, a very beloved character. Then yeah, yeah. Torgal. Pretty Torgal sure it's going to happen. We do too, Lori. Amazing. We just uploaded a Torgal emote here today. Um, nice. Yeah, I can see I, it there in the corner, yeah. We were we were talking today uh, earlier about how Nine, I think, makes the best use of the bring in a temporary character. Oh, yeah. Bit that Final Fantasy has done to this point. Mm -hmm. Like, we saw it so yeah. much in in two and, and earlier entries, but I just feel like this one, they're, you're so jazzed. Even when bl you have blank pops in, any of them, I'm like, give me Marcus, give me blank every time. And I feel like they have real <laughs> yes. impact here. I know what yeah. you mean. And you're right, you're right. Oh. It actually feels, there's a ton of impact there. That's a good, yeah. that's true. Mm -hmm. Eight did it a bit, and it's like, yeah, it's cool to see a Dea, but I feel like she's not a long, lo like around long enough for it to feel yeah. like it matters. Yeah. Right. Ultima so like Ultimatia, yeah, it's like, yeah. Yeah, Th that's one yeah. of the complaints I hear the most about eight is the the villain screen time or like really getting yeah. a sense for yeah I want to take out this bad guy that's the final boss but like I just barely met this character <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know mm -hmm. <laughs> which I get Carly, but I don't Carly know I I, th I feel like it works like because the whole story just goes like completely bonkers at the end with it the does. time compression stuff anyways yeah. compression it's just kind of like what the heck is going on man it's the power nuts. of friendship. Yeah, exactly. Yes, that was great. The strongest power. That was great. <laughs> Lono, no, thank you for the raid. Hello. Everybody's oh, another raid. Through. Another Lots one. Of raids. Yeah. I don't Lots normally of raids. stream at this time. Y'all got me pretty early, so I think <laughs> everyone's like, wait, D is here? What is happening? Yep. Um, but yeah, oh. we were also talking about from a design standpoint with Kuja, it fits in that whole Sakaguchi desire. Because Sakaguchi had expressed concern that the characters in seven and eight weren't expressive enough yeah. oh, and that if right. the characters had bigger heads by design mm -hmm. that they could feel more relatable and be more expressive yep. and i Sakaguchi. feel like Kuj is a big example of that i mm -hmm. see interesting he's a big fan of the big heads he does he yeah. does like the chibi <laughs> yeah. look and yeah, it, that was a big that, that was a big i don't want to say source of contention but just disagreement yeah. between kitase and some of those guys in sakaguchi he really yeah. looked at the FF8 models and was like, this is really cool and everything, but like, could we like maybe make them look more deformed? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> less, less human, please. <laughs> and that's just not the way that they wanted to do it. And no, that's why he, he made them basically the most deformed probably of the whole series. Yeah, this yeah. is such a unique art style in this, yeah. in this particular game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Once again, it definitely, I just... Okay, it kind of hones into the tactics feel a little bit. The oh, least. it does. You're right, yep. actually. Yeah. Yep. Totally yeah. does. Once again, the look of this version of this, this mod game is, is so, so good. good. I just can't <laughs> think of anything it's else. I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, real. this is how the game was meant to be. I, I think so. It's so good. I yeah. really think so. Yeah. Over it's just, France. it's so clean. Like every background looks immaculate. It's yeah. unbelievable the work that they did. Mm -hmm. Oh, we get another trance here. I think this is one of the story force <laughs> trances, isn't it? I think. Oh, I think you're right. I think you're right. Because he's making That's his true. like last stand. There, you think yeah. they're gonna go down right. together? Yeah, yeah. I think you're right. And it's like that's fine, but it just I feel like it could have been done in a in a better way. Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't but really, like Steiner's character, I really like his character. Um, uh -huh. he uh. At, at first, he's just annoying, you know, and it's just like, what is this guy doing? And then and then he has some big truths that he has to face, yeah. right, yeah. that are very difficult for him. Sure. Uh, but his loyalty, specifically to Garnett, I mean, it doesn't really go away. Like, he, he turned, you see the arc of, of the attribute of loyalty go from being, like, a negative thing. Like, dude, you're, you're like too devoted to a cause you know nothing about to, like, a positive thing. Like, yeah, even though you don't know exactly what's going on he is the most loyal character to his friends yeah. and i love seeing that kind of arc where it's not like he ever like changed that aspect of his character it just developed into a more mature version of itself right and he's still as dumb as a box of rocks <laughs> but his loyalty turns from a from a negative into a positive yep. and i yeah. really like that about the character development i freaking love how they use the what are they the, the guy cell or guy cell pickles that smelled terrible. <laughs> yes, yeah. to, transport, to get through the gate. To transport uh, Garnett across <laughs> the, the border. The disgusting smelling <laughs> pickles. And, and like they will not the look in there. <laughs> that was so funny. So funny. It's, ooh, this cutscene. Oh, God. Okay, we're getting these up to it. Yeah. Yeah, these Alexandria cutscenes are just... The first time I play this, this blew my mind. 
Yeah, this is this this scene right here is so so cool. Ooh, it's an eye. That's the thing. I think you could be dissatisfied with the visuals of the characters, but these cutscenes, they the summons in this one, I I don't. They might be some of my favorite interpretations of them in the whole series. Yeah, mm. I like them too. Yeah, I really do. Yeah, I love. I love like the Bahamut. airship theme Ooh. from this game so much. <laughs> mm -hmm. The airship theme of FF9 just came on. It's it's I think my favorite airship theme in the series. <laughs> yeah. I freaking love it. It's like the most I just get pumped every time I hear it. Like I cannot yeah. wait to fly this thing around and explore this world. <laughs> this is yeah. like the happiest exploration of all time. It's the thing. Dude, it's these really freaking backgrounds are I know, incredible. <laughs> are you kidding me? I'm telling you, you need it. to play through it with this mod. <laughs> It's Both so good. <laughs> I'm so like good. legitimately when we do the blown podcast, away by it. Yeah, we gotta we gotta yeah. adopt this mod for the Yeah, when we when we do the podcast on this footage. game, no question I'm playing this yeah. mod. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm That's so excited fantastic. for the nine episodes. That'll oh, be, we are too. I'll be in my sweet spot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking forward to it as well. Yeah. Uh, we we, we gotta get through. through. Oh, sorry, go ahead. go ahead. No, you go first. I was gonna say we were just we just played through the whole series in order, all the main oh, line. Oh, nice! And like a marathon. Nice. And it, nice. there's just this weird, like, breath of relief when we got to this one because it's just such an easy, cozy playthrough. Yeah, it is. So <laughs> Regent stressed. said, "I designed the yeah. ship as an oglop, so I have no idea what's yeah. going to happen." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love, I love Sid. Sid. I, I, I think I so said. I this. think I said when we were looking at FF4 that Sid was my favorite in four, and I yeah. just realized that's not true. The Oglop, it's Oglop Sid. Sid. Oglop Sid he's is my tops, favorite man. Sid in the series. He is, he is the best. He's the best Sid. Regent yeah. Sid. I love I, Oglop Sid. That's tough for me between four and, and this Sid. That's a tough call. It, four Sid. Four Sid's four just Sid's hilarious. Awesome. He's basically Hagrid, which he, is yeah. which is classic. But like yeah. Oglop Sid <laughs> is the funniest freaking thing. Like yeah. every time he's yeah. around, I'm just like I got a smile on my face. I love his huge mustache. Yeah, it's, also, mustache. it's, a, it's absurd. He like cheated on his wife, so she yes. got mad. And, That's like, right. The whole oh story is just so wild. Oh, it's the silliest thing. I love oh, it. beard mo, no question about it. I will hit you up for your CRT filters uh, in addition Ooh. to this mod because that would probably look really sweet. No, oh, yeah. that would look gorgeous. Yeah. yeah. Wow. I got to hit you up in general about CRT filters because I'm going to be applying them to the gameplay footage of my re-released retrospectives. And I'm trying to get like the most accurate looking one I can. I got a pretty good like plugin for um, After Effects that does a really good job. I'll, I'll send you some screenshots and see what you think. But I know that you're like the expert of all experts on CRT filters. So I'll definitely have to hit you up. <laughs> Echo's okay, here comes the holy judgment. Here comes here the holy comes. judgment. I gotta get a better song for this part. Look at that. That's beautiful. The cutscene. Yeah. It's just this is uh We're losing some I think we're um Here it is. Maybe. The stream her stream lagged briefly. Oh, did it? Yeah, so we're kinda of getting falling behind her. Oh it really? Might be because behind. there's so many streams going on. That once. is probably why. <laughs> Oh, you're buffering out. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we, we're, we're, my internet speed here is very fast, but it's probably not fast enough to run like 12 streams at once. <laughs> I know. Are there still 12 <laughs> people going? Um, um, there's a few that have dropped out now, so it's not as many as before, but we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think we have nine people currently still with us. So. Yeah. The relationship oh, between these two, too. Oh. Yeah, because she Aiko didn't like Dagger at first, right? No, that was like because that little no. jealousy. Little yeah, jealousy. she she kind of likes it on a bit, and she was jealous of Dagger, which is it's perfect for her age, you know. Yes, I mm -hmm. love her character. I really do. She's young, and it's it's definitely her age appropriate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, hold on. What is the track for this part? I want to play it. I don't remember the name of the track for this part of the game. Oh, it's um. I, don't know. I feel like if I saw it in the list, I would remember. But I know I'm slips trying to. Through. I'm trying to like scroll through it and find it. Yeah, this OST is chosen oof. summoner. Is that it? It might be. I th I don't think it is, but it is more appropriate than what I was just listening to for this part. So <laughs> we'll stick with it. <laughs> <laughs> 
It's called. It's just called Alexander. Okay. Oh, is it? Oh, that okay. makes sense, though, given That's the context of the yeah, scene. That makes a lot of <laughs> sense, doesn't it? Come on, where's the Alexander uh, track? Need more Alexander. Come on, where is it? I skipped over it somehow. This list is too... Not my favorite large. summon, but so good. Well done uh, in this one. Holy Judgment, is that it? Oh, yeah. Did you see one called Holy yeah. Judgment? Where was it? For, further I love the way they're summoning it right now. It's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, summoning together. This is a really cool scene. Whatever, this track works for now. Oh, the wings. I can't. Mm -hmm. I get chills every time. Yeah, this is one of the coolest FMVs in the game for sure. Yeah, Sweet. look at that. Ooh, Sweet. Oh, man. <laughs> Crazy. Oh, that is so cool. It's so dope, dude. Dragons flying around. Or is that... That's Bahamut. That's Bahamut, right? <coughs> Yeah, that looks like Bahamut. And then mm -hmm. uh, Bahamut, blocks, yeah. blocks the attack. Clever, too, to name the city Alexandria. Yeah. Like Alexander is the castle of Alexandria. It's great. Mm, yeah. Wow, look at that. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> so cool. Whoa. Look at that. Bahamut's being, uh, deking every single freaking... Yes, yeah. <laughs> but... <laughs> You cannot hide. Nope. Wow, that is, that is so good. It's such a scene. And then Kuja just like, oh. And then the one that comes after yeah. is even more wild. I know. Oh, this is where scene. the ship comes oh. out, the eye, right? And just mm -hmm. like destroys the castle. Dude, yep. holy crap. It's a brutal set of scenes. Amazing. And it's funny because we were talking about this earlier. People were complaining about, not complaining, but there was a lot of concern about 16 and the demo and, and mm. people saying it's yeah. so dark, it's so violent. And I'm like, this, these games, like, even they mine. Got, they we forget the older and games. Violent. Yeah, yeah they it's definitely so easy did. to forget how yeah, like violent some of the old it. stuff was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, back from like the 90s and stuff. And it's like, yeah. yeah, we just didn't notice it as much, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. Woo. Okay, here it comes. Oh my goodness, this part's so sweet. Oh, dude. <laughs> Here it comes. The freaking oh, look at that. Take it out. It was just, and you're like, wait, what? <laughs> you're playing this for the first time. <laughs> what on earth is happening, dude? Right. Yeah. Got like a cyborg looking. Jackson Doom Peelson says, like, there's only like Kuja. three genocides in this game. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well. <laughs> yikes. Yeah, yikes. Yikes. It's not that bad. It's not that violent. Just three genocides yeah. in this game. That's it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's my favorite comment. <laughs> yeah. Nine gets dark, and nine doesn't... It's very lighthearted, but when it gets dark, it gets dark. It gets, yeah, it's it's pretty tense. This is Garland, a callback, of course, to the villain of the mm -hmm. first Final Fantasy. Yeah, Garland. He's going to knock everyone in the city of Alexandria down right now. Yeah. Just push him. Push him down. Just gonna <laughs> push him over. Be, be so mad that he's losing his stage. Yeah. Kuja getting shown you up. You know, Eric, in, in the original version of my Final Fantasy I review back on my very old channel 12 years ago, I actually inserted that clip of Saruman. Uh, where he's yeah. talking to the orcs and he's like, rip them all down. Rip them all down. <laughs> yeah. For that part. Yeah. Very nice. That's what I hear every time I read, knock them all down or I'll knock you down or whatever he says. <laughs> no. Don't worry. You Sid is going to save the day <laughs> as a little. Uh, we have somebody asking if the stream will be available oh, to comes. watch later on the channel. It should be. Yeah. I mean, it should be uploaded just as a normal video to watch at a later yeah. time. Yeah. You little bug, we could have been killed. Oh, that's right, Amaranth. Yeah, we were that talking about, we had a little chat about Amaranth earlier. <laughs> you know. Well, it's funny because the critique is always, oh, there's no character development. But there are a few characters in Nine that kind of get yep. left behind. Freya, yep. for Freya, example. for sure. Freya, sure. that was yeah, tragedy. Her, I really her liked where they were going so with cool. her. Yeah. That was yeah. unfortunate. It's so unfortunate because it's like, oh, my love forgot me. It's fine. We're just going to keep. 
yeah. moving on, I guess. <laughs> it doesn't really yeah, resolve itself. That's all you can do. But yeah, like she, there was no, uh, yeah, there was no resolution or anything. Yeah. And okay. I always wonder, I'm like, is it a time thing? I don't know yeah, what right. led to all yeah. that. We're going to jump over to another stream real quick, but thank you for letting us know that was coming up. Yeah, I really love that no section. Worries. So. Yeah. Figured no one would want to miss those cut scenes. No, no it. way. Okay. Uh, we're going <laughs> to jump over to Dr. Doke back in FF1 again. All right. Because... Have fun. Thank you. See ya. All right. See you in a little bit. Um, he is about to fight. He is about to fight the Earth Fiend. Doke, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Uh, give me okay. one second. I'm getting double audio for some reason. Oh, uh, you're good. We're going to see an Earth Fiend taken down. Yeah, if our stream is open, then... Yeah, I had it open before. Yeah. I think I closed it now. <laughs> we have Pim 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 I saw that. <laughs> yeah, Freya's fear yeah, was to be forgotten and the devs <laughs> forgot her. <laughs> the devs forgot Freya. Oh, poor Freya. That's tragic, tragic meta. All right, All let's right. let's see this Earth Fiend. Okay. There it is. The, the Earth Orb. The Earth Orb. All right, so Lich. I'm basically fully healed. Uh I have all my spells. I'm in pretty oh, wow, good shape very right nice. now. Very Not nice. here in good shape this time. Sweet. Uh I don't remember if the dice. harm works on this guy. I don't either. <laughs> Probably not on the bosses, I would Oh, think, it but... does. Oh, good. Oh, it's pretty effective, too. 40 damage isn't bad for this game. Yeah, it's not bad at all. See if I can get through them on one try. Oh, oh 68. 68 damage from your uh, thief there. Holy. That was not bad at all. 200 to see how fair strong the, the warrior just did. Yeah. 258. <laughs> nice. In comparison, everyone else is like average like of like 40. 50. <laughs> It's like yeah, ridiculous right? how strong crazy. the warrior is at the beginning of the game. Oh, wow. That was, he does hit hard. I oh, forgot how man. hard he hits. Wow. It was harder getting to him than it was actually fighting him. Yep. Wow. Yep. Good work. Hooray. There nice. it is. That Earth, <laughs> critical hit. The Earth Orb has been restored. Yep. Very nice. So uh, the four elements, Earth, Wind, Fire, yep. Water. Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh, mm -hmm. uh, now... You have to run go. Out. You have to run out. This doesn't like transport you out really? like in a new game. You got to go all the way oh my back gosh. out of the freaking dungeon again, and that you could die on your way out. Is the worst. this is the one of the most brutal games I've ever freaking played? <laughs> <laughs> my God, yeah, it's rough. That is the worst. All right. Well, we appreciate you letting us join you for that one. We're going to jump over to another stream here. Um, yeah, no quick. problem. Man. Let me see what other people are doing. Yeah, Sounds see good. if five okay. or any of these others. Let's see here. Uh, Meadow, he's the one who finished his he's stream, so he's done no, now. He's done. Okay, here's FF4. We went back to that. Here's five. What we got going on at five? Seven is done. We can close that one. Uh, there's nine. FF10. Okay, he's out for a bit. Final Fantasy 12. Ooh, what's going on here? What's going on in this part of the game? You know what? Let's jump back into 12 real quick. Let's do that. Uh, oh, wait. No, no. I'm on the floating fortress. It says WP. WP. Okay. Okay. We'll, we'll, hit we'll go back after. to five. Uh, Ezzy is also saying she's getting towards the end of Final Fantasy 3 as well, so. Okay. Let's go back to five, and then we'll jump over to 12 for a bit, or maybe three, and then to 12. Mm, WP, yeah, you with us? I am I am here, although 12 nice. is currently on a good scene, too, over there. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right, let's but see this real quick. Going on let's see once. this real yeah, quick. Yeah, let's try and jump quickly. <clears throat> yeah, so, I mean, we can we can beat this pretty quickly here. Um, yeah. This game is, oh, if you know nice. how to, how to play, you can, you can bust this game pretty wide open. <laughs> yeah, this you can five? go quickly. Oh, wow, look yeah. at how strong you are already at this point. <laughs> Whoa! Yeah, yeah, your <laughs> break, rods are, break rods are pretty, pretty busted. You see, in the background, you see the uh, airship in the background. Yeah, it looks sweet. sweet. Yeah, look at that. that. That's there. so cool. Yep. I love that. That's yeah, totally airships dope. in the background. This is, I mean, this stuff looks fantastic on this. Um, yeah. Uh, hold on, I'm going to mute. There we go. Now, now I got the stream mute. I'm not hearing a double. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, there oh, you go. Oh, sorry about that. 
That's it's my it's on my end. Um, okay. Okay. Let's magic. Let's heal. Yeah, we got a. You know, this game lets you do primarily what you want. So, um, primarily, I have punching mages. Um, nice. You know, just, but when we dual do dual fisting, everybody just yeah, beating the fetch out of everyone. <laughs> yeah. So, um, like a lot of this stuff is like based off of like stats and stuff. Uh oh, don't yeah. don't dial me. Okay. Um, but. Like, so, like, stats will, like, when you change jobs, it'll change your stats down. Um, yeah. And it'll be, like, freelancers, base, whatever, plus 10 or plus 20 or something. But certain abilities will modify those things. So if you're playing a mage, where it'll normally give you, like, a minus strength stat. Once you equip the, like, bare hand, it'll set you to freelancers, like, base strength, and then plus, like, 26. So it'll give you, like, 30 strength to be able to just punch things like a monk. No. Yeah. Right. And then here we go. This game actually moves at a very rapid pace. This game has a very rapid pace compared to, I think, a lot of other, especially more modern ones, where you can just wait. What's that? Like this is we're at the Flying Fortress right before this. You're getting adamantite right before that. Yeah. You get the ship. It's just like one beat after another, after another, mm -hmm. after another. Right. Um, That's cool, dude. I really, really like the way that this game looks. Oh, yeah, it looks fantastic. The, the and... pixel remasters for 5 and 3, I think, are my favorite in terms of, like, how they interpreted the graphics. Yeah, they did a lot here. They've done a lot. I think this is so, like, I'm going to, I'll go back here real quick here, but, um, like, this isn't, like, you can tell this isn't mode 7. It is still, like, a stretched... Yeah, thing, but this is in now oh, 3D, I see. so it doesn't have the weird yeah. uh, stretching oh. on the, the end parts of the map like the horizon. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, so looks great. like it's yeah, it does look great. Um, you can see they actually you can see they have a little bug here where the drop shadow will change to a oh. missing texture. Yeah. Oh then, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you can tell like I'm that's a that's a Unity quirk right there. So sure. I'm, I'm oh, fairly sure this is in Unity. Um, mm -hmm. that they remade that they these in this. Remade these, yeah. Yeah, they remade the um, uh, Dragon Quest Eight and a couple of the other ones in Unity too. So I wouldn't be shocked if they just had the skill set. I for think it. I think it, but this is not going to happen. But I think if I ever were to design a video game, I would probably make a, like a pixel RPG like this, and I would probably try to figure out how to use Unity to do it. Yeah, it's uh, they have a lot of tools now to actually do it in there. Um, and I mean, I'm I'm partial to Unity because I've used it the most. Um, yeah. yeah, a lot of those, a lot of those engines have just amazing tools now to yeah. allow you to do what you streamline, want. Streamline, streamline it a lot. Uh, yeah, yeah. I don't even think we're gonna get to the countdown on this boss here. Safe nice. and disengage. <laughs> um, you just, you just, just destroying him. Yeah, if you you just keep using these break rods, you'll buy a couple of them. And this is, this is how I think a, a lot of people that play, I've played this game a bunch, they'll just keep, I, or won't let me kill it because I've done. A lot of damage to this thing so far. Yeah, this is uh, twelve hundred dam or twelve thousand damage that I've done so far to it. So I think it just <laughs> doesn't let me kill it yet. <laughs> uh. Oh, there it is, and it's gone. We will be very nice the Earth crystal in here. Sweet. Ooh. All right. Our Final Fantasy XI guy is now able to go live, so All right. let me get him into the chat here. That's right. We're just going to fly in. All right. Here we go, Ooh. dude. Yeah, you guys were talking about how they don't talk about last bosses very much, and Kujo was, you know, they show him off a lot more. And I think, like, in this game, it's not like, not like 4, where there's not, like, a last-minute uh who's it they really establish who the bad guy is in this game mm -hmm. from the start um but they don't actually tell you fully who he is until much later basically mm. but it is the man formerly known as death that is the bad guy for this whole game and will be the bad guy at the very very end spoilers um, <laughs> <laughs> but i mean i think they start to do that uh moving on from for a lot more kefka is the big. Yeah, kind of introducing you, but not realizing. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so they'll do the same. I mean, Sephiroth stays 
relevant until the end of the game too. Like all of the, yeah, right. I think a lot of the bad guys start staying uh, relevant for a while. Eights may be the one that they they're like, yeah, well, there's actually something else that you right, need to yeah. know about. But I mean, that's dude, a whole other... your party is absolutely like thrashing <laughs> these guys. <laughs> yeah, it's. Uh, I mean, I've played this game a lot, so I like I'm used yeah. to all the different things uh, that this game can throw at you. And there's yeah. a lot of physicals very strong, especially early on in this game. So, and I've just kind of spent a lot of time going. I was like, you know, I might as well just grab all these summons. You know, I got yeah. a piano flex at every piano. Oh, um, there you go. Yep. Yeah, I've got to do that. You know, there's actually a lot of extra little scenes too in this game that they have. Um, just started. I feel like they have a couple of them in four and stuff, but in this game, they're like, you know, there's an extra scene. You know, in yeah. Butts's hometown, and there's a couple of them there where it'll be like. <laughs> Right. This is why. This is what happened to his mom, and when his mom died, and this is you know this is why he's afraid of heights. And when you talk to the guy, he's playing hide and seek, and he got lo- he got trapped on a top of a roof, kind of a thing. Or mm-hmm. um, you'll go to their their castle, and the, you'll get a scenes for Lena and Ferris, where they're just like, hey, you know, this is an extra little scene for them specifically. If you go back to, I think if you go back to the pirate den, you can get a little scene for Boko and see what's going on. Mm, Yep. There's a lot of little scenes like that in this game where I think the first time I played it, I didn't see a lot of those. And so Mm -hmm. I came away the impression that this game's story was like very bare bones and there wasn't like a lot of good character moments like there were in some of the other games. And then when I, when people told me how wrong I was and I went back and replayed it, (laughs) there's actually like a lot of really good scenes. Like a lot. There's a, and there's a lot of really good scenes. There's a lot of fun stuff, but it's like a lot of like you know character focused stuff on this, um, because a lot of the big plot stuff they'll just be like, yeah, we're just gonna go get that, okay? Um, yeah, we're just gonna go do that thing. So, but I mean, there's a lot of stuff in this too, game too where they, I think they expected you to not fully know. I've been talking about it um, on my stream here, but there's a lot of moments where they're like, they don't fully tell you where to go. They'll be, they'll give you general ideas of where you just were in towns or what's coming yeah, up. Yeah, right. Um, or immediately after, but they won't necessarily, like, when I, when you have to find the Anamanti to get up here, they're just like, you need to find it. Um, and, like, they don't really give you a full hint of be like, it's definitely in the meteor. Um, yeah. And they kind of expect you to go around and just find and explore things. And if you happen to be reading a guide or knowing something else, you're not going to be going exploring, say to the towns that are in the corners where Ramu is just in, you know, as a random encounter, you won't find right. that. You won't go and look in his hometown, kind of a things like that, where you're just mm-hmm. like, I need to go and just search around. All right. This is the save here. Uh, item use. There you tent. go. And this is, the, I think this is the first game that, no, they use cottage in uh, four as well, but yeah, they right. I'm I'm happy when they get rid of the cottage tent dynamic. I mean, it's <laughs> <sighs> just give me one that does. Yeah, <laughs> that just heals thing. me completely, please. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. I don't need two different versions of this. I'll never use the lesser one. Just give me exactly. the one. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> just get rid of it. It's fine. I don't. It's just. It's fine that it's two hundred bucks. Okay. It's just a rest and a save. The battle effects are really good in this version. Yeah. Oh yeah. It looks. I really fantastic. like it. They've they've done a lot of upgrading to this version. I think they've used a lot of the particle systems in game, um, mm-hmm. or not in the engine. So like, yeah, the engine ones. Yeah, the engine ones. So they'll do particle effects here when the crystals shatter. They it looks like they have like kind of almost three D pixel stuff that is like yeah. rotating as it explodes. Um, if you really if you're really into these kind of little little tiny details, there's a lot to notice that they've done in these things. They've sure. Modified a lot of. So we did the King of Tycoon right before this where. Uh, in the original game, you have to, where you go to the ruins and you're like searching for him. It's like seven different times you got to find him, and he's got and he runs away. But in this version, he runs away twice, and then you're like, okay, we're we're there. We're just we're gonna find him now and move on. Yeah. <laughs> we're gonna just streamline little tiny <laughs> ways to make this game a little better. Yeah, right, dude. That your your uh, Rama summons, freaking awesome. Yeah, it looks uh, fantastic. Might as well, since we're here, I got the other ones. We'll show uh, them off. Summon. Yeah, we'll go to Ifrit, which is a story. This I think this is the only story one. All the rest of them are technically optional so far that I have. Oh, there's Ifrit. That looks so sick. <laughs> yeah, and then 
Like we got Aqua Breath here that you can use to one shot the worm boss. If you get that earlier. Nice. Oh yeah. That's actually a really good blue mage spell in Final Fantasy VII as well, or enemy mm -hmm. skill, I guess you'd call it. It's a really good skill. One of the few actual water damaging type moves in the game. Yeah, right. Because they, they very rarely use water. They mostly just kind of stick to ice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hydra. Uh, I don't want to keep using. So we'll go Shiva this time. Ooh. Goblin punch. Yeah, Ooh, that is tight. Wow, that was cool. That was yeah. a cool effect. Oh, yeah, it did Goblin zero. Punch. Yeah, Goblin Punch, I forget how it does its damage on this. Yeah, um, this It's version. one of the few ones that, yeah, it has a little weird damage calculation. I think it was one of the only things that got modified by strength modifiers in mm. the old version. Oh my god, this guy is not dying. Yeah, he's there tough. He's tough. Yeah. There we go. Got him. Um, no, hold on. This is back. They haven't done this in a bit here, but this is the first time, again, that they're going to be showing you the carrot. Like, this is... I We, we came here for the King of Tycoon. There is the King of Tycoon. And then there's yeah. what he's facing again. They haven't done this basically. Ah, oh, there it oh, is. Look yep. at that, yeah. Check yeah, the that first... <clears throat> The first dungeon that they haven't really done this since where they showed Ooh. you something they're like this is what you're going towards you need yeah. to know this kind of anticipation building the anticipation for you actually getting there right yeah that's cool it's like you're racing to get to him right before yeah. he has to face the enemy alone yeah and on my stream i just mentioned this it's best to not think of him as the actual king of tycoon um after basically the intro um, I feel like mm. he's more an avatar for the crystals mm -hmm. in this game where mm. he's because he kind of gets like he'll teleport away or he'll just disappear randomly or <laughs> he's just magically moving in different places or he won't talk to you. So it, it feels like he's already kind of a little bit gone um, mm. and then he's just kind of the will of the crystals embodied, yeah, right. like leading you to the next destination. Yeah. Oh, White Wind. I need to get a Beastmaster if I want to get that ability. Oh, that's a it's an enemy skill, not a Blue Mage. Mm. Yeah, so like ability. I well, it is a Blue Mage ability, but in order to get it to cast it on you, you need oh, you need to use Beastmaster to trick it to cast it. Got it. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So you can use Beastmaster or you can use Confuse, which I don't have either of those. And Confuse is a little more random on whether or not it'll freaking love cast that summon. You. The Ifrit yeah. summon is so sick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. By the way, there were people asking. Um, mm -hmm. I know that uh, I, I'm actually talking to Kazen here. So if no. you want to get some food, we could order some pizza or something. Or if you'd rather <laughs> not, I know you do the intermittent fasting well, kind of stuff. And it's, so, up, it's actually up to you. I'm feeling fine. I feel okay, too. Okay. I'm not in a... I'm Place past like, hungry. Like, yeah. I was hungry three hours ago. <laughs> <laughs> Once my body is like, like uh, oh, yeah. no food? Okay, we're good. It stops kind of, like, hurting, and then I'm good, you know? <laughs> I mean, if you want to, we might as well do it before, like, we get around to... Because around 5 o'clock, which is in hour and a half, we're going to okay. hook up Final Fantasy 16, 16 and yeah. play that. So if you want to, like, order yeah. something now, I can give you the card, and you can... Uh, that you, would be though. fine. I actually think I may as well turn this into a fast day. So no, let's but, do it. But if like if you're hungry, no, I'll eat. It. But I need to lose weight, so let's do it. <laughs> 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 let's just keep going. <laughs> it's just, not that much longer. Until eight o'clock, right? We've got Usually, a few more hours. Yeah, exactly. We'll be fine. <laughs> oh no, this is these are things that these little trap holes. If you're playing on the mobile version, are truly a menace. Oh uh, geez. Yeah, because the, the game is very slippery with touch controls. Uh -huh. So you'll just hit those things constantly. Oh, okay, jeez. Yep, there you go. And this is actually... We're going, till, uh, we're going till 8, 8 p.m. Mountain Time, which will be yes. Eastern 10 p.m., right? So yeah. we got a, we got about five-ish more hours, four and a half hours left, yeah. Because the Final Fantasy 16 demo will take about two and a half or three hours to get through. It's really long. Uh, we'll... Turn them off here real quick. I'm right at the end of this dungeon. Yeah, you're you're right there. Uh, so we'll go here. We will turn off the random again. encounters. Yeah. Yeah. 
Good call. I did just a tiny bit of grinding right before this, so I should be more than fine on this. Really the part on this. This is the first and I think the only time where they're going to be like, yo, you need to you need to scan to know what to do. Um, it's one of those bosses. Mm -hmm. That is very uh, old school Final Fantasy stuff. Oh, there we go. Did not mean to come here. But in case you didn't have a tent, here's one for you. There it is. Yeah, they will. They always give you the tools that you need to get past. They don't. They yep. want you to succeed. Yep. They want you to beat the game. Yeah. Think of the, so. what a concept. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. At the end of the dungeon. This looks cool. Very King ominous. Tycoon. Yeah. Papa, silence. There's no child. Like he talks very mean to her here too. Mm. Yeah. Make yourself useful and defeat it. All right, so yeah, right. Let's like that doesn't sound right. What's going on with her? Yeah, ex exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's Libra. I probably should have put people. I love this, this design for this enemy. That's so dope. Yeah, yeah, that's really cool. I looked at the name Archeo Avis, or sorry, yep. Archeo A um, Archeo Avis. Yeah, Archeo yeah, Archeo yeah, Archeo Avis. And I think it's I think it's a reference to. Like a prehistoric. Oh, does does well, do wind spells work against it? That's nice. yeah, yeah. It's weak to. I scanned it. Said weak to wind spells here. Oh, sweet. I figured. Well, I guess flying enemies. That's true. That makes a lot of it, sense. Yeah, in this one, uh, it'll. It says it'll. It's getting power from the earth, so it'll come back. That's one of the the tricks of this fight is that it comes back after you kill it, and then it has like a weirdness to it. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I'll do Shiva. I love this woman. This is so cool. This animation right here. Oh, that healed it. That's fine. Oh, he's he absorbs ice. Yeah. All right. Oh man. Blue. <laughs> Era. It's fine. That should still do enough to kill it the first time here. Oh, I guess not. You changed your stuff. Oh. You got it. Summon you got it. This. The the only heal that you have as a as a um, a summoner a summoner yeah whisper wind or whatever it's called yeah the sylphs the one that you have to grind for a lot in four to get oh yeah okay this should finish it off the first time right oh my gosh still not we got a Quite critical magic. hit there with Leave Gallus though. Level 19. Oh, it keeps losing low. There we go. Okay. No specific weakness. Oh, he's almost dead, though. Yep. And then it'll come back, or it should come back here. Oh, it keeps... So it keeps losing levels as part of this, too. Oh, um, it's like... So... Like, you weaker. saw I did enough damage there, and I, I did enough damage there to kill it, but... It's slowly like losing level. So if I scan it again uh, here, it's gonna say a different level here. Twenty-three now. Mm. Way more health. No specific week is <laughs> floating. Oh wow. wow! So you keep having to kill this one off, and you keep killing me. Comes back. Kill me. Comes back. Kill me. Comes yeah. back. Yeah. This is one of the more. Uh, annoying bosses in this. Yeah, game. I haven't. I, I actually don't have a strong memory of this boss fight. I kind of forgot about this part. It's been a while since I played five. It's got to be cheese going on ten years probably. Yeah, I didn't. I don't think I mentioned this earlier, but um, yeah, the five job fiesta is one of those. It's a charity stream for doing this game every year around June ish, mm. and they'll give you like random stuff to get through the game. Um, nice. Oh my gosh. Ooh. Um, that was. And you can choose things to. Yeah, a huge damage there. That was big damage. Do this. Summon this one. I need more healing. No damage. Okay, white magic, Libra again. You're gonna die. I'm going to have to heal you because Phoenix downs are way too expensive in this. 
That's <laughs> <laughs> so funny, man. They are a thousand gold per <laughs> Phoenix down in this game. It's really? Insane yeah, numbers. they're yeah. pretty Jeez. pretty pricey. There it is. I mean, they should be. Yeah, probably. Like if you think about it. There you go. You got them. Yeah. Did they mo- they might have nice modified work. this? It doesn't come back. There. Okay, it does come back. Oh, it does. You still not yeah. done with the fight yet? Yeah, yeah. What's the fetch? Yeah. This what is one the of the fetch? harder fights in this game. What the fetch, dude? What? Do you have to start over from the beginning again? Like, or is it just one health, one last phase? Time. Yeah. Dang. Oh. Crazy. White magic cure. Blue magic. Um, yeah. Up to this point, I've basically been, as you saw, one shotting bosses. With yeah, you were like tearing everything like apart, and then all of a sudden, it's like the hardest fetching boss of all time. Yeah. And then, oh, zero. Oh, so now I got a Libra of this thing. Entangled. It's okay. You're paralyzed. That's fine. White magic, Libra. What one do I need to use? Level 20. No specific weakness. Okay, we'll do Flame Ring. Let's try this. Yeah, this is a crazy boss fight, man. Like, wow. Yeah. That's a cool battle and effect. Then, yeah, yeah it looks really great. Now everybody's at one health. Oh, Maelstrom. Wow. Great. At least it missed Ferris there. Your white yeah. mage. That's always good. Um, let's do this. Still zero. Yeah. Okay. Um. White magic. We got uh, D Dubs in the comments here saying that the boss is susceptible to darkness. Do you have any darkness attacks? I got yeah. We got flash here, but miss. Ah um, oh, darn. Okay, let's go here. See if I can just punch it down. If I can heal enough. Yeah, this phase is much harder than the previous phase. This is I think crazy. You can, I think you can slow this boss too. Frost. Who said Final Fantasy was an easy series, man? These yeah. people never <laughs> yeah. played Final Fantasy 1 and Final Fantasy 5, apparently. Uh, <laughs> uh, everything before 6, basically. <laughs> <laughs> All the games before 6. <laughs> people are asking if you've got level 5 death. Is he susceptible to that? I don't think he is. I think he's level 24, but we can mm. scan it here. We can, yeah, we'll, we'll do it right now. We'll level 5 death this. The more, one of the more annoying things. I think it misses, though, right? Oh, it does. It gets it. All right. There you go. There you go. Yes. Whoa. <laughs> Very nice. That worked. I guess I read that level wrong earlier. Chakra. Look at all that stuff. Good work, indeed. So I think you'll see here, because you skipped out a little bit early, the like extra particle effects and stuff that they're going to put on the crystals and stuff nice mm. so right here oh yeah because we bowed out right before you got to the crystals earlier yeah the crystal. yeah it's gonna shatter oosh nice look at that yeah it looks real nice here very cool love the effects something's controlling him and i love the green underneath the crystals mm -hmm. too i think we saw this earlier as well yeah it's um it's like the crystal's alive almost, uh -huh. or it's fostering life in yeah, one way or the other. it's like down. growing out of that yeah, that uh, mass of green. <laughs> yeah, and they have that in a lot of these things where they're using the crystals. It's There's a lot of life, or it's connected to life, or protecting them against monsters. I think the water crystals, like, we have all this abundance of water and pure water, and it's protecting us yeah. against monsters. And I'm wondering if this is like the magic, you know, uh, running water, you know, will... Uh, ground out magic and things like that kind of an idea yeah, right yeah well oh, that's no. sick yeah i think that shot was reused from earlier earlier in the game. yeah probably it was the same was, shot yeah, probably was <laughs> still sweet <laughs> yeah, it was still sweet oh. absolutely yeah but i mean what, what do they call her what do they call her in this version they call her cryle or they call her kara and they call her Cryle in this version. Cryle, uh, okay Cryle. yeah and they mentioned it a little <laughs> earlier and i think it's it's in part because uh, Final Fantasy XIV has a character named Kryl, ah. um, also using the same last name. So yeah. I think it's that's now their official translation. 
Gallus' granddaughter, Kryl, has arrived. Another party member, but he has amnesia. He doesn't remember her. Ah, of course. Of course. Of course. Oh, oh, wait. Course. Yes, I do. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> hilarious. Throws his doubts away. I love yeah. that. Kryl, you're Kryl. You remember. Kryl. Sounds like the name Kyle, so funny. but yeah, but Steve like, Brule. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. Kyle. She and just runs she... it. Instead of a hug, you just run circles around. Yep. That's that's yeah. that's cute. I, I like missed it. you so much. <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff, man. Yeah. Now what's happened to the King of Tycoon? Is he still alive? He just hit him with a strike of thunder. He should be okay. <laughs> <laughs> thunder doesn't kill people. Little girl's yeah. like, yeah, it's just lightning. It's a, she, he's fine. That's no problem. Nice. You've been hit well, by much worse, okay? <laughs> well, it shook him out of his trance or whatever he was in. Yeah. Ah, uh, we've had the reveal at this point. Yes. About uh, Lena well, and... Yeah. Uh, yeah. I wouldn't... At the Ferris. start of this... this um, she says sister or whatever because she suspects it. And then, uh, right. oh man, I love the look of this. Um, Ooh, that looks real nice. That's what Sweet. They've done yeah, beautiful. <laughs> yeah. And so, yeah, they just awesome. reveal this a little earlier. And then it's because it's the first time you also have the airship, so then you can get the extra scene with them at their castle, um, mm. talking about their childhood and her getting lost um, nice. on a Windrake ride, which is why she's not allowed out of the castle growing up. Right. Ooh yeah, man, this looks great. I haven't seen this part yet on the Pixel Remaster, but oh, this nice. looks very nice. I love oh. this. Oh, oh, snap! <laughs> Sweet. Yeah. And so we get our reveal of our big bad here. The here he is. Known as death. Here he is. It's X Death. X Death. <laughs> Formerly known as Death. <laughs> Formerly known as X. Death. <laughs> mm, it seems to have the power to control the crystals. Oh, uh -oh. No. We got Chocobo music playing for X Death here. It's very appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's got like a double bass going on here for a double bass drum. Yeah. yeah. On this Pixel Remaster. Nice. That's awesome. The ultimate evil X, says Gelgu. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the crystals have been destroyed. Your world. Oh, we got the Sphere Hunter here. What is up? Yo, what's up? What I is love up? you, Susie. Susie's great. Yeah. Have you seen Susie's channel, Kason? Um, I don't know. I don't think so, no. She got a fantastic YouTube channel. Everyone should go check it out if you haven't already. I'm sure everyone knows about it, though. Yeah. She's great. Yeah. She's Very really great. Really, really great. She was at the uh, Final Fantasy 16 celebration thing oh, that 8-Bit well. D was talking about earlier. Oh, yeah. nice. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for joining. Appreciate you being here. This is a lot of fun. Okay, so X-Death has arrived. I yeah. think we're gonna. I think we're gonna step over into FF12 now. Oh wait, we gotta see this. We gotta see this awesome. Yeah, people gotta here. die in a in a Final Fantasy game. <laughs> she working on a Final Fantasy 16 video. Did you get the? Uh, well, I don't know if you're even allowed to say, but <laughs> so feel free not to answer. But <laughs> the review copy they sent out like two days before the game came out. <laughs> So oh they could my. try to, so they could try to avoid Keep leaks, the and then no one has time to play the game. <laughs> <laughs> the completionist won't get this done on time. <laughs> no way it's gonna happen. Yeah, I feel really bad for a lot of people that uh, got the game, t quote unquote, early, two days early, <laughs> yeah. and have tried to play a whole game in two days to get a review done. <laughs> Jeez, unbelievable, dude. I mean, shockingly, the game hasn't had many leaks comparatively to a lot yeah. of other games. Actually, big, that's a good games. point. Yeah. So it works. All right. I think we're going to hop over into Final Fantasy twelve here. Yeah. But uh, appreciate you giving us a ping for that part. That was a good part to watch. Yeah, no problem. I'll you're still gonna, be up you're gonna keep for a going long time. for a yeah, while? I'll be okay. Up, I'll, be, I'll be up till, uh, you know, quite a while. Okay. Sounds good, man. All right. We're going to hop over to uh, FF12 now. Later. Let's, uh, 
Get this back up on us real quick while I switch around and get this Final Fantasy V music turned off. There we go. <laughs> That's trying to grate <laughs> my ears a little bit. <laughs> Just on repeat. Okay, uh, let's hit up Easel Games. Okay, as he's also getting close to the end of FF3, so. Yeah. We got two things that are sort of wrapping up here. Okay, Colin says he might be able to come back on for FF13 in a bit. And then I think we're going to need to jump over to Cedric for 11, which we still haven't covered yet at this point. That's the one game we haven't actually hit yet, and he's streaming oh. Final Fantasy 11. So, okay, what's up? We're back. Let me get hey. onto your stream here. No problem. Find it. I did not put this in order like I was supposed to do. Might there we go. <laughs> refresh it, or yeah. it might still be. Okay, let's switch over. There we go. I th okay, we're, you're fighting against this. Uh, yep. Yeah, I you're right about to. Oh. Okay, okay, we're caught up. We're good. Go for it. Sorry, his, his headphones keep sliding off. <laughs> yeah. It's all good. So what is this? Where That's are you at? Fire main. Fire main. waterway. Oh, I see, I see. Boom. Finishing it off. <laughs> Dude, this game's sick. <laughs> That's so cool. <laughs> That's so cool. I freaking oh, love man. this game. This game's awesome. I do have a few character <laughs> yeah. texture mods, so. Oh, nice. Oh, do you? Yeah. Do it's they affect the enemies as well? Or? No. Oh, I see. Okay, cool. It's just a party. And that is so cool. Okay. I don't think they can actually replace models yet, just recolor. Okay, I yeah. got to get some Final Fantasy twelve music on. Hold on. Give me you get that seeking Final power. Seeking Power? Is that what we should put on? <laughs> All right, let's see. It's the best song. Seeking Power. Where's that one? How far into the OST this do I guy. have to scroll to find it? <laughs> this is great. Oh, we don't have subtitles, though. Oh, dude. Oh, you're right. She's wearing different clothes. You got some, yeah, like texture mods, they're, you said, right? For the, and they're just colored. It's the just same colored outfit. differently. Yeah. All right, where is it? All right, I'm going to do battle drum because it's right here. It this should be around the snowy mountains. Yeah, this is this is awesome. Yeah, uh, uh, do you have all the characters aside from Balthier here with different uh, like colored yep. textures? Yeah, that's kind of cool. I love that Vaughn's Vaughn's abs aren't like the reverse texture. Right, <laughs> they <laughs> fixed it when they initially launched this version, it the Zodiac was, Age. It wasn't fixed. They right? didn't fix it because we were at yeah. E3. Remember? That's right. And that I was like that. one of the things. I was like, I hope they <laughs> fix his freaking me? ab texture in this game, and they didn't. But then they ended up fixing it later. Yeah, that was so funny. Yeah, they kind of caved. <laughs> yep. Looks like way the fonts better now. And the pixel Air Masters actually. Oh, I like this part, how Balthier steps out in front yeah. and stops her. Okay, this is not the right song for this. I need a better song. <laughs> Just give me anything else other than that. <laughs> Here we go. This one works. Get it a little bit higher. There we go. Oh, yeah, All right. This. Okay, so what scene have we got here? What's coming up? I'm trying to remember mm. which part of the game this is. It's been a while since I played 12. Oh, this is Rex. When he was, yep. like, in the hospital. I don't know what you'd call it. A medieval hospital. What do they call those? <laughs> uh, uh, that's a, a good a question. healing wing? I don't yes, know. <laughs> the, yeah, sure. <laughs> Yeah, Rex just kind of lost his mind, right? Sick bay. <laughs> Sick bay, sure. Yeah, yeah. That works. That's what they had on ships anyways. Yeah, only there physically. So you've already had the scene between Vaughn and Bosch where they kind of... No. No, that hasn't happened yet? Nope. I love That's... that part. Is it coming up right now? Where no. Where he sort of... There's a little bit of gameplay in between. Okay. It's going to go into the dungeons. Now I'm Ah, the gotcha. Dungeons. 
It's a, it like gives the character a totally different look just changing the colors. <laughs> it's like yeah. it's yeah, like throwing yeah. me off. It's like whoa, this looks so different, but it's not actually different clothing at all. It's crazy. Gives it like it it just goes to show how much goes into like character design, right? Yeah. Like and the yeah. colors are very intentionally chosen. Yeah. Once I see it too, then I I kind of forget what the original colors Looked were. Like, yeah. Because then I can't erase <laughs> what I'm seeing from my right. mind. But yeah, a lot of the colors are so intentional, uh, generally speaking, in most games. Um, even though they may not seem that way. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is where they're in the dungeon. That's right. You got to fight out of here with both here. And you have to like yeah. fight those, uh, I forget the name of the, 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 the species. Yeah, the lizard dudes. Yeah. yeah. This part's awesome, actually. <laughs> like an escape sequence. Man, I'm getting an itch to play FF12 again. Oh, I love this game. <laughs> this game's it's been way great. too long since I played it last. I like it. I wonder I wonder if it has any chance of beating <laughs> FF9 <laughs> on our for our podcast vote. <laughs> I don't know. I, would I always be get very surprised. I always get surprised happened. by I, our polls. But that's the truth. That's truth yeah. is that <clears throat> it always ends up surprising me. I'm always like, oh yeah, this one's going to win hands down, and then like it doesn't. And then it somehow, doesn't. <laughs> and then FF9 ends up being second place, three polls in a row. Yeah, right. Oh, there is a lot of dev history here. That's for sure. Yeah, there's yeah. a lot that goes into this one. I don't know. Like it's it's certainly not a perfect game, right? It's it's got its problems, sure. and it's got some pacing issues. It's but like, I just really, really like the tone of the game. I love the voice acting. I love the dialogue yeah, and the writing. Like, I like the world. I, I like love the design. The world. Yeah, it's I so love cool. the music too. A lot of people yeah, don't love the music, great. but I'm a, I'm a big on the music yeah, in this I think game. It's good. I like I the two great. new songs they added. Yeah. Oh, I'm not aware of it. It's in the in the this remastered version. They released two new tracks, right? Oh, cool. I'll have to check those out. Yeah, the one of the Sansies and I oh, can't nice. remember the other one. Oh, yeah, the one by the Hunter's Fishing Area. Yeah. Hmm. I'm terrible with names. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. The one optional map you never really go to if you just follow the story. I can't remember what it's called. And that has one of the songs. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just uh, writing a quick message here, but uh, is this is this the part where he's gonna jump? Wait, where where are they gonna have their like fist fight with the freaking? That's right now. Oh, it's happening right now. Yeah, I love this part. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, that's great. Yep. Yep, this guy. I remember this guy. It's like, oh, crap. Oh, that's Here's right. We're about to come up on the judge. Oh, yeah. Ah. Yeah, they, they're just like beating the fetch out of him. It's just like, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's cruel. actually kind of horrifying. <laughs> He was defenseless. They don't care. I know. It's like you're telling a lion. <laughs> like, that gazelle had no teeth. It was defenseless. And they're like, we're freaking lions. I don't know what you're thinking. We kill stuff. D's odd telling us to get some food. Nah, dude, we're we're uh, we're fasting. Um, we, we're, we're committed to it. <laughs> we, we, we do this often. This we, isn't. Yeah. This is not like. Uh, yeah. This is no big deal for us. Yeah. Here comes the leading man. Here he comes. As uh, Zoolander says, it's a great way to lose weight right before a show. Right. right. <laughs> Perfectly healthy. <laughs> you guys don't see the gameplay right now? Are you kidding me? Wait, How have we been on us know? this whole time? No. How nobody let me fetching know that. Guys, <laughs> I'm depending Thanks. on you. I've got like 50,000 things to manage oh. here. I'm not going to be perfect at it. Please tell me if you're not seeing the game. It could have maybe <laughs> somebody did. <laughs> we just didn't see it. That's actually true. I probably just didn't see people saying it. Okay. The leading man is here. You're going to have your fist fight with the uh, with these brutes. I actually don't remember how this is in this mod. So. <laughs> 
Oh, that's not too bad. There you go. Yeah, oh, that's bear, right. You've got like the, the that brutal it. mod on where it's a lot harder. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yep. That's not too I bad. I like it because it's not just HP sponges. Yeah, right. That's that's that's, that's the key to increasing difficulty. It's not just about giving the enemies more health. Just don't yeah, like okay. double their health. That's not the way to do it. Yeah. There's a lot more that goes into it to make it. Uh, yeah, it's Matt. It's not there called the brutal mod shiny. I just I just don't remember what it's called. So I'm just calling yeah, it that. It is a brutal mod. It's just brutal because it makes the game harder, but it's not actually called that. It's called Struggle for Freedom. Struggle for Freedom. That's what it's actually oh. called. There you go. Yeah, there, there's some Zelda stuff there too, but I also think there it reminds me of um, that one pig-like man-looking character from The Return of the Jedi. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He's like yeah. holding his spear. Uh-huh, totally. That's what these guys remind me there's of. There's a lot of Star Wars in this. A lot. Yeah. Here comes the judge. Which judge is this? Oh... This he isn't really like his head the off. judge, right? I mean, not the one off. we're not supposed to know about yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I don't think so. They showed, I think they he'll come up in a second. Because we're about him. to get, we're about to get to the point where Bosch is like in his little prison cell, right? Mm. Oh, you're right. It's not a judge at all. This is. Oh, it will be, but not yet. This guy. Oh, yeah. They're just going to quietly, you know, slip. No, out. first hand of the mist. Yep. Mist. How did he get through there? <laughs> Just duck under it. Apparently, they could have done that this whole time. Oh, it's open. It's open a little bit. Okay, I see that. Uh, I was like, "What the heck, dude?" He just like teleported through that gate. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a Biggs and Wedge in this game? I don't remember if there was. I don't think there was. Uh, I don't remember. I don't think there was, which is seems Wait. weird because this is one of the games that should have. Did they? Did they <laughs> came out to that? One one of the guys that fell off of Pajerva, or am I misremembering? Mm. Anybody else got an answer to that? It seems like no. A lot of people are saying no. Hmm. There you go. There we go. Here comes the judge. Is this, first, is this the first mention of a judge in the game? Yes. Yep. Guardians of Law and Order. They can, or they're, uh, yeah, kind of introducing him. House Salador. Their armor is so cool, dude. It is so cool. <laughs> it's so dope. If you ask me, they're more executioner than judge. <laughs> yep, I remember that line. <laughs> <laughs> me too. It's a good one. Valthier, man. Yeah, so this is the guy I was thinking of. I'm not going to reveal who it is right now. It's a spoiler, but an important character. Is it Golbez? It's not Golbez. <laughs> <laughs> you never know, man. <laughs> they reuse these guys. Yeah, the designs of this game are just so, so Yeah, I, I love them. And this remaster looks so good, too. They did a good, good job with it. I do have a mod upscaling some of the textures. Oh yeah. Oh okay. That's. I tell you what, that judge too it has a. There's a Darth Vader feel to him as well. They're telling. They're saying your Balthier impression is is good. I can do better. <laughs> as I was hearing myself say it, I was like, ah, oh, I can do better. Yeah, I, I thought it was good, man. It sounded just like it. <laughs> Very nice. Okay, um, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna jump over to FF3 real quick, but let me know when you've gotten you've gotten close to Bosch. How much longer do you think that is? Like maybe because there's a little bit of a dungeon in between, right? Yeah, but you don't have to fight him. I can just go straight to him. 
Oh, okay. Because oh. you can turn off the random encounters. Or <laughs> there's no just random encounters fleet. in this game. <laughs> you just run, you just run away from them. What the heck am I even <laughs> saying? <laughs> there's no random encounters in this game at all. It's pretty close, though, right? Yeah, like two minutes top. Okay, okay, we'll stay here then. Okay, cool. I just have to get through the next cutscene, basically. Pick up the loot. Because there's no Zodiac Spear nonsense in this version. Yep. Hmm. Air of trying to sell guides. Yep, <laughs> right. <laughs> Those guides were cool, but like, it just for the, the artwork. FAQs ended up being better on almost every single. I know the FAQs occasion. were more in detail. They were always way better, and they were yeah. free. And but the the artwork, yeah, and the guides was always yeah. Cool. I liked those um, like Zelda ones that had all the cool concept art inside of them and stuff. Yeah. I have a. Rogue Galaxy guide really? of all things. What the yeah. heck? I love that game. I know. I've Game's never beaten it though. Sweet. I really want to finish it. Huh. Yeah. So Speaking of a game one. that's kind yeah, of Star like Wars. <laughs> that's kind of Star Wars yeah, inspired or kind of like FF12, Rogue yeah. Galaxy. I actually like Rogue Galaxy better though, even though I haven't beat it. Ro Rogue One Galaxy? Yep. There you go. Straight to Bosch. There's Darth Vader. This music is not appropriate for this part, but I'm not going to look around. Is it the airship? Stuff. Airship music, right? <laughs> I don't know. I think this is just the Rabbit Aster. Oh, no. Sky City of uh, Usherba. Oh, okay. We got to get to some, like, Dreadnought Leviathan stuff. Okay, that's not as dope as I thought it was going to be. Let's try challenging the Empire. I don't Ooh, know if you... That's a cool shot. That's Darth Vader, dude. <laughs> Look at him. <laughs> that's a cool shot. That dude. was a very good shot. I don't know if you commented, but this game has a really good prelude or whatever. Oh, like oh, a prelude we, theme? We yeah, it, it is. It is good. Yeah, I like it, too. It's it's unique. It is good. I don't. This version doesn't have that cutscene that plays on the PS2 version, though, I don't think. Oh, really? Why would they take out a cutscene? It was question. before the main menu. Uh, uh, here we go. This scene right here with Bosch. I love how like thin he is. They they really did a good job with the texture on his body to look at, like show how emaciated he is. Like he's like not being fed well in that yeah. little cell cage thing. Yeah, and then we reveal that this was so cool, dude. Because while they are brothers, right? Uh, twins, I guess you would say. <laughs> yeah. um, there's like a, a slight difference in the facial structure on the model yeah. between them. And they when you go back and the watch one. the original scene where you thought Bosch was betraying everybody, it's not his face. Really? It's not Bosch's character model at all. And it's, it's, it's a really subtle difference between them. But I mean, because, you know, they're identical twins, but like there's just... A very subtle difference mm. in their facial structure, and if you look at it, it's that was not Bosch very in the scene betraying uh, the King of Rabinaster. Different mannerisms too, or Damasca, yeah, yeah, exactly. It's such a well done scene, the way they set it up, and then the reveal here that it wasn't him all along. He's just been framed for this. Yeah, yeah, Galbraith. Sibling of the year. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah, I look at look at his rib cage, dude. Like the those textures are like yeah. really good. <clears throat> oh, Vaughn looks like wind is perpetually blowing his hair backwards. Yeah. <laughs> but then there was that character in um Final Fantasy three that seems to have his hair perpetually blowing forwards. Yes, right. <laughs> kind of right. The opposite. It's really funny. Susie's saying uh, 12's Prelude is so good. It might be my favorite. And yeah, that cutscene attract mode from the PS2 would play on loop for hours for me. 
Yeah, it's it's one of the one of the best ones, I would say. One of the best prelude themes in the series. It's super good. I'm telling you, man, the, the music of twelve is very underrated in my opinion. I think it's very, very good. I like Sakimoto's style a lot. Vaughn just goes straight to Yeah, look at him, dude. He's like Yeah, he goes right after him right away. <laughs> what are you doing, dude? <laughs> wow, yeah, look at Bosch. Look that at texture. Him. His I know. arm, like the the thrashings he's yeah. received. It's really well, well done. For a little bit. Okay, sweet. We're going to jump over to Vaughn's FF3, pissed. but I'm glad we could ha see that part because that's one of my favorite scenes where yeah, Galbranth like reveals that Bosch was not the one yeah. who betrayed yeah. Damasca. That happens halfway through this dungeon. Yeah, good stuff. Okay, uh, we're going to jump right, over cool. to FF3 for a while. See ya. See you see in ya. a little bit. Thank you. Okay. Let me text as he here after I put us back on the screen. There we go. Of course. Uh, let's see. Boom. Okay. Let's find her stream again as well. Final Fantasy three. <coughs> it's one of the early ones. This one. Right there here. it is. Yep. She's she's a. Uh, Real oh, deep look into at that. the final dungeon. The crystal dungeon tower, whatever it's called. Hey guys. Wow. Hello, hey. Ezzy. Welcome back. Uh, You're getting so, pretty close to the end here. Yes. <laughs> I actually completely forgot that there's like two f phases of the boss uh so we're close <laughs> so you're in close. you're in uh, psycho land right now pretty much <laughs> this, this is, is crazy world of darkness it's uh it's ah. really really cool. it's the very end of the game um yeah. might be a familiar dungeon <laughs> yeah this this dungeon <laughs> is really really long and really hard it is it is we've been basically <laughs> so i have started this dungeon on my technically like a new game plus <laughs> character even ah, though it's not that gotcha. plus, right but we already cleared it so it kind of takes you to that spot where you can go just uh, directly to the last boss area mm. uh, actually to the last boss from the boss fights but i still went through the whole thing just by walking and there were a lot of encounters along the way and it still took us like an hour to get here <laughs> just with all the random yeah, encounters. It's I incredibly know. long. It's incredibly it's long. It's so long. Um, so long. Yes. And I love that sprite. That sprite walking around <laughs> with the little cat ears. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty it's funny. It's beautiful. That's the devout job. It's basically <laughs> like a pre cryo. I don't know. I like yeah, it. Yeah, right. Like yeah. It's How so is cute. that Hydra? This I, one here? Who knows? That's a good question, actually. <laughs> Hydra has like <laughs> nine heads and... Yeah, it doesn't look anything yeah. like Hydra. Maybe maybe they right. didn't want to make a different one because there was like a Scylla, a dog. Oh, this is... Scylla? Uh, yeah, Scylla. It like, was a dog? No, it was... So, uh, we, <laughs> Scylla is before the stream that uh, Scylla is basically... In this game, it's uh, like a female body with nine dog heads. But mm. apparently, <laughs> mythology is like the opposite or something. You might know more about that. <laughs> well, so Scylla, yeah, Scylla has lots funny. of heads. Um, I think Scylla has something like five or seven or nine heads. Uh, but it's basically another Hydra type being, but is um, on the cliff uh, opposite uh, Charybdis, which is like the Kraken, sort of, the like whirlpool ah. monster. Right. Oh, okay, okay, whirlpool monster. Is, there, yeah, is Charybdis <laughs> actually this? Yeah, that's that should be some kind of a whirlpool. I I know too much about Charybdis from <laughs> yeah uh, deep dungeons. But yeah, okay. So are you ready for the Ooh, for the jammiest music of jammiest yeah. music of all the jammiest musics? Let's hear okay. it. Actually, I gotta look for it. What's the name of the What's the name of the track? Um, Real quick to make sure. Are we? Is she on oh. on screen? Uh, yes, she is. Yeah. <laughs> okay, just make yeah. sure. Good call. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Let's go. I think I'm not sure what the exact name. If I saw it, I would be pretty sure to recognize it, actually. But yeah. Uh... 
It's going to be really jammy. This mer boss, version in particular boss, is right? very, very, very cool. So Cloud of Darkness theme, but Pixel Remaster one. It's very, very good. <laughs> okay. Anybody know the, the, the title of that of the song here? Because it's not in order on this video I'm looking at. I am okay, Cloud of it. Darkness. Cloud oh, of darkness. interesting. Wow, that's a crazy design. Last yes. battle. Let's Whoa. try that. Yes, it's like a day type. I think this is creature. it. Yes. Yes, yeah. this is the last, last battle. Very uh, creepy. Oh, I love the, the, very the, cool, the kind though. of uh, streaming smoky yeah, effect the on effect, it. Yeah, yeah, it's really really cool. Uh, okay, let me let me just make sure to heal up because I wasn't actually healed up before the fight. Like oh no! That I am. <laughs> oh shoot! Like a pro that I am. <laughs> 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 yes. Yeah, so, oh my God, why are we all missing? What is Wait going on? Wait till you get in battle and then heal. I like it. Oh, it might be another. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. By the way. <laughs> Whoa. There, this is not the last one. Oh yeah, this is supposed to happen. <laughs> oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Don't worry of about course, it. Of course, of um, course. The 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 dark or... warriors are gonna come out because there was wow. the light and the dark. There's like a balance between the two, like we we're talking about earlier. Oh, of course, Whoa. that's right. The balance between the worlds. To be yeah. fair, it actually did return me to the six section, so it might be. So this is the part where, because I'm playing on a new game plus, this may be something that I wasn't prepared oh. for. Oh, wait a minute. Oh. It's uh, like harder. It. Is, oh, the, is it like a lot harder? Because in this case, I can't do it. <laughs> okay. Oh no! <laughs> well, be really bad. <laughs> just watch out for that particle beam. <laughs> attack! Oh, well, shoot. Don't I don't attack while it's Taylor's up. On the particle beam. So funny thing about <laughs> this boss is that the only, uh, pretty much the only attack it ever does is the particle beam. It has like yeah. a sort of a bad breath attack at one point, but. It's basically just particle beam over and over and over and over, just uh, copious amounts of damage, and it it mm -hmm. just seems <laughs> like this. I haven't actually ever done a new game plus on Pixel Remaster, so this surprised me. I ran okay. up to this point to check um, everything, and apparently I uh, should have gone further That's to all check good. it more. <laughs> but okay, at least we heard the music. We can we can hear it one more time if you guys want. It's really good. <laughs> I love the clown um, nose, by the way. You put that on whenever classic. you yeah. whenever that's you fail people, at something. People, that's what people <laughs> put it on. Uh, and, uh, oh, yeah, people put it on. There. <laughs> the that's funny. Time. That's yeah. great. But yeah, that that was a uh, kind of classic, uh, unsuccessful attempt of uh, getting my revenge on the final boss. It just happened. <laughs> Uh, and you were all here to witness it. I'm so happy go. about that. Perfect. <laughs> Hooray. That's, that's exactly what you were going for. It was on purpose. Exactly. Definitely on purpose. For the Gosh, lols. I'm trying to figure out what's going on with this enemy here. Those, like... Mm. Streams of yeah, green, but the, smoky the, the stuff. The creatures that are... Well, yeah, behind. there's, like, little snake things. They that remind are me like, of um, in The Little Mermaid with yeah. Ursula. You yes, those little, little, the eels. The poor, unfortunate yeah. souls. The no. poor, oh, you're the, right. The poor, unfortunate souls. Those ones. You're totally yeah, right. Yeah, doesn't that, that look Those like are that? poor, unfortunate souls, Yeah, dude. this could be, like, an <laughs> Ursula kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, oh, my gosh. Yeah. I never freaking realized it. Yeah. She's got, a, she's, she's got she all the poor, unfortunate souls. She has four poor, unfortunate souls. They seem... You know, one of them seems kind of happy. Yeah. <laughs> I love this oh movie. She kind of looks like <laughs> Ursula, too. Yeah. She kind of does. I'm yeah, wondering if it's does. the design. But Cloud of Darkness doesn't exactly, you know, mm. reference. There Not is. Exactly. So <laughs> there is. I can't actually leave right now. But there is a care concept art that we were watching earlier that does show oh, yeah? her from a bit of a different angle. <laughs> and she's not that green. Um, oh, okay. So I can I can show it to you now whenever I I do die and uh, here I am. And, <laughs> and dead. Okay, Particle beam. Uh, turn to the start title screen. That's exactly yeah. It looks what I want. like um. This yeah, ain't gonna like, work out like too like well, I, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, <laughs> you need a game it, genie. Do you have <laughs> another like, save file? I do, but I, okay. I would need to go through the entire oh, <laughs> section of it again because you no. can't save. You can only save in between Darn it. Uh, the Crystal Tower and the Labyrinth of the Ancient Things. So, okay. yeah, so basically, let me just show you the boss and then we're going to call it because it's here already midnight 30. Um, okay, I'm, uh, yeah, it's I'm probably time to, to call it. Time to go to bed. Uh, okay, let me see. Cloud of Darkness, here she is. Um, so, yeah, this looks very uh, different, <laughs> but. Oh, of, yeah, look um, at that. Yeah. It, is this, that the skin oh, she has wow. in Dissidia? 
That is the city of Final Fantasy. Yeah, I think yes. it's. I think uh, that's how they yes. did it. They, yeah. they 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 use this in other type of yeah, like side content type of stuff uh, in other games. So yeah, it's it's really cool. Uh, they kind of have the green one, the cloudy one, and then mm -hmm. this, uh, which is similar in some snaky aspects, but yeah, like, right. The poor unfortunate mm. souls are there. Yeah, but I see that. Yeah. And there's four too. I counted. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> yeah. All right. Much. I'm yeah, sorry that this didn't turn out as I no, thought it's it would. Fine. Um, oh, it's I, fine. I bought so many shurikens, hoping that I will get my revenge. But shurikens. Anyway, <laughs> uh, oh, anyway uh, thank you for uh, hosting the event. As far as yeah. I am on my end, I'm going to have to end it. But I'm yeah, going okay. To say <laughs> I hope. Hey, yeah. no problem. Fun. Thank we, you for We appreciate you joining. It was really good to talk to you. Good to meet you. Yeah. And uh, uh, hopefully, we'll see you again sometime. Uh, it would finally see 17 or something, right? <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah, yeah, we should do it. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. Um, All right. Have fun. Have fun with the rest of the event, and I'll I'll be checking out the next podcast you guys put out. Okay. Thank okay. So Sounds great. Yeah. I'll see yep. you. Around. See ya. Bye. See ya. Bye, bye. Okay, we're gonna switch over to mm. Final Fantasy 11 now, everybody. Ooh. Final Fantasy 11, which we have not been able to talk about yet. Let me hit up Cedric here. So Cedric. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I, I've referenced my time playing FF11 with him in the past. Um, this dude knows just about everything yeah. there is to know about Final Fantasy XI. <laughs> oh, about eleven. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. He was kind of trying to walk me through it. Uh, he, I believe he contributed to the wiki. I'll ask him again when he's actually on the air. But um, we'll get uh, a little bit of background on his uh, history with this game. Let me pull up his stream here and get the link and share it yeah there he goes Whew. i don't think so i've ever actually seen link. this game played before really yeah it's got great music i have no idea what to expect it's got great music oh really that is the pinned message is the link to cedric's stream i don't know if he has realized just yet that we're trying to talk to him let me send him another message here Where are you? Okay. Let's go ahead and full Check screen that. Are you talking, man? We can't hear you if you're talking. Just checking. He's still, he's still muted. Well, I'm going to come over and at least show what he's streaming here. Cedric of, Ca I like that. That's actually a nice little. Uh, no, up top. Yeah, yeah, like logo for his name there. Cedric of Karin. Pretty sweet. I don't think he realizes we're trying to ping him. Cedric. Do you, Cedric. Do you happen to know what Cedric. he's doing? Well, I could, I could probably <laughs> leave a message in his chat. Where is it? Say, talk to us. Where are you, Cedric? Where's your chat? How do I chat, dude? Is it just because it's too... I gotta like reduce the size. Well, what is happening? Oh, why don't I see a chat? You have to follow in order to. I probably have to follow in order to chat. What the heck? Where is the chat? I don't know anything about freaking. Okay, it's this button. Yeah, we haven't we done uh, Twitch. Twitch in a very long time. Hey man. Oh. Well, I I unmuted his stream. That's not what I was trying to do. I was trying to type. <laughs> okay, I got it. <laughs> Ah, that's why you closed it, but didn't agree. Okay, I sent him a message twice in Discord and once into his own chat, so he should be aware soon. He's looking on both himself. screens now. Here we go. There he is. Hey, what's hey. up, dude? How you doing? I'm good. Good. Ooh, it's quiet. Yeah, it's a little quiet. Is there a way for you to boost your audio at all? Uh, or we could maybe boost it on really our end. Closer to it. Um, I'm boosting it on my end as I much like as I missing. can. Ha, uh, okay, so where are you at here in FF11? Oops, wrong um, there we go. Yes, yes, much better. All right. All right. Uh, I am in one of the more newer areas, I guess. Um, okay. It's like mm. the place to level yourself to 99 basically nice uh i was just kind of killing stuff 
Nice. <laughs> As one so, does. So, um, I was I was talking to Kason a little bit about this. I've mentioned this a little bit, like on the podcast in the past. We played FF11 together for a little while. Um, you how you've been playing this game since it, it launched, right? You've been playing this game for like twenty something years at this point. <laughs> yeah, two thousand three. <laughs> Yeah, right. Yeah. Oh, 20 years, 20 wow. years this game came out. So, I, I mean, have you been pretty consistent over that entire time? Like So, I was thinking about this earlier. From 2003 to 2006, I exclusively played this. I did not play any other games or do wow. anything else during that time. Wow. Uh, wow. and then I took like a 2-year break and then came back. <laughs> nice. Uh, and I've kind of done that every once in a while. I'll take like a year or two off and come back. Yeah. Um, gotcha. And so, then when we oh, played was close to the time that I was doing like private server stuff. So right. I did that mm-hmm. for like a couple years too. Yeah. Um, over the course of time, as the game has changed, as MMOs do, uh, which era would you say is the one that you like? the best like what what point in the game's history was it at its peak uh i think i personally would uh i like abyssia but i most people are gonna not like that answer uh, really why that not was when they raised the level cap from 75 to 99 uh, and that was when you could kind of like it was cool to be level 99 before they had a lot of new content out because you could just go back and do old stuff that used to be so crazy and challenging and just go solo mm. it now. Oh, wow. Um, like, there was just a lot of imbalance in the game at that time. It was hard to know, like, what was good or what was, like, useful. It was just a whole new territory and everybody was kind of resetting at, you know, once you're max level, everybody was there for the first time, you know? So, being on the game during that time was very cool. Nice. Um, but... That is also when a lot of people quit. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I mean, that makes a lot of sense. Um, they, so, go ahead. Uh, go ahead. Uh, I mean, they made all the ultimate weapons, like, irrelevant. Things that people had spent years working on. Oh, that's going to piss a lot of people that. off. Yeah. Yeah. They I made see that. a way that you yeah. could upgrade it, but it took, like, a year or two before they did it. So, oh, well. people were just kind of sitting there... You could get a better sword or whatever than something you worked on for years in about an hour. I mean, yeah, right. Uh, <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, I could see that yeah. making a lot of people mad. But I mean, what are you going to do? How are you going to keep your game relevant for 20 years, right? You got to yeah. do yeah. something I, to like bring a new lot people of people, I guess, just don't know that this game is still live, which cracks me up because it's not just still live, it's updated monthly. I mean, literally. Oh, really? That's crazy. Wow. They, so they they, they, they still crazy. have a, like a full team dedicated to like continuing yes, to improve so this game. I think just two months ago, uh, the producer stepped down, and so we have a new producer. Um, and they made some announcement about how they definitely still want to keep it going, and they still have ideas and stuff. Wow, cool. I mean, um, I how how would how long do you think this game can continue to go? Do you I mean like realistically? <laughs> Well, they did mention on on that announcement that a lot of people are obviously concerned about that, given like monetary. This game cannot make them that much money anymore. Right um, anymore, yeah. There's did really it, not that did big it go of a free player base to play. It's not free to play. It's no. not okay. It's still still on subscription about model. Fifteen dollars, something like that. Fifteen. Yeah. Uh, it's just there wouldn't be as many people doing it now, right? Yeah. Right. Um, hmm. But yeah, like on my server, which is one of the more populated ones, there are only. 396 people online right now. Wow. Times um, 15. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. How much money is that? Yeah, that's like 5, How much 000, money does it cost to 5, pay the six people that are like uh, keeping the game <clears throat> running? <laughs> right. Is it worth uh, it? You but know? <laughs> they did mention in the announcement that they have no intentions of slowing down like the process or whatever. So wow. we'll see. That's awesome. I, don't know. I will say also just over the years, I haven't paid too much attention to like who the producers are when team change but you can tell in the game Mm -hmm. um the updates like you can kind of tell the direction the game has changed from who is directing it like some people from final fantasy 14 will step in and the game will kind of change directions on like what 
what the battle style is like and stuff like that. So I've definitely yeah, noticed right. that over the years. Interesting. All right. So um, I I don't I don't want to say this unless, unless I'm like uh, misremembering, but I'm pretty sure you contributed a lot to the online wiki for this game, right? Uh, yeah, me and Ton Garthor, uh, I would do a lot of the low level stat calculations and stuff. I've, nice. I've spent probably mm. as much time playing this game as I have making spreadsheets for it. Wow. <laughs> wow. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. So you're, you're like deeply, deeply knowledgeable about how it works. And that's, uh, why I was happy to have you with me back when I was running through it. Um, I gave up not too long after we started. I think it was the <laughs> it was the Dark Knight job quest to unlock it, where they give you that really weak sword, and you have to like go mm. kill a hundred enemies, and it takes like so stupidly long. <laughs> you could yeah. kill these things way faster with a normal weapon, but they make you do it. I was just like, okay, dude, I'm done. <laughs> but with that being said, I'm also I'm just not a big MMO guy, but with being able to get through a realm reborn recently and now that i'm going to be able to finish final fantasy 14 i'm thinking about the fact that i probably will just have to go back and brute force my way through 11. so okay. i'll probably be contacting you again <laughs> after i'm done okay. with 14 and we'll see if uh we can give it another go i mean i know a lot of people that have just played this game to get through the story and stuff and i, I mean there are a lot of things that they just intentionally make difficult because it's an MMO and it's also that right. was the way they wanted to design the game back then is to just yeah. not tell anybody how to do anything and make right. it overly complicated. Yeah. Um, but everything is basically just reading the guide at this point, which <laughs> exists. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Unlike right. 2003, 2004, everything was just, you You just talk to people. Oh, cool, where right. did you get that cool weapon or whatever? And they'd tell you some story about how they got it and because nobody I, yeah. knew anything. The mm. designers for sure did that on purpose. The yeah, fosters, like the quest you know, logs the community. Will just, will just tell you to, like, go talk to a mysterious person on a dock. Yeah, what? right. What? Where? What do you mean? <laughs> 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 <Tell> me <anything. laughs> That, that's why I could never stick with the game. I just got you so gotta talk to people. frustrated. I know that's what it's supposed to you be gotta, for. You gotta talk but to I'm them. not a social guy. So like I just, anyway, I know that I'm supposed to do that. <laughs> but um, I got a, actually got an interesting question for you. So with Final Fantasy XIV as, po as popular as it is now, right? I think for a while it's, it even surpassed uh, World of Warcraft for like most subscribed MMO in the world. Maybe I'm misremembering that, but I thought that was true, right? Um, you have you played Final Fantasy fourteen? I did for about a year. Um, okay, <laughs> right around the Heaven Sword release. Okay, oh, nice. so you didn't continue with it, which leads me to believe that uh, you're pr definitely lean more towards FF eleven. You're, you're more of an FF eleven guy than an FF fourteen guy. Yes. And I, I always like to hear the reasons for why <laughs> people like one versus the other. But what would you say mm. is the major difference? between Final Fantasy 11 and 14 for those who are not um, MMO people? Like, wh what is the draw to 11 uh, that keeps you coming back to it versus 14? Um, man, they're not similar at all, to be honest with you. Uh, no. <laughs> Final Fantasy 11 is so old school. It's It feels like EverQuest and not like... Yeah, EverQuest. Uh, I don't know. 14 kind of just feels like MMO with... Final Fantasy stuff slapped onto it. Um, yeah. You know, the combat especially is just like dodge out of the circle, use your combo, dodge out of the circle. Like, that's the whole game, and I I could not stand doing the same fights over and over with that style. Mm. Um, it was the end game that made me quit. I liked playing through it. I liked leveling up. I liked exploring the world, even crafting, but I just could not sit there and do like repeat the same fights that don't have any kind of like i guess randomness a lot of it's just kind of following instructions and doing the same thing again i guess yeah so there's not maybe as much thought or strategy you feel like that goes into the the big fights yeah i mean for this everything is there's like hp thresholds and stuff where like the fight will change what's going to happen but a lot of what they're going to like what the boss is going to do is just kind of random generation like you don't know which attack they're going to use it's not really like you can just yeah you know you can plan ahead and like hey at this 
percent we need to do this and at this percent we need to do this but a lot of times i mean all kinds of crazy stuff just can happen in a fight you know, that's something I have noticed playing through 14. Now, I haven't done any, like, end game content or really hard bosses or anything like that. But, like, just the main story bosses, there does seem to be a pretty particular pattern that the bosses will use their moves in. So I kind of always mm, know yeah. what they're about to do if I've seen the cycle that they go through. So I, I kind of yeah. know what you mean when you say that, even with the limited experience I have with 14. Well, the other thing, too, is, like, I think even with the dungeons, like, if you... Uh, queue up for one like it's always like tank damage dealer healer like you always get assigned those no matter what it's like every job is kind of uh you can just swap out anything for anything and it would pretty much be the same it's just based on player skill while like the jobs on this game makes such a drastic difference like mm. white mage can't be swapped out with anything else it's not the same job like yeah right um, so if you have a different party set up than the last time you did the fight, you're going to have to go in with a totally different strategy. Mm. Um, I don't know. Like that's, that's really cool to me. Like I've always liked to do stuff in like small groups, like what normal people would do with like six to 12 people. I want to do with three people and like, let's see what weird combination we have to put together to do that. To make yeah, it work. That's yeah. Cool. That's cool. So what would you say is, I mean, 20, game, 20 years to spend on an MMO is... I mean, I know you said you, you come come like come and go with it, yeah. but like that's a long time to stick with one game. So what is it about Final Fantasy XI to you that makes it so special and that keeps you coming back? I have a problem, Mike. I'm addicted. No. Uh, <laughs> okay, but uh, on a more positive note. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. It's something about like the sense of like everything takes forever in this game everything is really like a slog and like a lot of it is especially when new content comes out is like figuring it out on your own and mm. i still today solo a lot of stuff like i don't think that's something you can do a lot of in 14 in game and i still do that mm. a lot on 11. i'll just go try to figure out like boss mechanics and stuff and a lot of it you can look up obviously and like that will help but when you're doing something by yourself or doing something with like two or three people it's very different uh than whatever the strategy online is like oh this is the most efficient way to do this like that's cool but that doesn't help me because i'm there with like three people instead of ten right so you got to um, come up with something totally different to figure it yeah, out yeah there's just so much more like experimenting on just all the, the game mechanics in different ways like oh instead i'm just gonna run around in circles for 10 minutes while you guys deal with this stuff and like just stupid weird strategies of of doing things and i still mm -hmm. enjoy trying to figure out how to how to put the puzzle pieces together for for stuff like that nice that's awesome cool. how do you feel about the story uh i figured you'd ask me that um <laughs> i did not look into a lot of it i was kind of just spamming through cutscenes. like i mean i yeah. got a little bit of it i'm it's you know skim reading or whatever yeah um i know that a lot of people that have played this game that have played other final fantasies have said that um change of promothia expansion is among their top stories of all games they've played oh wow. um that i think is still everybody's favorite that has played 11 is probably that one Change, from, like, of, think, change of Promathia or Promethea or Promathia. Yeah. yeah, 2006, I think it came out. Five, six. Um, yeah. And I will tell you that's the most annoying, like by gameplay mechanics. It is very, <laughs> very long. Um, yeah. I remember being stuck on one mission for three years. Uh, oh my gosh. Wow. It's a lot easier now because it's uncapped. You can just go in with level 99 stuff if you wanted and do it holy but, crap uh, so why were you stuck yeah. on it for so long did you just not know what to do or is it just that like difficult you needed 18 people to complete it wow uh, whoa at the time people that had already done it could not help you um so oh my gosh, all brand what? new people would go wow. into this mission all at once uh and uh so your parties at the end part split up and you do different fights 
and I was in the team that lost their fight. Uh, three different runs. So, oh my got 18 gosh. people together to fight this Dang. thing. My party lost. It's like a year later, or like six months later, I got 18 more people together to do it. Lost again. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. How did it feel it's when like, you finally beat it? Uh, relieved. And I did not <laughs> yeah. do any more missions for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> But you're saying that that's, for you, a big part of the appeal of the game, though, is the fact that it takes that much effort yeah. and time to accomplish things, right? I was at a point in that game where I was about to level a whole new job just to to be able to beat it. Like, because <clears throat> clearly what I was doing was not going to work. Mm -hmm. um, and I there were things in the game that I've done that. Like, I leveled a whole job to 99 just for one specific fight or for one specific purpose. Mm. Um, but you know, back Crazy. then leveling was much more daunting than it is. Getting to ninety nine now is not much difficult. easier. Yeah. How long would mm -hmm. it take to get to ninety nine at this point? Like for me, if I started a new account or whatever, uh, doing all the prerequisite quests and stuff, probably like a week. Oh wow! A week? Wow! wow. Um. Dang. And so at that point, after that week of playing, you could then basically run through anything. Right, right. You could kind of mm. backtrack and do all the missions, or you could do them as you level, but obviously then it'd take a lot longer, longer. for you to get to 99. Right. I, I don't know. I mean, it's how you would want to approach it. I'm not going to tell anybody how they would play personally, just because I've yeah. already done it. I would just go to 99 first and then backtrack, but... Yeah. That <laughs> sounds like the kind of thing I would do, because... <laughs> I'm definitely not going to spend three years on one mission. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm going to no. try to beat this game much quicker than that. I don't uh, think so. there's anything in the mission content until like the very end that you couldn't solo now. Actually, I'm I'm pretty like I'm confident of that. Um, wow. Everything would wow. be soloable except for Seekers of Adolan content, I think. Hmm. And speaking of story stuff, they actually just wrapped up the final storyline about six months ago. Oh, the last one that they're going to release for the game, or just the last one? That so came they out? say. They've said that before. Mm. But yeah, uh, and then they then was, they keep the game going somehow, and they release another story. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was so so how, how many expansions are short. there? Um, actual expansions. I want to say four, mm. but I don't. Well. It depends. So, like, the Abyssia was three separate expansions, though, like, I think if you buy it, you just get all three. Yeah. And then, so Rise of Xylark came out <clears throat> with the North American release. Um, mm -hmm. It was a requirement to play the game. And then, Change of Promothea was, like, 2005-ish, I want to say. And then, Treasures of Op Oregon was, like, 2006 or 7. Uh, nice. Winds of whatever it is wins of Prom promethean i don't i don't remember the name of the, <laughs> the wins names of the goddess, of them. <laughs> that's what it is yeah <clears throat> wings of the goddess i really enjoyed but a lot of people didn't the content is just not there at all but i liked the concept a lot oh yeah oh cool uh it's like they go back in the past it's like 50 years in the past oh cool um during the actual war that they talk about a lot in the main story mm -hmm. um then Seekers of Adolan would be like where I'm at now, the yeah. areas. Uh, and that's all like level 99 content. Have you completed everything there is to do in the game at this point? Is there something you haven't done right now? I have barely touched the new storyline that started. Okay. They started on it about a year ago, I want to say. I've done okay. a handful of quests, which was just like talking to people, and that was it. Yeah. We got a Pix Pixel <laughs> in the comments here. FF11's OST is so slept on, I feel. It, it is. People don't talk about it yeah. enough, but it is great. It's, in fact, I would say my favorite aspect of the game. Like, right. any time that I have decided, oh, I'm going to go play Final Fantasy XI with Kenny McLean or even with Cedric or whatever, yeah. the most enjoyable part is almost always just running to the next thing, which takes a long time because the zones yeah. are huge. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And just listening to this music and just like, dude, I love 
this music. This music is awesome. <laughs> Uematsu like killed it with this. And you're just kind of, you yeah. know, auto running. You just hit the button so he just runs on his own. You just kind of every once in a while hit your keyboard to like turn him or whatever. And mm -hmm. you're just like, it's kind of like you talk about how with how you feel when you play uh, Wind Waker or something. Yeah, yep. Just the sailing and yep. the listening to the music and the feeling like you're traversing the world. There's just like, yeah, serene, yeah. was peaceful. Just It's just a nice, comfortable feeling. And, and oh, that's cool. the part of Eleven that I really like. Although I don't like almost anything else, but <laughs> <laughs> but that's only because that's only because of how long it takes, and yeah. and you know that's the thing that's the the exact appeal for Cedric is the one thing that like really like harms the experience for me, right? So it totally depends on your taste exactly or what you're you looking for. But uh, if you're telling me I can get to level ninety nine in a couple weeks, if you're helping me and walk me through it, you know, then I can just go through and bust through the story, like. That might be worth doing, you know. Yeah, that might be. So. Yeah, I think you can. Um, so I, I know I sent you those uh, links. Something I, I never even thought about. Like, if you put all the cutscenes together, I guess, like it's like thirty hours of just cutscenes or something like Whoa. that. Whoa! Wow. Um, I am fairly confident of as far as like just story content goes. There is no. Final Fantasy that comes even close to the amount of time and like even if you could just skip all the leveling and just do the story content like just talk to NPCs and do the cutscenes it I think it's like 30 or 40 hours wow is that just for the wow. base game or you're talking about for like all the expansions and all of it yeah like all of it yeah. together that's a lot that's a lot I mean for a game that's running for 20 years I guess that's to be expected but yeah I mean that's crazy to me um is what it's class? Not just like, Go ahead. Hmm? Go ahead. Uh, I, I was saying, like, not just the cutscenes, but like talking to people and stuff too. Right. There's, not there's just like the of... the actual scenes themselves, but like the right. the process of going and talking to the NPC and yeah. getting the thing you need and going back. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Um, which class is your favorite in this game? Uh, Blue Mage. There's just so much stupid combinations and goofy mechanics <laughs> that you can do they yeah uh, that's fun get some of the goofiest things like uh blue mage has the actual thousand needles spell from oh Kattar. nice right uh it, it's terrible it's not worth using but it's <laughs> gimmicky there's a lot of them that are just there to be funny yeah right what class are you playing as right now this is thief thief okay uh i'm probably my second most like uh played i guess paladin was my original and i bailed on it like immediately because it's too hard to gear but mm. I just is it, it i mean kind of hard to play too right i know that with final fantasy 14 i played paladin and it used to be a lot harder as far as the role you're meant to you know fulfill in battles they've made it a lot easier now is it is it yeah. tough to play as a paladin in this people like relying on you and if you mess up like everyone um, dies <laughs> It depends mm -hmm. on the fight. Um, I would say any of the mages have the much harder time. Like anytime I'm playing white mage, I'm so stressed out. Like it is so busy all the time. Yeah, my my friend Kenny, he always wants to be a white mage in this game. I'm like, dude, why are you doing that to yourself? <laughs> yeah, it is busy. And like red mage is a bunch of kind of like memorizing. I mean, if you have add-ons, I guess it's not as bad, but a lot of it's like memorizing where you're at in loops on like certain spells so you want to keep yeah. everybody everybody's buffs on and they yeah. wear off at, at different times so you're just like constantly remembering timestamps and stuff mm -hmm. um that's crazy but out and you know tanking is not too bad a lot of the times you just kind of stand in a corner and keep your buffs up and that's it yeah well um what is something that you would say to anybody today looking to get into Final Fantasy XI, what would be the advice that you would give them for how to even approach such an enormous, <laughs> like, giant thing? Like, how, how do you get the most out of Final Fantasy XI in this day and age? Don't. No. Uh, <laughs> turn, turn, build a time machine, right? Go back to when yeah. it first came out. Um, no, I mean, I like where the game is at right now. Um, I'm not a big fan of the actual in-game content, but there's so much other stuff to do that it doesn't matter really. Sure. Um, yeah, like I don't really participate in the in-game content that's out there right now unless people ask me to. 
and I still have plenty to do. I enjoy just running around doing stuff. But cool. if you don't have somebody like guiding you or helping you, I don't know what to tell you. Like, good luck. Dude, there's just too much. <laughs> like, I don't yeah. know how you'd even parse through like what's still relevant and what's not. Um, there mm. is like guides online that's like one to one ninety nine and like or one nineteen and how you know it'll kind of walk you through each of the stages of the game that might be something cool to just read through for you personally because like it kind of goes through each in-game event and like what purpose it had at the time mm -hmm. um because it's it's like time stamped right like every time somebody adds to it it just keeps going yeah. um but i don't know there's just so much there's there's way too much in this game and if you're not coming from like an old school mmo mindset I like I can't imagine someone from like 14 that's never played this coming here and being like, yeah, this <laughs> trying to figure it out. Like this. Yeah. <laughs> I can't imagine that at all. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Well, I'll tell you what. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna keep you in mind. Maybe I'll uh, get my friend Kenny back, and we'll mm -hmm. the three of us can try to. Because I don't think he's ever finished. I don't think he has finished the base game either. He's gotten a lot further than me. Yeah. But um. But he loves this game, and uh, so maybe maybe we'll hit you up. And we'll try to have you finally help us get through some of these expansions and base game, and say we actually quote unquote beat Final Fantasy XI, which probably is a nonsense thing to say. But right, um, yeah. anyway, uh, appreciate you coming on. We're gonna switch over to FF10 for a second before we go over to Final Fantasy XVI. But uh, all good. I'll probably be here doing. Who knows what for a little while. Okay. So. All right. Sounds All right. good. So if anybody wants to continue to chat about FF11, you're interested in seeing some more there, the pinned uh, comment in our chat is still for his stream. So go check him out. And uh, again, appreciate you coming on, man. Yeah. Thanks, guys. All right. See ya. Okay. Let's get uh, Devante back on here for some more FF10, and then we'll switch to 16. Oh, okay, we got Dr. Doak saying, whenever you're set with 10, I'm at Garland Chaos. Oh, he's at the end of the game. Uh, oh. Doak, if you're listening, could you, like, finish FF1? Like, quickly? Like, how quickly would you say you are to the end of the game? Because we might just jump into that real quick to see, to see the ending and then switch over to 10 for a minute. Dang. You busted through that. We we were at uh, the Earth orb, and now yeah. all of a sudden you're at the end of the game. <laughs> That's crazy. I don't know if you heard me or not. If you just heard part of that and was like, "All right, we're gonna go to FF10 for now." Let's just call that. Okay. Okay. Let's see where he's at. FF10. That's nine. This is. Wait, which one? Five. five. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize my mic was muted. <laughs> oh, what's up? <laughs> hey, oh, right. sorry about that. Uh, yeah, good. so I have a, I had a uh, save. Uh, I had already pre-set up and everything like that. That was uh -huh. right before the Temple of Fiends. So I basically, okay. you know, I figure I do have to head out in a little bit. So I figured, you know, I'd get well, let's the do that. Let's do that right now. Then let's let's move over to FF1 because um, I'm actually not sure if Devante is at his mic right now. Oh, he's on right now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Devante, we're yeah. going to come back to you after we finish FF1 because he's right at the end of the game. So we're going to come okay. to you next. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. So we'll be right back. All right. All right. Let's go to All the right. FF1 <laughs> stream. And this will be the end for you, right? You'll be done after this. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Switching so, to it. There we go. Yep. All right. Let's so I, this is right after the final dungeon, which is basically the longest dungeon in the game. Uh, it's kind of like a gauntlet. You have to fight all the all four fiends over again. Yep. With a lot of uh, the el different elemental monsters in each of their sections, and you, when you get to the end, you come across Garland, who uh, you know it was the first fight in the game, and now he is. Uh, He's back and he is trancing. He's going to transform <laughs> into uh, chaos. And he explains yep. that when he lost the fight, he was sent two thousand years in the back, uh, back into, into the, the past. past. Yep. Um, 
and it creates he's creating like a time loop basically that will always create chaos more or less to mm-hmm. make sure he always is reborn and you know evil will always reign or something like that yeah pretty cool concept for an nes story right oh like, yeah absolutely it's it's well we talked about psychics chaos. in a lot of our recent yes. uh, games we've been covering it's a very eastern kind of thing yeah. wheel of samsara right mm-hmm. but yep. yeah so when you killed garland at the beginning of the game, it was an event that ended up sending him back into the past where he was revived uh, by the mm-hmm. fiends, right? But then he ends up... No, he ends up being the one to create the fiends. Anyways, the whole thing is perpetuated by the fact that you killed him. So, like, yeah. the fact yeah. that you actually saved the princess and killed him at the beginning, it created this whole problem with the Earth dying, right? Mm-hmm. And so now it's That's like... Crazy. And then every time you come back here, chaos kills you. So yeah. it just, like, keeps the cycle going. So mm-hmm. it's it's a pretty cool little concept for st- a story twist for an NES game. Right? Yeah, I, I, for I, sure. yeah cool. you know, considering this you know like came it. out back in like '87, that's uh, it's pretty yeah. uh, it's pretty advanced, you know, for this time. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And, do you uh, still got uh, Chaos's face for the boss? I, <laughs> I sure do. Uh, where <laughs> is that? Got to hunt it down in all my uh, stuff in ODS. Do you know what I actually with how hilariously there obsessed Jack Garland in the um, in the Z- no, Stranger Zero. of Paradise Stranger is Paradise. with killing Chaos. I yeah, wonder chaos. what his reaction is. I've never looked it up when he finds out he is Chaos. Like, what, what happens? Oh, uh, what so does he do? That <laughs> is so... That's part of, like, uh, the end of the game. It's, it's all... You know, I don't want to spoil it for anyone who hasn't played it yet, but uh, basically, the way it ends up is um, the, his the people who travel with him, you know, the four party members you get, end up being the four fiends. And it ends up, but it ties into, like, this is some alternate dimension. Yeah. And, um, how you and your party members are from the alternate dimension, and this alternate dimension's dumping their, like, their darkness into the world of Final Fantasy 1. And so, they... Like uh, it, it's like an amnesia plot where Garland doesn't remember the plot, but the others do, and so they're basically leading on him on this path mm. to become chaos, to embody that darkness. It's to get rid of it. It's it's it gets real weird. Once it sounds gets about as dumb game. as I figured it was gonna be. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it gets pretty crazy. Um, <laughs> And, you know, and some I, I mentioned this before when I was fighting Astos uh, way back when, um, but. In Stranger Paradise, they turn him into like almost like a think like a Final Fantasy VII um, like extended universe like type character where you know yeah he's like he's very like um, pop star looking you know whereas in this he's like this weird green long armed gremlin dude oh wow so uh, okay and you well. know he. It's funny, but you know it, it works <laughs> out. You know the game. The gameplay is good. So you did know. you like Strangers of Paradise? It, no, from a gameplay perspective, it was actually great. Um, if you ever played the uh, Neo games by, um, I think is yep. Techno. Yeah, uh, it's the Team Ninja or whatever they are. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's basically like the best version of that style game, more or less. Oh, okay. Yeah, I did and, feel uh, a little bit more Neo-y than Dark Souls-y from the mm-hmm. gameplay footage, yeah. Yeah, it's more fast-paced. Like, you know, you do take, you know, high damage and everything like that, but it's more action-focused. Then the job, it has the uh, the whole job system, too, with, like, branching jobs and everything. And yeah. it's pretty great. Cool. And uh, one thing uh, I'm going to point out is uh, once you get halfway through this game, um, like you can see, you know, all the sprites have changed for the party. You get yep. a job upgrade. Mm-hmm. So um, your fighter becomes a knight. Uh, thief becomes a ninja. Uh, nice. The one downgrade is I'm, I'm not a fan of the black wizard. You know, you can't mm. beat the black mage. I know, yeah. you can't beat that. design beat. is too good, yeah. Yeah, Yeah. exactly. You know, it's the reason why. It, there's a reason it stood the test of time, basically. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. And then, uh, this is this is the final fight right here, and uh, you know I'm at max level, so I'm expecting this to go down pretty easily. Yeah, yeah. If you're, that, that's kind of the way I always end up too. It's like the game gets really hard at a certain point, kind of around where you were with the Earth Orb, 
It's like that's mm -hmm. kind of like the peak of its difficulty, and then you, yeah, there you, you go. Pretty it's... much start. Yeah, you just waste him. <laughs> <laughs> you get pretty strong by the end of the game. Yeah, and it takes him like forty-five years to die. <laughs> this like uh, yeah, this absolutely. like this, this destruction animation is like the longest one in the history of Final Fantasy. Building and there's up some to long it. ones. They're building up there's to it. There's some really long ones too. Oh, it's coming. He's going. He's going. <laughs> At some point, he's going to be dead, but it takes a really <laughs> long time. <laughs> and almost. Yep, he's uh, halfway gone. <laughs> oh, his head's gone. <laughs> <laughs> there we go, finally. And there we go. And you get the uh, the end credits. You know, uh, it's real cool. It's almost like the same the time loop is broken. Screen. Yep. As the uh, the intro. Yeah, yeah. The world all restored and everything. The world is back to normal. Very cool. Look at it's that. It's been healed. The four elements. Beautiful. Garland's hatred burned for 2,000 years. That hatred led to the four powers to this world. Led the four powers to this world. The four fiends. Yep. And chaos was created from those four. Evil dominated the world. And Do you create chaos? Is chaos created? Created by chaos? the fiends. I know, but like chaos, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's a pro. It's the name, right? Yeah. The proper. Okay. Fine. Yeah, chaos is the villain we just fought. The monster. Chaos. The boss. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you know, and chaos will come back in other games too. Like uh, if in the Dissidia games, he's the main antagonist. Yeah, and uh, I nice. believe he's also a boss fight. In uh, Final Fantasy fourteen in one of the optional uh, ring mm. series. Yeah, oh, that makes cool. sense. Sarah and Jane, wait for them, of course. Garland does too. Garland. And Garland's when back? Did it what ever the heck? Happen? <laughs> <laughs> Forgot about that part. When did it ever happen? Yeah. <clears throat> yes, maybe because you uh hmm. you broke the time loop, Garland yep. isn't evil anymore, I guess, or something. I don't know. Everything went mad in a day. The reason lies in the 2000 year time loop. It makes no sense, but it's cool, anyways. <laughs> the yeah. four chose to become one force and fight against the four evil forces that set darkness upon the world. Yep, so the evil forces were separate, and then the good forces were unified. Yep. When the four return, it'll be to their past. All signs of the battle mm -hmm. with the forces will be erased but the legend will live on, passed down by the dwarves, the elves, and the dragons. Ooh, sick. Dragons are sick. Dwarves, elves, and dragons. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, this is the, the first first appearance first. of Bahamut also. Yep. Uh, oh, really? He's, uh, yep. Yeah, he's the Ooh. character you king, talk to king, to get your, King of uh, the dragons. Ah. Yep. The light warriors return from their journey back in time, 2,000 years. 2,000 years. <laughs> 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 The memories stored deep in their hearts will protect the world. <coughs> Until people forget. Never forget the good <laughs> and the true. The good and true. I forgot how long these, uh, this like end Yeah, it's pretty thing long. Is. They're it's just actually filling out. They're like, hey, how many bits of text <laughs> can we? How much text we got left? Right, fill it, fill it. <laughs> Never turn the four powers to the dark side. Don't turn water. And truth will always and, live. And earth and air in the to hearts the hearts of people. <laughs> A lot of, you know, these, these I love types it. It's of, great. It's yeah. great. It's just funny. The <clears throat> warrior who broke the 2000 year time loop is truly a light warrior. That warrior is you. That warrior was you. <laughs> May Good the orbs job. always shine. May the orbs be with you. <laughs> That's pretty close. <laughs> May the orbs always shine. Finally, we're good. There it is. And then they draw this yep. super cool the end. I love this. Oh, yeah, it's real nice. Well, they had to have been really proud of this. Uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Look at how medieval that is. The end.
Good game, dude. Looking uh, to chat on uh, your stream, I just see someone, may you ever walk in the light of the orb. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh my gosh, fill in the text. <laughs> Here we go. And that's that. This, which takes longer for the for chaos to die or for the text to fill in? <laughs> the end. right. Well, great. Hey, yep. man. Thank you right, for streaming. That. Man. that was awesome. All that right, was great. Thanks. Yeah. Just, thanks for having me, guys. Yeah, of it was course. awesome. We really appreciate you, and uh, I'm glad we got to see the end of Final Fantasy One because most people probably will never see that in their mm, lives. Nope. <laughs> oh yeah, it, it's it's a tough slog to get there, but you know, it's definitely worth it. It's a good game, you know. Yeah. Cool. All right, man. We'll talk to you later. All right, talk to you later. Thanks. See guys. ya. Out. See ya. Good stuff. All right, let's hop over to FF10, and then we will move on to Final Fantasy 16. Devante. Ooh, we got a Kuja fight going on in FF9 right now, too. I'll just put that on the screen. Until? While we're waiting for him, but... Uh, yeah, this is in the other world. Ooh, big attack. Whew. Holy. What's up, Devante? You in? Nope, I think that was Doug. Oh, leaving. him leaving, yeah. Yeah. Annihilated. Ooh, game over. Oh, dear. Too bad. <laughs> Let's see. Let's get Devante back on here real quick. Where is he at? Where is he at? What the heck? Certainly I talked to him more recently than that. Certainly. Hello? There we go. What's hey, up, hey. dude? Yeah, How's sorry. it going? You're good. Going you're good. good. <laughs> All good. All right, let's check out where you're at here. Let me get your stream back up. Uh, yeah, we are um, about to do Operation ah, yeah. Mehan, perfect timing. Yeah, I was thinking that too. Time. Oh, we got a Mission Impossible. We've ad. got a uh, an ad to get through, so we'll just chat with you for a second while that plays. Okay. But, gotta uh, watch Tom Cruise do his stunts. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this is literally the perfect time to come back. This is one of my favorite parts of the whole game. Yeah, this yeah. is like one of, one of the parts that like shaped this game for me uh, as one of for my sure. Favorites. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, great stuff. Especially right. um, the lead up dialogue with uh, where like you have the conversation with like Luzu and Gata. Uh, mm -hmm. I love those especially. Yeah, good that's stuff. right. Yeah, yeah. So uh, how is your how is your playthrough going so far? Smoothly. It's going, yeah, it's going smoothly. I um, Good. I went to a later save file where I uh had um, beat the Luca goers. So when mm. I do every Go playthrough on. of this game is uh, when I when I do do that um, blitz ball game, I make sure to win because when you win, you get a special uh, yeah, you get an item, don't you? Uh, yeah, you, you get a strength yeah. spear. So I always put that strength spear on Orin so he can make sure to do like extra damage uh yeah, against nice. the bosses. Nice. Nice. Okay, we got like 25 seconds left on these ads, and then <laughs> we'll be yeah. able to hop over to you. I have a follow. Sorry about that. I don't. Tw Twitch ads are are very. very well, you can't skip them. Uh, yeah. At least it doesn't look like it. No, you can't. It's very weird that they consistently do that. Um, I, I don't. Know to, I don't think you can turn them off either. Oh dang. Yeah. So. Ooh. Two, one. All right. Okay. okay. Here it is. You are in. All right, are, let's switch over. We are uh, fighting this sin spawn right now. The head is moving suspiciously. On this boss, you always want to make sure to. I usually use thunder because I think it hits the hardest. But yeah, um, thunder is good. Yeah, you always want to hit the head like right away. Do you do you have a level two magic spells with Lulu yet, or just the level uh, one spells? Just level ones. Okay. Ooh. Yeah, so. This is, gonna was... do, this, is, this is gonna be a little hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I'm pretty sure that okay. when I get up to this point, I usually have level two spells, and so it's a little easier to, you know. Yeah, get... I, I don't think I grinded nearly as much as I thought I did. Um, because usually I do have it by the time I get here too for her, especially because Demi and stuff do like a lot of damage. So let me get you now. A and life. Usually this is the hardest part of this because I think as soon as I get Seymour, I summon. 
uh, in the second phase of this fight. Okay, we're back. Let's get Lulu back in here. I, I, I freaking I love how you can switch the party members out yes, mid-fight in this game. Yes, it's my favorite I aspect of it. the combat system. Oh, yeah. I do wish the other games after this um, had did that, that too. Yeah, no, yeah. Uh, it's yeah. just like it's it's so nice that you can just and also you can um, switch your armor and stuff too uh, in mid battle. Yeah, oh, I I, 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 I I think of all the combat systems in the mainline Final Fantasy series that Final Fantasy X and X two, which are very different combat systems, but yes, are my two favorite ones. But yes, I love I, I the love same. the combat in this game. I think it's great. It, it, I was saying it earlier on my um, stream to like the people who were watching it is, uh it's surprising that they made another combat system just as good as this, like not even that long after this came out. Because X2, I don't think was mm. too long after this game. Oh, yeah, uh, that's I could be right. wrong. I can't like, remember. It was still for the PS2, so it wouldn't have been that much later. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just very surprising that they were able to do do exactly what they did so so yeah. fast. Also, I can't use overdrive, so I'm gonna do less damage overall. Cause uh, Orin and Waka's overdrives are crashing the emulator, which oh, didn't used to be a thing. Uh, but it became a thing after like the newest update. Oh, uh, is the shit. issue? The, which uh, the PSX two X or whatever it is? Yeah, yeah, yeah PCSX two. Um, PCSX. Yeah. yeah. I have no idea what happened, but I I did, was playing this earlier, uh, a couple months ago, and I didn't have that issue. Yeah, they must have updated something that just doesn't like Final Fantasy X for some reason. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which sucks, but yeah. it's okay. Yeah. We'll deal with it. Oh, uh, who are you attacking? Waka, okay. That's, that's fine. It's really fine. Uh, let's get Yuna in here again. Yeah, I do this like... Is a, this is a lot tougher when you don't have the level 2 spells. <laughs> yeah. Because I think she can just melt uh, a lot of his HP... Yeah, uh, it I mean, with level uh, two spells. Yeah. Probably more than twice as much damage. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, I did want to show um, the scene after this. That's like super, super, super good. Like it's one of my favorite scenes. Like in oh for uh, sure any game. It's amazing. Yeah, it's it's. I can summon. I can do that. Maybe do more damage that way. And it, uh, I was saying it earlier, but I, it's it's one thing I do uh, like about Square Enix that they still do to this day is uh they find a way to mix cg with real uh real-time gameplay uh super well and it's been mm -hmm. a consistent thing since uh seven and mm -hmm. i'm i'm hoping 16 uh continues that uh but yeah. we'll see we'll see seems like it we'll see very soon in two days yeah <laughs> yes yeah, so i'm very excited <laughs> so uh just real quick while you're fighting this guy uh mm -hmm. you've played the demo for 16 right what are your what are your feelings yes. on 16. Uh, I think the demo was really, really good, and it changed my opinion um, on what I thought I would feel about the game. Because um, before the game, before we got the demo, uh, I was not really like that really into it. Because my preferred Final Fantasy is the uh, Kitase uh, Final yeah, Fantasies. That branch, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, that brand of Final Fantasy, and I do like um, Tactics Twelve and uh, like the Evilly stuff. So it's not like I'm yeah. like fully against it. Yeah, but um, it felt like it didn't even have like some of the stuff I like about that in it because it felt mm. like too medieval like even compared to like tactics which i think is like sure uh huh. very medieval but like it, it feels like yeah. final fantasy but um i think as more trailers came out i was like getting a more positive opinion yeah uh and then the demo came out and i thought the demo was like a super strong opening uh yeah. ooh, that's good damage uh nice. for the game nice overkill yes i love getting overkills in this game <laughs> I, it's a mechanic i i wish they would have make kept. a return, yeah, because yeah. right? you get more of the uh, the what do you call it, the spheres when you yeah you get more sphere right? levels, and uh, it's just like it's super satisfying too to see that mm -hmm. like word just drop, and then you like the the white flash on the screen too. It's just it's it's like a bunch of reasons why it's like really good, yeah, that I enjoy it. Um, but yeah, uh, the sixteen demo was really good. I do I, I watched you guys' video, mm -hmm. and I do agree that uh like the uh i'm some of like the opening stuff like the icon fight felt very uh little two on rails yeah a little two on rails yeah. so i'm hoping yeah. uh the other ones we see watch from the trailers it looks like they'll be more involved it does look like that uh, yeah. yeah i think you're right so i'm hoping that they are a lot more involved uh 
in the icon fights. That's really the only thing I'm worried about because I played the iconic demo, the second one too. Oh right, yeah. Uh, mm. And there was a lot of cool gameplay stuff in it. And I'm like, ooh, okay, this feels good. Uh, yeah. This feels nice. Yeah. That's really good too. That's like the especially like there's a lot of defensive mechanics which I do enjoy um, in my action games. So it's really nice. But, right. Uh, will it uh, be my favorite? I don't know. We'll don't see. Know. We'll, we'll have see. to wait and see. <laughs> but it, I mean, uh, we were saying this earlier. I don't remember which game we were on at the time, but I think I think it was fifteen actually. Now that I think about it, okay. it's just it's just nice to see a Final Fantasy game complete its development. Yes, and not have yes. passed through such like horrible development yes. hell issues yes. and yeah. be changing its like concept midway through the game and like yeah. not yeah. looking at all like it did when they first showed it and all this it's like it it they they knew what they wanted they did that they updated in a, a smart way and showed it mm. off when it was ready to be showed off they yeah. didn't show it in the conceptual phase and <laughs> yeah, it seems right. to be really polished and like just that alone has been something we have not seen in yeah, so since, long with this series since yeah. like, like X two right like yeah to because, where it's yeah, just yeah. like dude like it's actually a game that feels completed yeah, <laughs> yeah. like because twelve I know twelve had like a tumultuous development uh, because oh, Yasumi yeah, Matsu you know was, uh -huh. I had to leave part way through. And yeah. then versus 13 and 15, we know like what happened there with Nomura yeah. leaving and yeah. Tabata 14, having to be obviously. forced in. And 14 yeah. for and sure. And um, even 13, uh, from what I was reading when I was making my review for um, FF13, I have a review yeah. series where I do these games. Oh, nice. Uh, oh, cool. um, even then, they were like, oh, we didn't have uh, what we, like a in like thing we want to do yet until like we released that demo with Advent Children, which is like uh, a yeah. year before the game comes out right uh so it's like right. insane that's like we've had these issues where people you know like you said concepts change how our way through or people aren't like on the same wavelength or something like that it's just like a lot of yeah. a lot of things going over down at square enix and it's just like it's nice that we're finally not having um it, that yeah. issue yeah anymore. and it's, people are bringing up in the comments too even 7r because it was with yes yeah, uh, CC2 for a while, yeah. an outside sourced oh. development that they brought in house oh, and yeah. scrap. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So like literally every FF <laughs> game that we've yeah. had in like the last decade plus has had like really bad development issues. That's so strange. Until this, that's so weird. F I know. Seven R is the the one that's the weirdest to me that that happened because it, that seems like something that you would do in house right away, right? Like that seems like something I know, that right? Yeah, of all the want. games <laughs> that you would want to develop in house, I know, the yeah. remake of your most popular one yeah, would be the like, one to do. Give that yeah, away. yeah, that's what I was thinking for the longest time. Yeah, um, that's crazy. Yeah, crazy stuff, man. So it's just it's nice that sixteen will be that, um, and then we have like seven rebirth coming soon, which is also nice because that was yeah a early twenty twenty four. Yeah, that when that's coming out. Yeah, yeah. They've, so it's like. They've got the engine, they've got the assets, or a lot of them at least, you know. It's yeah. Sh hopefully the development on those will be faster moving. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm hoping because it feels like this one will be like the one where they make the world of Seven because that's going to be like a really right. hard thing to do. And then for yeah. the third game, you wouldn't have to remake the world again. You just reuse that uh, world right. you already made and add, um, you know, maybe locations you didn't finish before. That's the idea, uh, but something, something tells me that... <laughs> <laughs> may not off, end up being it'll be the yeah. ps6 and they'll yeah they'll that's, just, that's they'll find a reason it. to just redo a lot of things <laughs> and yeah. to scrap it I, all and the new director will have a new vision <laughs> yeah you right. know that's how this stuff goes well i know nomura's not i don't think yeah, he's, he's as involved he's, uh, as the director on rebirth yeah he's I think the he's, creative director so he's like yeah i think he oversees like right. narrative stuff and like yeah stuff like that but he's not there like day to day because exactly those. but like tabata and i forget the other guy the other assistant director i think they're kind of uh, uh hama project hama uchi i think his name is yeah hama uchi that's his name uh, yeah so he's like he's the like ones. the main there guy who's there there with uh toriyama yeah yeah Yep. And I assume Kidase is also yeah. working on it because oh, he's uh, like producers. executive, executive yeah. producer, right? He's like yeah, right yep, yeah. He produces so I assume, everything from that team. Yeah, I I do I I am a big fan of the Seven Remake series, um, but I I am in the opinion like I like do wish that they would 
work on a new world uh, of mm-hmm. games because uh, I like games like seven, eight, uh, ten, right. thirteen. That so like the, the same that, like, feel to them. Yeah. Right? yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like I'm happy that the seven remake is happening. I like where, where the story's going. It's very interesting to me. But a new world from yet. that team. Uh, yeah, be nice. that'd be cool. Yeah, they, right. I, like, I hope they aren't just stuck doing remakes forever. Yeah, and especially too. at <laughs> what five or seven years between yeah, games, between installments of remakes, really it's like yeah. this team is going to be making FF Seven for the next twenty years. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I think I'm not even. I think they've officially stated it's going to be three parts. Oh, so okay. it's not going to go yeah. longer than that. So when so, Rebirth comes out as part two, they'll have just one more to do after that. And when did yeah. the first part come out? Twenty twenty. Yeah. 2020 so it's been okay, three okay. years since okay. so 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 like but if you count like the announcement it's been like 10 it's gonna be 10 years by the time it finishes which is yeah. crazy all right uh, all right here we go yeah this scene here this we is go operation scene. mehan i love this <laughs> good stuff sin is oh no um i was saying it earlier uh about the concept of 17 that was existing before um this became ff10 and how yeah. it was uh, about the disease uh, that was killing mm. people at the age of 17. Oh, um, that's and, right. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And I was comparing it to like how Sin's like a natural disaster. Yeah. Uh, and I think Sin is yeah. more effective um, than a virus, um, mostly because of how natural disasters are realistically versus yeah, uh, viruses. Sure. And while they're both like very deadly and can kill you like like that, like instantly, right? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I think, I think the giant monster who causes like hurricanes and things uh is a much more scary concept yeah um, yeah than, uh, original than a virus disease yeah. concept right the invisible mm-hmm. germ yeah so i i do like that they went i do enjoy that they went with sin sin over it and just like stuff like this is like this is so sweet like <laughs> god <Yeah. guys>. oh, <laughs> obliterated dude Whoa. it's yeah. hard to watch like they did a really good job of it oh, yeah the the killer scene was hard yeah. to watch and then this one was also okay, hard to watch yeah. the aftermath uh with like everyone like devastated yeah. and, and like you know like down on the ground and like her yeah. dialogue um at like in a few she's gonna say something but it's like really hit home for me like god i love this game <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah this game's this game's phenomenal dude I had a yeah. blast with our podcast on this. I one. did this, too. It was so much. It was fun. good times, dude. <laughs> I loved it. every episode. I loved it. It was. It was awesome. It, it was awesome to like listen to it weekly, knowing how much. Because I played alongside you guys. Uh, yeah. Oh, you did. Nice. Yeah. Oh, good. Cause, cool. Uh, yeah, because I did it with FFA, and I was like, I gotta do it with ten. Ten's like my second favorite. I gotta do nice. it. Nice. And it was. It enhanced the experience uh, a lot. Oh, I'm glad. I'm glad because. There, there was a lot of stuff that I didn't know about <laughs> before, like <laughs> doing that series. I was like, "Whoa!" Like I had yeah, a totally crazy. different appreciation for it after. And that was true of FF8 as well. Yeah, that, you know? that's just very true of FF8, actually. Where it's like, once we dive into these games, we really we learn so much about mm-hmm. them. We learn like yeah. all the intricacies, and it makes us appreciate the games a lot more. Yeah, no, I didn't appreciate FF8 that much. Uh, yeah, until that podcast, and because there were so many things I didn't realize mm-hmm. about how much intention was dis- into some of the writing and the designs of yeah what they went with, even though like some of it can come off like messy in ways. It's just like there was definitely intent behind it, and I just think um, yeah sometimes what you're going for can have like you messing up at parts. Uh, but if you can get it through, which right. I think FF8 um, does uh, well enough, uh, it 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 can it can still come off as really good, and that's why I think like eight um, feels very well loved by a lot of people, mm-hmm. despite um, its yeah. detractors. Yeah, yeah. I mean, eight is one of those games where, like, we kind of said this earlier. You got You got to play it a couple times. But yeah, yeah. I've, I was saying that earlier it, about it too. I've played it. I think. I don't know if it's four or five times I've played it now. Mm-hmm. But every single time I replayed it, I liked it better than the last time. Yeah. Yes, it's one of yes, those games I where like it, I slowly like have come yeah. around on it. I really didn't like it the first time. Mm-hmm. Second time, I was like, okay, there's some concepts here I didn't really know were going on. But like I still don't really like it that much. And then the next time, I was like, okay, actually, there's some really charming <laughs> stuff here. And yeah. I like these characters a lot. Characters are good. And I'm not so hot on the story, but like the characters are cool. And then yeah, the fourth the time, which I think is when we did the podcast, 
Mm. It was like, wait a second, there's a ton of stuff I didn't know about this story. <laughs> yeah. And it's actually kind of cool. I wish they had included a lot of that info in the actual yeah. like main the actual story main text game, yeah. instead yeah. of making me go out of my way to figure it out. But Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. that's one thing I've noticed about the um ever since like after FF seven, like the ones that are produced by Kitase directed by him. Yes. Uh yeah. you have to play them again <laughs> mm-hmm. to fully yes. understand uh what's going on what yeah. what's going on like even though th- i think this is uh well crafted and very well made in terms of, like the story department i think even um some lines can be missed uh until you go back and you're like oh wait that's what they were saying that's why tia said um that to you know or why you know said that particular thing or like after mm-hmm. Killica when everybody's like uh sad and Titus is like wow well, um, what's yeah. uh what's yeah. the end and everybody just looks at him like, "What do you I mean?" Know, the end. <laughs> Lulu, she mm-hmm. just like rolls her eyes and walks yeah. away. Yep. And... <laughs> but yeah. it's just like you wouldn't really get what that's saying or what they mean until until a you... multiple multiple playthroughs. Playthrough, yeah, right, yeah. Um, and that just seems like the thing that they like to do. Uh, yeah, over there. What you know, hit or miss for certain people. Um, sure. I do enjoy it myself. Yeah, because uh, I do play get, replay games a lot. I'm the person who likes plays. If I love something, I like to go back through it. Yeah, go yeah. through it another time. I tend but to do I, that a lot too. Like mm-hmm. even even just like right after finishing a game, sometimes I'll just turn around and just play it again. Yeah, I haven't done that for like everything, but I did that for some very few like really special games. Like I did that for The Witcher Three. Mm-hmm. I did oh, that for nice. um, Fire Emblem Awakening. I did that for Final Fantasy VII. The first time I beat yeah. that. Uh, Chrono Trigger, I did that for. Oh uh, yeah, Chrono like, Trigger was one I definitely did that for. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I, I replay games a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it's just nice to have that that game yeah. that you can always go back to. Is right. um, why I enjoy the uh, replaying of games uh, more, even more so than trying out something new. But I do like enjoying uh, something that I haven't interacted with. I still need to, um, like for example. Uh, Xeno Gears, I do want to get into that and see oh why everybody loves that so much. Goodness, that Dude, game is good. <laughs> there's a lot to get into. And you know, it's so funny. If we yeah. were to do that podcast again, if we were to play mm-hmm. that game again, we would come up with even I more. I know. There would <laughs> be so much to talk about. And it's 21 episodes. I, I, I hour, literally, we I really believe, episodes. like, as a final podcast, whenever we come to our yeah. last game that we've decided to do, we should mm-hmm. probably just do Xeno Gears again. Just do it again. <laughs> I would love I'd, to. I'd, I'd it recommend so it. Too. I'd be we there. Probably after do it a bit I'd, quicker. I'd play it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, dude. You're missing out, man. You gotta check it you out. Gotta, you gotta. Play it. You gotta play I it. I for sure. I for it's sure. Well, I amazing. have it ready and everything. I just like. I was like, okay, when am I gonna play this? That's like really what it is. It's just like trying to find the time, or you know, in between certain games that I'm looking forward to. But um, after 60, I'm not really playing anything new. So I might play it yeah. um, mm. after after that. Yeah, do it, man. All right. You got yeah, it. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Sweet. Everyone got their key spheres. Nice. We got some levels. Yep. Oh, yeah. Nice job. Good work. Yeah. Thanks, thanks. Oh, this is right. really good. Oh, it is, actually. But I think we're going to... Um, we're actually going to jump over and start the Final Fantasy 16 demo now. So. Ooh, okay. I hope you guys yeah. uh, have a good time Oh, wait. We got to wait. We got to wait for yeah, Sin we here. See, it's not over yet. Yeah, we got we to gotta see the Machina get wrecked. <laughs> Uh, yeah, this 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 scene is visually impressive see, te- too. It's really good. Technology versus nature. So sweet. She can't do it. Boosh. Not. I love the way the shield is like bending. Yes. In this yes. Shot. Warping around. It's like, so cool. Like, like, like that right like, there. It gives you the impression maybe they have a chance. Yeah, for just a <laughs> second, yeah. dude. And then it's like, nope. Before nope. Godzilla reveals his new power. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, right there, right there. Whoa, it's yeah, turning come red. On, dude. You almost yeah. got him. Uh, no, uh, fetch. And then the tower just no. crashes down. <laughs> Waka was secretly wow. happy that this happened. Like, oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> ah, for that's sure. Right. My, my yeah, man yeah. hates the Machina. Yeah. You cannot use a Machina to kill Sin. That's freaking blasphemous. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Good the stuff. Only, the only thing that can kill Sin is love. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's how it ends, right? The, the friends you yeah. made along the way. Yeah, the yeah, friends yeah. you made along the way. <laughs> Classic. Okay, great stuff. All right, All right we're going to hop off, beach, man. Right? Appreciate All right, you. thank you. Yeah. And uh, we're going to get Hope our FS16. So. Have a good time with that. Yeah, thanks, right, thanks thank for you. doing this with us, man. We really yeah, appreciate no it. Yeah, no problem, man. 
All right. We'll talk to you later. Peace, Peace. out. Peace. Right. Peace. Okay, everybody. The time has come. The time has come for the Final Fantasy 16 demo. Let me just uh, let everybody know that we're switching out. Over to Final Fantasy 16 now. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. All right, I'm going to get my PlayStation 5 set up. Okay. In the meantime, Kason will keep you guys company. Oh. Answer some <gasps> questions uh, oh, that you might have while I get it set up. Got to get some bandwidth back from all these streams I had. <laughs> <laughs> Just use it up so much. Yep. All right. I'm going to go get that set up now. I'm going to put the camera on you. All right, everybody. So this will take a minute. Mike's got to set everything up. Moby Dick 1, Machina 0. Moby Dick. You know, that's actually pretty good. And I think about it. Right. It totally is Moby Dick. And kind of like a, the force of nature that Captain Nemo can't. Catch. Can't subdue it. What do we think about how naming Titus is foreshadowing the twist about him? I kind of forget what people said about that. I remember people bringing that up in the podcast, but I don't remember. Oh, because you name him and you only name summons in that game. That's what it was. That's right. That's yeah. naming Titus, meaning giving him a name. Yes, yeah. and you only um, name that's right. That's something that, once again, only on a second or third playthrough would you realize that. Because you named Titus early on. You'd forget you even named him yep. after, by the end of the game. It's like, oh, he's just Titus, right? Yep. Because they never say his name. They never say his name. Yeah. Thoughts of active time lore system. It's awesome, but I just don't know exactly how they're going to use it for everything. But it seems pretty cool. I love it. Does the FF16 demo rely too heavily on active time lore to explain crucial info? I, I don't know what's crucial yet. I don't. Um, <laughs> in, in, you know, it's so funny. There's like a bit of a – it goes both ways, right? Because in some ways, you don't want all – you do want some info to be hidden, right? You don't want all info to be, um, you know, forced at you all the time you do want um to be able to have the experience of the game and then go out of your way and learn more if you so desire mm -hmm. right right but what i or you think of as stuff you didn't need to know yeah, <laughs> and what right. the game developers think as something you probably don't need to know um is just doesn't line up right sure um i don't think ff16 relies too heavily on the active time lore system at the moment. But it could be by the end of the game. It's like, oh, wait a second. That was an active time thing and I missed it? Now, I'm probably not going to miss any of those, to be honest. In which case, it's just part of the game. Yeah. Uh, but I don't ever mind additional exposition. I'm, I'm a reader. I like reading. I don't think it's a problem. Okay. There we go. I think it's working. Whoa, that's not at all what I wanted. It's working. It's nope, working. That was not it. <laughs> Let's not do that. Hello. Move. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I thought that was the capture card. That was not the capture card. We want. It was something else. Game. Video game. Okay. I'll just do that. And then we got to find the right. It'll... Okay, hold on. Maybe I should do it this way. I'll put it back on here. And look and see if I open this, if it'll show. Where's it going to bring it up? It's confusing, changing something that is deemed a masterpiece. Oops, sorry. Hey! Okay, yeah, this is not the right source. Huh. It is not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for, not for Cam Link, I'm looking for... It's because I've got multiple Elgato devices plugged into this oh. computer. I'm not now. I'm starting to wonder if it's going to be able to tell what I actually want it to be sourcing. <laughs> oh, geez. So, so there's no um, way to manually like. There should be device. Force it. 
how do I tell it to be a different device? Because this is not the right thing. This is the cam link, and it's not the cam link that I want. It's yeah, the, that's that's through Elgato as well. Yes. Ooh. <laughs> that's the confusing thing here. It's. I think the computer is like not sure what I'm trying to do. Hmm. Um, let me try plugging in the capture card again and Cap see if it'll actually read it this time. Actually, I guess a good way to test it would be to see if, um, if I go to source, and is it is it pulling up at all? Okay, so it's not even pulling. Up. So that's, oh, okay, that there's a there's a deeper problem. <coughs> Darn. Oh, you missed out. Oh, that's why. Okay. Missed out on that. Gotcha. System. Doop, doop, doop. Whew. Everyone's stoked for us to uh, play the game, so. Yeah, I'm stoked, too. Let's see. <clears throat> this will be fun. I'm not seeing it show up yet on my sources here. Hmm. Unless this is the one that just wasn't plugged in there. No signal. No signal. Let me make sure that I've got it. Yeah, we already did a video on the demo. Um, you can check it on our channel. Uh, but we are doing a podcast of the whole game. And episode one of the podcast comes out Thursday. Yep. So we basically just based our episode one of the podcast on the demo, which is basically just the beginning of the game. Um, if there's any subtle differences, we'll address those in episode two. <laughs> so, yeah, it's going to be great. Uh, we already recorded it, and um, I don't know. I'm pretty happy with how it went. I think uh, I think you guys are going to like the podcast. It's going to be fun. We we talk about all sorts of things, but we really go deep, as deep as we can, into the game. Uh, there are a few points that I'm realizing. It's so funny because episode one's going to go up on Thursday. There will be some people in the world who have beat the game by Thursday. Um, and our guesses at what might be in the future are going to seem either, you know, unusually correct or wildly off base. Uh, we usually don't do podcasts on games that we have never played before, but we have no choice here. So we're just wildly guessing at some stuff. But for the most part, we've got some pretty good info. I think you guys are going to love it. Should be working now, so let me get All right. this pulled up on the screen over there. All right. We're getting somewhere. Close that, and I'm going to move all of this over here now. Oh, good. And, Maybe uh, size it up a little. Size up. Uh-oh. <laughs> that might not have been a good idea. Got it. Whatever. Can we see? Oh, there it is. Yeah, that's better. Okay, we can read that. Good. Now, we got to add the source. <laughs> it's icon time. Very nice. Clive hates chaos. Add source. Video capture device. Three, whatever. I don't care as long as I can see the right thing. HD. Nope. Cam link. Nope. Game capture. It should be this one. Come on. Do what I want you to do. Oh, good. No, it's not right. Come to me, Ifrit. Yeah, what's going to happen? This I, is, uh, I am confused as to why this, this is, is happening. Difficult. This should not be happening. I need you <laughs> to <laughs> not be that. I need you to... Maybe it thinks it's going to be Camlink. No, because see, Camlink is that, right? That's what Camlink should be. So that's correct. But I don't want Camlink. I want... Hmm. Elgato Game Capture HD. And it doesn't know the difference. Hmm. That's not good. There's configure video. That doesn't get you anywhere. Oh, this is more like a... Oh, okay. See, it still thinks it's Camlink. Yeah. 
Well, that's how we're getting our cameras right into the computer. <laughs> so I'm not really sure what to do about that. I suppose I could no, because that wouldn't work either. Let me try one more thing before we give up on this altogether. You know, we won't. The, will the cameras be visible as we play? I guess we could just unplug the cameras. That's what I'm thinking. I wonder. And then just yeah, have audio. That's not a bad idea. That's as a last resort. I think okay. we can kind of go with that. But I'm gonna try to. What was I just? I just had a thought of what I was gonna try. What was it gonna be? No, I just forgot. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, what was it again? Oh, I was gonna open this and see. You can close that now. You can close that now. See if it'll open with the right device. See, so it thinks it's cam link, but I don't want cam link. I want Game Capture HD. So we switch to that. And what do we get? One moment, please. If it shows up as FF16, then I know. Or shows up as the PS5. Okay, it is. So it did. Okay. So it's recognizing the PS5. I just got to get that to show up in OBS now. So let's try that. Okay. Um, hold on, fellas. I think I've almost got it. I think I've got it. Now we should get <laughs> it. Saying, point, point the camera at the TV. <laughs> that would nope, be great. still didn't work. Dang it, man. I wonder if I could just stream from... Well, oh, I'm just going to do what you said. I'm going to... Yeah. Um, keep, keep, the, keep the microphones. Lose the cameras. Yeah. And just stream. We're going to lose our cameras and just stream the game. Bye, everyone. Um, we're still streaming. Don't leave. We are going to not see you anymore. But you'll, we'll, we're still here in spirit. Our voices shall remain. Our breath shall remain with you. Yep, we're going to play the demo here. Mike's getting everything set up. Um, we streamed a bunch of games earlier, and just the whole setup with everything that we've done today is really complicated. <laughs> and so uh, we have to, in one or two minutes, we're going to be able to have the stream up and running... Um, the FF16 demo. That's what we're hoping. And hopefully by disconnecting our cameras, because we were just going to show you the gameplay anyways. We don't need the cameras. Yeah. I hopefully by doing this, we can... Eject, uh, eject the uh, hard drive too. Just oh, so it nice. have so many things that it's trying to read in the USB ports. Got to reject, reject the... Hard drive. Okay. Now. Okay, really quick. I'm going to put on my glasses. My eyes are getting off. Oh, they're getting fatigued. Yeah. Not cam link, dude. I'm not doing cam link. Cam link shouldn't even be plugged in at all. What the heck? Why does it still think it's Camlink? Camlink is not even plugged in. I think I literally have, <laughs> in getting the setup for the podcast, that like the computer has been forever like fetched by that. <laughs> like, it <laughs> oh, can't gosh. recognize anything oh, else other than the Camlink. Oh, shoot. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I think I know what it is. I think I know what it is. Okay. Darkness, my old friend. Darkness is chaos. Jack. Okay, I think I figured it out. Okay. There's a lot of things I had to unplug <laughs> to get this to work. So hopefully I'll remember how to plug them back in. <laughs> like, okay, there's oh, hey. there's our there's that. So we switch to this, and that should be. This should be it. This I think, should I be. Think this is gonna work. We're Please. so close. We're so close. Please. We're so close, work. 
work. I might need to restart OBS to make this. In which case. Remove, hold on. Let's start over. Let's start a whole new scene. Whole new scene. Hello, Chaos, my old friend. And go to video capture device. Call it Gato. Okay. And we do not want that. We want Elgato HD Capture. Why is it like 640p? <laughs> oh yeah, something's wrong with that. And why is it not showing up? Everybody, hang tight. I'm going to temporarily stop the stream. Hold on, everyone. And then we will be back up as soon as I restart OBS. So don't go anywhere. This will only take a couple minutes. We'll be right back. Okay. okay. We're live again. Should still see, but I've got to make this scene work. So you're going to see some black for a second. Fine. <laughs> Just let me use the Elgato HD capture, please. Please. Wait, what? That's not even what I said to do. Oh, now it thinks now it thinks the Elgato is our webcam. <laughs> oh, there we go. Yes, it yes, yes, we yes, got it. yes. We got it, fellas. We did it. Okay, you guys can see the PlayStation. We have an image. Five. Uh, it looks <laughs> like it's actually not sized correctly. Hold on. Keon, I got that reference. Dumbledore said calmly. <laughs> Very good. Okay, so. Let's go to the settings and actually size this correctly because the freaking screen is not sized. Right. Yep, good. Everyone's seeing it. Perfect. Uh, what is this? Okay, fine. Screen. Adjust display area. Make it bigger. Yeah, right there. Did that work? Yeah, okay. Now it's the correct size. Let's get into this demo. Here we go. Whew. Let me know if you hear the game volume. These mics are pretty good at um, you know killing sound around other than what's directly in front of it. And I want to hear the game at least a little bit. I'm gonna unplug that. We hope you enjoy your time in Valisthea. All right, so we're gonna do a new game. All this is good. So I've already set this up before. We're going action focused and good to go. It was most the chronicler who said. Who said it was most the chronicler. That the, the land, land of Alsthea is blessed in the light of the Mother Crystal. Blessed with light. And that it was this it light. It was this light. Which light. finally led so our forebears um, as far as audio goes, darkness. I think levels are good. Yeah, let yes. me know, guys. Is the game too the loud, or is it light. a good volume? Gave rise to temptation. Temptation that ever lures us back into the crystal shadow. I shall voice act the whole game. They said they can hear the game just fine, so perfect. That's good, but is it too loud? Yeah, is it too loud? Can hear a voice, good volume. Good volume, volume. sounds okay, good. Okay, everyone right. says it's good. I believe I've set this up in the past. Although it was quiet for that part. This is the loud part, so. That's true. <laughs> Man, this is so cool. Look at this. Yeah. Look at this. And then it falls just like when Smog got shot in the Hobbit. Yep. He flies up <laughs> and then falls down in the. Um, and there's the ball rod. Ooh, lots of Lord of the Rings here. That is so cool. And I love how you just like blast underground. Like you. You get blasted so so hard. Yeah. You're just like in the, the earth now, the earth. and you're just falling. This is very Lord of the Rings. It's very, very two towers. Uh, Gandalf and the Balrog fighting as they fall, which is a good thing. I like which that. is a good thing. It's very cool. <laughs> I like that one. They're saying drop game audio by about ten percent, but it's close uh, according to Beardmore. Everyone else is saying it's good, so let's go. Just to keep ups, I was not looking at the screen because I was looking at what you guys were talking about. Oh, did you die? Game <laughs> no, over? Just Mike got it. a game over. <laughs> <laughs> Suiko fan says, in my lifetime, we went from Paperboy to this. Yep, that's cool. Absolutely. Oh, Dude, Paperboy was such a dope game. Yeah, Paperboy was sweet. Love Paperboy. It was hard, though. It was really hard. 
This is a really long fall. Yeah, this like, opening. How many miles do you think they filled? Oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, how, what was it? Three, four, three minutes? Two minutes? Three, two minutes? Yeah, probably two, three, two, two minutes, minutes at 9.8 meters per second. Or whatever. Yeah, how, how, how far is that? Who can calculate that? I, I don't that? know. <laughs> Who can calculate that? Who's a mathematician? How far did they go? Yeah, this is so long. It is a hook. This is a good hook. And then it goes into the fire. And then to the eyes as his the soul is burning within him as he remembers. The memory. The painful memory. You shall not pass. They should have thrown that in there. You somewhere. shall not pass! That's what that's what uh, <laughs> Joshua should have been saying to Ifrit. <laughs> he should have right. said you shall not pass. I am a servant of the secret fire, wielder of the flame of Arnold. <laughs> <laughs> All of which is <laughs> Basically, Trees Phoenix. <laughs> that's true. He is a servant of the secret <laughs> He's fire. A servant of the secret oh my fire, gosh, dude. that's great. Servant of wielder the secret of the fire. flame of of Valistea. Yep. It'll be light soon. Both camps have begun to stir. It'll be light soon. So that have you taken a good look at the uh, the tattoos on their face? You have you worked out anything I, as far as that I goes? I can't. Yet? I'm, I'm actually very upset that I can't because <laughs> it's an X, <laughs> right? Which is like dominant. death, like something like death, or no until death. They're slaves for That's life. They're slaves until they die. Yeah. But there's something about it that I, I'm still trying to figure out. Our kind do not question. Hellfire shall not avail you. Flame of Ifrit. <laughs> Flame of Ifrit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we could really just... Uh, Have a lot of fun with that. Yeah. Let's yeah, I'll work done. more on that symbol there. But it's it's difficult for me to read because it's not... It's unlike the symbols I'm used to. It seems to be pretty well... Uh, made up mm. but in a cool way yeah. like it looks cool it looks meaningful but it's hard to uh, decipher yeah what what that symbol yeah. means in that culture or whatever right and they're definitely wearing imperial armor this is the same armor the imperial mm. dudes at the end of the demo wear so he's an imperial slave soldier at this point yeah. man this game looks so good yeah, it was awesome. So there's different settings for this. Um, there's the performance mode, mm -hmm. um, or is that what you're on here? I think I'm on performance mode right okay, now. Okay, nice. The 60 frames per second. I, I'm, I'm going to be honest. I actually kind of like performance or graphics mode because it doesn't go into 60 FPS for some of the cutscenes. It goes down to a lower frame rate. Okay. So it's kind of like the Hobbit where it jumps to high frame rate and then low ah, frame rate like randomly, <laughs> like totally yeah. randomly sometimes. Huh. Like, not even relative to I whether or not focus, you've got yeah. plants around you or whatnot. Focus, Wyvern. He kind of does look like Prince Joffrey. It's, <coughs> it's true. Yeah, that's true. I actually thought that, too. We don't have time Frame rate is only 60 in battles. Is, is that correct? I'm not sure about that. Um, well, it dips down. It's supposed to be 60 all the time. Mm. But it has some performance issues. I think that they're going to address with a day one patch when the game actually launches. But it says, are the tattoos specific to the kingdom they belong to? Um, I think they Probably. all, it's the same tattoo for all of them. I think it's I an imperial tell. symbol of some kind. Because yeah. even though they had the guy in, like, Ro Ro the Rosaria uh, castle who had that, yeah. Rosaria is part of the empire. Oh, right. So it's Which is why... Elwyn is a dupe, right? Yeah. Not a king. So, the spear, it looks like it's off kilter. It doesn't look like a normal S. It looks like a straight up one, and then then, then the sword is to the side. Yeah. The sword is to the side. But the spear is upright, and it's on the left cheek. I mean, there's ways I can read into this, but I just don't. Uh, sure. I'm, I'm not sure at the moment what I mean. Hopefully, I can figure it out. For the end of the I kind of like the way that those, they kind of just like almost disintegrate. Yeah. Whatever it is. Rocks that they're in. Blue, blue bones. So it's like crystal. It's like they're just launching crystals. Just charged crystals. Where this is going, they won't what is this Final Fantasy The Crusade? <laughs> <laughs> they do talk Seems about Seems like it. They do. They do talk about Crusaders in they this do. Song, you know. Uh, this says, um, it's the same tattoo for all of them. They're branded so they can't be traded across borders. That's a pretty good explanation. Ooh. You got your. You can only be slaves for me. Well, at least in part, that is what the branding is for. It's yeah. like so that no other your cattle won't get mixed up with somebody else's herd. It's like no, that's mine. Yeah, right. Give it back to me. 
What do you mean you refuse? So we got. Did you not pledge your swords? King to of Waled. Those are the dudes on the right side. Yeah. And then on the left side are the Come Republican out. dudes. Marshal, supposed to be allies. But Waled's not going to help him in this fight. Yeah, that's the king, I guess. He doesn't even say anything the whole scene. And do half his And there we have his answer, yeah. He's gonna wait this one out, which means he's screwed. <laughs> mm -hmm. If something if this guy somehow makes it out in the future, well he's in trouble. Yeah. And then this is the use of the crystal to yeah. like, fill the goblet with water. And they've shown it several times. You use yeah. the crystal and then she uses her crystal. Well, well she crystal. I guess it's she not a just, crystal. She's just kinda lighting it with some kind of magic. Okay, okay. It's probably so it still seems sourced like from a crystal somewhere. I almost feel like there's some dune something or other there with the, the crystals being able to be the power of water. Mm. I wonder that you summoned us at all. Have you so little faith in your own men? There's an animation she does here that's like... It was the Dalmex who drove It throws me off every time I watch the scene. The she does. It's just like a really over-the-top way that she kind of... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they kind of overdo it. It's like, what the fuck? Just Besides, put your hand on the table like a normal human being. Your dominant has yet to your take dominant? the. Oh, that's right. Um, somebody mentioned this in the comments. She's a dominant, so she doesn't need a crystal yes. to do and her. Oh, okay, does, there you go. That's fine. Yeah, she's the Gerudo the dominant. I yeah. think. Yeah. Perhaps you have not heard, but the Iron Blood now have their own dominant. So they now have their own dominant, meaning yeah. they didn't them. used to. They, so whoever is what Shiva's dominant, I don't know who it is, but... <laughs> right, right, right. Uh, I'm not going to say it. Should this citadel um, be allowed to fall? Apparently went to that side recently. The capital okay, so that's it. That and I don't now, to, just to be clear, the there are only four dominants. Up before taking to the board. Or are there more? Um, I don't know. There's... Or for, there's uh, well, there the, are the only Titan, supposed to be four. Um, are there Shiva, a bunch more? Just I don't know how many there's supposed to be, but there wasn't supposed to be an Ifrit. That's all I know. <laughs> right, that's for sure. Okay, maybe four. Okay, some people are saying eight or six. Okay, maybe four is too low. But there's a really low number, right? Eight known dominants. Okay. This game is over. Eight. Everyone's saying eight. Yeah. So a little Final Fantasy X connection. Got the eight summons. Yeah. I think this is a good scene. Like, I like the scene. I just wonder if it you was cock. necessary to put it right <laughs> here in this particular spot. And I don't just mean, like, obviously Benedict. they're having this conversation while the battle's going on. I just mean, like, within the, the context of the story. Like, Take care. if it's if we necessarily need to Is know the yet that these two are in a secret relationship the and that they're dominance and whatnot. Do you yeah. think me Wall the and... and no, the, my love. supposed to be helping and they're not you like all that lying. information right You're my I feel like lion. it kind of breaks up <laughs> the action and like Clive's frost, perspective a little bit I think it might have personally I think it might have flowed a little better when I come if they had saved revealing this kind of information yeah. for a, a part after we've been fully introduced to Clive and like we've already we've already gotten caught up with him and know who he is I think I agree with that. I mean, I, I'm not saying it's bad. It's a good right. scene. I'm just saying. Lines are gone. Yeah, yeah. It's like, it's, it kind of slows chance. down the scene the a little bit. Us. And I'm not sure how necessary it was to know that right now. Is this Game of Thrones? Sure, uh, feels like it a bit. Yeah, it's definitely uh, an M rating for a reason. Yep. I know that that's what they're showing. I, I get what the inform I get the information they're showing in the scene. I'm just not sure that it actually needs to be given to us at this exact moment of the game. Like that's information that we could have at a later stage. It, it doesn't affect any of the scenes that come in the rest of this demo. Like it's not information that's relevant to anything that we're going to learn about Clive in the next two hours. Generally, I would say it would be okay to reveal that information after your main character has been fully established, generally speaking. And quick and deadly, as always. 
<sighs> Take the van. Wait. Something's not right. I love this so much. Yeah, this is sick. <laughs> this is freaking sick. Like, he doesn't... <laughs> Titan. So the Darmax finally grew tired of being slaughtered. Ha! And look who's here to greet the bastard. Come on. Again. This is be shot. I really like the, the designs of the icons too. Like, as far as Final Fantasy VII goes, you know, there's a, sort of a look that they have to stick to. But like, the, 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 like I really like Titans. Yeah, Titans. Like that shot, yeah. but then the one after is with her, where she she gets like, okay, fine, <laughs> like that look on her face, like. Oh, yeah. Watched this so many times. Does he like teleport there? <laughs> like, what happens? Does he just run really fast? I still can't really tell. Question. Is he using a power to like zoom forward at that point? I think in this game, the earth is just like kind of hollow. Like, there's just yeah, there's a lot of stuff underneath the, yeah. the ground. <laughs> a lot of it. The earth can just sink into the abyss beneath it. Phoenix shift, that that ability we get in combat, right? But I don't see the orange energy. That's why it's confusing to me. Because when he uses his Phoenix shift, it's usually like a lot of orange energy around the character. And there you didn't really see it. Hollow Earth or shaking it. <laughs> I didn't ask if our Earth was hollow. <laughs> I asked if the game. <laughs> hey Stega, okay, maybe a haste spell. Does he get a haste ability later in the game? I don't know. Jedi dash, of course, force speed. Yes. Yeah, the Joshua from Vagrant Story. I'm gonna I'm gonna look into that a little bit. I'm gonna I'm gonna think about that because I think you're right. There's some big similarities. There. Yeah, I just wanna I wanna find out the ways. Um, that Joshua and Vagrant from Vagrant Story fits in. I just, uh, I think maybe in the next before, episode of our podcast we might talk about that. Here. Brother, brother, he calls him brother. Brothers in arms. That's right. Yeah, I'm kind of interested to see what that that relationship between the slave soldiers is going to be like to kind of elaborate on that, like. 
Does he yeah. really feel like a brother, or is he just... Well, I'm pretty sure he was a slave for like 13 years, right? Long time. Yeah. So, that's quite a bit of time, and also... No. I don't think that's the same guy. The brothers, he can't see. He, someone's asking, do you think Tiamat is, this, is that slave soldier from this scene? No, no, not a soldier, but uh, a slave worker here. I don't... I mean, I get why you say that. They have similar hair and well, stuff, not but... Not I'm not sure they're the same person. You mean the guy who drops the apple? Yes. Oh. Of course you think you can well, I have a really good look at him here in a second. I didn't think of that. Maybe. We'll take a sure really good look at his way. Face. My brother always looks after me. <laughs> right! Go on. You're sure to hit him eventually. Her voice sounds a little too deep for her age. How old is she supposed to be? I don't know, but I think maybe 12 or 13. That would be my guess based on what she looks like, but I can never tell in Japanese mm -hmm. how old the, the kids are supposed to be. Yeah, that's true. She seems older than um, than Josh for sure, though. She's 14. Someone else says 12. So 14. I don't know. <laughs> okay, maybe she seems. I'll bet you it's the same. Um, the same voice actress for when Let's she's older. Again from the yeah, beginning. it probably is. Uh, but Show me your you know, phone. and that's hard. It's a hard thing to balance, but it just sounds a little bit too low. <coughs> Press square to perform a melee attack. This is cool, and I love everything Blank. around here. You see, Blank. like, Blank. just like the the feel of a medieval village. Like, this feels Blank. really good. I love it. Yeah, that's good. Very good. Such swordsmanship will serve you well in the field. But can the same be said of your spellcraft? The flames of the phoenix burn within you. Now let them burn without. Huh. You thought he was blessed with the flames of the phoenix Dying this whole time? <laughs> Cute. Uh, nah, he probably was. Okay, we gotta land five magic attacks. So, even though he was not chosen by the phoenix to be the dominant, he still has a blessing in a flame. But there was somebody else bringing up that, uh, whether that's Joshua, like, Giving well power to, like, lending a portion of it to him? Yeah. Or whether that's, like, inherent in him. I thought it was inherent in him because they called it the inner flame. Right, in which case it's Ifrit, not me. <laughs> which is crazy. Right. Can be arranged. Well, he does have that. Let's see if you can elude my blame for sure. Falcon punch? <laughs> yeah, <you're> right. <laughs> that's right, that's right. It's just so, it's so interesting for me. I'm trying to think, to try to figure out exactly, was he born with Ifrit? Or question. did he acquire it at that moment? Good question. And if he does have the power of Vifrit, but also the power of the Phoenix, that is, that's very interesting. Don't simply watch my movements. Read them. ETL explains the dominant imparts some of their power to their shields. Yeah, so you were right about that. Gosh. The timing is uh, something I've not really gotten very good at. They're saying check the ATL, the active time will be as generous as me. Like, there's... Okay, am I pushing the right button? Don't let him okay, there you. we go. That's right. There. Nice. There we go. How did you dodge that? Mix. I uh, think so it might be an, uh, an id situation. That is Perhaps. entirely possible. Perhaps. Entirely possible. Good. Remember, Clive, your blade is not your only weapon. Quickness of thought and fleetness of foot are indispensable arms in any shield's arsenal. But you are not just any shield, are you? Show me what sets you apart from the rest. You have been blessed by the Phoenix. Granted right, so the use of its use power. Call upon that power now to Wait, close it. Zoom on. forward. I see like a ton of orange energy well, around it. I'm waiting. Boom. Like that. Like he definitely did not do that when he avoided the rock. Impressive. Most impressive. <laughs> but even the most agile shield cannot hope to escape every blow. And death may come by a handful of cuts as easily as it comes by a thousand. You should have said death can come by one cut. one way to ensure that you do not... As easy as a thousand, but I think that would undercut the game. I don't think you can ever die in one hit. Right? <laughs> Getting one shot sucks. Yep. Speaking of which, my lord, 
You seem a little worse for wear. No, that won't do it. That won't do at all. Okay, so is this... Oh, I gotta heal. You do that with that. That'll have to be for now. That's better. Battle is a succession of pivotal moments, wherein life and death can be decided at a single stroke. You must be ready to utilize every tool at your disposal if you are to navigate a path to victory. Or at the very least, to ensure that you live to fight another day. Enough practice. It's time for the test. You've recovered from your soaking, I trust. You wouldn't want to kick a man while he's drowned. I thought you'd never ask. <laughs> Get it. Come Why then, Lord drowned? Rosfield. Spar with me. If you believe yourself worthy to be called Shield of the Flame, then prove, then prove it. it. As you wish, my lord. All right, let's do this. Can I do the that, thing? Make proof of your strength. Where? I, I get it. Yeah. Go on. Where You're sure you to beat him this go? time. You can do it, Clive. Just stay calm. Yeah. Yeah. Come on! Ah. You're taking this seriously. Keep going, Clyde. Ooh. Kill him. Come on, let's go. Oh, it's an R in, oh, R in circle? Is that how you... Wait, I forgot the move. There we go. <laughs> I took my own advice and used all the tools at my disposal. Nice try. Not quite. Come on, Clive. Keep pressing. Uh, there, uh, <laughs> Night Sky more. Prince says there's an FF8 in reference in the battle theme. I can't. I, I didn't catch that. Oh, come on. I love finishing off battles with that. <laughs> yeah. Like, like oh, the Falcon Punch. Yeah. <laughs> I always wait to use it till I can like kill him with it. Yeah. He won. See, I told you he could do it. I. Bested at last. It's taken me long enough. That was a display worthy of your father. You are a true shield of the flame, and let no one tell you otherwise. Including me. What are you lot gawping at? Back to your drills. So now. We're gonna see whatever nice. this power is that Joshua has. The healing. We talked a little bit about that on the podcast. The healing um, with fire. Fire, yeah, yeah, fire healing. That's very yeah. interesting. Usually, healing is more associated with water or air. Yeah. Not fire. Fire is yeah. typically sure. seen as destructive. I was just tired. But it's with the whole Phoenix thing, Phoenix the so revival exactly. and you yes, know, the exactly. death and revival thing, you know, yeah. something with that. Having the power over, why shouldn't I? over life and death, <laughs> except for himself. That's why. <coughs> I'm coughing this morning, yes. too. You shouldn't be outdoors. Phoenix down. Fine. Someone just brought just up. Right? And it's, and that's not, Don't well, it's yourself. a revival, but it's not a healing. You can't His use it to, like, Yeah, heal there's wounds. a difference between life and death and, like, you're sick, I'm going to make you better. But, yeah. but you know, e either way, I, I think I think it makes some sense. It, it makes me wonder, could, did the Earth Please. Um, uh, this is dominance no also have the power to heal? I would like, is there an Earth healing, healing and a water healing and a fire healing? Good question. Gentlemen. Rosaria thanks you for your indefatigable loyalty. Thank you, Your Grace. We live to serve. The Phoenix is immortal. Joshua isn't. I understand. Joshua, that. I do. 
Well, we'll see what happens. <laughs> In that case, please. they're all immortal. Like, the we Phoenix has a, a special power, right? I mean, Ifrit right? will continue living on. and Anyways, Phoenix has the specific to power to bring back to life after death. So, I think, I think it's relevant. I thought she was Benedicta. I really did. You thought she was the same yes. lady? Yeah. At first, just, we'll I don't know, us. the blondness, the obvious I'm a bad guy <laughs> everything. Murdoch. Yep. Different person. Oh, Grace. So those three girls that they, are they with should her. Have, uh, they should have done what Shibuya did. Just give her green hair so you can tell the difference between <laughs> exactly. the main character and the other character. <laughs> Too many blondes. <laughs> It's not his fault. Not everyone can be born the Phoenix. We should join them. Thank you. Glad to know I'm not alone. So people are saying that um, look around in this the area. castle. Look yeah. around, like the the three girls that were with. Um, oh, what's her name now? Annabelle. Annabella. Annabelle. Yeah. Annabella. Um, those are the same three girls that get killed later on. Um, a lot of the guards that you see in the castle are the same guards that you'll fight later on who end up betraying you. They're, oh. all, they're, they're already they're all here. here. I've heard. Um, I've heard that um, from some of the commenters okay. saying that let's, if you look carefully, let's take like a look. these these soldiers. Let's see right what here. we can find around here. See who the inside men of the empire are. Yeah. See if they say anything interesting. Now that guy, I don't know. That, that's who I probably thought the hooded guy was. Would be this dude. <laughs> Rise, my friends. See, some of these guys are not wearing helmets. Welcome home, father. Thank you, Joshua. You are well, I trust. Yes, father. Much better. Today, Jill and I went to the Bailey to watch Clive spar. Went to the Bailey. Is that the so? Bailey, dude? <laughs> Went to H.C. Bailey. H.C. <laughs> Bailey. <laughs> <laughs> Torgo, man. Stop it, boy. <coughs> Not now. You'll make a fine hound one day. Father. Lift up your head, girl. Okay, so Thank I've you, heard, because we were kind of talking about, like, who is this girl? That she's like a prisoner of war or something? Oh um, I'm going to have to look at all the active time, time lore things. I don't okay. know if I've seen them all, but that's what yeah. people were telling me. So we'll take a look and see what it says. War is coming, my that's boy. Cool. You must make ready. Is the situation truly so grave? Come to the throne room. We will talk there. She's yes, a father. ward? Your grace. A ward, a ward of huh? uh, who? Hostage from the people fighting with Shields Shiva dismissed. Earlier. Hmm. Oh, so she's from the Iron Blood Kingdom. Is that what you're saying? So she just went back to her people. <laughs> Torgal. Oh, Torgal might be Ifrit. And the phoenix is the butterfly that Torgal was chasing. Clive here is off to see the Archduke. Right. Oh, we, we've noticed, we know Night Sky's in the chat. Okay. Yeah, see. she's from the Fallen Kingdom, I guess. All right, I can do that. Can I can't activate. It's trouble action. brewing. Can I? Oh, I can. Okay, yeah, she's right there. Born a princess of the Northern Territories, Jill was made a ward of Rosaria from her homeland's incessant raids were quelled by the Dutch after they were in, uh, quelled. She was raised in Rosalith Castle alongside Clive and Joshua, who came to love her as a sister. So hmm. she's a princess from the Northern Territories. But she's been here for a long time, it seems. The, it sounds a little bit like, a, yeah, she was raised here. She's treated well, but she's actually from... The Northern Territories. Yeah, and she hasn't lost that, I suppose. Well, you look at her, on. the way she's dressed, she still dresses in the colors of the foreign nation. She's not wearing the red yeah. and the, the other colors. Of Nor the Northern Territories doesn't necessarily mean the Iron Blood 
people, which I think live on an island kind of far off. Oh, good point. I think that she, she's yeah. pro- like all the people that are sick in the Northern Territories he talks about uh, later. Ah, she could be them. I think she's from one of those oh, places. Oh, okay. Sure. That's what it sounds like to me. <coughs> uh, yeah, the active time system, I, I think it's really cool. Mastering the blade. <laughs> Just makes me think of a uh, have you, you some skill with you the blade. Have some skill with the blade. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. I read this on the podcast, so I know that. I read that on the podcast. I don't think I read Torgal. Clive's faithful friend brought back from one of the Archduke's Elwin, Archduke Elwin's expeditions. By the way, from the Northern Territories. Elwin. Half starved and shivering okay. in a snowfield. That ah. sounds a lot like what they find when they find the dire wolves in <laughs> Game of Thrones. Oh, actually. great! Of course, of <laughs> course. Elwin gifted the puppy to Clive upon his return, and the two became nigh inseparable. Okay. Elwin means like elf friend or something like. I'm not sure. That. The L means elf in particular. If you're referencing Old English. There's blood big skilled village. warriors. You could learn what a should have that, I mean, wait what, what could have been? They've right? been burned to yeah. cinders by the phoenix's flames. Okay, so let's see. Some of these dudes apparently are the ones. Preparation is key. We must be ready to march at any time. You don't need to tell this one. She's raring to go. <laughs> She's heard this speech before. There's something down here they don't want you to look at. I remember coming down here. The fact no that there are two the continents make me wonder you, what does Lord. that symbolize. Well, I mean, that's pretty... I don't. I, I mean, I don't know. Just the fact that <laughs> the fact that there are, are two sure continents means that there's like a natural I know. barrier, right? They can't come together. They can't be friends. Like they're going to be separate. Mm-hmm. And that also there's water in between them. So if you want to get from one to the other, you have to pass through water. Yes, guy. I love old English. I think Hiro. this guy is the one. Oh, Let's is the he stuff a, unpacked before the Duchess calls for our heads? I, is he I, one that, that I fights think he's later? One, I, I don't ah. know for sure, but no, actually, maybe it's not. He looks like one of the guys that approaches Joshua at the end of the yeah. demo and like is going to kill him before he like, transforms into Phoenix. Oh, uh, yes, this should uh, stay on the YouTube page. After it's done, it'll get processed and we'll just leave it up for a long time. Yeah. You guys You'll can, be able to watch it again. Yep, watch it. Cross reference. Cross reference it. Make sure all the Whatever you want to do. <laughs> yeah, Tyler and Wade should absolutely be called. Forgive Big me, my Lord, but I need to finish inspecting these crystals. Wouldn't do to give our soldiers spent shards. Okay, so these are the crystals uh, that they use to fight. Crystal shards. Hey, 8 bit D. What up? It's yeah, us, it was a blast. Hope you enjoyed yeah, it. Yeah, I was really glad, really glad you came and joined us today. Thank you for taking the time. Yeah, that was, was awesome. Chatting with you. And really yeah, thanks it. to everybody who helped us. Yeah, this was, was fun. It was awesome, actually. Yeah, this I thought was it way came together better. pretty well. It was like, I was setting it up. I was like, dude, I have no idea this is going to go. This could go like <laughs> this could be horrible. really bad <laughs> and like be a mess, but like it was kind of fun. Right. It worked out Let's way better than what we did for FF15. Phoenix will be with us. Well, because for that one, we had to keep chance. reconnecting different consoles and like playing all of the games. I it was know, uh, right. it, it, things kept going wrong. It was not as easy for us to do the playing ourselves. Oh, Sean Oroness is on quite here. The show for us. It's not this failed. Any man who can do that deserves to be first shield. Age and experience be damned. Have you some skill with the blade, though? That's the question. <laughs> <laughs> Here it is. So this character, we need to analyze the features of this character. Does he face. look like Tiamat, the guy from the first scene, or not? Okay. Let's look really closely. Okay, I'm going to say immediately no. <laughs> I don't uh, think it's him. I see why you would think that. He looks like me. If he had curly hair. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's the same dude. Forgive me, Lord Marquess. Pray do not concern yourself with this bundling cur. Yeah, you bundling cur. What's a cur? I probably shouldn't say that out loud. <laughs> I don't know what it is. <laughs> Me- who's medieval. Got a, who's got insult? a Valendian dictionary? On. No yeah, does anybody? Uh... Oh, do not indulge him. 
to be allowed to stand in your lordship's presence is more than his kind deserves. Why, neither the Empire nor the Republic treat their bearers half so well. He was lucky to be born in your father's dominion. <laughs> Very lucky, as I remind him every day. Yeah, I really liked that. Stand. I remember when I came across Jeez. this the first time I played the demo and I saw that on the dude's face, I immediately became more yeah, intrigued by the whole part of the society was to, like involved in slavery and what it means and how they brand course, like that and why yeah. they do that. Because you you know that this is coming wish. for him, so it's like, oh, dude, like... Yep, foreshadowing, no yeah. He owns slaves, too. With the remember. Well, and they showed it at the, the beginning. It's yourself. like you, are, you start out the game knowing that he had that tattoo. Yeah. It, it it was a I think a nice way of like building intrigue around that symbol and the whole yeah. slave situation. Yeah. Come along now, back to your duties. <laughs> I have an interesting theory. You guys think Clive wasn't chosen by Phoenix because he was already chosen by Ifrit? We wait for our podcast. Mm. We talk about some. <laughs> we talk about some possibilities there. Uh, so you'll have to wait till Thursday. <laughs> yeah, it'll, it'll be released on Thursday. Two days, two days, or become a patron. <laughs> if the video's up already. there. You can see. You can watch it. We we stream the will. podcast live. Looks like they're getting ready a couple for weeks supper. before they go on YouTube. So I haven't really looked closely at this, so but there's a crystal. It's a well, right? It's making water. Yeah. Oh, they're so, creating. So water this is with so it. interesting that we've seen uh, the 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 majority use of crystals that we've seen in this game is to make water. Yeah, so far. That's so interesting. We've seen it three times. To put out a fire, to fill up a cup, and now to fill up a well. But we haven't yet seen a crystal used to create something like fire or something else. Right. Now, I don't know. I, th I think that's very interesting. We could run into a... Like, without magic, do they have water? Yeah, right. I mean, the ocean exists, I guess. But yeah, is but it I coming mean, from like that? drinking water. Because there's that... Um, that crystal in the ocean it's like ah, out in the middle right, of the ocean right so and they're there's it that's it's the, in the disputed territory between rosaria yeah. and the iron blood which is out in the ocean so maybe that's the water crystal that would be interesting and it's just embedded in the freaking ocean like that in, in which case we talk about uh, crystals being something like a limited resource that different factions are fighting over control of a specific re resource if that resource is your Find access display, to fresh water Lord. It, um, I don't know, it has more real world implications, I think. It makes a lot more sense. Okay, well, I think I've talked to just about everybody. So let's head in to the castle here. I don't think you can open this door. And quiet Over in here, here there's isn't another it? item you can pick up. Thank yes, these dudes are using Kipatrix like, wind crystals to like trim oh, okay. the Oh, okay, now we're seeing some other a little oh, cool. for trimming the verge. Trim the verge. Um, oh, yeah. wait, what is it? Yeah, oh. he's like using a green wind crystal to yeah, to like cut the cut tree. tree. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, Kipatrix, yes, um, the discussion is already on our Patreon. Uh, we usually do the podcasts and record them um, a week or two in advance. And people on Patreon are able to see it. The Garden of Eden. Clive is Cain. Joshua is Abel. No wonder they had the apple scene in front of it. Oh, there you go. Very interesting. There you go. Very interesting. <laughs> Meeks, Meeks pulling out the yeah, symbolism Meeks. there. Beasting it. Ooh, I'll have to think about that one. Cain and Abel thing, brother killing you. Know. Yeah, brother on brother, but not right. out of malice, that. right? Yeah, I didn't but mean to do it. <laughs> but it's definitely the apple, and then Cain was the older brother, so yeah, that's very interesting. The older brother who was passed over right. in favor of Abel. Ah, oh, that's right. interesting. You know what? I'm going to think about that. There's some, there's some good stuff there. Clive rejected yes, Clive by God. is rejected by God. His sacrifice is deemed Thank you, Clive. unworthy. Joshua okay, is so what do we say here? God. That child is the child's future, future of our nation. He must be protected. He must be protected. All other concerns, all are, concerns insignificant. are insignificant. Is that all she says? I don't think you can talk to her. I'll just jump in front of you and then leave. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of this, mother? 
It's like flying me here in the stomach. <laughs> All right, let's go. <laughs> Oh yeah, you're quick and of time course the other question. Doors. Oh, of course. <laughs> yes, push, hold it, hold it, hold it. Oh, open it. Man, door. I'm just I, gonna say right now, it's not. not good it's use. not. It's not a huge deal, but like, you just don't need to do this. Just <laughs> open the fetching door, game developer. <laughs> good luck. I missed what guard. Oh, we missed the guard that Which we one? that we are that supposedly comes up later. I literally went everywhere in the fetching place. Where else could I have gone? <laughs> I don't know. Missed it though. Oh, purple is the color of the empire. Purple and white. Whereas this kingdom is more red and and you uh, black. My I guess. Presence, yeah. Your grace. But the 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 mother okay, wears purple and white, not red and black. Huh. All right, you can stop licking it's my boots. Good. Mother isn't here. Do the territories fare any better? So the territories, the northern territories. Yes. Most sly under a pole of black. Under a pole of black. And everyone's getting sick Just with this blight. Just these few moons. Yeah. The blight has taken nigh on all of the northern reaches. It is only a matter of time before it crosses the border. By the flames. By the flames, dude. Nearly every available bed in the capital is already occupied by those fleeing the Deadlands. Even if we were to send them south to Port Isolde, more would only follow in their wake. Every day we delay brings us closer to disaster. We must move now. So, Against you know, I kind of like how uh, this is a war of necessity, pretty much, right? Or, over resources that are necessary to protect long. themselves from the blight. It is time hmm. to end. So, like, they're going to fight this war with the At Iron the Blood least, because we must they need Drake's that crystal breath. to keep the blight from without the blessing taking of the over mother crystal. We cannot defend our realm from the spread of the blight. Yeah, the heroic... usually how it goes. Yeah, fighting over resources, right? The Iron Blood will not relinquish it easily. This will be a bitter fight. Yep. Heroic dad and Phoenix devouring mother Freud would love this. <laughs> he would. No, this is this is straight up the archetypes. Um, the only difference is the son is is too accepting of his role. He isn't. There is something else I would have you do. I don't know. He's too obedient, um, according mm -hmm. to you okay. know the archetypes, the traditional archetypes. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> you will have heard the reports, I am sure, of beast men from the north being sighted within our borders. Goblins in the Stillwind marshes. I know of the rumors, yes. What I'm curious about is then why did they think three people were going to be enough I'll to, like, clear people. out this well, whole we of monsters? Well, this whole thing's obviously so just a side so It's meant to it's give you more a, yeah. tutorial. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Like, that's what it's there for. Yeah. But they could have at least had, like, a, four groups of dudes and like, we'll go this way. You go home. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll go this way. You go, I'll go home. Yeah. No, but you go that way, I'll go that way. And then you, you go with your party of three, but like then they rendezvous at the end. And they're like, yeah. holy crap, I'm horrible. That's crazy. I, wait, I wasn't fast enough to help you. <laughs> you know, whatever right. they do in games like this. But uh, That's a good point, though, because they wouldn't have sent him just with two other people. <laughs> they have the power of God and anime on their side. And anime. The power of anime. <laughs> good point. I didn't consider that. <laughs> that will be all. Rest well. Rest of truth. The rest of the troops were sent to the PHX gate. That that makes yes. me feel like I'm at an airport when I see that. <laughs> <laughs> the PHX gate. All right. Um, as far as this, we could talk to him again. They're cognizant of their DMC powers. Yep, pretty much. It isn't only for control of the Mother Crystal. Brian Johnson else. got the Kung Pao reference. We cannot allow those <laughs> iron blood savages to gain a foothold. That was in oh, incoming home. chosen I one. I would sooner die than I'm see coming. Dark on our shores again. <laughs> I'm coming. I love <laughs> that part. I'm coming. <laughs> and I I'm coming. Life. Dude, that was so funny. Oh, I haven't seen says. it in so long. It's so funny. <sighs> it's the funniest movie of all time. It's also the dumbest movie of all time. <laughs> yes, it is. It's like simultaneously the dumbest movie. Funniest, smartest. My finger point. My finger point. Oh my god. <laughs> it, just say say a sentence from that movie and I will laugh. <laughs> Any time, sentence. Just pick one. Time, <laughs> every freaking There's time. not one freaking thing I will not laugh at that's oh saying that movie. And probably like three people have actually watched it or listened to this. Yep. Oh, 
Do pick Kung Pao for our Patreon exclusive. Dude, that's a good idea. <laughs> we should. That's actually legitimate. We, we good should idea. break down the comedy of why yeah. why, why that is work. It funny? <laughs> There's not a ton of story to talk about, but we could definitely analyze yeah. the comedic hey, moments. Hey, dude, I'm down. I'll do I'll, that. I'll, I'll, I'll hopefully, people vote for it. Oh my goodness, we got my favorite buddy to watch Kung Pao with. Spider Woods is here. Oh, Spider Woods. <laughs> What's, What's up, up dude? dude? Uh. His stomach, <laughs> his stomach lying back there. Right? <laughs> That's like his, his plug, right? Yeah. That's his stomach plug <laughs> on the ground. So funny. Oh, man. Dude, That's a lot of nuts. Dang, nuts. a lot of people here watch Kung wow, Pao. Wow, a lot of people have Dang. seen Kung Pao. I'm surprised. Oof. You guys are as degenerate as we were. <laughs> <laughs> as starved for... I've starved in boredom <laughs> as a teenager <laughs> as we were. <laughs> We taught him wrong on purpose. Wee, As wee, a joke. Wee, wee, wee. It's great stuff. Uh, you guys are great. I like this scene. <clears throat> I like this scene. Ah, uh, yes. There's one line in this scene I yes. like. The, uh, that line. on his neck. That, yeah, that what is that thing? Pin. It's a good yeah, question. I don't know what it is. Because he's not wearing the same stuff he was wearing earlier. How long will you be away this time? Not long. Four days. Maybe five. I'm bleeding, making me the victor. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. <laughs> this just exactly basically became behind. a joke. Uh, this whole podcast. Screen. We're not even freaking paying attention to Final Fantasy. Sorry, systems. sorry. <clears throat> it's just a uh, gotta focus, Kung guys. Power. We perform the right at Phoenix Gate. While we play it's Final Fantasy 16. You know that. And only the dominant can enter. The so that word, I don't yes. think, is a, a real word. A pot of tree. I tried to look that up. Oh, really? That's okay. not like a real word. They made it up for this game. Now, does she have a point? I don't know that. She's like, the boy's ill, and he's saying, I know, yeah, but, but the he's the phoenix, right? Who, the who, phoenix. Now, we know she's like a bad guy, yeah, so we figure that front. out later, but generally speaking, now, in this scene, whose side makes life. more sense? Elway. Say it again, I didn't hear the first part. Like, she's saying, Clark. don't send him over, he's ill. Oh, And right. he's like, yeah, but he's the phoenix, we gotta he's do it. Like, because it's tradition. Who, he right. He's already a fine soldier. Who, who it depends on what that tradition actually does. Is it just we you just do this because we do it, or is it actually or does grant it do him something? power of some kind? Elwin. Does it give him some like Our legitimately no real blessing or something failure. when they he fight? That's a good a question. Like any other. Don't know. As am I, my dear. I like that line yeah, right there. Nonsense. As am I. <coughs> you yeah. are the Archduke of He's Rosa. like, no, you're a freaking... No, no you're rich. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's basically what she said. <laughs> that's basically it. You're very valuable. <laughs> you have money, money, money. I'm merely warming the seat till Joshua comes of age. I know, I know she's planning a genocide. I know like she's going to kill... Well, not genocide, but she's going to murder everyone. Right? She's going to kill everyone. I... I but right. does she have a point in this point at this part Alexa, here? What she's saying you have not is is the king kind blood. of being a little bit inconsiderate of the fact Without that the kid is sick, like to keep us safe. Uh, or is it the whole kingdom like, what, at stake what, what and there's he, nothing he can what do? What is he sick with? That's like, the question. We don't we're know talking that. about a blight, right? Like, so he probably has the, does he the have that, or like uh, is he just shot. have a little cold? I'm going to sleep. Does she have a point in saying, like, he's too sick to do this? And he's like, nope, we got to keep tradition. He turned his back on her when he went to sleep, by the way. That's some symbolism. Mm -hmm. and Don't she, turn she, your back. Don't turn I know back. she's got a dagger just waiting to just slide do between it. his ribs there. Yep. Yeah, we know that she wanted that. We get that. We know that. This is it, then. We're, we're, we're kind of trying to talk about to a different thing. About what is the severity of Joshua's illness. Yeah. Because it could be if he was that sick. Now, obviously, he doesn't die fast. from his illness, so I should get some. I don't know. It just—it's a moot point. But right. The 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 mother may have a point, and it makes her a little bit more round of a character, and not so obviously the moon dude. perfectly evil. That's the star. moon, the full moon. Yep. The star underneath it. You're going with them tomorrow, aren't you? I am Joshua's shield. Now the question is, <coughs> why why is it a full him. moon? Well, Come back to you later on that, maybe. He takes too many risks. Because it's uh, like a quarter moon later wish I on. Save for mm -hmm. Clive, you. I have another mission too. Father has given me my first command. Kill goblins. <laughs> yep. <laughs> it's pretty good. Well, it's pretty good, if you're I guess. not going to pray to Metia for your safe return, you're not going to pray to I Metia. Have to do it for you. Yeah, Metia. That sounds an awful lot like meteor to me. Yeah. And it is a red star. 
I played this game before. I know I know what Final Fantasy's trying to do. <laughs> Yep, we got to figure out the it's whole rebirth the powers of yeah, this yeah. phoenix <laughs> at this point. We don't know yet, but yeah. What is the rule? What are the rules behind the phoenix's powers of rebirth? How does it work? The wall However it yep. works, Clive doesn't seem to know because he's legitimately... No, uh, or subconsciously he does seem does to know, and he did the right thing. Maybe, maybe. Probably if not. That was him, <laughs> if that was him in if I it know, or not, that's which I the big still question. can't really determine. Yeah, it does not seem to be the next him. Next wall will be bigger than before. It, unless it's, a, like it, like I said, unless it's an idiot. You'll be all right, won't you, Clive? You're a shield of Rosaria, after all. And hey, Darren says, um, I may be giving the mother too much credit in trying to keep Joshua safe because she didn't try that hard and didn't seem to care anyway. Yeah, and the fact that so, she doesn't care, fair but enough. claims to care, Leads me to think that she knows something about that rebirth power we're talking about. Yeah. Otherwise, she's she's just she's straight up has like no redeeming qualities, in. which could be the case. But that I would differentiate right. her from Cersei in Game of Thrones, for instance, hmm. because the only saving grace of her character is that Clive. she legitimately loves her children. She actually cares about them. She can actually feel love, right? Mm. Not that it redeems her much from what she does, but anyway, not really. The mountains there Pure look there. really good. The steeples pointing up towards the moon. There it is. Again. The moon that frame. Red star. This is like the fourth shot of the moon and the star. I know. They, it's clearly like yeah. foreshadowing. It's clearly yeah. important to the story, that moon and the, the star. I wonder. We might end up going to the moon. That in this would game. not surprise <laughs> me at all. <laughs> it's like half of all Final Fantasies. It's a coin flip. <laughs> Yeah. Until the there is proof is that Shindu. Clive is not Ifrit, I will assume he is. Shindu meaning like the dragon. Um, Ultra sure Kenshiro. Brilliant. Is that an actual I'll star? Try. I actually don't know about this. Shindu, the new, the new dragon. The theme song is called Moon Gazing. Which is so funny because she yeah. comes in and she says, you're wishing upon a star. Mm -hmm. And she and he's like, talks about Metia. Too old for that. But but then it, it, the the scene is clearly framed around the moon, not not the star. Well, that's the other thing. Is the star? I think it is. But is the star always relative to the moon at the same exact spot in the sky? Like, that's does it good, move with the moon, or does it move with the rest of the firmament? Yeah. I have a feeling it moves with the moon, which means it's not a star. <laughs> but yeah. it's fetching something. That death star. Oh, Shindu. Oh, oh, I get you now. Okay, cool. Oh, do we have uh, do we have an Beardmo ATL? Beardmo says, read the info on ATL the moon. ATL for yeah. the moon star. We'll Let's have to check that out. That's no moon. <laughs> That's a space station. <laughs> That's no moon. Well, let me hike this up real quick. <laughs> okay, we'll have to do that. Looks like it's always there. It's a yeah, bomb well, or summon or something. Allow me. Absolutely. I shall see her safely. To Sorry, I missed... Um, Thank you. I missed what someone if, said over here. If... Um, like this. Yeah. Check yeah, he looks. Shindu. He looks like he looks like Steve Odekirk. He really does. To Wait, do <laughs> <laughs> totally looks like Steve from that movie too. <laughs> from Kung Pao. Why? I thought we were done with that movie. From Kung Pao, dude. We were done making references. The chosen one is in this game. His name is uh, Sir Wade. Yep, and he's coming. He's coming. <laughs> oh, great. The red star is Shinyu. The beastmen are a fierce foe. Well, no, just we a joke. Oh, great! You got me all. All right. Not today. We were. The she knew thing was a joke. So wait. So Dragon. Tyler. Maybe we should start a science uh, mystery science here at three thousand, but just for like gameplay. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> That'd be fun. To the Has anyone done that yet? They're saying you can't. There's got to be a channel out there that did that already. Mystery and for like, and the like blessing of the crystals. awful, Mystery awful science. games. Yeah, like for, bad for the games. most part. <laughs> yeah, right. Look at that. <laughs> it doesn't look like a foot a footprint. You you're what? You know what? It kind of does. A massive I didn't footprint. That the world Very unnatural. All the locations. Okay, so you can't really move around too much, but like out here to the west of this is where that crystal is supposed to be out in the ocean. Ah, cool. But I can't. It doesn't really let me. Move around I like this map a lot. I think it's like. pretty dope. Actually. I really, yeah. I mean, if we're not going to have uh, overworld maps in Final Fantasy games anymore, if that's like you know a foregone conclusion, 
Yeah, this is pretty dope. This is cool. I like it. Looks like a little diorama, right? Yeah, it looks really cool. I really like the look of it. Heon says, from my point of view, you're the beastman. <laughs> <laughs> point of view? That's what one of the goblins should have said as you're fighting the chief goblin dude. Oh, yeah. From my point of view, you're the beastman. <laughs> <laughs> That's freaking hilarious. <laughs> uh, yes, Wade and Tyler. Very sad. I am a great magician. Your clothes are red. <laughs> <laughs> Do a podcast on the film. Uh, yeah, we're going to do we it. We probably will now. It's kind of... We that, kind that's, of have to. Yeah, I think the more to. veiled references we give to the game, the more and more it's, people it's, are getting it. Requires it and the more people are going to yeah, start here. really wanting it. What's your step, my lord? <laughs> and everything else? Yeah, so all these... <laughs> I was about to say all these pets are abandoned. <laughs> all these pets <laughs> are abandoned. <laughs> This is turning into a straight <laughs> no, up just like no, you guys nobody are not knows gonna that understand movie. that one. Nobody knows that. Now, movie. if I say this, these pets are abandoned. I thought these pets were abandoned. <laughs> T- tell me if anybody knows where that's from, please. If someone knows that, I would be like literally like gobsmacked. I w- me too. <laughs> it would be absolutely shocking. Timely accessories. I've not actually experimented with these at all. I'm probably not the going to. The ring of today, timely but, focus and the ring of timely strength. But they make the game easier to play. But let me open this up and see what else we got. Still in Marsh. Wasn't there something about a star? They were saying there's an AT. Yeah, we're going to look for that. Okay. An area of swampland that stretches northeast from Rosalith Castle. The odd village could once be found here, uh, but nothing to compare to the lively settlements that line the main roads of the realm. And with the encroachment of the blight uh, and the creatures driven before it, even these scant settlements were soon deserted. (coughs) Okay, goblins. I like, I really like this ATL, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Instead of having to go too far out of your way or go back to like a, a room in the castle or like find a book hidden underneath mm-hmm. like a rock somewhere, it's just it's just there. Like it's out of the way, but it's easily easy and accessible. I mm-hmm. really like it. Uh, someone's saying that you can use the ATL during cutscenes. Okay. Yes. Like if yeah, you've, you've, I, you've, I guess if they bring up some term and you, you don't really know, you're like, what the fetch is that? <laughs> <laughs> Common species of beastmen. While at first glance they may seem like mindless predators, goblins have their own unique language and are skilled enough to both cast magics and make rudimentary tools and weapons. While mostly found on the continent of Storm, the spread of the blight has forced them to find homes nearby human settlements, a move that oft ends in misunderstanding and bloodshed. Misunderstanding? Yeah. I don't really care about these dudes. At the uh, so I they're wanna, saying you there, need to do the... Stuff? You need oh, you to do the ATL do at certain times. So it's active time, right? That's the active time uh, part. Oh, man. So it's only relevant. But I don't want to interrupt a cutscene. Yeah. That's kind of stupid. Well, actually. at least maybe just during the scene in general. Although that particular cutscene is just a cutscene. I actually There's really no... don't like that. Hmm. Now, if, if you're telling me I could not have seen this information except for like bringing it up during that cutscene, and I have to interrupt my cutscene, and I have to um, interrupt like my, my gameplay recording. Yeah, yeah. Like when I'm recording the game, I have to like break up cutscenes like that to make editing harder on myself. Yeah. That's freaking Okay. Dumb, um, Darren says you can't access old ETLs later. Okay. I just, I just don't know when that'll be and how to do it. Okay. As long as it's stored for later, I'm But I want to read about the stars and, and the moon. If it gets yeah. logged, I'm It cool sounds, it. yeah, your guys are right. It does get logged. Not exactly the most well It's just not as, as accessible. How do you imagine would maintain it? All fled from the blight. Oh, they're saying that maybe it just won't be. It'll be in the it's game, not the demo. So the demo won't have the codex, but the game the will. Oh, I see. Wind like if you go ahead. pause and like. There'll be something. Yeah. Some kind of. What do we got here? Journal. Gear and icons. Oh, shut up. I don't care about this. Go away. Yeah, it's going to tutorial you on all this. I now. just want to see the journal. Fetch. Okay, so quests. Main story stuff, and then there's nothing to display. Completed quests. Okay, it's only quests that appears right now here, but maybe they'll have some. Not that there's a lot left of it in the final build. Can't wait to step on a twig. It's like two gill. That was really important. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that should have been a potion. To screw that. Butterflies. The butterflies tell you where to go. <laughs> Game developers don't trust me to follow in your path. <laughs> Instead of an arrow, it's a butterfly. But it's like, nope, you can't follow a straight line. You need to know the butterflies tell you how to go straight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I kind of agree with what Lance is saying. I feel like the music here 
It like feels a little too serene for like a freaking March. For this part, yeah. yeah. FF6 sprites for party members in the menu case. Oh, right. Yeah. Oh, yeah, those look cool. I like those. The goblins sound really weird. They just kind of like... Yeah. <laughs> it's like they a... They kind of look like gremlins, too. Yeah. yeah. Maybe they're not supposed to be intimidating at all, but they really aren't because they make that sound. Not really. <laughs> they remind me of, like, Comsog Nathus. Interesting. Yeah. Um, All right, so this is telling me how to use magic burst. So if you land an attack and then you press triangle right after, you can kind of do like a secondary sort of fire. So I'll show that off. Right the yeah. Donald Duck people are saying, that's right. That sound, their voices uh, straight up Donald Duck. Like that. Like that. Anyway, there's like kind of a real specific timing with it. It's got, you got to be like really quick. Goblins. Like that. So the reports we are have that. We should press on. So there you can kind of do ahead. that in your combos and whatnot. Uh, let's see. Is there uh, anything that dropped? So we just continue forward. Yeah, they sound more like Gollum than they do like yeah. menacing enemies. The mix between like Gollum, Gollum. Have you seen anything Gollum about that Dobby. Gollum game that just came out? Oh, I've heard about it, but no, if, I. If not. we wanted to do a mystery science theater, <laughs> is it not on good? a game that's horrible? That'd be a pretty oh, no good way. one to pick. <laughs> Darn it! How come the Lord of the Rings games usually don't end up they, being very good? Yeah, they suck pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. They made like ten of them, and only like two of them are like worth playing. Strength topic. Dang I it! Can, uh, put that. Such a cursed game. Yeah, your your goal impression is spot on. Let's You've always been good at let's it. Let's pull the I can't do it right now though. Something's up. I think Did streaming you? for ten hours or whatever. Yeah, it'll <laughs> take a toll on your throat. I, as soon as I even do the the mouth shape, I'm like, oh, I can't do this. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay, let's put the strength tonic. No, I don't want to use it. Add to the shortcuts. There we go. Right there. Gollum is a great game from, <laughs> from a certain, certain point, point of view. view. Point of view. <laughs> point of view. <laughs> There's more. So what I told you was true from a certain point of view. That's what I'm going to tell my wife. Yep. It's always, that always works out. I'll be like, look, depending on how you look at it. Isn't that that Key and Peele sketch about the multiverse? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, With, that's right. It was Neil deGrasse Tyson. Yeah, that was funny. <laughs> that was very funny. Gollum is hilarious when watching others play. Yes, Shadows of Mordor. That we've talked about that. Like the game, the game is the game. Really it just cool. isn't really a really game, game, but like it's, it's so that's cool. Return of the game, yeah. Return of the King on GameCube. Yeah, I can find that. Uh, let's see here. Do I? Can I actually get new abilities? Do I have like? I think I can. I got eighty ability points. What do I want to get first? Charged to magic. <laughs> Or the lunge. This is a pretty good one. You can close the distance pretty good. Let's do that one. At 55 points. Let's get the charged. And let's get... Oh, I like this one where you can jump off, dudes. Uh, and I think that's it. Oh, you can get this one. Oh, yeah, recover quickly. It's a pretty good ability as well. Okay, so you can, like, jump off enemies. Did I miss anything? I think I didn't find this house yet. That's on the other side of the wall. Potion. And it reminds me of that Potion Master video on YouTube. You ever seen that? Potion sell me your potions, <laughs> potion seller. No, I don't think why so. Have, why would you sell me your potions? Like got I don't know it's like a billion views it's like the stupidest video <laughs> really? in the world it's so dumb but I don't know people think it's real oh, that's oh butterflies yep they tell you where to go in the linear game that you can't figure out the straight path of. is there a map like a mini map actually I'm kind of curious oh, about I, haven't that. Of that. I haven't seen one is there a map in here is that just the world map that I'm gonna click on map yeah world map so apparently not. Your strongest potion, potion seller. <laughs> you cannot handle my strongest potions. 
It's so <laughs> stupid, dude. Just repeats the same thing in the other part. I'm going into this and you just draw these potions. Okay, let's see. Shirt Ripper! Very good. I'm just gonna climb this. I can kill my way for that missile. Goblin mugger. Jump on your freaking thing. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah, it sounds like there, there's no way to do a mid. have a map in front of my face. Say combo the double jump into the jump special. I don't think I have the jump special yet. That's ah. why I didn't do it. I think I needed a few more ability points. Pew, 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 pew. I need uh, this one, I think. Yeah, this down thrust. I gotta unlock that one. Oh, I can. I have enough. So now I can do it. We're super quiet compared to the game. I asked you guys. I oh, asked you at it. the beginning of the stream. <coughs> you told me it sounded good, you fetching liars. Maybe one person. It's probably why would not. You do it's, this to it's probably not that. that why would you? Different. Why have you guys betrayed me? You know how sensitive I am to having bad audio. <laughs> now I can't help it. I have to do. Beardmo says I did say ten percent lower, and he did. He did. Oh, he dude, does. it needs to go way more than ten percent. You kidding me? It needs to go like twenty percent or more, like that. Oh shoot! Wait, really? You guys were way off. They dude. said they. I had said to. It was I had fine. to drop this by like fifteen. They all said it sounds good to least. me. Yeah, they don't know though. They're not an audio person <laughs> like me. <laughs> <laughs> they don't realize. Oh man! They don't realize. Okay, okay guys. Well, it's uh quieter now. Yeah. Nah, now it's too low. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, dude. I think I'm right. <laughs> Nobody complained until for the whole stream until that one. Andrew K. I, I looked at the levels. I know what levels are supposed to look like. And they were not supposed to look like what they were before. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's saying it's too low. <laughs> That's all anyone's saying. Nope, you guys are wrong. I know you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. You guys are wrong. I know it. Okay, let's see. Don't worry, I'll, I will say th all the lines again in my own voice. What's up, Jack Patay? Haven't heard from you in a while. Yeah, what's up, dude? We should be near yeah, it's a silent game. I don't know if you guys knew well, that. Well, here is, here is the one thing where you guys might be right. I don't know if on this computer, which I don't use all the time anymore, I've actually done a secondary sort of like... Oh, the filter? Like filter. A, so yeah. you might be right in that. Put them to like negative 20 might be all right. Um, I think right around here should be okay. good. Just knowing that they said it was fine up until that point, I just don't think you put it down too much. <sighs> Whatever, guys. <sighs> Why you gotta confuse me like this? Why you gotta make me doubt myself? <laughs> Why you gotta make me get all OCD about audio levels in the middle of my stream? Where things were flowing. Now I'm all got anxiety. Okay, so, yeah, it's turned up a little bit now. Well, it's because I'm right up on my mic. Yeah, I'm a little too far from my mic, sorry. I can get closer if I want. Charlie Chaplin is Ifrit. Why you gotta be so rude? It's literally perfect. Now. Yes, I believe that. I do not believe the people saying it's too low. <laughs> oh, wait, I'm missing lines. He's the He's leader. The lead, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a very video game line to me. But we'll have to kill his followers first. Uh -oh. 
Okay, to thin the herd. I love it. Freaking magic dude first. Yeah, the goblins totally sound like Donald Duck. Yeah, they do. It's it's like it's like literally weird. It's like why? Did yeah, you do that? yeah. That's a strange kind of voice for them to have. Turn up the jump. subtitles. Um, we have there. subtitles on, so. Bam. <laughs> you guys are hilarious. The Horn of Gondor. Oh no! Shit! He's invited a friend! Oh. Barely got away from that one. On your feet, Sir Wade. Now, comes. games are funny like this, so you've got a bunch of little tiny goblins, and then you have one goblin. Is this a different species? Or is did, did one of their goblins just, like, eat way too much and just got this really more like a troll. Okay, so it's a different species. I don't know. It kind of does look like a goblin, I look at it. I think he's just a big dude. Oh, I thought I got him. I should probably use this one. Oh, Goblin McDonald's. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> oh, man. He just looks similar to the goblins. So. Yeah. <laughs> Death by a thousand cuts indeed. Oh, shoot, shoot, Holy dodge, gosh. dodge, dodge, when does it stop? Yeah, the AI allies, um, it would be nice Rarely to have a gambit system, system, yeah, where you could tell people to do stuff. How long would it take for this thing to die if you just ran away and let your friends kill it? That's a good question. How long would it take? Would they actually yeah, they might never kill it. He's gonna do this thing again. Torgal is basically. Sorry, that's, that's not I'm too far behind. What what are you referring to, Beardmo? Oh, Torgal is like having a game of system. You can tell him to assist in different ways. That's nice. <laughs> Whoa, he fell to the camera. That was good. Look at that. Right into Ooh. the freaking camera. Sheesh. See you, Ron Ben. Phoenix Wing. Yeah, I tend to forget that I could do that. <laughs> it's, called, it's called Falcon Punch. All right. Yes, we are replaying the demo because the game is still not out. Not out yet. Yet. Got, got one Soon more day though. to wait. One like, more day. Like 26 hours? Are you going to stream later? We will not be streaming. Probably the game. not. We'll just be doing the podcast. Oh, we'll the stream podcast. those, yeah, on Patreon. But I'll be, um, I'll be recording the footage, but not streaming it, most likely. Hi, potion. I like that. Reviews will pop in twelve hours. Yep. There he is. Get back here, you fetcher. Get back here. Everyone telling me the game audio is low. It's too late, guys. You already got me doubting myself. I fixed it to the point to where I think it's good. You got to deal with it. <laughs> yeah, I think it's probably going to be reviewed very well. I think it'll based be on, well based reviewed. on what I've seen from this demo. I think 
Yeah, they clearly, probably going to be in the nineties. Yeah, they they took their time on this game, so. Ah, this is great. Do you know how much a thing that big would have to eat every day to maintain its size? A lot of fetching goblins, huh? Oh, I guess it's just goblins? Goblins. Can I jump on you? Whoa! Oh, it's a plant? This is a plant? Even still, a biological thing that acts like this and moves like this and is this big. But I guess if it's a plant, it could presumably absorb nutrients from the ground? It would just have to expend so much energy to move like this. It would be so heavy, too. Get out. Get out. Is it going? It sounded like a uh, oh, as good as yeah. mine. The tree is talking. Oh, uh, what are we gonna do? Okay, this is one thing I really don't like about them. You gotta push the button. At I the time. don't like these. Look at how long you have. To like you like it's like impossible to fail these, so it's like what's the point? Look at that. How long could you possibly miss that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah! I, I'm assuming it gets harder as the game goes. What the fetch, dude? <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty funny. Now, <laughs> yeah, don't press it. I wonder what would have happened. <laughs> I really wish they didn't have that. I, I just honestly feel like it's just so unnecessary to have those. Yeah. You, but Heon's probably right. It's just probably for, like, people who don't play it. If you don't press the button, what happens? What happens if you don't push it? Let's find out. <laughs> or if the game like yells at you and is like, are you kidding me? <laughs> it probably we should, gave you so much time. Say, How did you miss this, dude? <laughs> what? what? No! Are you kidding me? <laughs> are you effing serious? <laughs> are you fetching me? <laughs> it's useless. You've it's, got it's to worthless. be. Dude, you've got to be joking. <laughs> I, I don't know what I was expecting, but not this. This is an insult. That is an insult. <laughs> Jesus, dude. What the fetch? you got to be kidding me. Okay. Now, some people are what saying... What is the point? Some people are saying the demo may do it differently than the actual game. So we'll just wait and see. Jeez, that's oh stupid. Oh, my gosh. Oh, that is really... Holy balls, that's the dumbest thing, dude. <laughs> Why is it even there? I know, just show me just the cutscene. Just do scene. the cutscene. Oh my gosh, this is hysterical. Okay, they're saying just for this part, if you do some other fights, it won't. It's just because it was a tutorial. Oh my gosh, still. 
<laughs> That's freaking funny. I think we made it angry. I'd rather we made it die. I hope you're gonna be big move before I get out of the way. So your party member, or I guess they're not party members, your friends, though Tyler, they can't get knocked out, right? I don't think so. Wade and Tyler? I don't think so. Come on, so close. In the body slam, but when the whole thing is basically a head, it's just a face. It's a, a face, face slam, slam dude. <laughs> it probably hurt it more than it would have hurt anything else. <laughs> Teammates cannot die, and you cannot fail the QTE. Very fun very game. Interesting. Fun game. <laughs> yeah. Of course, you, I'm joking. You can die other ways. <laughs> Obviously, there's a lot of polished stuff to this. It's just that's in particular is fun. Right. I'll be very interested in seeing if that's how it is in the actual game. Yep, they should have been called Biggs and Wedge. Um, somebody was. Why is it a mar uh, Marble instead of a Marlboro? I I, I wonder. Yeah, the same well, thing. just I think Marlboro has that association with cigarettes, and so I wonder if they've just kind of started to move away from that <laughs> for that reason alone. Yeah, the cigarettes. But they company. didn't care in the nineties. <laughs> Fourteen has Marbles as well, so they call them. Oh, that in that game. Marbles and Marlboros. Okay. Oh, both. Oh, yeah, so they're different. They're different monsters. Oh, interesting. Yeah, very interesting. Okay. Huh. We should get moving. Yeah, that's a, the, if in that case, I, I would assume maybe dark. we'll get a marble later. If we set off now, we can still reach Gate. If we set off now, we can still reach the Phoenix Gate. Damned blight. That's what he's gonna say. <laughs> that looks like fire frozen in time. Like stone fire. Yep. Time for right now. Oh, 7.14. We got lots of time. <clears throat> we got lots of time. We good. All right. Let's take a look at this next area. Can we move any further? No, still limited to just this small space right here. Yeah. Frozen Flame. Phoenix Gate does sound cooler than North Gate. Yep, I agree. Although a gate of the sun would be east. Suddenly. Probably be east, especially a Phoenix Gate you'd think would be east with the sunrise. No, wait till you hear this. Wait till you hear this. His now that you mention Kong Pa can't unsee it in Wade's face. Yeah, with Wade. <laughs> <laughs> the Goblin Chief runs off screaming. So, based on the three... Uh, I love this part. This part of the game is so fun. Yeah. Based on the three uniforms that we've seen uh, Clive wear in the trailers, yeah. it seems like he gets back into wearing his Rosaria colors with the like the red chest plate mm. later in the game. And then in the part where he's the slave or whatever, he wears the Imperial one. One of these nights, he may even deign to join us. Yes, a frozen flame, exactly. <laughs> we stream once every like two years. So oh, add add yeah. We, we make it. This is a once, we make it last <laughs> once a year opportunity. So you better exactly. enjoy it while it's here because we're not going to stream again for a long time. <laughs> you know what's funny? The the more time goes, and this is real, people, unless you're, you know, have diabetic or have issues in some ways, I get less hungry as time goes on. Yeah. That's kind of the thing with fasting. You realize you really don't need to eat as much as your body No, your body does. tells you to eat every yeah. three hours. It's like, eat, eat, eat. But if you don't eat and you just say no, shut up, sit down, and you wait for that first initial painful, like, moment. Yeah, to pass. You, I start, I'm, I'm like, I feel better now than before when I uh, was hungry, you know? Yeah. 
It's like I actually don't feel hungry at all. Right I don't feel hungry at all. I was right starving right. when I got here. At me five, too. Like me too. Like 5.30 in the morning. And 10 hours <laughs> later, it's like, you know, I'm good, man. I'm good. I'm not hungry at all. Father. Tony, peace. You did Michael just say 12 donuts? <laughs> all right, man. Good dude, luck with that. Dude, I, I, I feel you. When I get donuts, I usually eat 12 of them too. <laughs> I know. I can't help myself. That's, That's why I kind of have to fast. Because I can't just like control myself and be reasonable. Oh, we should probably bring up your, we say this in the podcast too, but yeah. the two ways of looking at Joshua's question here of, isn't it unfair? Yes, is I it think unfair? initially it's easy yeah. to read that as it's unfair that only our family gets this power, but yes. you were looking at it's unfair that only we should bear the burden of being bear the, burden. Yes. the Phoenix dominant. Is it a blessing or is it a curse? Yeah. And it's both, right? So he says, isn't it unfair that only we have to bear this burden, right? Yeah. That it has to be me just because I'm your son, so now mm -hmm. I have to have the phoenix. What about everyone else? Shouldn't we all share in this burden? But it's just us. It's just this one family line. Um, it can be seen as a blessing or a curse, depending on how you're looking at it. Yeah. Uh, to answer Vaporwave, we did not plan to fast. It just kind of worked out that way because we're streaming for 12 straight hours. But <laughs> I'll probably eat at home. But. <laughs> we, we probably should have eaten lunch, but, you know, whatever. It's all good, man. I need to lose weight anyways. Yeah, me too. Um, <coughs> Beard, <laughs> Beardmo mentioned that we might get another chance to see the star and moon. Oh, good. A ATL soon. Good. Can I do it right now? Um, we, Maybe once out. he goes outside. Ooh, okay. Phoenix Gate. Oh, nice. Walled up keep situated near Rosario's northwestern border. It's originally constructed to serve as an outpost in the wars against the northern territories. Its true significance lies deep within the ruins atop the stronghold stands. Oh, the ruins underneath, which is what Ifrit like destroying in the battle. Uh, Here in an ancient chamber accessible only to the dominant of fire is held the rite of ancestral communion, an important ritual in which it is believed that the phoenix can hear the words of the duchy's forebears. Very Dominance. interesting. Those within whom sleeps the power of an icon. Though they look and think no differently than any other man or woman, they are not only uh, cast elemental magics without a crystal. They can not only cast elemental magics without a crystal. Okay, so that's why we know she's a dominant because she, she was casting a magic without a crystal. That's why that was important. And that's why that's, they kept that's showing they, everyone else using that's what crystals. They were, yeah, that's what they were showing is the difference yeah, between nice. her and someone else because she's a dominant. But also transform themselves into beasts of world-shattering strength at any moment, a quality for which they are uh, honored, worshipped, and feared over the realm. The Tuchel Army. I don't really care about that, to be honest. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're good. Daniel, what's up? Hey, Daniel Imperial. How's it going, dude? I love the music. And this she's, song. She's yeah. going nice. Like the hymn. Yeah, it gets harder as you get older. The Rosarian right? hymn that there's Yeah, singing. the hymn that sounds like a, just like a, a tavern song, you know, in, mm -hmm. in northern England that you would hear. I, I love it. It's so cool. Poor Jill. She'll be wondering where you've got to. No, nah, Torgal. Somehow so snuck <laughs> into the caravan. So much for you being a fine hound. Uh, I, got, I don't think we mentioned it yet today, but the voice acting is very good in this game. Ah, TNS was the guy putting the bonfire out using a crystal. I can't remember. I think so, but I can't No, remember. I think that was the other guy, Biest, who um, gets crushed by the rock. I ah, think he's the one that puts time. out the fire. But was he but using the crystal? Good question. I don't remember. Now that. you can do the ATL for the moon. I've never really been one for cakes and ale. I've never it's been one for cakes and ale. Like. So you can do the ATL for the moon and star now, I think. I think. Nope. nope. Never mind. There. <laughs> yes, Ian, that's right. You would you would can I do it you now? wash your clothes when you need to wash your clothes. There you go. Oh, come on. Yeah, maybe not. You wash your clothes when you need them washed. Otherwise, you wear the same thing every day. Every day. And you, you made your own clothes, too, or your mother did or somebody. Well, the yeah. was singing your praises. Can I do it now? <laughs> we keep interrupting <laughs> the scene to see the same exact words. I know. It's ruining the flow. <laughs> <laughs> when I joined the ranks, everyone thought I was a spoiled little lordling. If I didn't know how to handle a sword... So I go back to the moon. Or I guess we can't. I the can't. moon's a full moon again, right? It's yes, still, it was, it's It hasn't full. changed. It's full. Well, because it's just the next day. But. Oh, it, that's it? There's no time I, Actually, I wonder traveled. how long they traveled. For any I, time? I, I would guess it, would, it was like one day of travel. He said four days, maybe five. Going oh. to the Phoenix Gate that's and so back true. would be a four slash five well, day journey. Point. So this would should be at least two days out, but I, I don't know. Maybe not. Yeah, that's a good point. Maybe I'm wrong. 
washing clothes, it's the power of the crystals. <laughs> Devin, Devin Perry, what's up? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. See, he doesn't want he doesn't want this quote blessing, right? Yeah, he doesn't. He doesn't want it. Doesn't want. He doesn't. He doesn't have the strength. Yeah, <laughs> or the length. He doesn't have the strength or the length. <laughs> He's short. <laughs> Every man has his duty. Ours was decided long ago when our ancestors chose to instate the moon again. Literally, please tell yeah. me what that is. Okay. They added another one, House Rosfield. Highest of the noble houses. The dominant of Phoenix is always born in the Rosfield line. Always who sits on the ducal okay. throne. Okay. Not what I wanted to know. But okay. our nation stood on a precipice, the Phoenix would rise from the flames to drag us back from That's the good. That's gonna happen. It's going to happen. Mm -hmm. He's saying what's gonna happen in the future. Mm -hmm. This isn't just a story. Yep. It's your duty to bear that burden. To bear the burden of dragging everybody back from the brink. I was born to be your shield. That is why I was given the Phoenix's blessing. To keep our future rulers safe. No matter what. However hard it gets. I'll never let you down. Thank you, Clive. I know you'll always take care of ah, me. Very good foreshadowing. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Before I can do that, you need to take care of yourself. Right? The publisher that I hired, not publisher, the editor inside. I hired for my book it's told me never spell all right like that. Good oh, really? She said always do all as one word and write as a second Interesting. Word. But they did it in this game, so I was right wherever you are. <laughs> <laughs> I used it correctly. You used the site this think, game as evidence. Unless there's some rule behind when to use one and the other, but I don't think there is. I think they're just the same thing. Two soldiers guarding the gate. What can go wrong? Yeah, so we were talking about this on the podcast, too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think I would have liked this better if those two guys at the gate were also inside on it and they just let them through. Yeah. I think that would have been dope. Supplies from the capital. See, this guy's wearing a hood. It's just not the same. Not the same hooded person as we see later. Yeah, let's not inspect the cargo. Let's only have two dudes guarding in front of the gate. Nobody on the on the you wall. The time, the <laughs> yeah, there's just something yeah. about this scene that just like I don't know. Like, why only two guys? Why aren't there more? And also, see, so it would have worked better for me had they been in. On it. Oh, it's got a low battery already. Oh dang! These batteries are not great in these uh, PS5 controllers. I'll warn you that right now. They don't last long. Oof. But then, why have guards at all if you're not expecting resistance? You put guards on the wall in case there is a resistance you don't expect. <laughs> That's the whole point of guards. They keep a watch. That's the whole point. And you should have more than two in front. You should have guys inside. You should have backups in case. That's why they're there. You can't have competent guards. How would anyone break into forts and castles? <laughs> Oh, don't worry about the battery. It'll say that it's going to be low, but it'll stay on for hours after that. Interesting. Interesting. That's dumb. We want to take that chance.
Xehanort literally rolled in with a hood and they just let him pass in. (laughs) (laughs) Xehanort straight up. (laughs) Probably don't remember me. (laughs) I remember. What is it? That's freaking funny. We're under attack. I don't know who they are, but they've set light to half the castle. I must get you to see. Is the dog Carbuncle? I've heard a lot of people saying that. Uh, I don't know. Could be. Is it a dominant for the Carbuncle? <laughs> Some. All right, so we get to play as Joshua in this part. He's got some fire-based attacks. Lights the hallway with his fire magic. Are the enemy already inside the castle? I'm afraid so, Your Highness. We must hurry. Oh, or Fenrir, right? Fenrir. That's actually probably Torgo not. being Fenrir makes that more makes sense. way more sense than Carbuncle. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, he staggers after every action. That's good. Yep, because he's sickly Darren. with whatever he's got. Yeah. Still. He seems OP. His unknown. biggest uh, weakness is his, uh, his illness. There was a <coughs> line earlier I didn't understand, too. Yeah. He takes too many risks, says um, uh, Clive about. I wonder what that's referring to. I have no idea because he doesn't seem like a no, person to take any risks no, whatsoever. Not even <laughs> close. I wonder. He must be referring to something. I hope we find out about it later. Yeah. Oh, it could be the risk. Oh, you know what? It could be that he opted to heal Clive when he should have been uh, preserving Resting his strength. or something. Yeah. Right? Saying, like, oh, that was a risky thing for you to come out and heal me in front of everybody. He does also have, a, like, an attack you can do. Like this. Like, well, yeah, I that's I can't cool. hit him. <laughs> <laughs> Die, mother... <laughs> Do this. They're yeah, so Rosaria seems to be part of the Empire, so but it's also interesting that in the opening scene where they're Imperial soldiers like interfering with that battle, that they, they're just there to kill the dominant and that's it. They're like don't interfere otherwise. It's like the Empire doesn't want the other sides to know that they're like interfering. So something going on here where the Empire is trying to like control things going on. They're not supposed to be attacking Rosaria, but they are for some reason. Tyler! Damn it! His wounds are deep. I can save him. The healing power of fire. But it was blue fire, so that's. Like, is, this is risky, right? right. Going to be all right. We do not Maybe. do streams of this kind on our no, Patreon. What we stream is the recordings of our podcast. Yeah, we just stream once yeah. a week our podcast, and that's we don't do streams like this. Uh, gameplay and stuff, we don't do that. This is kind but of a we rare do, thing. We yeah. do our podcast, yeah, once a week. <coughs> and we're this, this podcast, this next month or two, is going to be about this game. Takeaway here is you can't be betrayed by your parents if you kill your parents. <laughs> yes, that is correct. That is the lesson to be learned from Final Fantasy XVI. It's the Final Fantasy XVI's main core theme. Yeah, we'll be dissecting this over twenty-five episodes on our podcast. Fire healing equals cauterization. Ooh, very interesting. That's a good point. It's true, fire can be used to stop bleeding and all sorts of things. Yeah, I don't get the feeling that's what's happening here, but that's a good. Well, that's a good point. Good insight. Yeah. You rescued the young prince. I'm in your debt, soldier. We used to stream on Twitch. I just streaming is a lot of time and energy that I just don't have anymore. Uh, yeah, things always go wrong. payson has <laughs> got four kids. Yeah, I can't come up for. We streams both much. work full time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, if we were doing this full time, if if the channel was our full time job, it'd be a different story. But it's not, and it's not probably ever going to be. 
because, yeah. Oh yeah, here this. Yeah, yeah I, I, this I like the fire moment. healing element too. Here the phoenix, it makes sense. So he's like doing some kind of incantation. It is. I have um, notes on this. Where he like, like take, I don't know what he did to the owl. And that language that yeah. he spoke, it sounds like Elvish. <laughs> it sounds like Tolkien's Elvish. And then the owl will do what he tells it to do if he puts a North spell on it. The there are chocobos in the stables. Father, take Joshua. Now after that active owl time lore, people away, are saying, all right, let's see. He said, oh, active the time owl. the owl. The owl. Stolasis. Owl's capable of transmitting the thoughts of others, Ooh. specifically those with whom they are tuned. In response to an ancient incantation, their lithified third eyes, ooh, the stone, okay. these thoughts in the form of ether, store these thoughts in the form of ether, allowing them to be passed on as, uh, as passed and on when. and when, as and when required. Okay, yeah. Got it. Though only to the intended recipient. Stolasis are mainly kept by royals, nobles, and other figures of authority for the purpose of sending secret or urgent messages and are seldom available to common folk. The incantation O Mia Los Elan. O Mia Los Elan. To Isag Elith. Elith. I looked this up too. Can be loosely translated as My will is ah. now thy burden. Ne'er cleft our bond shall be. Very interesting. Cool. I'm not going without you. You're supposed to be my shield, remember? I really don't like this. Having the active time lore things be in the middle of the cutscene. It's like, yeah. it's silly. I'm going to hold the enemy here. Yeah, they should just be escape. there after the, after the cutscene's over to look up. To rally at the gate. Now go. <laughs> if the ATL... In in the game, if the ATL has a specific place where all of it lives, mm -hmm. I I will like it a lot better because I don't like stopping in the middle of cutscenes either. You have to keep father safe. I'm counting. It's optional, yes, but then you miss out on key details, and if you can't look them up after the cutscene's over, then you feel like you're missing out. So you have to do it if you want to know the info. So in a way, it's not optional if you want to know. <laughs> mm. Unless, like we're saying, uh, they have some place where this is stored in the final build of the game. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, we're back as Clyde again. Wait, I can actually learn more stuff. Whoops. Alright, I think that's it for abilities, and then... Ooh, do I, have a, I guess I could have saved some to, like, upgrade these things. Maybe I should have... It, well, it's kind of high for these, so maybe not, but whatever. It's essential when you're doing a podcast on the game. And you need to know all the details. Yes. That was a sick one. Too late. Everyone's dead. Damn it all. Whoops. <laughs> That's your game. <laughs> Come on, just open the door. <laughs> uh, Joshua Chung, I, I think you are right about that. Um, I think the game is conveying necessary info just fine without the ATLs. It's just whenever we have questions. If you didn't access the ATL right then and there, you're, 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 no, people you're are saying that it's gonna. Um, I know. I'm just saying at the moment because we're. Have I have all these questions, and it's like, well, 
can't access it at the moment. Yes, exactly. Let none escape. As you can leave few alive. You take care of that spell, spell caster. Dude. I'll keep the others occupied. Did somebody else just order us? Huh? Did somebody else oh, just he, yeah, it's the it's it's Murdoch. Oh like, cool, Murdoch. that's cool, that's cool. He can he can tell us what to do. Nobody else can. I love this part with the dragon. It's sick. <clears throat> That's them done. Are you all right? I'm fine. It's my father and Joshua I'm worried about. We should head back. <laughs> try missing this, the try missing the QTE move. against the dra the QTE against the dragon. Okay, okay. <laughs> you got it, man. Let's see what happens. <laughs> oh, it actually let me fail this time. Okay, so you take damage. Oh, you okay, took some damage. Okay, good. So it's good. not every time. It was just that tutorial. Just that tutorial battle. Good, good to know. Yeah, FF4 shot incoming. Yep, that was an FF4 moment right there. Very cool. Yep, Kane. Still, just way too long. It is. It it's is, just it way is, too long. long. <laughs> it's, it's way too long. long. <laughs> Those need to be way too Yeah, Joshua. The mu the music, really good. It's out of the way enough, but like, <laughs> I don't know. It's good. I really. Know. I'm not gonna get away from that attack by jumping in. My thanks. Dodge like that. Oh, that was a perfect parry that nice. I did not mean to do. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey. It's <laughs> cool. So it works out. How about I just finish you with that? Like I tend to like doing.
A uh, chemical witness. This is not the first playthrough. I think this is your third time playing this. Third part, time. Right? Third time playing it. Yeah. Right. So they sent in the dragoons, imperial vipers. Do they really mean to invade us? Not yet. Their numbers were too few. They were not here to take the, the, the voice acting is very good. <laughs> like, yeah, that's great. I, it might be the best part of this whole game. The voice acting is wonderful. Is we should return to my father. My lord, look. Possibly the best I've ever heard in a video we game. These sashes, but yesterday. sashes issued yesterday in Rosalith. Yeah. They were already among us. What if there were others? Father and Joshua are in danger. We must hurry. Take your steed. Okay, so this dude you see right he here. He whistled too loud and hurt his ear. <laughs> he, the guy he sees here. What is that? Is the hooded guy. Yes, and right. this seems to me to be the guy that forces him to become a free I figured it out. It's Bahamut, dude. Look at that face. I played Final Fantasy X. It's oh, Bahamut. you did? <laughs> that, <laughs> that face looks like his face. Oh, you're, I guess that's true. Just the, the mouth, the chin, the bottom. It looks like him. Yeah. Shadow Fox, run, Shadow Fox. <laughs> <laughs> it's Sephiroth, uh, probably. <laughs> yes, exactly. Universe it's jumping. Sydney. Ooh, it could be Sydney. Sydney. It'd be sweet if it was. Sydney. That would be sweet. If he has the blood sin, I'll be stoked. <laughs> yeah, if he's um uh, after the end of the of the, of the game. Marluxia. Ride for Rosalith to rally our forces. I will need your Try help ATL to here. Joshua safely back to the capital. Uh, nope. Nothing new yet. On you get Joshua. Hmm? That was yep. Sydney Isakai. <laughs> I'm sorry, you're Yeah, dude, I'd, I'd actually get into the game if that was the case. Sydney found a way into this game. It'd be sweet. So the owl's dead. They killed his owl, I wonder how. Snakes! And he, he, he didn't have time because he was trying to tell Josh where to run. Yeah, that's pretty. That's pretty freaking gory. Yeah. There's your M rating. Yep. <laughs> yeah. If the F words they've uttered so far weren't enough. Uh, I just checked. The ATL help tip confirms all entries can be accessed later in the game. Okay. You must do your duty too. Good. I'm glad. Have to keep Show a little more respect for fairy tales, Clive. <laughs> yeah. It's a line from Big Story. <laughs> <laughs> the world should respect fairy tales more. This guy right here. That was the guy I thought I saw back in the camp. Yeah. I'm counting on you. And I tried talking to him, he didn't say much or anything other than like the Duchess will have her head or something. Kill him! No! No! Wait, is Wade actually dead? I don't think he's dead. I think he's back there. Yeah, he might or, not that, be that's dead. Tyler. So Tyler's there. He's alive. Did, did Wade actually get killed? But I think once the Phoenix no, uses right there. the full power, I think they died. Oh, they died yeah, there. Yeah, they died. Kind of like Murdoch does, yeah. Yes. When, when uh, he gets burned up by... Yeah. That was a that was a good sound effect when it got hit in the face with the rock. Yeah. That that hurts me when I hear that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it gives that me was a headache, done. Like that was well done. It's like ooh, that sounded really bad. That sounded like a killing blow. <laughs> At least a blinding one. I'm not going to be able to see anymore. No, I guess it's a female chocobo. Please. Yeah. 
Joshua, are you in pain? Okay, so then here he doesn't see the hooded dude. He sees and like a fire being. Yes. It would. I believe it would be the same person. But the fact that he's holding his head, I mean, that's giving us a good hint of exactly. Yeah. What's happening? It's an here. It it's, situation. It, it's in his head. Yeah. And what what he's seeing and a lot of this is internal. Right there. Yeah. I, li I like that theory that it's an id thing. Yeah. That Just be because I like Xenogears. Xenogears is and a good game. And more id is good to me. Good <laughs> for me. Ambrosia escapes. That's impossible. Yeah, so then he gets burned right there. Yeah. Clearly, Clyde was that evil man. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's it. So here's the thing. I think yes and no, because there's like... Okay, so we're seeing from the eyes of Ifrit here, or, or from Phoenix here. You? The, you see how the yeah, colors are subdued, kind of like the dog I was talking yeah, about earlier. So yeah. it's not, you're not seeing in full color. Yeah, the spectrum is diminished. So is that just how you see when you're, like, in dominant uh, icon mode? Or is that, like, a, mm. an indication that he was warging inside of Torval later? That's what I don't know. Well, let's see, because you do see a separate perspective. Oh, maybe not. Hmm. Alright, let's do this Two towers! I guess you can hold this button down. Yeah, you don't have to keep this. Here it comes. Yeah, we'll see um, later on. Uh, Pixel. We'll see um, the way that he kind of views the whole thing from a third-party perspective. Yes, totally Lord of the Rings reference. 100%. I don't know, can you lose this fight? Because I know if you get low in health, they basically just let you get full health back. You just use the circle button and you just get all your health back. I don't know if you can lose this fight, but maybe somebody else can. Did somebody fail this? Okay, so you can lose. At the end. It sounds like that the part at the end. Is it's so interesting that Joshua says he's destroying everything. Yeah, because these are all the ruins from... Yeah, but is it... Are they important? I think so. I don't know. Maybe that wherever he's supposed to go is... Like the apotic terry or whatever. The ah, is that's called. right, yeah. That's made up of the tree. Like the music here. Yeah, this Michael movie. Hudson saying this is the apoditary thing. This okay. is the apoditary. Yeah, it's the place only the dominant can enter. Ah, that makes sense. So this place is important. Um, so Silver Ronin is saying, do you think Clive is a sleeper agent from birth and was like a trigger to ruin Rosario. We like answer our purpose. theories on this in our podcast that's we coming do. out It'll on be Thursday. Thursday. It'll be out so in a day and a half. You will learn some of our ideas about that shortly. Yeah. Some questions. Can't see anything, dude. <laughs> 
Yeah, I'm guessing um, we're going to see Joshua again as well. Yes. Why would he be the Phoenix? He can't come back to life. Right. And if he... And if it's just the Phoenix that comes back to life in another body, then that's what all of the icons do. So how is the Phoenix any different? Just firepower? No, right. the Phoenix is all about rising from the dead, and that'll be Joshua. There's more there, too, but also, wait for the podcast. It's happening. It's going to be great. No gyro aiming? I don't think there is. I didn't try it, but no, oh. I think it's all just the left stick. Hmm. Not the right stick, the left stick. where he does the hellfires. Oh, uh, nice. Which is really cool. <laughs> Damnation in fire. Oh, kill him first. Right. Three, two... Oh, yeah. this is the part where you can lose people are saying, right? Yes. Of course. <laughs> Whoa. Yep, the apoditary is gone, right? Might be active time. Right? Flames, Flames may flicker, but they shall never die. Very nice. Sick freeze frame. Yep. Close. Close call. Close shave. Mm. Yep, get 50 whole experience from that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now this is a thing some people are going to probably be mad that I say. I'm not, I'm not saying it as a bad thing or criticism. I'm just, like, genuinely curious. I actually wonder if the experience that you gain like maybe the game opens up a little bit later and there will be respawning enemies and that sort of thing and you like can actually level up beyond the very limited experience they give you so that you're at the exact level they want you to be mm, right yeah. you know what I mean yeah or if that's kind of just like an aesthetic thing it's just like kind of like we were talking about the, the noble lie on the podcast yeah, right yeah. is this like actually an RPG where you're actually gaining experience leveling up or is that just aesthetically there to make you think that but mm. like genuinely you're always at the right level I mean I guess you can make choices about what to this unlock is, this is the third party yes. he's yes. viewing it as a third party and, and he said Torgal it's beforehand that, it's that animal view he said Torgal question mark yep So I feel like he's looking through Torgal's eyes for this part. He like warged into Torgal. And which, hearing which, him which, scream. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So is he? So he's not controlling Ifrit. He's not seeing it through Ifrit at the moment. So this is the part I'm confused about. I don't know if he's controlling Ifrit during this scene or not. I would say yes. That would be my guess. And that they're trying to throw us off a little bit with this, but... There is something to the fact that his consciousness is in the doll at this moment. Yeah. And it is night time in the scene. This is, uh, you know, if the phoenix is the sun, then the sun goes down beneath the horizon where it then fights a battle and is killed. But then comes back in the daytime. I'll kill you! I'll fire! 
Yeah, I just don't know. I don't know what's going on with Torgal because they, they very clearly pointed Torgal out. You don't even see Torgal's body. He just asks the question, Torgal? Yeah. And then he sees what's happening. I think you're probably right there. Now we get to see how, how devastated Please. the mother will be. Well, technically, Barrett used a lot of F words in Final Fantasy VII, but they just censored them. They were just <laughs> in the bleeped. text. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, and that wasn't Nintendo. That was no, that was just yeah. They just did it so they, you know, T rating. Oh, is your grace. Is there aught we can do? <laughs> Haven't you done enough? She's like subtly smiling. Joshua yeah, she she doesn't. World. She says Joshua of my world, now but she's not gone. acting like it at all. That either because she's a horrible villain with no redeeming qualities, or she knows yeah. he's coming back somehow. <clears throat> yeah. I see. That's true. According to uh, Nier Automata, he might be saying kill, Barrett, every time you see those, <laughs> those symbols come up. He's yeah. just saying kill. He's just saying kill. <laughs> Pretty sure he says That's kill in the possible. game without being uh, <laughs> censored. But the rubble must have protected him from the worst of the flames. Shall we take him prisoner? No need for that. Now also, the way that the soldier says shame about Wait. the phoenix, but it couldn't be helped, As my husband almost died. nonchalantly yeah. like that, yep. gives me the sense that he even he realizes it's a phoenix; it can come back. Yeah. 